The Journals of Lewis and Clark By Meriwether Lewis N. and William Clark Clark, May 14, 1804 May the 14th Monday set out from Camp River at Du Bois at 4 o'clock p.m. And procked up the Missouris under sail to the first island in the Missouri and camped on the upper point opposite a creek on the south side below a ledge of limestone rock called Coldwater, made 41 halves miles, the party consisted of two. Self one Frenchman and twenty-two men in the boat of twenty oars, one surged. And seven French in a large pierogi, a corp and six soldiers in a large pierogi. A cloudy rainy day. Wind from the N.E., men in high spirits. Clark, May 14, 1804. Monday May 14, 1804 rain the forepart of the day I determined to go as far as St. Charles a French village seven leagues. Up the Missouri, and wait at that place until Captain Lewis could finish the business in which he was obliged to attend to at St. Louis and join me by land from that place twenty-four miles. By this movement I calculated that if any alterations in the loading of the vestless or other changes necessary, that they might be made at St. Charles the first set out at four o'clock p.m. In the presence of many of the neighboring inhabitants, and proceeded on under a gentle breeze up the Missouri to the upper point of the first island four miles and camped on the island which is situated close on the right, or starboard, side. And opposite the mouth of a small creek called Cold Water, a heavy rain this afternoon the course of this day nearly west wind from N. E. Lewis, May 15, 1804. Tuesday May 15 it rained during the greater part of last night and continued until 7 o'clock. A.M. after which the party proceeded, passed two islands and encamped on the Stard. Shore at Mr. Pfeiffer's landing opposite an island, the evening was fair. Some wild G's with their young bruds were seen today. The barge run foul three several times, on logs, and in one instance it was with much difficulty they could get her off. Happily no injury was sustained, though the barge was several minutes in eminent danger, this was cased by her being too heavily laden in the stern. Persons accustomed to the navigation of the Missouri and the Mississippi also below the mouth of this river. Uniformly take the precaution to load their vessels heaviest in the bow when they ascend the stream in order to avoid the danger incident to ruining fowl of the concealed timber which lies in great quantities in the beds of these rivers. Clark, May 15, 1804. Tuesday 15, rained all last night and this morning until 7 o'clock, all our fire extinguished, some provisions on the top of the pirogus wet, I sent two men to the Count Ray to hunt, and proceed on at 9 o'clock and proceeded on nine miles and camped at a Mr. Pip. Landing just below a coal bank on the south side the prairie comes with one quarter of a mile of the river on the end, side I sent to the settlements in the prairie and purchased fowls and one of the pierogi are not sufficiently maimed to keep up. References from the 15th of May, 2, a large island to the starboard. 3, past a small island in the bend to the starboard, Opposite passage to Sioux and with eleven halves miles of the Mississippi, observed a number of gosselins on the edge of the river, many passing down. Strong water and wind from the N.E., passed a place aboard called the Platts, a flat rock projecting from the foot of a hill, where there is a farm, five, pass in small isle near the center of the river, run on several logs this afternoon, camped at Mr. Piper's Landing. Clark, May 15, 1804. May 15 Tuesday rained the greater part of the last night, and this morning until 7 o'clock, at 9 o'clock set out and proceeded on 9 miles past two islands and encamped on the starved. Side at a Mr. Piper's landing opposite an island, the boat run on logs three times today, owing her being too heavily loaded astern, a fair afternoon, I saw a number of goslings today on the shore, the water excessively rapid, and banks falling in dash. Clark, May 16, 1804. Wednesday, May 16, a fair morning, set out at five o'clock past the coal hill, called by the natives Carbonier, this hill appears to contain great quantities of coal. And also or of a rich appearance having greatly the resemblance of silver arrived opposite St. Charles at twelve o'clock, this village is at the foot of a hill from which it takes its real name Pediate Coet or the Little Hill. 
It contains about 100 indifferent houses, and about 450 inhabitants principally French, those people appear poor and extremely kind, the Count Ray around I am told is beautiful. Interspersed with prairies and timber alternately and has a number of American settlers. Took equal altitudes with section MA 68 degrees 37 minutes 30 seconds dined with the commander and Mr. Dusset's family, one, passed an island on the L side just above the bank one just above, two small ones opposite under the St. Shore, one on LB. Side below St. Charles, arrived at this place at 12 o'clock a fine day. Clark, May 16, 1804. May 16 Wednesday a fair morning set out at 5 OCLK pass a remarkable coal hill on the larboard side called by the French Carbonier. This hill appeared to contain great quantity of coal and ore of a underscore 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 appearance from this hill the village of St. Charles may be seen at 7 miles distance, we arrived at St. Charles at 12 o'clock a number of spectators French and Indians flocked to the bank to see the party. This village is about one mile in length, situated on the north side of the Missouri at the foot of a hill from which it takes its name Petit Coit or the little hill this village contains. About 100 houses, the most of them small and indifferent and about 450 inhabitants chiefly French, those people appear poor, polite and harmonious, I was invited to dine with a mister. Dusset this gentleman was once a merchant from Canada, from misfortunes odd aid to the loss of a cargo sold to the late Judge Turner he has become somewhat reduced. He has a charming wife and Eli Gent situation on the hill surrounded by orchards and an excellent garden. Clark, May 17, 1804 Thursday the 17th 1804 a fine day three men confined for misconduct, I had a court-martial and punishment several Indians, who informed me that the Sakis had lately crossed to war against the Osage nation some applications. I took equal altitudes made the M.A. To be 84 degrees 39 minutes 15 seconds measured the Missouris at this place and made it 720 yards wide, in banks. A boat came up this evening, I punished Hall agreeable to his sentence in part, a fine afternoon, souped with Mr. Dusset an agreeable man more agreeable lady, this gentleman has a delightful situation and garden. Clark, May 17, 1804. May the 17th Thursday 1804 a fair day compelled to punish for misconduct. Several Kickapoos Indians visit me today, George Druyer arrive. Took equal altitudes of Suns LL made it 84 degrees 39 minutes 15 seconds APT. Measured the river found it to be 720 yards wide, a keel boat came up today, several of the inhabitants came aboard today received several spesses of vega tables from the inhabitants today. Ordway, May 17, 1804, orders a stee. Charles Thursday the 17th of May 1804, a sergeant and four men of the party destined for the Missouri expedition will convene at 11 o'clock today on the quarter deck of the boat. And form themselves into a court-martial to hear and determine, in behalf of the captain. The evidences adduced against William Warner and Hugh Hall for being absent last night without leave, contrary to orders. And John Collins first for being absent without leave, second for behaving in an unbecoming manner at the ball last night, three RDLY for speaking in a language last night after his return tending to bring into disrespect the orders of the commanding officer. Signed. W. Clark Comge. Detail for Court Martial. Sect. John Ordway PRS. Members. R. Fields. R. Windsor. J. Whitehouse. Joe. Potts. The court convened agreeable to orders on the 17th of May, 1804 Sergeant John Ordway P. Members Joseph Whitehouse Reuben Fields Potts Richard Windsor after being duly sworn the court procced to the trial of William Warner and Hugh Hall on the following charges viz., for being absent without leave last night contrary to orders. To this charge the prisoners plead guilty. The court one of opinion that the prisoners Warner and Hall are both guilty of being absent from camp without leave it being a breach of the rules and articles of war and do sentence them each to receive twenty-five lashes on their naked back. But the court recommend them from their former good conduct, to the mercy of the commanding officer. 
At the same court was tried John Collins charged first for being absent without leave, 2d. For behaving in an unbecoming manner at the ball last night idly for speaking in a language after his return to camp tending to bring into disrespect the orders of the commanding officer, the prisoner pleads guilty to the first charge but not guilty to the two last charges. After mature deliberation and agreeable to the evidence adduced, the court are of opinion that the prisoner is guilty of all the charges alleged against him it being a breach of the rules and articles of war and do sentence him to receive fifty lashes on his naked back, the commanding officer approves of the proceedings and desicon of the court-martial and orders that the punishment of John Collins take place this evening at sunset in the presence of the party. The punishment ordered to be inflicted on William Warner and Hugh Hall, is remitted under the assurance arriving from a confidence which the commanding officer has of the sincerity of the recommendation from the court. After the punishment, Warner Hall and Collins will return to their squads and duty. The court is dissolved. Sign. William Clark. Clark, May 18, 1804. Friday May 18, 1804 a fine morning took equal altitude and made it 97 degrees 42 minutes 37 seconds m. a. I had the boat and pyrogue reloaded so as to cause them to be heavier in bow than a stern wrecked of Mr. Lyon 136 pounds, tobacco on act. Of Mr. Chodo gave out tin cups and three knives to the French hands, Mr. Loriasm returned from the Kickapoo town today delayed a short time and set out for St. Louis, I sent George Druyer with Mr. Loriasmus to St. Louis and wrote to Cap Louis Mr. Dusset made me a present of river cats and some herbs our French hands bring me eggs milk and and today the wind hard from the S.W. Two keel boats came up to this place today from Kentucky. Clark, May 18, 1804 May the 18th Friday 1804 a fine morning, I had the loading in the boat and pierogi examined and changed so as the bow of each may be heavier laded than the stern. Mr. Loremus who had been sent by Cap Lewis to the Kickapoo town on public business returned and after a short delay proceeded on to St. Louis. I sent George Druyer with a letter to Captain Lewis two keel boats arrive from Kentucky today loaded with whiskey hats and and the wind from the SW took equal altitudes with Sexit and made it 97 degrees 42 minutes 37 seconds mt. Clark, May 19, 1804. Saturday, May 19, 1804 A violent wind last night from the W. SW, succeeded by rain with lasted some hours, a cloudy morning, many persons came to the boat today I took equal altitudes. Mar time 76 degrees 33 minutes 7 seconds. I heard of my brother's illness today which has given me much concern, I settle with the men and take receipts for pay up to the first of deck. Next, I am invited to a ball in the village, let several of the men go, our fields kill a dear George Druyer returned with a hundred dollars, he lost. Clark, May 19, 1804. May 19, Saturday 1804 A violent wind last night from the W.S.W. Accompanied with rain which lasted about three hours cleared away this morn G at eight o'clock, I took receipt for the pay of the men up to the first, of deck. Next, R. Fields kill a deer today, I wreck an invitation to a ball, it is not in my power to go. George Druyer returned from St. Louis and brought ninety-nine dollars, he lost a letter from Cap Lewis to me, seven ladies visit me today. Lewis, May 20th, 1804. Sunday May 20th, 1804 the morning was fair, and the weather pleasant, at 10 o'clock a.m. Agreeably to an appointment of the preceding day, I was joined by Captain Stoddard, Lutz. Milford and Worrell together with Messrs. at Shoto, C. Greshet, and many other respectable inhabitants of Esti. Lewis, who had engaged to accompany me to the village of St. Charles, Accordingly at twelve o'clock after bidding an affectionate adieu to my hosties, that excellent woman the spouse of Mr. Peter Shoto, and some of my fair friends of Esti. Lewis, we set forward to that village in order to join my friend companion and fellow labor captain. 
William Clark who had previously arrived at that place with the party destined for the discovery of the interior of the continent of North America the first five miles of our route laid through a beautiful highly valued fertile prairie which encircles the town of St. Louis from N. W. to S. E. The lands through which we then passed are somewhat broken up fertile the plains and woodlands are here indiscriminately interspersed until you arrive within three miles of the village when the woodland commences and continues to the Missouri the latter is extremely fertile. At half after 1 p.m. our progress was interrupted the near approach of a violent thunderstorm from the N.W. and concluded to take shelter in a little cabin hard by until the rain should be over. Accordingly we alighted and remained about an hour and a half and regaled ourselves with a good collation which we had taken the precaution to bring with us from St. Louis. The clouds continued to follow each other in rapid succession, insomuch that there was but little prospect of it ceasing to rain this evening, as I had determined to reach St. Charles this evening and knowing that there was now no time to be lost I set forward in the rain, most of the gentlemen continued with me, we arrived at half after six and joined Captain Clark found the party in good health and spirits. Soup this evening with Monser. Charles Taong a Spanish ensign and late commandant of St. Charles at an early hour I retired to rest on board the barge, St. Charles is situated on the north bank of the Missouri 21 miles above its junction with the Mississippi, and about the same distance N. W. from St. Louis. It is bisected by one principal street about a mile in length running nearly parallel with the river, the plain on which it stands is narrow though sufficiently elevated to secure it against the annual inundations of the river, which usually happen in the month of June, and in the rear it is terminated by a range of small hills, hence the appellation of Petit Cote, a name by which this village is better known to the French inhabitants of the Illinois than that of St. Charles. The village contains a chapel, 100 dwelling houses, and about 450 inhabitants, their houses are generally small and but illy constructed. A great majority of the inhabitants are miserably poor, illiterate and when at home excessively lazy, though they are polite hospitable and by no means deficient in point of natural genius, they live in a perfect state of harmony among each other. And plays as implicit confidence in the doctrines of their spiritual pastor, the Roman Catholic priest, as they yield passive obedience to the will of their temporal master the commandant. A small garden of vegetables is the usual extent of their cultivation, and this is commonly imposed on the old men and boys. The men in the vigor of life consider the cultivation of the earth a degrading occupation, and in order to gain the necessary subsistence for themselves and families, either undertake hunting voyages on their own account or engage themselves as hirelings to such persons as possess sufficient capital to extend their traffic to the natives of the interior parts of the country. On those voyages in either case, they are frequently absent from their families or homes the term of six twelve or eighteen months and always subjected to severe and incessant labor, exposed to the ferocity of the lawless savages. The vicissitudes of weather and climate, and dependent on chance or accident alone for food, raiment or relief in the event of malady. These people are principally the descendants of the Canadian French, and it is not an inconsiderable proportion of them that can boast a small dash of the pure blood of the Aborigines of America. On consulting with my friend Captain C. I found it necessary that we should postpone our departure until 2 p.m. the next day and accordingly gave orders to the party to hold themselves in readiness to depart at that hour. Captain. Clark now informed me that having gotten all the stores on board the barge and pirogues on the evening of the 13th of May he determined to leave our winter containment at the mouth of River Du Bois the next day, and to ascend the Missouri as far as the village of St. Charles, whereas it had been previously concerted between us, he was to wait my arrival. This movement while it advanced us a small distance on our route, would also enable him to determine whether the vessels had been judiciously loaded and if not timely to make the necessary alterations, accordingly at 4 p.m. On Monday the 14th of May, 1804, he embarked with the party in the presence of a number of the neighboring citizens who had assembled to witness his departure. During the fore part of this day it rained excessively hard. In my last letter to the President dated at St. Louis the first mentioned the departure of Captain. Clark from River Du Bois on the 15th inst, which was the day that had been calculated on, 
but having completed the arrangements a day earlier he departed on the 14th as before mentioned. On the evening of the 14th the party halted and encamped on the upper point of the first island which lies near the larboard shore, on the same side and nearly opposite the center of this island a small creek disembogues called Kudwater. The course and distance of this day was west four miles the wind from N. E. Clark, May 20, 1804. Sunday May 20 a cloudy morning rained and a hard wind last night I continue to write rolls. Send twenty men to church today one man sick Captain Lewis and several gentlemen arrive from St. Louis through a violent shower of rain, the most of the party go to the church. Clark, May 20, 1804. Sunday May 20 a cloudy morning rained and hard wind from the underscore 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 last night, the letter George lost yesterday found by a countryman, I gave the party leave to go and hear a sermon today delivered by Mr. Underscore 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 a Roman Catholic priest at three o'clock Captain Lewis Captain Stoddard accompanied by the officers and several gentlemen of St. Louis arrived in a heavy shore of rain MSSR, Lutenance Minford and Werness. Mr. Chodo Gradiate, Deloney, Labor D. Rankin Diar. So drang rain the greater part of this evening. Souped with Mr. Charles Tayon, the late commandant of St. Charles a Spanish ensign. Clark, May 21, 1804. Monday, May 21, dine with Mr. Deceit and set out from Esti. Charles at three o'clock after getting every matter arranged, proceeded on under a gentle breeze, at one mile of violent rain with wind from the S.W. We landed at the upper point of the first island on the STBD side and camped, soon after it commenced raining and continued the greater part of the night, three French men got leave to return to town, and return early refer to figure 2. 25 ST refured to fig. 2. Left Street. Charles May 21, 1804. Steered N, 15 degrees west 13 fourths Ms. North 52 degrees west to the upper point of the island and camped during a rain which had been falling half an hour, opposite this ISD. Corns in a small creek on the St. SD and at the head one on the LD. Side rains powerfully. Clark, May 21, 1804. May 21, 1804 Monday all the forepart of the day arranging our party and procuring the different articles necessary for them at this place, dined with Mr. Dusit and set out at half past three o'clock under three cheers from the gentlemen on the bank and proceeded on to the head of the island, which is situated on the STBD side, three miles soon after we set out today a hard wind from the W. S.W. accompanied with a hard rain, which lasted with short intervals all night, opposite our camp a small creek corns in on the LBD side. Clark, May 22, 1804. Tuesday May 22 delayed a short time for the three French men who returned and we set out at six o'clock a cloudy morning rain violently hard last night saw several people on the bank today and passed several small farms. Captain Lewis walk on shore a little and passed a camp of Kickapoo Indians, and encamped in the mouth of a small creek in a large bend on the STBD side. Clark, May 22, 1804. May 22, Tuesday, 1804 A cloudy morning delay one hour for four French men who got liberty to return to arrange some business they had forgotten in town, at six o'clock we proceeded on, past several small farms on the bank and a large creek on the LBD. Side called Bonham a camp of Kickapoos on the Saint side those Indians told me several days ago that they would come on and hunt and by the time I got to their camp they would have some provisions for us, we camped in a bend at the M.O. of a small creek, soon after we came to the Indians arrived with four deer as a present, for which we gave them two quarts of whiskey. This day we passed several islands, and some high lands on the starboard side, very hard water. Clark, May 23, 1804. Wednesday, May 23, eight Indians kick. Came to camp with meat we wrecked their peasants of three deer and gave them whiskey. Set out early run on a log under water and detained one hour proceeded on the same course of last night, two miles, past the mouth of a creek on the SBD, side called Woman of Osage River about thirty yards. Over, abounding in fish, Stoked one hour where there was many people assembled to see us, 
halted at an indented part of a rock which juked over the water, called by the French the tavern which is a cave forty yards. Long with the river four feet deep and about twenty feet high, this is a place the Indians and French pay homage to, many names are wrote up on the rock mine among others, at one mile above this rock comes in a small creek called Tavern Creek. Above one other small creek, camped at six o'clock, after experiencing great difficulty in passing some drifts, on the STB side, examined the men's arms found all in good order except the detachment of souls in the pierogi, our field killed a deer. Clark, May 23rd, 1804. May 23rd course of last night S 75W Conton 2 miles to the said point Saint side past the upper point of the island then south 52 degrees west, 7 miles to a PT on Saint SD passing Tavern Island 2 small ISD. In a bend to this T. Side the MO of Oge Woman's River at 1M, the cave called the Tavern, LBD side at 5M, situated in the cliffs, opposite a small island on the STBD side, R. and Joe. Fields came in, with many people, past the tavern cave, Captain Lewis ascended the hill which has peninsulas projecting in raged points to the river. And was near falling from a peninsula hard water all day saved himself by the assistance of his knife, past a creek fifteen yards. Wide at one mile called Creek of the Tavern on the LBD, side, camped opposite the PT which the last course was to. One man sick. Clark, May 23, 1804. May 23, Wednesday, 1804 we set out early ran on a log and detained one hour, proceeded the course of last night two miles to the mouth of a creek on the STBD, side called Osage Woman's R, about thirty yards. Wide, opposite a large island and a settlement. On this creek thirty or forty families are settled, crossed to the settlement. And took in R. and Joe. Fields who had been sent to purchase corn and butter and. Many people came to see us, we passed a large cave on the LBD, side about 120 feet wide 40 feet deep and 20 feet high many different images are painted on the rock at this place. The inns and French pay homage. Many hams are rode on the rock, stoked about one mile above for Captain Lewis who had ascended the cliffs which is at the said cave three hundred feet high, hanging over the water, the water excessively swift today, we encamped below a small isle. In the middle of the river, sent out two hunters, one killed a deer. This evening we examined the arms and ammunition found those men's arms in the pierogi in bad order a fair evening captain. Lewis near falling from the pencilia of rocks three hundred feet, he caught at twenty foot. Clark, May 24, 1804. Thursday May 24, 1804 set out early past a small ISD in the middle of the river, opposite the on the LBD. Side is projecting rock of one half a mile in extent against which the current runs, this place is called the Devil's Race Grounds, one above this comes in a small creek called the Little Quiver, a sand island on the STBD side. Past several islands and two creeks, on the STBD side a small island on the LBD side above we WER very near losing our boat in towing she struck the sands the violence of the current was so great that the tow rope broke, the boat turned broadside. As the current washed the sand from under her she wheeled and lodged on the bank below as often as three times, before we got her in deep water, nothing saved her but. Clark, May 24, 1804. May 24 set out early, killed a deer last night. Examined the men's arms, and saw that all was prepared for action, passed an island in the M. R., opposite a hard place of water called the Devil Race Grown, south 63 degrees west 4 miles to a point on the S.D. starboard side and 68 W. to a point on L.B.D. side 3 milliseconds, passed. A small willow island on the L.B.D. side to the point of a I.S.D. L side, south 75 degrees west to a point on STBD side 3 miles, past the upper point of the island. Crossed and in a very bad place we got our boat aground and she balked the tow rope and turned the land, the in wheeling three times, got off returned to the head of the aforesaid island, and came up under a falling bank. Hard water this place being the worst I ever saw, I call it the retrograde bend. Camped at an old house. Clark, May 24, 1804. 
May 24 Thursday, 1804 set out early past a very bad part of the river called the Devil's Race Ground, this is where the current sets against some projecting rocks for half a mile on the left Side, above this place is the mouth of a small creek called Quivir, past several islands, two small creeks on the STBD, side, and passed between a isled and the LBD. Sure a narrow pass above this isled is a very bad part of the river, we attempted to pass up under the LBD, bank which was falling in so fast that the evident danger obliged us to cross between the starved side and a sandbar in the middle of the river, we hove up near the head of the sandbar, the sand moving and banking caused us to run on the sand. The swiftness of the current wheeled the boat, broke our tow rope, and was nearly over setting the boat. All hands jumped out on the upper side and bore on that side until the sand washed from under the boat and wheeled on the next bank by the time she wheeled a third time got a rope fast to her stern and by the means of swimmers was carried to shore and when her stern was down whilst in the act of swinging a third time into deep water near the shore. We returned to the island where we set out and ascended under the bank which I have just mentioned, as falling in, here George Drewyer and Willard, two of our men who left us at St. Charles to come on by land joined us, we camped about one mile above where we were so nearly being lost, on the labbed side at a plantation. All in spirits. This place I call the retrograde bend as we were obliged to fall back two miles. Clark, May 25, 1804. May 25 set out early course west to a point on SBD, side at two miles past a willow ISD. In a bend to the LBD a creek called Wood River LBD. Side north 57 degrees west, to a PT on the SB, side 3 miles past the mouth of a creek Saint side called Le Caver, this same course continued to a point limited side 21 halves miles further. Opposite a ISD. On SD side past a creek called R. La Fro at the point. North 20 degrees west 2 miles to a small French village called La Charite of five families only, in the bend to the starboard this is the last settlement of Whites, an island opposite. Clark, May 25. 1804. May 25 Friday, 1804 Rain last night river falls several inches, set out early PSD. Several islands passed Wood River on the LBD side at two miles past creek on the Saint side called La Cairer at five miles past a creek at eight mile, Opst. An ISD. On the LBD side, camped at the mouth of a creek called River Achorite, above a small French village of seven houses and as many families, settled at this place to be conved. To hunt and trade with the Indians, here we met with Mr. Louis L. immediately down from the Cedar Isle. Situated in the Count Ray of the Sussex 400 leagues up he gave us a good deal of information some letters he informed us that he saw no Indians on the river below the Poncrars, some hard rain this evening. The people at this village is poor. Houses small, they sent us milk and eggs to eat. Clark, May 26, 1804. May 26, 1804. Set out at seven o'clock after a hard rain and wind, and proceed on very well under sail. Wind from the E N E. The wind favorable today we made eighteen miles a cloud rice and wind and rain closed the day. Clark, May 26, 1804. May the 26th Saturday 1804. Set out at seven o'clock after a heavy shower of rain, George Drewyer and John Shields. Sent by land with the two horses with directions to proceed on one day and hunt the next, the wind favorable from the E.N.E. -E past Beef Island and River on LBD side at 31 halves Miz past a creek on the LBD. Side called Shepherd's Creek, past several islands today great deal of deer sign on the bank one man out hunting, W. camped on an island on the starboard side near the southern extreme of Luter Island. Lewis, May 26, 1804 Detachment Orders May 26, 1804 The commanding officers direct, that the three squads under the command of Serks, Floyd Ordway and Pryor heretofore forming two messes each, shall until further orders constitute three messes only, the same being altered and organized as follows, viz. 1. Cert. 
Charles Floyd. 1. Privates. 2. Hugh McNeil. 3. Patrick Gass. 4. Reuben Fields, 2. 5. John B. Thompson. Plus 6. John Newman. 7. Richard Windsor. Plus Francis Rivet and. 8. Joseph Fields, 3. 9. Sirt. John Ordway. Privates. 10. William Bratton, 4. 11. John Coulter, 5. X. 12. Moses B. Reed. 13. Alexander Willard. 14. William Warner. 15. Silas Goodrich. 16. John Potts and. 17. Hugh Hall. 18. Sirt. Nathaniel Pryor. 6. Privates. 19. George Gibson, 7. 20. George Shannon, 8. 21. John Shields, 9. 22. John Collins. 23. Joseph Whitehouse. 24. Peter Weiser. F. 25. Peter Crusat and. F. 26. Francis LaBush. The commanding officers further direct at the remainder of the detachment shall. Form two messes. And that the same be constituted as follows. Viz. Patroon, Baptist de Champs. Engages. Etienne Maboff. Paul Primout. Charles A. Bear. Baptist La Jeunesse. Peter Pinot. Peter Roy and. Joseph Collin. One Corporal. Richard Warvington. Privates. Two Robert Fraser. Third John Bolai. Four John Dame. Five Ebenezer Tuttle and. Six Isaac White. The commanding officers further direct that the messes of Sirks. Floyd, Ordway, and Pryor shall until further orders form the crew of the bateau. The mess of the Patroon La Jeunesse will form the permanent crew of the Red Pierogi, Corporal. Warvington's mess forming that of the White Pierogi. Whenever by any casualty it becomes necessary to furnish additional men to assist in navigating the pirogues, the same shall be furnished by daily dead ale from the privates who form the crew of bateau, exempting only from such dead ale, Thomas P. Howard and the men who are assigned to the two bow and the two stern oars. For the present one man will be furnished daily to assist the crew of the white pierogi, this man must be an expert boatman. The posts and duties of the serfs shall be as follows, viz., when the bateau is underway, one serf shall be stationed at the helm, one in the center on the rear of the starboard locker, and one at the bow. The serf at the helm shall steer the boat, and see that the baggage on the quarterdeck is properly arranged and stowed away in the most advantageous manner. To see that no cooking utensils or loose lumber of any kind is left on the deck to obstruct the passage between the berths, he will also attend to the compass when necessary. The served at the center will command the guard, manage the sails, see that the men at the oars do their duty, that they come on board at a proper season in the morning, and that the boat gets under way in due time. He will keep a good lookout for the mouths of all rivers, creeks, islands and other remarkable places and shall immediately report the same to the commanding officers, he will attend to the issues of spirituous liquors. He shall regulate the halting of the bateau through the day to give the men refreshment. And will also regulate the time of her departure taking care that not more time than is necessary shall be expended at each halt, it shall be his duty also to post a sentinel on the bank. Near the boat whenever we come to and halt in the course of the day, at the same time he will, accompanied by two his guard, reconnoiter the forest around the place of landing to the distance of at least one hundred paces. When we come to for the purpose of encamping at night, the cert of the guard shall post two sentinels immediately on our landing, one of whom shall be posted near the boat, and the other at a convenient distance in rear of the encampment. At night the cert must be always present with his guard, and he is positively forbidden to suffer any man of his guard to absent himself on any pretext whatever. He will at each relief through the night, accompanied by the two men last off their posts, reconnoiter in every direction around the camp to the distance of at least 150 paces. And also examine the situation of the boat and pirogues, 
and see that they lie safe and free from the bank. It shall be the duty of the served. At the bow, to keep a good look out for all danger which may approach either of the enemy, or obstructions which may present themselves to passage of the boat, of the first he will notify the served. At the center, who will communicate the information to the commanding officers, and of the second or obstructions to the boat he will notify the served. At the helm, he will also report to the commanding officers through the served. At the center all pirogues boats canoes or other craft which he may discover in the river, and all hunting camps or parties of Indians in view of which we may pass. He will at all times be provided with a setting pole and assist the bowsman in poling and managing the bow of the boat. It will be his duty also to give and answer all signals, which may hereafter be established for the government of the pirogues and parties on shore. The Serfs will on each morning before our departure relieve each other in the following manner, the Serpt. At the helm will parade the new guard, relieve the Serpt. And the old guard, and occupy the middle station in the boat, the Serpt. Of the old guard will occupy the station at the bow, and the Serpt. Who had been stationed the preceding day at the bow will place himself at the helm. The Serpt's. In addition to those duties are directed each to keep a separate journal from day to day of all passing occurrences, and such other observations on the country and as shall appear to them worthy of notice. The serfs are relieved and exempt from all labor of making fires, pitching tents or cooking, and will direct and make the men of their several messes perform an equal proportion of those duties. The guard shall hereafter consist of one sergeant and six privates and engages. Patroon, de Champ, Coppel. Warvington, and George Druyer, are exempt from guard duty. The two former will attend particularly to their pirogues at all times, and see that their lading is in good order, and that the same is kept perfectly free from rain or other moisture. The latter will perform certain duties on shore which will be assigned him from time to time. All other soldiers and engaged men of whatever description must perform their regular tour of guard duty. All debt alesh for guard or other duty will be made in the evening when we encamp, and the duty to be performed will be entered on, by the individual so warned, the next morning. Provision for one day will be issued to the party on each evening after we have encamped. The same will be cooked on that evening by the several messes and a proportion of it reserved for the next day as no cooking will be allowed in the day while on the mock. Served. John Ordway will continue to issue the provisions and make the debt alesh for guard or other duty. The day after tomorrow lead corn and grease will be issued to the party, the next day pork and flour, and the day following Indian meal and pork. And in conformity to that ration provisions will continue to be issued to the party until further orders. Should any of the messes prefer Indian meal to flour they may receive it accordingly, no pork is to be issued and we have fresh meat on hand. La Bush and Crusat will man the larboard bow or alternately, and the one not engaged at the oar will attend as the bow's man, and when the attention of both these persons is necessary at the bow, their oar is to be maimed by any idle hand on board. Meriwether Lewis Captain William Clark CPT Clark, May 27 1804. Sunday, May 27, as we were setting out this morning, two canoes loaded with bever elk deer skins and buffalo robes, from the Mahars Nation, they informed that they left that place two months, a gentle breeze from the S. E. We camped on an ISD in the mouth of Gasconade R. This river is 157 yards wide, a beautiful stream of clear water. 19 foot deep hills on the lower side. Clark, May 27. 1804. May 27 Sunday, 1804 As we were pushing off this morning two canoes loaded with fur and came to from the Mahars Nation, which place they had left two months, at about ten o'clock four cajot or rafts loaded with furs and peltres came to one from the Pawnees, the other from Grand Osage, they informed nothing of consequence. Passed a creek on the LBD side called Ash Creek twenty yards wide, past the upper point of a large island on the STBD side back of which comes in three creeks one called Ortair Creek. Her the men we left hunting came and we camped on a willow island in the mouth of Gasconade River. George Shannon killed a deer this evening. Clark, May 28, 
1804. Monday May 28 rained hard all the last night some wind from the SW, one deer killed today, one man fell in with six Indians hunting, onload the pierogi. And found several articles wet, some tobacco spoiled. River begin to rise. Clark, May 28, 1804. May 28 Monday 1804 Gasconade rained hard all last night some thunder and lightning hard wind in the forepart of the night from the SW. Reuben Fields killed a deer several hunter out today I measured the river found the Gasconade to be 157 yards wide and 19 foot deep the course of this are is south 29 degrees west, one of the hunters fell in with six inns. Hunting Onload the large pierogi on board of which was eight French hands found many things wet by their surlessness, put all the articles which was wet out to dry, this day so cloudy that no observations could be taken, the river begin to rise. Examine the men's arms and equipage, all in order. Clark, May 29, 1804. Tuesday May 29 sent out hunters, got a morning obs and one at twelve o'clock, rained last night, the river rises fast the musketers are very bad. Load the pyrogue. Clark, May 29, 1804. May 29, 1804 set out from the mouth of the Gasconade, where we took up seven and left a pierogi for a man lost in the woods, course N, 54W2M to a point LB, side. Past the ISD. On which we camped, river still rised, Water very mud day and 78 degrees west 2 mizz to a point. On LB side past two willow islands first smaller and a creek on LBD called Deer Creek 1 opposite the point Saint side and encamped on the LB side rain all night the tents together along the N. 76 W 25 poles S 26 W to the point above, south 19 degrees to the pot below the river. Clark, May 29, 1804. May 29th Tuesday rained last night. Cloudy morning four hunters sent out with orders to return at 12 o'clock took equal altitudes of sun's lower limb found at 105 degrees 31 minutes 45 seconds. Cap Lewis observed meridian altitude of sun u l back observation with the octant and artificial horizon, gave for altitude on the limb 38 degrees 44 minutes 0 seconds sun octant error 200 plus. Had the pirogues loaded and all prepared to set out at four o'clock after finishing the observations and all things necessary found that one of the hunters had not returned. We determined to proceed on and leave one pierogi to WATE for him, accordingly at half past four we set out and came on four miles and camped on the LBD side above a small creek called Deer Creek. Soon after we came to we heard several guns fire down the river, we answered them by a discharge of a swivel on the bow. Clark, May 30, 1804. May 30, Wednesday, set out at 7 o'clock after a heavy rain, rained all last night. A little after dark last night several guns were heard below, I expect the French men firing for White House who was lost in the woods. Clark, May 30, 1804. May 30, Wednesday, 1804 rained all last night set out at 6 o'clock after a heavy shower, and proceeded on, past a large island a creek opposite on the ST. Side just above a cave called Monbrun Tavern and River, past a creek on the LBD. Side call Rush Creek at four miles several showers of rain the current very swift river rising fast past Big Myri River at eleven miles on the starboard side, at the lower point of a island, this river is about fifty yards wide. Camped at the mouth of a creek on LBD SD of ABT 25 yards. Wide called Grindstone Creek, opposite the head of a ISD. And the mouth of Little Myrie River on the Saint side, a heavy wind accompanied with rain and hail we made 14 miles today, the river continue to rise, the county on each side appear full of water. Clark, May 31, 1804. May 31 Thursday, 1804 rained the greater part of last night, the wind from the west raised and blew with great force until 5 o'clock p.m. Which obliged us to lay by a cajot of bare skins and pelteries came down from the Grand Osarge, one French man one Indian, and a squar, they had letters from the man Mr. 
Choto sent to that part of the Osarge nation settled on Arkansa River mentioning that his letter was committed to the flames, the inns. Not believing that the Americans had possession of the Count Ray they disregarded St. Louis and their supplies and several rats of considerable size was caught in the woods today, Captain Lewis went out to the woods and found many curious plants and shrubs, one deer killed this evening. Clark, June 1, 1804. June 1 Friday, 1804 set out early. The same course south 48 degrees west of Wednesday continued. For milliseconds past the mouth of Little Myrie on the STB and High Rich Land on the LB side, S, 45 degrees west to an island opposite a hill on the S, SD, 6 Ms. This ISD is on the LBD past the MO of Bear Creek 25 yards wide at 2 milliseconds, and 3 small ISD. Some swift water and banks falling in, wind ahead from the west, south 39 degrees west 3 milliseconds, to the point. Above the mouth of Osage River Larb side, camped fell a number of trees in the point to take observation a fair afternoon, sit up until 1 o'clock to take some observations and Clark, June 1, 1804 June 1, 1804 Friday set out early a fair morning past the mouth Bear Creek 25 yards. Wide at 6 miles, several small islands in the river the wind ahead from the west the current exceedingly rapid came to on the point of the Osarges River on the labbed side of Missouri's this Osages River very high. Felled all the trees in the point to make observations sit up until 12 o'clock taken observation this night. Clark, June 2, 1804. June 2, took the dirts. Of sun and moon and canned. I measured the Osage and Missouris at this place made their width as follows, the Missour 875 yards wide the Osage are 397 yards wide, the distance between the two rivers 80 poles up is 40 p.s. Took equal altitudes and meridian altitude also and made them underscore 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 I ascended the hill in the point 80 p.s. from the PD found at about 100 foot high, on the top is two graves, or mounds, a delightful prospect from this hill which comes. Both rivers. Druyer and Shields came to the opposite side today at sunset we sent across and brought them over, they had been absent seven days swam many creeks, much worsted. They informed us that the Count Ray on both sides of muddy rivers to the hill called by the French underscore 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 three milliseconds, below this place, a small prairies below the hill, for deer killed today I ascend a hill and. After measuring the river and. 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 Clark, June 2, 1804. June 2nd Saturday Cap Lewis took the time and distance of suns and moons nearest limbs, the sun east, and meridian altitude of suns U, L, with octant, back observation gave for altitude 37 degrees 28 inch 00. Error of octant 2 degrees 0 minutes 0 seconds plus. Made several other observations, I made an angle for the width of the two rivers. The Missouri from the point to the N side is 875 yards wide the Osage River from the point to the S. E side is 397 yards wide, the distance between the two rivers at the point. Of high land, Iowa foot above the bottom, and 80 poles up the Missouri's from the point is 40 poles, on the top of this high land under which is a limestone rock two mounds or graves are raised, from this point. Which calms both rivers I had a delightful, Prospect of the Missouri's up and down, also the Osage are up. George Druyer and John Shields who we had sent with the horses by land on the end side joined us this evening much worsted, they being absent seven days depending on their gun, the greater part of the time rain. They were obliged to raft or swim many creeks, those men gave a flattering account of the Count Ray commencing below the first hill on the end side and extend Perillo with the river for thirty or forty ms. The two Mud Day River passing through and some fine springs and streams our hunters kill several deer today, some small licks on the S.E. of the Osage River. Clark, June 3, 1804. June Sunday 3, 1804 The fore part of the day fair I attempted to take equal altitudes, and M altitudes, but was disappointed, the clouds obscured the sun, took the D. Of sun and moon Captain Lewis and George Druyer went out and killed a deer, 
We set out at 5 o'clock p.m. cloudy and rain, west 5 Miz to the MO of Murrow Creek LBSD, the PD Saint side keeping along the LBD side 1 Miz, past the mouth of a creek on LBD side 3 milliseconds. I call covered, creek, mouths behind a rock which projects into the river, camped in the mouth of the creek aforesaid, at the mouth of this creek I saw much fresh signs of Indians, having crossed two deer killed today. I have a very sore throat, and am tormented with musketers and small ticks. Clark, June 3, 1804. June 3, Sunday, 1804 The forepart of the day fair took meridional altitude of Suns UL with the octant and glass horizon adjusted back observation. The instrument gave 38 degrees 2 minutes 0 seconds, it was cloudy and the sun's disk much obscured, and cannot be depended on. We made other observations in the evening after the return of Captain Lewis from a walk of 3 or 4 ms, round, we set out at 5 o'clock p.m. Proceeded on 5 miles to the mouth of a creek on the L.S. 20 yards wide called Muro, past a creek at 3 milliseconds, which I call Covered Creek as it mouths above a rock of that appearance. Several deer killed today at the mouth of the Muro Creek I saw much sign of war parties of inns. Having crossed from the mouth of this creek. I have a bad cold with a sore throat. Near west five miles. Clark, June 4, 1804. June 4, 1804 Monday, a fair day sent out three hunters, our mast broke by the boat running under a tree past an islands on STBD side on which grow cedar a creek at underscore 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 miles on the starved SD. Course N, 30 degrees west for milliseconds, to PT on Saint side below 2 DISD. Past a creek on LBD side 15 yards wide, I call Nightingale Creek. This bird sang all last night and is the first of the kind I ever heard, below this creek and the last past a small ISD on the STBD, N 25W, 3 milliseconds, to a PT on St. SD past a SM, ISD. On St. SD. And Cedar Creek on the same side 20 yards wide past a creek on LBD SD, 20 yards wide, I call Mast Creek, this is a short creek, fine land above and below the mouth. Gentle rise of about 50 foot, delightful timber of oak ash walnut hickory and k. And k. Wind from NW by W N 58 degrees west, 71 halves millisecond past a creek called Zonker on the LBD side, N 75 W 3 me. To a point, S S D called Batu a de charm, a plain on the hill opposite. I got out and walked on the LSD. Through a charming bottom of rich land about one mile then I ascended a hill of about 170 foot on the top of which is a mound and about 100 acres of land of dead timber on this hill one of the party says he has found lead or a very extensive cave under this hill next the river. The land on the top is fine, this is a very bad part of the river seven deer killed today by our hunters, one of the horses is snagged, the other lost his shows today the bottom on the ST. Side today is covered with rushes, not very good underscore 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 the high land comes to the bank on the labbed side in good 2D rate land. Clark, June 4, 1804. June 4th Monday, 1804 a fair day three men out on the right flank past a large island on the Saint side called Cedar Island, this ISD. Has a great deal of cedar on it, past a small creek at 1 millisecond, 15 yards. Wide which we named Nightingale Creek from a bird of that description which sang for us all last night, and is the first of the kind I ever heard. Past the mouth of Cedar Creek at 7 milliseconds, on the S.S., about 20 yards wide above some small ists. Past a creek on the L.S., about 15 yards wide. Mast Creek, here the served. At the helm run under a bending tree and broke the mast, some delightful, land, with a gentle ascent about the creek, well-timbered, oak, ash, walnut and k. And k. Past, wind and w. By w, past a small creek called Zon can see on the l, s, at this last point I got out and walked on the l, s, d. 
threw a rush bottom for one miles and a short distance through nettles as high as my breast ass ended a hill of about 170 foot to a place where the French report that lead ore has been found, I saw no mineral of that description. Captain Lewis camped immediately under this hill, to WATE which gave me some time to examine the hill. On the top is a mound of about 6 foot high and about 100 acres of land which the large timber is dead in deck ending about 50 foot of projecting limestone rock under which is a cave at one place in this projecting rocks I went on one which spewed up and hung over the water from the top of this rock I had a prospect of the river for 20 or 30 milliseconds. Up, from the cave which incomposed the hill I deck ended by a steep descent to the foot, a very bad part of the river opposite this hill, the river continued to fall slowly. Our hunters killed seven deer today the land our hunters passed through today on the S. S was very fine the latter part of today. The high land on the S. S. Is about 2 D rate. Clark, June 5, 1804. June 5, Tuesday, jerked the venison killed yesterday, after setting over the scouting party or hunter of three men set out at six, a clock course north 57 degrees west to a PT on S, SD 5 milliseconds past a creek on L, SD. I call lead C of 15 yards past one on the S, called lit. Good woman's creek about 20 yards wide past a willow ISD. A beautiful prairie approaching near the river above lead sea and extends to the mine river in a westerly direction, past the mouth of the creek of the big rock 15 yards wide at 4 milliseconds on the LBDSD. At 11 o'clock brought a casey in which was two men, from 80 league up the Cancias River, where they wintered and caught a great quantity of beaver but unfortunately lost it by the burning of the plains. The Kansas nation hunted on the Missouri last winter and are now pursuing the buffalo in the plains, past a projecting rock called the Manitou a painting from this devil to the point. On the LBD side north 23 degrees west 71 halves miss the same course 21 halves miss Creek CLD Manitou passed on the LBD side about 40 yards wide, a sandbar in the middle of the river passed up between the sand and L shore one mile to a small creek 10 yards. Wide I call sand C. We run on the sand and was obliged to return to the starved side, I am very unwell with a slight fever from a bad cold caught three days ago at the Grand Soar, past a small willow ISD. On S. Side, a large one in the middle of the river, York swam to the ISD. To pick greens, and swam back with his greens, the boat drew too much water to cross the quick sands which intervened, she draws four foot water. A fair wind our mast being broke by accidents provent are taking the advantage of it past the lower point of a large island, opposite the current Devida between four small ists on the Saint side. We found the water excessively hard for twelve miles as we were obliged to pass up the center of the current between two of the ists and round the heads of the other two the current setting immediately against the points which was choked up with drift for a mile, above those ISD. On the Saint side we camped altogether our hunter or spies discovered the sign of a war party of ABT. Ten men. Clark, June 5, 1804. June 5, Tuesday, 1804 After jerking the meat killed yesterday and crossing the hunting party we set out at six o'clock, from the last course and distance, north 51 degrees west, 5 milliseconds, to a PT on the Saint SD. Past a small creek on the Lord S. I call lead C past a creek on the S S of 20 yards wide called. Lit. Good woman C on the L S a prairie extends from lead C parallel with the river to mine river, at 4 milliseconds. Past the creek of the big rock about 15 yards wide on the L, SD, at 11 o'clock brought to a small cassis in which was two French men, from 80 leagues up the Cancias R. Where they wintered, and caught a great quantity of beaver, the greater part of which they lost by fire from the prairies, those men informed that the Kansas nation are now out in the plains hunting buffalo. They hunted last winter on this river past a projecting rock on which was painted a fig and a creek at two milliseconds. Above called Little Manitou Creek from the painted rock this creek 20 yards wide on the L, S, D, past a small creek on L, S, opposite a very bad sandbar of several M, S. In extent, 
which we named Sand See Here my servant York swam to the sandbar to hay other greens for our dinner and returned with a sufficient quantity wild creases or tin grass, we passed up for two milliseconds on the L.S. of this sand and was obliged to return, the watcher. Uncertain the quick sand moving we had a fine wind, but could not make use of it, our mast being broke, we passed between two small islands in the middle of the current, and round the head of three a rapid current for one mile and camped on the S. S. Opst. A large island in the middle of the river, one pierogi did not get up for two hours, our scout discovered. The fresh sign of about ten inns. I expect that those Indians are on their way to war against the Osages nation probably they are the Sakis. Clark, June 6, 1804. Wednesday, the 6th of June, 1804. Mended our mast this morning and set out at 7 o'clock, under a gentle braise from the S, E by S north 28 degrees west 31 halves miles to a hill on St. S. D, past the N. Beige of the island called Split Rock Island, the river rose last night afoot the Count Ray about this I. S. D. Is delightful large rush bottom of rushes below on the St. side north 49 degrees west, 11 halves miz to the mouth of split rock river underscore 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 yards. Wide on the starboard side opod. The PT of a ISD. Passed a place in the projecting rock called the hole through the rock, a round cave passed through the PT of rocks west 11 halves millisecond, to a PT on STD, SD, opposite a cliff of rocks ABT 200 foot and 31 degrees west. Four milliseconds one half to a PT on L side past Saline Creek on the L side a large salt lick and spring nine me. Up the creek, one bushel of water will make seven pounds of good salt. Information, took meridian altitude of Sun Lim. 37 degrees 6 minutes 0 seconds equat to underscore 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 of latitude. On this creek, so great a know of salt springs are on it that the water is brackish north 51 degrees west to a belgy of an ISD on the S, SD, at 3 milliseconds past a willow ISD. In middle, some wind in the after part of today from the SE, the banks are falling in greatly in this part of the river, as also is one side or the other in all the course, we ascended on the north side of the ISD. And finding that the pirogues could not keep up camped 2 HS. By Sunday on the SDSD the land below this is good. Clark, June 6, 1804. June 6, Wednesday, 1804 mended our mast this morning and, set out at 7 o'clock under a gentle breeze from S.E. By S past the large island, and a creek called Split Rock Creek at 5 milliseconds on the S.S.P.S.D. A place to the rock from which 20 yards we. This creek takes its name, a projecting rock with a hole through a point of the rock, at 8 milliseconds. Past the mouth of a creek called Saline or Saltar on the L, SD, this river is about 30 yards wide, and has so many licks and salt springs on its banks that the water of the creek is brackish, one very large lick is 9 milliseconds. Up on the left side the water of the spring in this lick is strong as one bushel of the water is said to make 7 pounds, of good salt past a large ISD. And several small ones, the water excessively strong, so much so that we camped sooner than the usual time to wait for the pirogue, the banks are falling in very much today river rose last night afoot. Captain Lewis took Meridine Alt. Of Sun's U, L. With the octant above split rock C, and made the altitude 37 degrees 6 minutes 00, zero error of oct. As usual 2 degrees 0 minutes 0 seconds plus the count ray for several miles below is good, on the top of the high land back is also tolerable land some buffalo sign today. I am still very unwell with a sore throat and headache. Clark, June 7. 1804. Thursday 7 of June, 1804 set out early past the head of the ISD from the ISD. N, 61 degrees west to the mouth of a creek called Big Monitu on St. S.D., 41 halves millisecond, P.S.D. A sandbar in the river, some buffalo sign sent out George Druyer and Newman to hunt Captain Lewis and six men went to a lick up this creek on the right side over 2 M.E.S. 
and two other not far above the water runs out of the bank and not very strong. 3 to 500 g for a bushel. South 88 degrees west, 2 miles to a PT on LBD, side, high bluff on the STBD, side, Monitor Creek is 30 yards. Wide at the mouth, past a painted part of a projecting rock we found there a den of rattlesnakes, killed three proceeded on past, south 81 degrees west for milliseconds, to apartment on est side past an island in the middle of the river, s 87 degrees west, to a PT of high land on the L. S. Pass G over the middle of a willow island, MS. 31 halves proceed on one half a mile on this course a camped at the mouth of Good Woman's River on the S. S. about 35 yards wide, and navigable Psalm D. Our hunters brought in three bear this evening and inft. That the count ray between this R and the monitor R is rich and well watered, Captain. Lewis went out an hour this evening. Clark, June 7, 1804. June 7 Thursday, 1804 set out early past the head of the island opposite which we camped last night, and brackfast at the mouth of a large creek on the S.S. of 30 yards wide called Big Monitor, from the PT of the ISD. Or course of last night to the mouth of this creek is north 61 degrees west 41 halves ms. A short distance above the mouth of this creek, is several curious paintings and carving in the projecting rock of limestone inlaid with white red and blue flint, of a very good quality, the Indians have taken of this flint great quantities. We landed at this inscription and found it a den of rattlesnakes, we had not landed three minutes before three very large snakes wer observed on the crevices of the rocks and killed, at the mouth of the last mentioned creek captain. Lewis took four or five men and went to some licks or springs of salt water from two to four miles up the creek on RT side the water of those springs are not strong, say from four to six hundred gs. Of water for a bushel of salt past some small willow islands and camped at the mouth of a small river called Good Woman's River this river is about thirty-five yards wide and said to be navigable for pirogue several leagues captain. Lewis with two men went up the creek a short distance. Our hunters brought in three bear this evening, and informs that the count ray through which they passed from the last creek is fine rich land, and well watered. Clark, June 8, 1804. June 8 Friday set out at daylight proceeded on the course of last night south 87 degrees west 3 milliseconds past a willow island, from the point of last course south 81 degrees west 3 milliseconds to a PT on S, S, past A underscore 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 ISD. In the middle of the river, past a run on the LDS, above a PT of rocks 3 milliseconds, on which there is a number of deer licks, north 88 degrees west 3 mis to a point LS and 83 degrees west 2 milliseconds, to the MO of Mine River, PSD and ISD. This river is 90 yards wide and navigable for pirogues about 90 mis I went out on the LS, about 4 milliseconds, below this R. And found the Count Ray for one mile back good land and well watered the hills not high with a gentle ascent from the river, well timbered with oak, walnut hickory ash, and The land still further back becomes thin and open, with black and rasp berries, and still further back the plains commence, the French informed that lead ore is found on this river in several places. It heads up between the Osages and Kansas River the right-hand folk passes in a short distance of the Missouri at the Antiant Little Osage villages our hunter killed, two deer, after staying one hour at the mouth of this river. Cap Lewis went out and proceeded on one mile and came in, he found the land in the point high and fine course end. 64 degrees west 1 mis to a PT on S, S, N, 80 degrees west to the lower Pata ID on L, S, past a small ISD. In the M, R, at, 3 mis, met three men on a Kasi from Ardissu, above the Mahar nation loaded with fur. Camped on the lower point of an ID L, S. Called the mills, here I found kegs and pummy stone, and a place that fur or skins had been bud by the hunters our hunters killed five deer, some rain, the count ray on the S. S. Is very fine. Clark, June 8, 1804. 8th of June, Friday 1804 set out this morning at daylight proceeding on the course of last night past two willow islands and a small creek above a rock point on the L. S. 
At 6 miles on which there is a number of deer licks, past the Mine River at 9 milliseconds, this river is about 70 yards wide at its mouth and is said to be navigable for pirogues 80 or 90 milliseconds. The main branch passes near the place where the Little Osage village formerly stood on the Missouris, and heads between the Osage and Kansias rivers, the left-hand fork head with nearer branches of the Osage River. The French inform that lead or has been found in different parts of this river, I took SJT. Floyd and went out four mis below this river, I found the land very good for a mile or eleven halves ms. Back and sufficiently watered with small streams which lost themselves in the Missouri's bottom, the land rose gradually from the river to the summit of the high count ray which is not more than 120 foot above high water mark. We joined the boat and dined in the point above the mouth of this river, Captain. Lewis went out above the river and proceeded on one mile, finding the count ray rich, the weeds and vines so thick and high he came to the boat, proceeded on past an island and camped at the lower point of an island on the L.S. Called the Island of Mills about four milliseconds. Above Mine River at this place I found canteens, AXS, Pumi Stone and Pelt Ray hid and buried, I suppose by some hunters, none of them, except the Pumi Stone, was Teched by one of our party, our hunters killed five deer today. Commenced raining soon after we came to which prevented the party cooking their provisions, our spies informed that the count ray they passed through on S. S is a fine high bottom, no water. This day we met three men on a cajo from the river of the Sioux above the Mahar nation those men had been hunting twelve mo and made about nine hundred dollars in pelts. And furs they were out of proof zions and out of powder. Rain this night. Clark, June 9th. 1804. 9th of June Saturday set out early, water very swift got fast on a log, detained us a quarter hour hard rain last night. North 39 degrees west 31 halves miz to a pt on the s-s. Opposite the commencement of the first prairie, called Prairie of the Arrows, won the river at this place about 300 yards wide past a small creek, Arrow Creek 8 yards wide l-sd, the current exceedingly strong. North 34 degrees east 2 milliseconds. To the belt of a small island situated on the L, SD, past the MO of Arrow Creek north 83 degrees west 11 halves ms, to a point on L, S, opposite Black Bird C small past the head of the ISD. And a small willow one to the L, S, O, S Merton. Alft. Back Obson. 37 0 feet 0 inches, N. 39 degrees west 2 mis to a pt of high land on the L, side opst. A pt on St. S, river about 350 yards wide at this pt a wind from the S at 4 o'clock, Hanson Sutton, on the high pt a prairie and small lake below north 32 degrees east 31 halves mis to a pt on L, S, past an isled. In the mid R, in passing up on the S, S, opst. The ISD. The stern of the boat struck a log which was not perceivable the Kurt. Struck her bow and turned the boat against some drift and snags which below with great force. This was a disagreeable and dangerous situation, particularly as immense large trees were drifting down and we lay immediately in their course, some of our men being prepared for all situations leaped into the water swam ashore with a rope. And fixed themselves in such situations, that the boat was off in a few minutes, I can say with confidence that our party is not inferior to any that was ever on the waters of the Mississippi we crossed to the island and camped. Our hunters lay on the S. S. The wind from the S. W. The river continued to rise slowly current excessive rapid, the count ray on the S. S. High bottom and doubtful land that on the L. S. Is upland or hills of from 50 to 100 foot higher than the bottom and a thinly wooded, count ray, lands tolerably good, commenced raining at five o'clock and continued by intervales the greater part of the night. We discovered that one of our French hands had a cont. We comms doctoring, I hope the success in this case, usual to. Clark, June 9, 1804. 9th of June, 1804 Saturday a fair morning. The river rise a little we got fast on a snag soon after we set out which detained us a short time past the upper point of the island several small chanels running out of the river below a bluff and prairie, called the Prairie of Arrows, 
where the river is confined within the width of 300 yards. Past a creek of eight yards wide called Creek of Arrows, this creek is short and heads in the prairies on the L.S., past a small creek called Blackbird Creek S.S. and one islands below and a prairie above on the L.S. A small lake above the prairie, opposite the lower point of the 2D. Island on the S.S., we had like to have stove our boat, in going round a snag her stern struck a log under water and she swung round on the snag, with her broad side to the current exped. To the drifting timber, by the active exertions of our party we got her off in a few minutes. Without injury and crossed to the island where we camped. Our hunters lay on the S.S. The pierogi crossed without seeing them and the banks too uncertain to send her over, some wind from the S accompanied with rain this evening, the lands on the S.S. is a high rich bottom the L.S. Appears oven and of a good quality ruining gradually to from 50 to 100 foot. Clark, June 10, 1804. June 10, Sunday, 1804. Some rain last night. We set out early, saw a number of goslings this morning, continued on the course of last night, thence n, 80, 21 halves millisecond to a pt on the L.S. Past a part of the river that the banks are falling and taking with them large trees of cotton woods, which is the common growth in the bottom subject to the flood north one me along the L side n. 40 degrees west, 1 millisecond along the L, S. Opposite the two Charltons, on the N, side, those rivers mouth together, the first 40 yards wide the next 90 yards wide and navigable some distance in the count ray, the land below is high and not very good. Came to and took MDNL, Alt. Of Sons U, L. Back Obson. With the octant made it 37 degrees 12 minutes 0 seconds, delayed 11 halves hour. N, 70 degrees west, one half of a me. Along the L, S, D dot, south 60 degrees west, one half m on L, S, the same course to the P, T, S, S, 11 halves m S. We halted and Captain Lewis killed a buck the current is excessively swift about this place N, 80 degrees west, 3 milliseconds to a P, T on S, S, past the I, S, D. Called Shiiko Island wind from the N, W, camped in a prairie on the L, S, Captain Lewis and myself walked out three milliseconds. Found the country rolling open and rich, with plenty of water, great QTS of deer I discovered a plum which grows on bushes the height of Hassel, those plums are in great numbers, the bushes beer very full. About double the cis of the wild plum called the Osage plum and am told they are finely flavored. Clark, June 10, 1804. 10th of June, 1804 A hard rain last night, we set out this morning very early past some bad places in the river saw a number of goslings morning pass near a bank which was falling in at the time we passed. Past the two river of Charlton's which mouth together, above some high land which has a great quantity of stone calculated for Weston's the first of those rivers is about 30 yards. Wide and the other is 70 yards WD and heads close to the R. Des Moines the Iways nation have a village on the head of these river they run through an even count ray and is navigable for pirogues Cap Lewis took Medden. Alft. Of Sun U. L with Octant, back Obson. Made it 37 degrees 12 minutes 0 seconds, delayed 11 halves hours. Captain Lewis killed a large buck, passed a large ISD. Called Sheko and camped in a prairie on the L. S. I walked out three miles, found the prairie composed of good land and plenty of water rolling and interspersed with points of timbered land, those prairies are not like those, or a number of those e. Of the Mississippi void of everything except grass, they abound with hazel grapes and a wild plum of a superior quality. Called the Osage's plum grows on a bush the height of a hazel and hang in great quantities on the bushes I saw great numbers of deer in the prairies, the evening is cloudy, our party in high spirits. Clark, June 11, 1804. June 11, Monday, as the wind blew all this day from the N, W. Which was immediately ahead we could not stir, but took the advantage of the delay and dried our wet articles examined provisions and cleaned arms, my cold is yet very bad, the river beginning to fall our hunters killed two deer. G. Drury killed two bear in the prairie today, men very lively dancing and singing and. Clark, June 11, 1804. 
June 11, 1804 Monday The N.W. wind blew hard and cold as this wind was immediately ahead, we could not proceed we took the advantage of this delay and dried our wet articles examined provisions and and the river beginning to fall the hunters killed two deer g drewyer killed two bear in the prairie they were not fat we had the meat jerked and also the venison which is a constant practice to have all the fresh meat not used dried in this way clark june 12 1804 12th of june tuesday we set out early passed through a very bad bend and 25 degrees west 31 halves to apartment l s n 70 degrees west, 21 halves millisecond to apartment on S, S, past a sand bar and 60 degrees west, 31 halves ms to a PT on S, S, past plum. C at one half a me. On L, S, and halted to dine, and two Cossies came down from the Sioux Nation, we found in the party an old man who had been with the Sioux twenty years and had great influence with them, we proveled. On this old man, Mr. Durior to return with us, with a view to get some of the Sioux chiefs to go to the U.S. purchased three hundred pounds, of Voyager's grease at five dollar HD made some exchanges and purchases of moccasins and found it late and concluded to encamp. Those people inform that no Indians are on the river, the count ray on each side of the river is good. Clark, June 12, 1804. Twelfth of June, Tuesday 1804 set out early past some bad places, and a small creek on the L. S. called Plum Creek at about one me. At one o'clock we brought two two chassis one loaded with furs and pelteries, the other with grease buffalo grease and tallow we purchased three hundred pounds, of grease, and finding that old mister. Durian was of the party we questioned him until it was too late to go further and concluded to camp for the night. Those people inform nothing of much information concluded to take old Durian back as fur as the Sioux Nation with a view to get some of their chiefs to visit the Prest. Of the United S. This man being a very confidential friend of those people, he having resided with the nation twenty odd years, and to accompany them on. Clark, June 13, 1804. June 13 Wednesday we set out early past a very round bend to L. S. Past two creeks one me. Apartment called Creeks of the Round Bend, between those creeks STBDS, is a beautiful prairie, in which the Antiant Misari Indians had a village, at this place three hundred of them were killed by the Sawkees, a fair day. Past the Antiant Missouri's villages on right course north forty degrees west twenty one halves PTLS, south twenty nine degrees west three milliseconds, PTSS, this nation once the most numerous is now almost extinct about thirty of them, living with autos on the R. Platt, the remainder all destroyed, took alt. Of S, U, L with Q, D, T. Which gave N 28 W, 11 halves millisecond to a P, T, S, S. Past some charming land, I have not seen any high hills above Charlatan and the hits below for several days cannot to termed hills but high land, not exceeding 100 above the high water mark north 30 degrees west, to a PDLS 2 milliseconds. Past a very bad sandbar, where the boat was nearly turning and fastening in the quick sand and came to in the mouth of Grand RSS. This river is about 120 yards wide and navigable for pirogues a great distance, it heads with the river Des Moines, passing the river Carlton. A beautiful open prairie comes to the river below its mouth, we landed and walked to the hills which is ABT. One half a mile. The lower prairie overflows. The hunters killed. A bear and deer, this is a beautiful place the prairie rich and extensive, took some lunar observations which kept Cap L and myself up until half past eleven o'clock. Clark, June 13, 1804. June 13, Wednesday, 1804 we set out early past a round bend to the S. S. And two creeks called the Round Bend Creeks between those two creeks and behind a small willow island in the bend is a prairie in which the Missouri's Indians once lived and the spot where three hundred of them fell a sacrifice to the fury of the Sawkees this. Nation, Missouri's, once the most numerous nation in this part of the continent now reduced to about eighty FES. And that few under the protection of the autos on our plat who themselves are declining past some willow ists. And bad sand bars, took Medden. 
altitude with Ochtenbach observation it gave for alt. On its low L 36 degrees 58 minutes 0 seconds the EN stream in 2 degrees 0 minutes 0 seconds plus. The hills or high land for several days past or above the two Charltons does not exceed 100 foot past a bateau or sand rolling ere the boat was nearly turning over by her striking and turning on the sand. We came to in the mouth of Grand River on SS and camped for the night, this river is from 80 to 100 yards wide at its mouth and navigable for pirogues a great distance this river heads with the R. Des Moines below its mouth is a beautiful plain of Tom land the hills rise at one half a mile back. The lands about this place is either plain or overflown bottom Captain Lewis and myself walked to the hill from the top of which we had a beautiful prospect of surrounding Count Ray in the open prairie we caught a raccoon. Our hunters brought in a bear and deer we took some lunar observation this evening. Clark, June 14, 1804. June 14, Thursday we set out at 6 o'clock after a thick fog proceeded on very well s, 33 w 2 mis to the lower point of an isle. S, 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 60 degrees west, through a narrow one me channel to a small prairie s, s, opposite this isd. On l. L is a beautiful high plain. From the ISD. S 70 foot W. To a PTL S 21 halves millisecond just below a peak of high land on the S south called the place of snakes, past the worst place I have seen on L S. A sand bar making out two thirds cross the river sand collecting and forming bars and bars washed away, the boat struck and turned. She was near oversetting we saved her by some extra dainty exertions of our party, ever ready to encounter any fatigue for the pre-motion of the enterprise, I went out to walk on the sand beach. And killed a deer and tiki during the time I was from the boat a Kasi came to from the Pania nation loaded with furs we gave them some whiskey and tobacco and settled some disputes and parted s. 5 e 3 milliseconds, to pt on s s, past a creek s s, 25 yards, WD called Snake Creek or underscore 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 passed a bad sand bar SS in passing which we were obliged to run great sesk of losing both boat and men, camped above, G. Drew your telephones of a remarkable snake inhabiting a small lake five milliseconds, below which gobbles like a turkey and may be heard several miles, this snake is of size. Clark, June 14, 1804. 14th, June Thursday we set out at 6 o'clock, after a thick fog passed through a narrow pass on the S, S, which forms a large ISD. Opposite the upper point of this island on the L, S. Is one of the worst quick or moving sandbars which I have seen notwithstanding all our precautions to clear the sands and pass between them, which was the way we were compound, to pass from the immense current and falling banks on the S, S. The boat struck the point of one from the active exertions of the men, prevented her turning, if she had turned she must have overset. We met a Kasu from the Pania on the river Platte, we detained two hours with a view of engaging one of the hands to go to the Pania nation with a view to get those people to meet us on the river. I went out, shot a deer, we passed a highland and clay bluff on the S.S., called the Snake Bluff from the number of snakes about this place, we passed a creek above the bluff about eighteen yards. Wide, this creek is called Snake Creek, a bad sand bar just below which we found difficulty in passing and camped above, our hunters came in. George Druyer, gives the following act. Of a pond, and at about five miles below the S.S. Past a small lake in which there was many deer feeding he heard in this pond a snake making gobbling noises like a turkey. He fired his gun and the noise was increased, he has heard the Indians mention this species of snake one Frenchman give a similar account. Clark, June 15, 1804. June 15 Friday 1804, we set out early proceeded on about one me. And the boat turned on a sawyer which was near doing her great damage, the river is rising fast and the water exceedingly swift, passed. A bad sand bar on which we stuck for a short time this is said to be the worst part of the river and camped opst. The bend in which the Antient villages of the Little Osarge and Missouris, the lower or first of those villages, L. Osages, is situated in beautiful plain at the foot of some rising land, 
in front of their villages next the river is a beautiful bottom plain in which they raised their corn and back of the village the high prairie extends back to the Osage River, about 3 ms. Above and in view the Missouri's nation resided under the protection of the Osages, after their nation was reduced by the Sakis below, thus built their village in the same low prairie and lived there many years. The war was so hot and both nations become so reduced that the little Osage and a few of the Misawars moved and built a village five milliseconds near the Grand Osage, the rest of the Misawars went and took protection under the Ottos on Platte River. Clark. June 15, 1804. 15th, June, Friday 1804 set out early and had not proceeded far ere we wheeled on a sawyer which was near injuring us very much, past a plain on the L. S. A small ISD. In the middle the river rising, water very swift past a creek on the L. S. Passed between two islands, a very bad place, moving sands, we were nearly being swallowed up by the rolling sands over which the current was so strong that we could not stem it with our sails under a stiff breeze in addition to our oars. We were compelled to pass under a bank which was falling in, and use the tow rope occasionally, continued up past two other small islands and camped on the S. S., nearly opposite the anti-ant village of the Little Osarges and below the ant. Village of the Misawars both situations in view and within three ms. Of each other, the Osage were settled at the foot a hill in a beautiful plain which extends back quite to the Osage River, in front of the Vilg. Next to the river is an elgent bottom plain which extends several miles in length on the river in this low prairie the Missouris lived after they were reduced by the Sakis at their town some dists. Below. The little Osage finding themselves much oppressed by the Sakis and other nations, left this place and built a village five milliseconds from the Grand Osage town about underscore 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 years ago. A few of the Misawars accompanied them, the remainder of that nation went to the Ottos on the River Platte. The river at this place is about one millisecond. Wide our hunters did not come in this evening the river beginning to fall. Clark, June 16, 1804 June 16 Saturday set out at 7 o'clock proceed on N, 68 degrees west. 21 halves millisecond pass to ISD. Close on the SS. At the lower point Drewer and Willard had camped and had with them two bear and two deer we took in the meat and proceeded on. Some rain this morning west two mis pass an ISD on SS and Prairie, to a Belgi of Snag ISD. L.S. A beautiful extensive prairie on S.S. Hills to about 9 milliseconds, distant. Mr. Mackey has laid down the rems. Of an old fort in this prairie, which I cannot find as 85W1 me. Along the ISD. L.S. Dot, south 61 degrees west Alg L.S. 1 me. South 30 degrees west, 3 M.S. to P.T.S.S. Opst. An ISD. And head of the last south 40 degrees west 1 me. S. S. Passed a very bad place where the sand was moving constantly, I walked on shore obst. Fine high bottom land on S. S. Camp late this evening. Clark, June 16, 1804. 16, June Saturday 1804 set out at 7 o'clock at about a mile one half we came to the camp of our hunters, they had two bear and two deer proceeded on Passa Island on the S.S. A heavy rain came on and lasted a short time, we came to on the S.S. in a prairie at the place where Mr. Mackey laid down a old French fort, I could see no traces of a settlement of any kind, in this plain I discovered a kind of grass resembling Timothy which appeared well calculated for hay. This plain is very extensive in the evening I walked on the S. S. to see if any timber was conved. To make oars, which we were much in want of. I found some in different timber and struck the river above the boat at a bad sandbar the worst I had seen which the boat must pass or drop back several miles and stem a swift current on the opposite side of an ISD. The boat however ascended the middle of the stream which was difficult dangerous we came to above this place at dark and camped in a bad place, the mosquitoes and ticks are numerous and bad. Clark, June 17, 1804. June 17, 
1804 rope walk camp the current of the river at this place is a stick will float 48 poles 6 feet in the repeatest part in 23 seconds, further out is 34, still further 65, 74, 78 and 82 are the trials we have made. Clark, June 17, 1804 June 17 Sunday, 1804 cloudy wind, S. E. set out early S. 65 degrees west 1 me. Came two to make oars, and a cord for a tow rope all this day employed in getting out oars, and making for the use of the boat out of a large cable rope which we have, G. Druyer came up a bear and two deer, also a fine horse which he found in the woods. Supposed to have been left by some war party from the Osages, the ticks are numerous and large and have been trousome all the way and the musketers are beginning to be very troublesome. My cold continues very bad the French hirelings complain for the want of provisions, saying they are accustomed to eat five and six times a day, they are roughly rebuked for their presumption, the country about abounds in bear deer and elk and the s. s. the lands are well timbered and rich for two milliseconds, to a beautiful prairie which reaches into hills at eight or nine milliseconds, back, on the l, s a prairie comes. On the bank which is high and contents back rich and well watered as far. Clark, June 17, 1804. June 17, Sunday, 1804, S. 65 degrees west. Me. S. Side, cloudy morning wind from the S. E. We set out early and proceeded on one mile and came two to make oars, and repair our cable and tow rope and. And which was necessary for the boat and pirogues, sent out S.J.T. Prior and some men to get ash timber for oars. And set some men to make a tow rope out of the cords of a cable which had been provided by Captain Lewis at Pittsburgh for the cable of the boat, George Druyer our hunter and one man came in with two deer and a bear, also a young horse. They had found in the prairie, this horse has been in the prairie a long time and is fat, I suppose he has been left by some war party against the Osage, this is a crossing place for the war parties against that nation from the Sakis, Iowas, and Suix. The party is much afflicted with boils and several have the dysentery, which I contribute to the water. The Count Ray about this place is beautiful on the river rich and well timbered on the S. S., about two miles back a prairie comes. Which is rich and interspersed with groves of timber, the county rises at seven or eight miles still further back and is rolling, on the L.S., the high lands and prairie corns. In the bank of the river and continues back, well watered and abounds in der elk and bear the ticks and musketers are very troublesome. Clark, June 18, 1804. June 18, Monday some rained last night, sent out six hunters today across the R. They killed five deer and culture a bear very fat we continue to repar our ropes and make oars all day, heavy rain all the four point. Of the day, the party drying meat and greasing themselves, several men with the dysentery, and two-thirds of them with ulcers or boils. Some with eight or ten of those turners mesketers very bad we finish our cords and oars this evening men in spirits. Clark, June 18, 1804 June 18 Monday some rain last night, and some hard showers this morning which delay our work very much. Send out six hunters in the prairie on the L.S. They kill five deer and cultra bear, which very large and fat, the party to walk at the oars, make rope, and jerk their meat all day dry our wet sails and. In the evening, the misquiter very bad. Clark, June 19, 1804 June 19 Tuesday rain last night after fixing the new oars and making all necessary arrangements, we set out under a gentle breeze from the S.E. and proceeded on past two large islands on the S.S. leaving J. Shields and one man to go by land with the horses some very hard water, past several islands and sandbars today at the head of one we were obliged to clear away driftwood to pass, past a creek on the L. side called Tabo 15 yards. Wide past a large creek at the head of an island called Tiger River on the S.S. The island below this ISD is large and called the Isle of Panthers, formed on the S.S. By a narrow channel, 
I observed on the shore goose and raspberries in abundance in passing some hard water round a point of rocks on the L.S. We were obliged to take out the rope and draw up the boat for one half a mile, we came to on the L.S. Near a lake of the circumference of several miles situated on the L.S., about two miles from the river this lake is said to abound in all kinds of fowls, great quantities of deer frequent this lake during summer season, and feed on the house and k. And k. They find on the edges the lands on the north side of the river is rich and sufficiently high to afford settlements, the LDS. On the south side ascends gradually from the river not so rich, but of a good quality and appear well watered. Clark, June 20th, 1804. June 20th. Wednesday set out after a heavy shower of rain and proceeded on the same course of last night past a large beautiful prairie on the S. S. Opposite a large island, called Saki Prairie, a gentle breeze from the S. W. Some beautiful high lands on the L. S. Past some very swift water today, I saw pelicans today on a sandbar, my servant York nearly losing an eye by a man throwing sand into it, we came to at the lower point of a small island. The party on shore we have not seen since we passed Tiger R., the land appeared very good on each side of the river today and well timbered, we took some loner observations. Which detained us until one o'clock a beautiful night but the air exceedingly damp, and the mosquitoes very troublesome. Clark, June 21. 1804. June 21 Thursday 1804 River raised three inches last night after our bowman Peter Krausat a half Mahar Indian examined round this small ISD. For the best water, we set out determined to ASSD. On the north side, and sometimes rowing pulling and drawing up with a strong rope we ascended without wheeling or receiving any damage more than breaking one of my s. windows, and loosing some oars which were swung under the windows. Two men sent out to hunt this afternoon came in with a deer, at sunset the element had every appearance of wind, the hunters inform me that the high count ray on the s s is of a good quality, and well tinned. The high lands on the L side is equally good the bottom land on this river is alike, first low and coughed. With cotton wood and willows subject to overflow the second is higher growth cotton walnut ash mulberry lin and sycamore. Clark, June 21. 1804. June 21 Thursday the river rose three inches last night after the Bozeman Peter Krausat viewed the water on each side of the island which presented a most unfavorable prospect of swift water over rolling sands which roared like an immense falls. We concluded to ascend on the right side, and with much difficulty, with the assistance of a long cord or tow rope, and the anchor we got the boat up without any further dang. Then bracketing a cabin window and losing some oars which were swung under the windows, past four is today too large and too small, behind the first large island two creeks mouth called, one, Eubert Creek and River and ISD. The upper of those creeks head against the Mine River and is large, past a very remarkable bend in the river to the S, forming an acute angle, the high lands come to the river on the S, S opposite the upper large island, this ISD is formed by a narrow chanel through. The PT of the remarkable bend just mentioned below this ISD. On the L.S. is a coenter current of about a mile, passed between several small islands situated near the L. Side and camped above on the same side, two men sent out to hunt this evening brought in a buck and a poor turkey. At sunset the atmosphere presented every appearance of wind, blue and white streaks centering at the sun as she disappeared and the clouds situated to the S, W, gilded in the most beautiful manner. The count ray and lands on each side of the river is various as usual and may be classed as follows. Viz, the low or overflown points or bottom land, of the growth of cotton and willow, the second or high bottom of rich fertile soils of the growth of cotton, walnut, som ash, hackberry, mulberry, lin and sycamore. The third or high lands rises gradually from the second bottom, caught when it comes to the river then from the river, about 80 or 100 foot rolling back supplied with water the small runs of, which loses themselves in the bottom land, and are covered with a variety of timber such as oak of different kinds blue ash. Walnut and k. And k. 
As far as the prairies, which I am informed lie back from the river at some places near and others a great distance. Clark, June 22, 1804. June 22, Friday after a violent gust of wind accompanied with rain from the west. Which commenced at daybreak, and lasted about one hour, we set out under a gentle breeze from the N.W. And proceeded on S. 14 degrees west. 21 halves ms to pt on l s or killed a goose s 25 w 3 ms to a pt on s s psd snags and swift water on the s s dot s 66 degrees west one half a me on s pt n 60 w 41 halves me to pt l s past a large isd on the s s Forentheus thermometer at 3 o'clock p.m. 87 d which is 11 d above summer heat, and one on the L. Fess. Opposite against which there is a handsome prairie of high bottom and upland, Captain Lewis went out in this prairie and walked several miles, come to opposite the mouth of a large creek on the S. Fess. Called River of the Fire Prairie at the mouth of this creek the party on shore Shields and Collins was camped waiting for our arrival and informed that they passed through some fine lands, and well watered G.D. Killed a fine bear today. Clark, June 22, 1804. June 22 Friday River rose four inches last night. I was wakened before daylight this morning by the guard preparing the boat to wreck even apparent storm which threatened violence from the west at daylight a violent wind accompanied with rain cam from the W. And lasted about one hour, it cleared away, and we set out and proceeded on under a gentle breeze from the N. W. Past some very swift water crowded with snags, past two large island opposite each other, and immediately opposite a large and extensive prairie on the lab side. This prairie is beautiful a high bottom for eleven halves a mile back and rises to the common level of the Count Ray about seventy or eighty feet and extends back out of view. Captain L. walked on shore a few miles this afternoon, at three o'clock p.m., Ferenc thermometer stood at eighty-seven degrees, equals to eleven d above summer heat, we came to on the L. Side opposite the mouth of a large creek called the River of the Fire Prairie, at the mouth of this creek the party on shore were waiting our arrival, they informed that the lands through which they passed was fine and well watered. Clark, June 23. 1804. June 23, Saturday some wind this morning from the N.W. Set out at 7 O.C. proceeded on N. 70 D. W. 2 Ms. to an I.S.D. Close on the S. S. I went on shore and walked up through a rich bottom for about six miles, killed a deer and much fatigued N. 75 E to a point in a bend L. Fess. Eleven halves the river fell eight inches last night. Clark, June 23, 1804. June 23, Saturday some wind this morning from the N. W. We set out at seven o'clock, and proceeded on to the head of a island on the S. Fess. The wind blew hard and down the river which prevented the proprietary moving from this island the whole day, Cap Lewis had the arms examined and At the lower end of this island I got out of the boat to walk on shore, and expected the party on shore would overtake me at the head of the island, they did not and I proceeded on round around an extensive bend in the river. I killed a deer and made a fire expecting the boat would come up in the evening. The wind continuing to blow prevented their moving as the distance by land was too great for me to return by night I concluded to camp, peeled some bark to lay on, and gathered wood to make fires to keep off the mosquito and gnats. Heard the party on shore fire, at dark Druyer came to me with the horses, one fat bear and a deer, river fell eight inches last night. Lewis and Clark, June 24, 1804 Sunday June 24 set out at one half after six continuing the course on the lard. Side N 80 E 1 quarter of a mile to Point Lard. N 551 slash 4 of a mile to Point Lard. Due west to a point starred 3 miles good water. I joined the boat Tice morning with a fat bear and two deer, last evening I struck the river about 6 miles, by land, above the boat, and finding it too late to get to the boat. And the wind blowing so hard down the river that she could not ass end, I concluded to camp, 
although I had nothing but my hunting dress, and the muskiters ticks and gnats very troublesome, I consid to hunt on a willow ISD. Situated close under the shore, in crossing from an island, I got mired, and was obliged to crawl out, a disagreeable situation in a diverting one of anyone who could have seen me after I got out, all covered with mud. I went my camp and craped off the mud and washed my clothes. And fired off my gun which was answered by George Druyer who was in pursuit of me and came up at dark we feasted of meat and water the latter we made great use of being much fatigued and thirsty, the meat which hung up near the water a large snake made several attempts to get to it and was so determined that I killed him in his attempt. The snake appeared to make to that part of the meat which contained the milk of a doe, on this part of the river I observe great quantities of bear sign, they are after mulberries which are in great quantities. N85 DW. 41 halves mess to a PT on L side, came to above the mouth of a creek on the L S, about 20 yards wide called Hay Cabin Creek Laft. Of this place is 38 degrees 37 minutes 5 seconds north, Captain Lewis took served. Floyd and walked on shore, George Druyer killed two deer our fields killed a deer during the time we wer jerking the meat I brought in, west half a milliliter, along the L S. South 21 degrees west, 3 milliseconds, to a PT on the S, S, past 2 creek on the S, S. Just above some rock some distance from shore one of these creek is called Sheraton Carty, a prairie on the L, S, near the river. Captain Lewis killed a deer, and Collins three. Immense number of deer on both sides of the river, we pass between two sandbars at head of which we had to raise the boat 8 inch to get her over, camped at the lower point of a ISD. On the LS, the party in high spirits. Clark, June 24, 1804. 24th, June Sunday set out at half after six. I joined the boat this morning at eight o'clock, I will only remark that during the time I lay on the band waiting for the boat, a large snake swam to the bank immediately under the deer which was hanging over the water, and no great distance from it. I threw chunks and drove this snake off several times. I found that he was so determined on getting to the meat I was compelled to kill him, the part of the deer which attracted this snake I think was the milk from the bag of the doe. I observed great cuts. Of bare signs, where they had passed in all directions through the bottoms in search of mulberries, which were in great numbers in all the bottoms through which our party passed. Past the mouth of a creek twenty yards. Wide name Hay Cabin Creek from camps of straw built on it came to about one half me. Above this creek and jerked, the meat killed yesterday and this morning latitude of this place 38 degrees 37 minutes 5 seconds north, Captain. Lewis walked on shore and killed a deer, pass a bad part of the river, on the S.S. The rocks projected into the river some distance, a creek above called Sharston Carta, in the evening we passed through Betwin two sand bars at the head we had to raise the boat eight inches together over, camped near the lower point of an island on the L. Side, party in high spirits. The Count Ray on each side of the river is fine interspersed with prairies, in which immense herds of deer is seen, on the banks of the river we observe numbers of deer watering and feeding on the young willow, several killed today. Clark. June 25, 1804. Monday June 25 a heavy fog detained us about an hour set out past the ISD on a course from the last point south 49 degrees west, 3 ms to a point on the S. S south 55 degrees west 1 half me. S S a coal bank on the opposite or L S side, this bank appears to contain great quantity of excellent coal the wind from the N, W a small creek called Coal or Chabania, 3 north 50 degrees west to the point, L, S. 31 halves miles hard water and logs, bank falling in, past a small creek L, S, called Labini a prairie is situated on the S, S. A short distance from the river, which contains great quantities of wild apples of the size of the common apple, the French say is well flavored when ripe, which is the time the leaves begin to fall north 70 degrees west one half me. Along the right side of a willow ISD. Situated on the L, side S, 80 degrees west, one half me. L, S, south, 55 degrees west, one half me. To PT of small ISD. 
ls south 15 degrees west 1 half me ls dot s 2 degrees east 2 me point on lbds here i will only remark that the deer in the morning and evening are feeding in great numbers on the banks of the river they feed on young willow and amuse themselves running on the open beaches or points we have hard water this afternoon round the heads of small isles. On the L side below a small high prairie S 48 degrees west 2 Ms. PTS S past. A small ISD. On which we camped the party on shore did not join us today, or have we seen or heard of them river falling fast about 8 inches in 24 hours, the hills on the L S. This evening higher than usual about 160 or 180 feet. The lands appear of a similar to those past. Clark, June 25, 1804. 25, June Monday A thick fog detained us until 8 o'clock, past a island, at 3 miles past a coal mine, or bank of stone coal, on the south side. This bank appears to contain great quantity of fine coal, the river being high prevented our seeing that contained in the cliffs of the best quality, a small creek mouths below this bank called after the bank Chabania Creek the wind from the N. W. Passed a small creek on the L. side at 12 o'clock, called Bennett's Creek the prairies come within a short distance of the river on each side which contains in addition to plums raspberries and vast quantities of wild apples, great nums. Of deer are seen feeding on the young willows and herbage in the banks and on the sand bars in the river. Our party on shores did not join us this evening we camped on an island situated on the S. Side, opposite some hills higher than common, say 160 or 180 feet above the bottom. The river is still falling last night it fell 8 inches. Clark, June 26, 1804. June 26, Tuesday, 1804 we set out early, the river falling a little, the wind from the S. W. Past the mouth of a small river on the L. Side above the upper point of a small island, called Blue Water River, this river heads in prairies back with the Mine River about 30 yards wide latitude of a pt 4 milliseconds. Above this river is 38 degrees 32 minutes 15 seconds north, the high lands which is on the northern side does not exceed 80 feet high, at this place the river appears to be conft. In a very narrow channel, and the current still more so by cuenter current or whirl on one side and high bank on the other, past a small ISD. In the bend to the L. Side we killed a large rattlesnake, sunning himself in the bank past a bad sandbar, where our tow rope broke twice. And with great exertions we rode round it and came to and camped in the point above the Kansas River lob served a great number of parrot queets this evening, our party killed several seven deer today. Clark. June 27, 1804. June 27. Wednesday a fair warm morning, the river rose a little last night. We determined to delay at this place three or four days to make observations and recruit the party several men out hunting, unloaded one pierogi. And turned her up to dry with a view of repairing her after completing a strong redoubt or breastwork from one river to the other, of logs and bushes six feet high. The Count Ray about the mouth of this river is very fine on each side as well as the north of the Missouri's the bottom, in the point is low, and overflown for 250 yards. It rises a little above high water mark and continues up that height of good quality back to the hills underscore 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 a high cliff. On the upper side of the Concies one half a mile up below the Kansas the hills is about eleven halves miles from the point on the north side of the Missouri's the hill or high lands is several miles back, we compared the instruments took equal altitudes. And the meridian altitude of the sun's LL today latitude 38 degrees 31 minutes 13 seconds longitude underscore 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 measured the width of the Kansas River by an angle and made it 230 yards 1 slash 4 wide, it is wider above the mouth the Missouri's at this place is about 500 yards wide. The course from the point down the middle of the Missouri is s 32 degrees east and turns to the north. Up is north 21 degrees west. Up the right side of the Kansas is s 54 degrees east and the river turns to the left, several deer killed today. Clark, June 28, 1804. 
June 28 Thursday took equal altitudes and k. and k. and k. and variation of the compass repaired the pierogi cleaned out the boat soon our powder wallen articles examined everything eight or ten hunters. Out today in different direction, in examining our private store of provisions we found several articles spoiled from the wet or dampness they had received, a very warm day, the wind from the south. The river Misauri has raised yesterday last night and today about two foot. This evening it is on a stand, Captain. Lewis weighed the water of the two rivers the Missouri 78 degrees the Kansai 72 degrees to describe the most probable of the various accounts of this great river of the Kansas, would be too lengthy and uncertain to insert here. It heads with the river Del Nord in the Black Mountain or ridge which divides the waters of the Kansas Del Nord. And Calorado and Upsoitli from those of the Missouri, and not well ascertained, this river wrecks its name from a nation which dwells at this time on its banks and two villages one about twenty leagues and the other forty leagues up. Those Indians are not very numerous at this time, reduced by war with their neighbors, and k. They formerly live id on the south banks of the Missouri's twenty-four leagues above this river in an open and beautiful plain and were very numerous at the time the French first settled the Illinois, I am told they are a fierce and warlike people. Being badly supplied with firearms, become easily conquered by the Iowa and Sakis who are better furnished with those materials of war, this nation is now out in the plains hunting the buffalo our hunters killed several deer and saw buffalo. Men IMPD dressing skins and making themselves comfortable, the highlands comes to the river Kansas on the upper side at about a mile, full in view, and a beautiful place for a fort, good landing place. The waters of the Kansas is very disagreeably tasted to me. Clark, June 29, 1804. 29 of June, 1804, set out from the Kansas River one half past four o'clock, proceeded on past a small run on the L.S. at half a mile a, one, island on the S.S. at eleven halves me. Hills above the U.P.R. Point of I.S.D. L.S. A large sand bar in the middle. Past a very bad place of water, the stern of the boat struck a moving sand and turned within six inches of a large sawyer, if the boat had struck the sawyer. Her bow must have been knocked off and in course she must have sunk in the deep water below came to and camped on the S. S. Late in the evening. Clark, June 29, 1804. June 29, Friday Ops. The distance of D and, took equal and meridional alt. And after making some arrangements, and inflicting a little punishment to two men we set out at one half past four o'clock and proceeded on, I, past a large island on the S. Side, opposite a large sand bar, the boat turned and was within six inches of striking the rapidity with which the boat turned was so great that if her bow had struck the snag, she must have either turned over or the bow knocked off S. W. Wind. Clark, June 29, 1804. Camp Mouth of the Kansas June 29, 1804. Ordered a court-martial will set this day at eleven o'clock, to consist of five members, for the trial of John Collins and Hugh Hall, confined on charges exhibited against them by Sergeant Floyd, agreeable to the Articles of War. Detail for the court. Sir Gnat Pryor pressed. MBS. 2nd John Coulter 3rd John Newman 4 Pat. Gas 1 J. B. Thompson. John Potts to act as judge advocate. The court convened agreeable to order and proceeded to the trial of the prisoners viz. John Collins charged with getting drunk on his post this morning out of whiskey put under his charge as a sentinel and for suffering Hugh Hall to draw whiskey out. Of the said barrel intended for the party. To this charge the prisoner plead not guilty. The court after mature deliberation on the evidence abduced and k. are of opinion that the prisoner is guilty of the charge exhibited against him, and do therefore sentence him to receive one hundred lashes on his bare back. Hugh Hall was brought with, taking whiskey out of a keg this morning which whiskey was stored on the bank, and under the charge of the guard, contrary to all order, rule, or regulation. To this charge the prisoner, pleads guilty. The court find the prisoner guilty and sentence him to receive fifty lashes on his bare back. 
The commanding officers approve of the sentence of the court and orders that the punishment take place at half past three this evening, at which time the party will parade for inspection. Clark, June 29. 1804. At the mouth of the river Concies June 26, 27, 28 and 29 th, this river is 366 miles above the mouth of Missouri it is in latitude 38 degrees 31 minutes 13 seconds north. It is 230 yards. Wide at its mouth and wider above from the point up the Missouri for about 3 milliseconds, n, 21 degrees west, down the middle of the Missouri is s, 32 degrees east, up the upper bank of the Concise, is s, 54 degrees east the river turns to the east above a point. Of high land, well situated for a fort and in view of the Missouris one mile up and on the upper side, the width of the Missouris at this place is about 500 yards. Missouri water weighs 78. The Kansas weighs 72 river miss raised in the time at the Kansas two foot and begun to fall. The woodland on each side of the mouth of this river is extensive and of a good quality as far as our hunters was back, but badly watered with springs. Only two being seen by them. Some punishment of two men Hall and Collins for taking whiskey out of the barrel last night agreeable to the sentences of a court MTL of the party who we have always found very ready to punish such crimes. Many deer killed today. All arm post or order of battle arms to be situated and the duty and messes of men under a sergeant who is to detail for every day one man of his squad to cook and who shall have the management of the provisions during that day or issue, each day's rations must be divided and and quarter of encampment, tents, fires and duty. Clark, June 30, 1804 June 30. Set out very early this morn saw a very large wolf on the sandbar this morning walking near a gange of turkeys, one, at ten miles above the Concies past the mouth of a small river called the Petite Plate, or the Little Shoal River. This river is about seventy yards. Wide and has several rapids and falls, well calculate for mills, the land on this river is said to be rolling, killed two deer bucks swinging the river the wind from the S. W. Here we opened the bag of bread given us by which we found very good, our bacon which was given us by we examined and found sound and good some of that purchased in the Illinois spoiled, a relish of this old bacon this morning was very agreeable. Deer to be seen in every direction and their tracks AR as plenty as hogs about a farm, our hunts. Killed nine deer today the land below the last river is good, that above, between the two rivers which is near together is Slakewai and bad on the N side, the other side is good land, landed on the L S. Below an ISD called Diamond Island. Clark, June 30, 1804. June 30, Saturday 1804 set out very early this morning, a very large wolf came to the bank and looked at us this morning, past the one mouth of a small river 10 milliseconds. Above the Kansas called by the French Petite River Platte, or Shoal River, from the number of falls in it, this river is about 60 yards wide at its mouth and runs parallel with the Missouris for 10 or 12 miles. I am told that the lands on this small river is good, and on its several falls well calculated for mills, the wind from S. W. came to at 12 o'clock and rested three hours, the, being hot the men become very feeble, farnsts. Thermometer at 3 o'clock stood at 96 degrees above zero, immense numbs. Of deer on the banks, skipping in every direction, the party killed nine bucks on the river and bank today, the Count Ray on the S. S. between the Shoal River and Missouris is indifferent subject to overflow, that below and on the L. S. is high and appers well timbered, camped on the L. S. Obst. The lower point of a ISD. Called Diamond Island, broke our mast. Clark, July 1, 1804. July 1, 1804, last night one of the sentinels chunged either a man or beast, which run off, all prepared for action, set out early past the Diamond ISD. Pass a small creek on the L, S, as this creek is without name we call it Biscuit Creek Brackfast on the upper point of a sand beach, the river still falling a little a very warm day. I took some medicine last night which has worked me very much party all in health except boils. 
past the sand bar in the river above the ISD. Covered for a me. With drift wood, came to Captain Lewis took men. Altitude and we delayed three hours, the day being excessively hot, turkeys are plenty on the shore, G. Druyer informed that he saw pucans trees on S. yesterday great quantities of raspberries and grapes, too, pass a creek on the L. S. Called Remore, Tree Frog, Creek, an ISD above in the mid and two willow ists on the S. S. all of the same name, the two willow ists. Has been made within three years and the main chant. Runs now on the L.S. Of the large island where there was no running water at low water from this island the range of hills up the river to the N, W, pass a run on the L, S. A beautiful extensive prairie, two islands just above called, Isles de Parques, or Field Islands, those islands are, one of our French hands telephones me that the French intended to settle here once and brought their cows and put them on those islands. Mr. Mackey says the first village of the Kansas was a little above this island and made use of as fields, no trace of anything of that kind remains to be seen on the Ists. Fine land on the Elt side, hills near the river all day, camped on the lower pot. Of first ISD. Clark, July 1, 1804. July 1st, Sunday 1804 a small alarm last night all prepared for action, set out early this morning passed on the north side of Diamond Island, a small creek mouths opposite I call Biscuit Creek. A large sand bar in the middle of the river 11 halves millisecond. Above the ISD. Covered with drift wood. River fall a little. The wind from S. W. Came to above this drift and delayed three hours to refresh the men who were very much overpowered with the heat, great quantity of grapes and raspberries, too, passed a small creek on the L.S., below one large and two small islands. This creek and ists are called Remore, or Tree Frog, a large pond on the S.S., the main current of water run G on the L.S., of the island, I am told that three years ago the main current run on the S.S. Of the island and no appearance of the two smaller islands, camped on the lower point of one of the two large and two small ists. Called Isles de Parques or Field Isles a high beautiful prairie on the L. S. One of the French hands says that the French kept their cattle and horses on those islands at the time they had in this quarter a fort and trading establishment. Pecan trees seen on the S. S. Deer and turkeys in great quantities on the bank. Clark, July 2, 1804. July 2, 1804 set out very early this morning past on the left of the Isles de Parques high beautiful situation, on the L.S. The land in different lands a creek comes in on the S.S. Called Parques, all at once the river became crowded with drift that it was dangerous to cross this I suppose was from the caving in of the banks at the head of some island above, three, past a creek on the L.S. Called Turkey or Turkey Creek passed a very bad sandbar on the L.S., the twenty oars and poles could with much difficulty stem the current, passed a large island on the S.S., called by the Inns. While Carbier wore Conda or the Bear Medicine Island, at twelve o'clock came to on the island and put in a mast, detained four hours, exceedingly hot, wind in forepart of the day from the S. E. George Druyer informs that the lands he passed through yesterday and today on the S. S. was generally very fine he saw two springs of fresh water near the island, deer sign has become so common it is hardly necessary to mention them, we camped after dark on the S. S. opposite the first old village of the Kansas which was situated in a valley between two points of high land. On the river back of their village commenced an extensive prairie a large island in front which appears to have made on that side and thrown the current of the river against the place the village formerly stood, and washes away the bank in that part. The French formerly had a fort at this place, to protect the trade of this nation, the situation appears to be a very elegable one for a town, the valley rich and extensive. With a small brook meanding through it and one part of the bank affording yet a good landing for boats the high lands above the Fear River on each side of the Missouris appear to approach each other much nearer than below that place. Being from three to six miles between them, to the Kansas, above that place from three to five ms. 
apart and higher some places being 160 or 180 feet the river not so wide we made a mast of cottonwood, today in the course of the evening and night it turned of a beautiful red color. Clark, July 2, 1804. July 2, 1804 set out early and proceed on the left of the islands, two of which are large a high bottom situated on the L. S. Past the mouth of a creek on the S. S. Called Turkey Crike, at this place I observed that the river was crowded with drift wood, and dangerous to pass as this dead timber continued only about half an hour, I concluded that some island of drift had given way, 3. Past a creek on the L. S. Called Tiki Creek, a bad sand bar on the L. S. We could with difficulty stem the current with our twenty oars and then all the poles we had, past a large island on the S. S. Called by the Indians Waukarbiye Warkanda or the Bear Medicine Island, at twelve o'clock landed on the island and put up a mast which detained us four hours, a very hot day winds from the S.E. George Druyer informs that the lands he passed through yesterday and today on the S.S. was very fine, few springs, we camped after dark on the S.S. Above the island and opposite the first old village of the Kansas which was situated in a valley, between two points of high land, and immediately on the river bank. Back of the village and on a rising ground at about one mile the French had a garrison for some time and made use of water out of a spring running into Turkey Creek. An extensive prairie, as the current of the river sets against the bank and washes it away the landing place for boats is indifferent, the high lands above the Fire River, approaches nearer each than below. Being from three to six miles distant and above Kansas from three to five miles distant and the hills at some places are from 160 to 180 feet above the bottom. Clark, July 3, 1804. July 3, 1804 set out very early this morning and proceeded on under a gentle breeze from the south past two islands one a small willow island on the L. S. 1, the other a large island called Cow 1. I'll vash, this island is large, opposite to the head on the S, S is a, two, large pond, a bad sand bar on the S, S. We attempted without success, and was obliged to cross back, I saw a white horse on the L, S, in view of the upper point of the island, three, past a large sand bar at the S. Point, we halted today about a mile above the island and found a horse, which had been lost by the Indians, very fat and gentle, sent him on to join the others which was ahead on the L south at this place, the French had a trading house. For to trade with the Kansas on a high bottom on the L. S, near the hills which is prairie proceeded on round a large sandbar on the L, S, and camped, opposite a large sandbar in the middle of the river. On the L, S. A beautiful small stream passes back of the trading house, before mentioned. Clark, July 3, 1804. July 3rd, Tuesday 1804 set out very early this morning and proceeded on under a gentle breeze from the S. Past two islands, one, one a small willow island on the L, S, the other large called by the French Isle de Vache or Cow Island, opposite the head on the S, S, is a large pond conting beaver, and fowl, a bad sandbar on the S, S. Above the island, on the L, S. We halted at an old trading house, here we found a very fat horse, which appears to have been lost a long time a beautiful small run passes back of the trading house near the high land, we came to at a round bend on the L, S. And camped. Clark, July 4, 1804. July 4, Wednesday, 1804, set out early past the mouth of a bayou leading from a lake on the S, S. This lake is large and was once the bend of the river, it reaches parallel for several miles, came to on the L, S, to dine and rest a short time, a snake bit Joe. Fields on the side of his foot which swelled much, apply barks to the wound, pass a creek on the L, S, about fifteen yards wide coming out of an extensive prairie as this creek has no name, and this day is the fourth of July, we name this independence us. Creek above this creek the woodland is about two hundred yards, Back of those wood is an extensive prairie open and high, which may be seen six or seven below, saw great nose. Of goslins today nearly grown, the last mentioned prairie I call Joe Field Snake Prairie, 
Captain Lewis walked on shore and saw a large mound and three roads leading we camped in a plain one of the most beautiful plains, I ever saw. Open and bootifully diversified with hills and valleys all presenting themselves to the river covered with grass and a few scattering trees a handsome creek meandering through at this place the Kansas Inns. Formerly lived and had a very large town past a creek, for, I observed spring breaking out of the bank, a good situation for a fort on a hill at the upper part. The plains of this Count Ray are covered with elite green grass. Well calculated for the sweetest and most nourishing hay interspersed with cops of trees, spreading their lofty branches over pools springs or brooks of fine water. Grow ops of shrubs covered with the most delicious fruit is to be seen in every direction, and nature appears to have exerted herself to beautify the shenari by the variety of flowers delicately and highly flavored raised above the grass. Which strikes and profumes the sensation. And amuses the mind throws it into conjecturing the cause of so magnificent a scenery in a country thus situated far removed from the civilized world to be enjoyed by nothing but the buffalo elk deer and bear in which it abounds and savage Indians. The names of the French Injishis. Or higher lens. In pierogi. One Baptiste de Chon patron. Two Joseph Lobarty. Three Lassonis. Four Paul Primo. 5 Chelo. 6 E. Can. 7 Wa. 8 Charlot Kuji. In the large boat. J. Lubarti. Rivi. Bao Men. Peter Krauset Half Indian. William La Base Mallet. 3 Serths. And 23 men for the boat. George Druyer. Hunter and 4 horses. One corporal and four privates in a pierogi to be sent back from plate. River. Mr. Duran in Tepter for the Sioux's captain. Lewis myself and York. In all forty-six men July 4th four horses and a dog. Clark, July 4th, 1804. July 4th Wednesday ushered in the day by a discharge of one shot from our bow piece, proceeded on. Past the mouth of a, one, Bayo lading from a large lake on the S. S, which has the appearance of being once the bed of the river and reaches parallel for several miles came to on the L, S, to refresh ourselves and. Joss Fields got bit by a snake, which was quickly doctored with bark by Cap Lewis. 2. Passed a creek twelve yards wide on L, S, coming out of an extensive prairie reaching within two hundred yards of the river, as, this creek has no name, and this being the we dine, on corn, the 4th of July the day of the independence of the U.S. Call it 4th of July, 1804 Creek, Captain. Lewis walked on shore above this creek and discovered a high mound from the top of which he had an extensive view, three paths concentering at the mound saw great numbers of goslings today which were nearly grown. The before-mentioned lake is clear and contain great quantities of fish and geese and goslings, the great quantity of those fowl in this lake induce me to call it the gosling lake. A small creek and several springs run into the lake on the east side from the hills the land on that side very good, three, we came to and camped in the lower edge of a plain where 2d old Kansas village formerly stood. Above the mouth of a creek twenty yards wide this creek we call Creek Independence as we approached this place the prairie had a most beautiful appearance hills and valleys interspsed with coops of timber gave a pleasing diversity to the shenari. The right fork of Creek Independence meandering through the middle of the plain a point of high land near the river gives an elevated situation. At this place the Kansas Indians formerly lived. This town appears to have coughed. A large space, the nation must have been numerous at the time they lived here, the cause of their moving to the Kansas River, I have never heard, nor can I learn. War with their neighbors must have reduced this nation and compelled them to retire to a situation in the plains better calculated for their defense and one where they may make use of their horses with good effect, in pursuing their enemy. We close the by a discharge from our bow piece, an extra gill of whiskey. Clark, July 5, 1804 July the 5th 1804 set out very early this morning, swam the horse across the river. Proceeded on for two miles under the bank where the old Kansas town formerly stood the cause of those people moving from this place I cannot learn. 
But Nate Rowley conclude that war has reduced their nation and compelled them to retire further into the plains with a view of defending themselves and opposing their enemy, more effectual, on or back, I neglected to mention yesterday that the lake on the S. S. was large say three quarters me. Wide and seven or eight long one creek and several brooks running into it from the hills, it contains great quantities of sunfish and goslings from which we gave it the name, past some very bad sandbars situated parallel to each other. 1. The boat turned three times once on the underscore 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 of a drift wood. She wrecked no perceivable damage, we came to for dinner at a beaver house, Cap Lewis's dog seamen went in and drove them out. The high lands on the L.S. is open, a few trees scattering, too, past a small creek on the L.S. In the one's bend to the left I call Yellow Ochre Creek from a bank of that mineral just above. We camped on the L.S. under a high bank lat. 39 degrees 25 minutes 41 seconds north. On the banks of this river I observe great quants of grapes, berries and roses deer is not so plenty in this three days past as they were below that. Elks are plenty about those prairies. Some buffalo sign. Clark, July 5, 1804. July 5 Thursday, 1804 set out very early, proceeded on near the bank where the old village stood for two miles, swam the ore found a few days ago, passed some bad sand bars. The Oregon of this old village is uncertain M. De Bourgmont a French officer who calmed. A fort near the town of the Missouris in about the year 1724 and in July of the same year he visited this village at that time the nation was numerous and well deposed towards the French mister. Du Prats must have been badly informed as to the cane opposed this place we have not seen one stalk of reed or cane on the Missouris. He states that the Indians that accompanied M. de Bourgmont crossed to the Kansas village on floats of cane. Those people must have been very numerous at that time as Mr. de B. was accompanied by 300 warriors, 500 young people and 300 dogs of burthen out of this village. The cause of those Indians moving over to the Kansas River I have never learnt, we passed some bad sand bars. Situated parallel to each other, one. The boat turned twice on the quick sand and once on a raft of drift, no perceivable damage prairie contine on the high land on the L. S. passed a small creek, too, on L. S. in the first bend to the L. S. I call Yellow Ochre Creek from a quantity of that mineral in a bank a little above. The river continued to fall a little, I observe great quantities of summer and fall grapes, berries and wild roses on the banks, deer is not so plenty as usual. Great deal of elk sign. Wind from S.E. Clark, July 6, 1804. July 6, Friday. We set out early this morning and proceeded on, the river falls slowly, wind S. W., past a sandbar in first bend to the right, 1, past a small island at the S. point. A very warm day, worthy of remark that the water of this river or some other cause, I think that the most probable throws out a greater proposal. Of sweat than I could suppose could pass through the humane body those men that do not work at all will wet a shirt in a few minutes and those who work, the sweat will run off in streams, opposite the third point past a prairie on the S. S. Called Reeves Prairie, fro a man of that name being killed in it, Opposite this prairie the river is confined in a very narrow space crowded on S.S. by sands which were moving and difficult to pass. The Hunts Sent in three deer jerked on the fourth point of today is a small island and a sand bar two miles out in the river, this is called the Grand Bend, or Grande de Tour. I walked on this sand bar found it a light sand interspersed with small pebbles of various kinds, also pit coal of an excellent quality was lodged on the sand, we camped on the L. S. At a small creek a whipper will perched on the boat for a short time, I gave his name to the creek. Clark, July 6, 1804. July 6, Friday we set out early this morning, wind from the S. W., passed a large sand bar in the first. Bend to the right. 1. Passed a small island at the S. point opposite the third point we passed a prairie on the S. S called Reeves Prairie at this place the river is confined in a very narrow channel crowded by a sand bar from the L. 
Point this sandbar from the L point, this sandbar is very bad, at the fourth point from the S S. Is a very extensive bar, at the point of which is a small willow island this is called the Grand Detour or Great Bend. I walked on this sandbar and found the sand was light, with collection of small pebble. And some pit coal I observed that the men sweat more than is common from some cause, I think the Missouri's water is the principal cause our hunters sent in three bucks today the river still fall a little. Clark, July 7th. 1804. 7th of July Saturday 1804 set out early past some very swift water on the L. S. which compelled us to draw up by the cord. A very warm morning, past a beautiful prairie on the right side which extends back, those prairies has much the appearance from the river of farms. Divided by narrow strips of woods those strips of timber grows along the runs which rise on the hill and pass to the river a cleft above, one man sick, Fraser, struck with the sun, saw a large rat on the side of the bank. Killed a wolf on the bank past, too, a very narrow part of the river, all confined within two hundred yards, a yellow bank above, past a small willow island on the S. Point, in low water those small willow islands are joined to the sandbars making out from the points, a pond on the S, S near the prairie we passed yesterday in which G. D. saw several young swans we came to and camped on the L, S. And two men sent out last evening with the horses did not join us this evening agreeable to orders, a hard wind with some rain from the N, E at seven o'clock which lasted half an hour, with thunder and lightning. River fall a little. Clark, July 7, 1804. July the 7th Saturday 1804 set out early past some swift water, which obliged us to draw up by ropes, a sand bear at the point opposite a beautiful prairie on the S side called. 1. St. Michael, those prairies on the river has very much the appearance of farms from the river divided by narrow strips of woodland, which woodland is situate. On the runs leading to the river. Past a bluff of yellow clay above the prairie. Saw a large rat on the bank. Killed a wolf. At four o'clock pass a very narrow part of the river water conft. In a bead not more than two hundred yards wide at this place the current runs against the L side. No sand to confine the current on the S S. Past a small sand island above the small isles. Situated at the points, in low water form a part of the sand bars making out from those points. Encamped on the S S at seven o'clock a violent gust of wind from the N E. With some rain, which lasted half an hour, G. D. informs me that he saw in a pond on the S. S., which we passed yesterday, a number of young swans dash comma, one man very sick, struck with the sun, Captain. Lewis bled him and gave nitre which has revived him much. Clark, July 8, 1804. Eighth of July Sunday set out early this morning, the sick man much better, surged. Ottaway was waiting at a creek on the S. S. Below an island, passed, one, two island on the S. S. and came to at the upper point, G. Druyer went out our fields and got Eric, five men sick today with a violent head ache and. And several with boils, we appoint a cook to each mess to take charge of the provisions. In searched. Priors equals Collins in SJT, Ordway's Werner in served. Floyd's Thompson, the Frenchmen killed a young deer on the bank, too, passed up a narrow channel of about 80 or 100 yards wide about 5 miles to the mouth of Nadawa River which corns into this channel from the NW and is ABT. 70 yards wide at its mouth underscore 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 feet deep and has a gentle current, pirogues can navigate this river near its head, which is between the Missouri and the Grand River. Passed up the gut three quarters of a mile to the river at the head of the island and camped opposite the head of this island is another nearest the middle are this island Nadawa is the largest I have seen, formed by a channel washing into the Nadawa River. 8 or 10,000 ACRS. Clark, July 8, 1804. July the 8th Sunday 1804 set out early past a small creek on the S, S and 2, 1, small islands on the SS, five men sick today with a violent headache and. We made some arrangements as to provisions and messes, 
came to for dinner at the lower point of a very large island situated near the S. S. After a delay of two hours we passed a narrow channel of 45 to 80 yards wide five miles to the mouth of, 3, Mkdawa River, this river comes in from the north and is navigable for pirogues some distance. It is about 70 yards wide a little above the mouth, at the mouth not so wide, the mud of the gut running out of the Misauri is thrown and settles in the mouth half a mile higher up this channel or gut is the upper point of the said island. This island is called Nadua, and is the largest I have seen in the river, containing seven or eight thousand acres of land seldom overflowed we camped at the head of this island on the S. S. Opposite the head or our camp is a small island near the middle of the river, river still falling. Our flank party did not join us this evening. Lewis, July 8, 1804. Detachment Orders Nadawa Island July 8, 1804. In order to ensure a prudent and regular use of all provisions issued to the crew of the bateau in future, as also to provide for the equal distribution of the same among the individuals of the several messes. The commanding officers do appoint the following persons to receive, cook, and take charges of the provisions which may from time to time be issued to their respective messes, viz., John B. Thompson to Cert. Floyd's Mess. William Warner to Cert. Ordway's Mess, and John Collins to Cert. Pryor's Mess. These superintendents of provision, are held immediately responsible to the commanding officers for a judicious consumption of the provi shown which they receive. They are to cook the same for their several messes in due time, and in such manner as is most wholesome and best calculated to afford the greatest proportion of nutriment, in their mode of cooking they are to exercise their own judgment. They shall also point out what part, and what proportion of the mess provisions are to be consumed at each stated meal, i.e., morning, noon and night. Nor is any man at any time to take or consume any part of the mess provisions without the privity, knowledge and consent of the superintendent. The superintendent is also held responsible for all the cooking utensils of his mess. In considerate tie-in of the duties imposed by this order on Thompson, Warner, and Collins, they will in future be exempt from guard duty, though they will still be held on the royster for that duty. And their regular tour shall be performed by some one of their respective messes. They are exempted also from pitching the tents of the mess, collecting firewood, and forks poles and for cooking and drying such fresh meat as may be furnished them, those duties are to be also performed by the other members of the mess. M. Lewis W. M. Clark. Clark, July 9, 1804. July the 9th Monday 1804 sent one man back to the mouth of the river to mark a tree, to let the party on shore see that the boat had passed the river. Set out early past, one, the head of the island situated in the middle of the river a sand bar at the head, two, past the mouth of a creek or bayou on the S. S. leading from a large pond of about three miles in length, at eight o'clock it commenced raining, the wind changed from an E to S. W. 3, at six miles past the mouth of a small creek on the L. S. called Monters Creek, the river at this place is wide with a sand bar in the middle, past a place on the L. S., about two miles above the creek where several French men camped two years to hunt, from, past a island on the S.S. of the river in a bend, opst. A high land on the L. S. wind shifted to the N. W. in the evening, opst. This island, and on the L. S. Lou or Wolf River comes in, this river is about sixty yards wide, but little water running at the mouth, this river heads with the waters of the Kansas, and has a pierogi navigation some distance, it abounds with beaver. Camped opposite the head of the island on the L. S. saw a fire on the S. S. Supposedly the four flankers, to be the ire, sent a pierogi for them, the patroon and bowman of the pierogi French, they returned and informed, that when they approached the fire, it was put out, which caused them to return, this report caused us to look out supposing a proprietary of so going to war, fireared the bow peak to all arm and put on their guard the men on shore ever a thing in readiness for defense. Clark, July 9th. 1804. July 9th Monday, 
18041 man sent back to the river we passed last night to blase a tree with a view to notify the party on shore of our passing set out and passed the head of the one island which was situated opposite to our camp last night a sand bar at the head two opst this island a creek or bayou corns in from a large pond on the starboard side as our flanking party saw great numbers of pike in this pond I have laid it down with that name annexed, v at 8 o'clock the wind shifted from the n. e to s w and it commenced raining. 3, at 6 miles past the mouth of creek on the l, s called Monters Creek, about 2 mile above is some cabins where our bowmen and several Frenchmen camped. 2 years, 4, past an island on the s, s. In a bend of the river opposite some cliffs on the L.S., the wind shifted to the N.W. opposite this island and on the L. Side, Lou, or Wolf River calms in, this river is about 60 yards wide and heads with the waters of the Concees, and is navigable for pirogues some distance up, camped at a point on the L.S. Opposite the head of the island, our party was encamped on the opposite side, their not answering our signals caused us to suspect the persons camped opposite to us was a war party of Sioux, we fired the bow piece to alarm the party on shore. Ailed prepared to oppose if attacked it. Clark, July 10, 1804. July 10, Tuesday set out this morning with a view to land near the fire scene last night, and reconnoitre, but soon discovered that our men were at the fire. They were asleep early last evening, and from the course of the wind which blew hard, their yells were not heard by party in the pierogi, a mistake altogether dash. Proceeded on, past prairie on the upper side of Wolf River, at four miles past, one, a small creek L, S, called R, Pape this creek is about fifteen yards, wide and called after a Spaniard who killed himself at the mouth. Two, dined on an island called the Selemen and delayed three hours, and proceeded on, opposite this isle. On the L, S. Is a, 3, beautiful bottom prairie which will contain about 2,000 acres of land covered with wild rye and wild potatoes, great numbers of goslings on the banks and in the ponds near the river, Captain Lewis killed two this evening. We came to and camped for the night. At a point on the S, S, opposite a yellow clay cliff dot, our men all getting well but much fatigued, the river is on a stand neither rise nor fall, the bottom on the S, S is very extensive and thick. The hills or high land is near the river on the L, S. And but thinly timbered, back of those hills is open plains. Clark, July 10, 1804. July 10, Tuesday, 1804 set out early this morning and crossed the river with a view to see who the party was that camped on the other side, we soon discovered them to be our men, proceeded on past a prairie on the L. S. at four miles past a creek L. S. called, 1. Pap Pie after a man who killed himself at its mouth, this creek is fifteen yards wide, 2. Dined on an isle. Called the Salamine delayed three hours on this island to recruit the men opposite on the L. S. Is a beautiful bottom plain of about two thousand acres, 3. Covered with wild rye and potatoes, intermixed with the grass, we camped on the S. S. opposite a yellow clay cliff. Captain. Lewis killed two young G's or goslings this evening, the men of the party getting better, but much fatigued, the river on a stand, the bottom is very extensive on the S, S. And thickly interspersed with vines the high land approaches near the river on the L, S and well timbered next to the river, back of those hills the plains commence. Clark, July 11, 1804. July 11, Wednesday, Set out early proceeded on past a willow, one, island in a bend to the S, S, sent out Druyer and Joe. Fields to hunt, back of this island a creek corns in on the S, S. Called by the Indians Little Tarkio Creek I went on shore above this island on the S, S, found the bottom subject for overflow wet and very thickly interwoven with grapevines, proceeded on at about one half a miles from the river about three milliseconds. And observed fresh sign of a horse, I projuied the track, with an expectation of finding a camp of Indians on the river, when I got to the river, I saw a horse on the beach, this horse as appears was left last winter by some hunting party. Probable the Atuas, I joined the boat on the sand island situated opposite the mouth of the Namaha River, this river calms in on the L. 
S is about 80 yards wide and navigable for pirogue some distance up the prairies comes above the mouth and continues on both sides of this are Druyer killed six deer today J. Field one several hunters sent out up the Nemahar R. Clark, July 11, 1804. July 11, Wednesday 1804 set out early past a Willow Island, one, in a bend on the S.S. Back of this island a creek corns in called by the Indians Tarkio. I went on shore above this creek and walked up parallel with the river at a beauty half a mile distant, the bottom I found low and subject to overflow, still further out. The undergrowth and vines wer so thick that I could not get through with ease after walking about three or four miles I observed a fresh horse track where he had been feeding I turned my course to the river and proceeded the track and found him on a sand beach this horse probably had been left by some party of Otto's hunters who wintered or hunted in this quarter last fall or winter. I joined the party on a large sand island immediately opposite the mouth of Namaho River, at which place they had camped, this island is sand about half of it covered with small willows of two different kinds, one narrow and the other a broad leaf. Several hunters sent out today on both sides of the river, seven deer killed today. Druyer killed six of them, made some lunar observations this evening. Clark, July 12, 1804. July 12 Thursday some hunters out on the S.S. Those on the L.S. Did not return last night, our object in delaying here is to tack some observations and rest the men who are much fatigued made sundry observations, after an early breakfast I took five men and went up the river Namahar about three miles. To an open level part of an immense prairie, at the mouth of a small creek on the lower side, I went on shore, and passed through the plain past several knolls to the top of a high artificial knoll from the top of this knoll I had an immense. Extensive and pleasing prospect, of the Count Ray around, I could see the meandering of the little river for at least ten miles winding through a meadow of fifteen or twenty thousand acres of high bottom land covered with grass about forty-one slash two feet high. The high lands which rose irregularly, and were toked with mounds or antent graves which is to me a strong evidence of this Count Ray having been thickly settled dash. This river is about 80 yards wide with a gentle current and heads up near the Parnay village on River Blue a branch of Kansas, a little timbered land near the mouth for one mile above, only a few trees. And thickets of plums shares and are seen on its banks the creeks and little ravines making into the river have also some timber, I got grapes on the banks nearly ripe, observed great quantities, of grapes, plums crab APLs and a wild cherry. Growing like a calm. Wild cherry only larger and grows on a small bush, on the side of a cliff sandstone one half me. Up and on lower side I marked my name and day of the month near an Indian mark or image of animals in a boat tried Willard for sleeping on his post, our hunters killed some deer, saw elk and buffalo. Clark, July 12, 1804. July 12th. Thursday 1804 concluded to delay here today with a view of taking equal altitudes and making observations as well as refreshing our men who are much fatigued, after an early breakfast I with five men in a pierogi ascended the river Namaha about two miles to the mouth of a small creek on the lower side. Here I got out of the pierogi, after going to several small mounds in a level plain, I ascended a hill on the lower side, on this hill several artificial mounds were raised. From the top of the highest of those mounds I had an extensive view of the surrounding plains, which afforded one of the most pleasing prospects I ever beheld. Under me a beautiful river of clear water of about eighty yards wide meandering through a level and extensive meadow, as far as I could see, the prospect much enlivened by the fine trees and shrubs which is bordering the bank of the river. And the creeks and runs falling into it, dash. The bottom land is covered with grass of about 41-2 feet high, and appears as level as a smooth surface, the two bottom is also covered with grass and rich weeds and flowers, interspersed with copses of the Osage plum. On the rising lands, small groves of trees are seen, with the numbers of grapes and a wild cherry resembling the common wild cherry, only larger and grows on a small bush on the tops of those hills in every direction. I observed artificial mounds, or as I may more justly term graves, which to me is a strong indication of this country being once thickly settled. 
The Indians of the Missouri still keep up the custom of burying their dead on high ground, after a ramble of about two miles about I returned to the pierogi and decended down the river, gaffed. Some grapes nearly ripe, on a sandstone bluff about one quarter of a mile from its mouth on the lower side I observed some Indian marks. Went to the rock which jutted over the water and marked my name and the day of the month and year, this river heads near one of the villages of the Pania on the River Blue, a branch of the Kansas River. Above this river about half a mile the prairie comes to the Missouri after my return to camp on the island completed some observations, Tread tried a man for sleeping on his post and inspected the arms ammunition and of the party found all complete, took some lunar observations. Three deer killed today. Lat. 39 degrees 55 minutes 56 seconds north. Lewis and Clark, July 12, 1804. Camp New Island July 12, 1804. A court martial consisting of the two commanding officers will convene this day at 1 o'clock. P.M. for the trial of such prisoners as may be brought before them, one of the court will act as judge advocate. M. Lewis William Clark. The commanding officers. Captain M. Lewis and W. Clark constituted themselves a court martial for the trial of such prisoners as are guilty of capital crimes, and under the rules and articles of war punishable by death. Alexander Willard was brought forward charged with lying down and sleeping on his post whilst a sentinel, on the night of the 11th. Instant, by John Ordway Sergeant of the Guard. To this charge the prisoner pleads. Guilty of lying down, and not guilty, of going to sleep. The court after duly considering the evidence adduced, are of opinion that the prisoner elects n. Willard is guilty of every part of the charge exhibited against him. It being a breach of the rules and articles of war, as well as tending to the probable destruction of the party, do sentence him to receive one hundred lashes on his bare back, at four different times in equal propation. An order that the punishment commence this evening at sunset, and continue to be inflicted, by the guard, every evening until completed W. M. Clark M. Lewis. Clark, July 13, 1804. My notes of the 13th of July by a most unfortunate accident blew overboard in a storm in the morning of the 14th obliges me to refer to the journals of sergeants. And my own recollection the occurrences courses distance and of that day, last night a violent storm from the N. N. E. 1 past Tarkio River, at two miles a chant. Running into this river three milliseconds, above, form St. Joseph's Isle. Past an elect prairie in the first bend to the left. Conting a grass resmal timothy, with seed-like flax, two, past a island in a bend to the S. S. at twelve milliseconds, I walked on shore S. S. Lands, low and overflows, killed two goslings nearly grown, sailed under a wind from the south all day, camped on a sand island on the L. P. T. opposite a high and extensive prairie, on the S. S. the hills about four or five me. Off, this plain appears extensive, great appearance of a storm from the north W. This evening very agreeable the wind still from the south. From the Osages nation with twenty odd of the natives or chiefs of the nation with him sailed down the Mississippi bound to St. Louis and three guns fired showers of rain showers of rain all that night. Clark. July 13, 1804. July 13 Friday, 1804 set out at sunrise, and prost. On under a gentle breeze, at two miles past the mouth of a small river on the S. S. Called by the Indians Tarkio, a channel running out of the river three miles above, which is now filled up with sand, runs into this creek and and formed a island called St. Joseph several sand bars parallel to each other above, in the first bend to the left is situated a beautiful and extensive plain, covered with grass resembling timothy except the seed which resembles flax seed. This plain also abounds in grapes of different kinds some nearly ripe. I killed two goslings nearly grown, several others killed and caught on shore, also one old goose, with pin feathers, she could not fly, at about twelve miles past. A island situated in a bend on the S. S. Above this island is a large sand bar covered with willows. The wind from the south, 
camped on a large sandbar making out from the L.P. opposite a high Hanson prairie, the hills about four or five miles on S.S. This plain appeared extensive, the clouds appeared to hail there to the N.W., the most agreeable breeze from the south, I walked on shore on the S.S. The lands are low subject to overflow. Last night at about ten o'clock a violent storm of wind from the N. N. E. which lasted with great violence for about one hour, at which time a shower of rain succeeded. The men on shore did not join us this afternoon, the river nearly on a stand, the high lands on the S. S. has only been seen at a distance above the Norway River, those on the S. L. approaching the river at every bend, on the side next to the river well timbered, the Obst. Side open and the commencement. Of Plains. Clark, July 14, 1804. July the 14th Saturday some hard showers of rain accompanied with some wind detained us until about 7 o'clock. We then set out and proceeded on about a mile and th atmosphere became suddenly darkened by a black and dismal looking cloud, we wr in a situation, near the upper point of a sd. Isd. And the ops shore falling in in this situation a violent storm of wind from the n, e, passing over an open plain, struck the boat nearly starboard, quadring, and blowing down the current, the exertions of all our men who were out in an instant. Odd aid to a strong cable and anchor was scarcely sufficient to keep the boat from being thrown up on the sand island. And dashed to paces the waves dosted over on the side next to the wind the lockers which was covered with tarpaulin prevented them coming into the boat until the boat was creaned on the side from the wind in this situation we continued about forty minutes. The two pirogues about a quarter of a mile above, one of them in a similar situation with the boat, the other under the charge of George Gibson in a much better position, with her stir facing the wind, this storm suddenly ceased. And one minute the river was as smooth as glass, the wind shifted to the S. E and we set sail, and proceeded on past, one, a small island on the S, S, and dined, our fields who has charge of the horses and on shore did not join us last night dash. Passed a old fort where Mr. Bennett of St. Louis wintered two years and traded with the autos and parties on the S. S. won me. Above the little island, I went out on the L. S. and observed two elk on a land in the river, in attempting to get near those elk observed one near us I shot one. Continued on shore and through the bottom which was extensive, some small prairies, and a pep once of high rich and well timbered bottom, in the glades I saw wild timothy, lambs quarter cuckle burrs and rich weed, on the edges plums of different kinds grapes. And gooseberries, camped on the L. S. Reuben Fields and Goolrich joined the party two men unwell, one a feelin' on his finger, river fall. Clark, July 14, 1804. July 14, Saturday 1804 Some hard showers of rain this morning prevented our setting out until seven o'clock. At half past seven, the atmosphere became suddenly darkened by a black and dismal looking cloud, at the time we were in a situation, not to be bettered, near the upper point of the sand island, on which we lay, and the opposite shore. The bank was falling in and lined with snags as far as we could see down, dash. In this situation the storm which passed over an open plain from the N. E. struck the R. boat on the starved quarter, and would have thrown her up on the sand island dashed to Pex in an instant, had not the party leaped out on the lewd side and kept her off with the assistance of the anchor and cable, until the storm was over. The waves dashed over her windward side and she must have filled with water if the lockers which is covered with tarpaulin and threw of the water and prevented any quantity getting into bilge of the boat. In this situation we continued about forty minutes. When the storm suddenly ceased and the river become instantaneously as smooth as glass. The two pirogas during this storm was in a similar situation with the boat about half a mile above, the wind shifted to the S. E and we sailed up past a small, one, isled. Situated on the S. S. and dined in continent two hours, men examined their arms, about a mile above this island, Passed a small trading fort on the S. S., where, Mr. Bennett of St. Lewis traded with the Ottos and Paneys two years. I went on shore to shoot some elk on a sand bar to the L. S. 
I fired at one but did not get him, went out into a large extensive bottom the greater part of which overflows, the part that does not overflow, is rich and well timbered, some small open prairies near the hills. The boat passed the lower part of a large island situated on the S. S. above the lower point of this island on the S. S. A. 2. Large creek corns into the river called by the Mahas Indians Nishnabietana 50 yards This is a considerable creek nearly as large as the Mine River, and runs parallel with the Missouri, the greater part of its course. In those small prairies or glades I saw wild timothy, lamb's quarter, cuckleburs, and rich weed. On the edges grow some grapes, plums, and gooseberries. I joined the boat which had came to and camped in a bend opposed. The large island before mentioned on the L. S. Several men unwell with boils, felns, and k. The river falls a little. Clark, July 15, 1804. July 15, Sunday, 1804. A heavy fog this morning which detained us until 7 o'clock, put Druyer S.G.T. Floyd on shore, at 9 I took two men and went on shore, with a view to kill some elk, passed through open plains, and Baroni lands crossed three beautiful small streams of water, saw great quantity of chairs plums, grapes and berries of dift. Kinds, the lands generally of a good quality, on the streams the wood escapes the fire, at about seven miles I struck the river at the mouth of Mahar Creek about forty yards wide. Near this creek on a high part of the prairie I had an extensive view of the river and Count Ray on both sides. On S, a continuation of the plain as far as I could see, on the N, a bottom prairie of about five milliseconds wide and eighteen or twenty long, hills back of this plain. I swam across the creek and waited for the boat about three miles above, we camped opst. An Island. Clark, July 15, 1804. July 15, Sunday a heavy fog this morning prevented our setting out before seven o'clock, at nine I took two men and walked on the L.S. I crossed three beautiful streams of runnig water heading in the prairies on those stream the lands very fine covered with pea vine and rich weed the high prairies are also good land covered with grass entirely void of timber except what grows on the water. I proceeded on through those prairies several miles to the mouth of a large creek on the L. S. called, 2, Namahar this is a small river, about 100 yards, above the mouth it is 40 yards wide, at the mouth, as all other creeks and rivers falling into the Misauri are, much narrower than a little distance up. After continuing at the mouth of this creek about an hour, I swam across and proceeded on about three miles and halted to W.A.T.E. for the boat, which was some distance below in all this day's march through woods and prairies. I only saw three deer and three fawns, I had at one part of the prairie a very extensive view of all the Count Ray around up and down the river a considerable distance, on the Larved. S.D., one continental plain, on the S.S. Some timber on the bank of the river, for a short distance back of this timber is a bottom plain of four or five miles back to the hills and under the hills between them and the river this plain appeared to extend twenty or thirty miles. Those hills have but little timber, and the plain appears to continue back of them, I saw great quantities of grapes, plums, or two kinds wild cherries of two kinds, hazelnuts, and gooseberries. We camped in a point of woods on the larboard s, opst. A large island. Lewis, July 15, 1804. Sunday July 15 this evening I discovered that my chronometer had stoked, nor can I assign any cause for this accident. She had been wound up the preceding noon as usual. This is the third instance in which this instrument has stopped in a similar manner since she NAS been in my possession, though the first only since our departure from the River Du Bois. In the two preceding cases when she was again set in motion, and her rate of going determined by a series of equal altitudes of the sun taken for that purpose. It was found to be the same precisely as that mentioned in the preliminary remarks to these observations, or 15 s and 5 tenths too slow in 24 h as her rate of going after stoping. And begin again set in motion has in two instances proved to be the same, I have concluded, that whatever this impediment may proceed from, it is not caused by any material injury which her works have sustained, and that when she is in motion. 
her error on mean time above stated, may be depended on as accurate. In consequence of the chronometers having thus accidentally stoked, I determined to come to at the first convenient place and make such observations as were necessary to ascertain her error, establish the latitude and longitude, and determine the variation of the nettle, in order to fix a second point of departure. Clark, July 16, 1804 July 16, 1804 Monday set out very early and proceeded on the side of a prairie past the head of the island Opst. Which we camped last night, one, past a small willow island off the L. Point, hills make near the river, two, past a large island nearest the LS, below the PT a small willow ISD. Also one on the side. This large island is called Fair Sun the wind favorable from the south. Boat run on a sawyer, for, pass a place on the LS, where the hill about twenty acres has sliped into the river lately just above passed under a cliff of sandstone LS. A number of buds nests in the holes and crevices of this rock which continues two miles, five, past a willow island in a deep bend to the SS. River two mile wide at this place, note deed snags across, past the lower point of a island called Al Chauvin situated on the L point opposite an extensive prairie on the S-S. This prairie I call Ball Pated Prairie from the range Ball Hills, at from three to six miles from the river as far as my sight will extend, we camped in a point of woods opst. The ISD. On S-S, in a bend. Clark, July 16, 1804. July 16, Monday. 1804 set out this morning very early and proceeded on under a gentle breeze from the S past the upper point of the island an extensive prairie on the L S. Past a large, one, island called Fair Sun ISD. A small willow isled. At the lower point on the L S the boat passed on the L S. Of those islands several small sand islands in the channel, the boat run on the point of a snag, two, past a place above the island L S where about twenty acres of the hill has latterly sliped into the river above a cliff of sandstone for about two miles, the resort of buds of different kinds to rear their young. 5. Past a willow island in a deep bend to the S.S. Opposite the river is about two miles wide, and not very deep as the snag may be seen across, scattering, past the lower point of an island called by French Chauvins situated off the L, point opposite an extensive prairie on the S.S. This prairie I call Ball Gated Prairie, from a range of Ball Hills parallel to the river and at from three to six miles distant from it, and extends as far up and down as I can see, we camped in a point of woods on the L.S. above the lower point of the island. River Falling Lewis, July 16, 1804 Monday 16th we set out at an early hour, the morning was cloudy, could find no convenient situation for observation, proceeded until a little before noon when we came to on the lard. Shore opposite to the center of Good Island where I observed the meridian altitude of Oz L L, with octant by the back observation, which gave me the latitude, 40 degrees 20 minutes 12 seconds north. I now set the chronometer as near noon as this observation would enable me, and proceeded until evening, when we came to on the start. Shore opposite the lower point of the island of the Bald Prairie where we encamped. Clark, July 17, 1804. July 17, Tuesday, we concluded to lay by today to fix the longitude, and get the chronometer right, she run down day before yesterday, several men out hunting today Captain. Lewis rode out to Nishnabatana Creek which passes through. The prairie, on which there is some few trees, within underscore 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 mile of the Missourius, wind from the S.E. Several of the party have tumors of different kinds some of which is very troublesome and difficulty to cure. I took a meridian altitude, 43 degrees 27 minutes, which made the latitude of this place 40 degrees 27 minutes 6 seconds for tenths north. Dot, the Ball Hills bear north 25 degrees west for 30 mes. The bend on L, S, passing the ISD. On the right side is N, 28 degrees west for milliseconds took equal altitudes try to part of the calm point. Of the current in 40 seconds the water run 50 fat hem 30 inch and 20, in places. Cap Lures returned, 
saw some hand some count ray, the creek near the high land is rapid and nearly as muddy as the river. And rising gut rich caught two very fat cat fish g drewyer killed three deer, and our fields won, a puff of wind brought swarms of mosquitoes, which disappeared in two hours, blown off by a continuation of the same breeze. Clark, July 17, 1804. Bald pated prairie July 17, Tuesday 1804 We concluded lay by at this place today to fix the latitude and longitude of this place to correct the chronometer run down Sunday, several men out by day light hunting captain. Louis Consid. To ride out to Nishnabietana Creek which passes under the ball hills near this place and at one place a little above this camp is within 300 yards of the Missouris on this creek grows some few trees of oak walnut and mulberry. I took meridian altitude of Sun L.L., 43 degrees 27 minutes, which made the latitude 40 degrees 27 minutes 5 seconds 4 tenths north, wind from the south E. Several of the party much afflicted with turners of different kinds, some of which is very troublesome and difficult to cure. Captain. Lewis returned in the evening. He saw some handsome Count Ray and says that the aforesaid creek is rapid mud day and running, this creek which is at ten or twelve from its mouth. Within three hundred yards of the river is at least sixteen foot lower than the river, the high lands from our camp in this bald pated prairie bears north twenty-five degrees west. Up the R. The common current taken with a log runs fifty fat hen in forty inch some places much swifter in thirty, and even twenty seconds of time, five deer killed today. Clark, July 18, 1804. July 18 Wednesday a fair morning the river falling fast. Set out at sunrise under a gentle breeze from S. E by S at three miles past the head of the island on L. S. called by the French chauve or bald pate, one, obst. The middle of this island the creek on L. S. is within three hundred yards of the river. Back of this island the lower point of, two, another island in the bend to the L. S., past large sandbar making out from each point with many channels passing through them, current runs fifty fathom. In forty-one seconds, but little timber on either side of the river, except the ists. And points which are low wet and covered with lofty trees, cottonwood mulberry elm and k. And k. Past the head of a long island in high water at this time no water passes through the channel, three, opposite the lower point of a island on the L, S, past the island and opst. The point, four, above and on the L, S. The hills come to the river, this hill has sliped into the river for about three quarters of a mile, and leaves a bluff of considerable height back of it this hill is about two hundred foot high compst. Of sandstone intermingled with iron or of an inferior quality on a bed of soft slate stone. We passed a very bad sand bar, for, a little above the hill and encamped on the L, S. Opposite a small island in the river, saw a dog this evening appeared to be nearly starved to death, he must have been left by some party of hunters we gave him some meat, he would not come near. G. Drewer brought in two deer this evening. Clark, July 18, 1804. July 18 Wednesday. 1804 A fair morning the river falling fast set out this morning at sunrise under a gentle breeze from the S. E. by S. passing over the prairie, at about three miles we passed the head of the island L. S., called by the French chob or bald pate opposite the middle of, 1. this island the creek on the S. S. is nearest the river, in high water an island is formed in the bind above the last, 2 measured the current and found that in forty-one seconds it run yo fathoms but little timber is to be seen except in the low points on islands and on creeks. The growth of timber is generally cotton mulberry elm sycamore and canned. Past a island on the 2D point to the SS opposite the water, 3, when high passes out in the plain opposite this island on the L. S. The hills jet to the river, for, this hill has sliped from the top which forms a bluff above and two hundred foot above the water. About three quarters of a mile in length and about two hundred feet in depth has sliped into the river it is composed of sandstone intermixed with an indifferent. Iron or near the bottom or next to the water is a soft slate stone, some pebble is also intermixed, 
we passed a very bad sandbar and encamped on the L.S. at the lower point of the oven islands and opposite the prairie called. By the French for Le Tour de saw a dog nearly starved on the bank, gave him some meat, he would not follow, our hunters killed two deer today. Clark, July 19. 1804. July 19th after breakfast which was on a rosted ribs of a deer a little and a little coffee I walked on shore intending only to keep up with the boat, soon after I got on shore, saw some fresh elk sign. Which I was induced to pursue those animals by their track to the hills after ascending and passing through a narrow strip of woodland, came suddenly into an open and bound less prairie. I say bound less because I could not see the extent of the plain in any direction, the timber appeared to be confined to the river creeks and small branches. This prairie was covered with grass about eighteen inches or two feet high and contained little of anything else, except as before mentioned on the river creeks and. This prospect was so sudden and entertaining that I forgot the object of my prosuda and turned my attention to the variety which presented themselves to my view after continuing on this rise for some minutes. I determined to make my course to a line of woods to S. E. I found in this wood a beautiful stream of running water, in pursuing it down several others joined it and at three miles fell into the river between two cliffs, I went up and under one cliff of dark rich clay for one half me. Above this a clay bank which had sliped in here I found sandstone containing iron ore, this ore appears to be embedded under the clay just above the water. Clark, July 19th. 1804. July 19th Thursday. 1804 set out early pass between two islands one in mid. And the other L. S. Opst. Where prairie approaches the river S. S. This place is called the baker's oven or in French for le tour tier past. Some highlands 41 halves millisecond above the ists. On the L. S. Forming a cliff to the river of yellow earth, on the top of prairie, past. Many a bad sandbar in this distance, and the river wide and shallow, above this cliff two small beautiful runs come from the plains and fall into the river, a deer lick on the first, above those two creeks. I found in my walk on shore some more in a bank which had sliped into the river three quarters me. Above the creeks, I took a seraquite around and found that those two runs mentioned contained a good proportion of wood surrounded by a plain, with grass about eighteen inches. High, Captain Lewis walked on shore after dinner, in the first bind to the right above those runs past a small island opst. Is a sand bar I call this island Butter Island, as at this place we mad use of the last of our butter, as we approach this great river plat the sand bars are much more numerous than they were, and the quick and rolling sands much more dangerous. Where the prairies approach the river it is very wide, the banks of those plains being much easier to undermine and fall than the woodland past, for, a willow island situated near the middle of the river, a sand bar on the S. S. and a deep bend to the L. S. camped on the right side of the willow island W. Bratton hunting on the L. S. swam to the island. Hunters drew ear killed two deer, saw great numbers of young G's. The river still falling a little sand bars thick always in view. Clark, July 19, 1804. July 19, Thursday 1804 set out early past between two small islands, one in the middle of the river, the other close on the L.S. opposite a prairie S. S. called, 1, by the French for Le Tour Tray, the Bakers of an Islands, past, 2, some high cliff 41 halves miles above the islands on the L.S. Of yellow earth past several sand bars that were wide and at one place very shallow, Two small beautiful runs falls into the river near each other at this cliff. A deer lick two hundred yards up the lowest of those runs, those runs head at no great distance in the plains and pass through of timber to the river. In my walk on shore I found some more in the bank above those runs which I take to be iron ore, three, at this place the side of the hill has sliped about halfway into the river for three quarters of a mile forming a cliff from the top of the hill above. In the first bend to the right past a small island a sand bar opposite. Worthy of remark as we approach this great river plate the sand bars much more numerous and the quick or moving sands much worse than they were below at the places where prairies approach the river it is very wide those places being much easier to wash and undermine than the woodlands. 
4. Past a willow ISD. Situated near the middle of the river and a large sand making out from the SS, a deep bend to the LS, we camped at the head of this island on the starboard side of it, hunters killed two deer. Saw great numbers of young G's river falling a little. Clark, July 20th, 1804. July 20th Friday, 1804, a fog this morning and very cool George Druyer sick proceed on over a sandbar, Bratton swam the river to get his gun and clothes left last night PSD a large willow ISD. On the elf S. 1, past the mouth of low K Plur the English of which is the water which cries this creek is about 20 yards wide falls into the river above a gift of brown clay L. S. Opposite a willow island, at this creek I went on shore took our fields with me and went up this creek several miles and crossed through the plains to the river above with the view of finding elk, we walked all day through those prairies without seeing any. I killed an immense large yellow wolf the Count Ray Thrall which we walked after leaving the creek was good land covered with grass interspersed with groves and scattering timber near and about the heads of branches one of them without success. Camped above the bar on the L. S. A very agreeable breeze all night surged. Pryor and Joe. Fields brought in two deer river still falling. A large spring three of four me. Below camp. Clark, July 20th, 1804. July 20th, Friday 1804 a cool morning past a large willow island, one, on the S. S. and the mouth of creek about 25 yards wide on the L. S. Called by the French Luek Plur, or though the water which cries this creek falls into the river above a cliff of brown clay opposite the Willow Island. I went out above the mouth of this creek and walked the greater part of the day through plains interspeased with small groves of timber on the branches and some scattering trees about the heads of the runs, I killed a very large yellow wolf. The soil of those prairies appears rich but much parched with the frequent fires dash, after I returned to the boat we proceeded around a large sandbar making out from the L. S. Opst. A fountain of water coming out of a hill L. S. and affording water sufficient to turn a mill. The prairies as far as I was out appeared to be well watered, with small streams of running water surged. Pryor and Joe. Fields brought in two deer this evening, a very pleasant breeze from the N. W. All night, river falling a little. It is worthy of observation to mention that our party has been much healthier on the voyage than parties of the same number is in any other situation turners have been troublesome to them all. From this evening's encampment a man may walk to the Payne village on the S bank of the Platte River in two days. And to the autos in one day all those Indians are situated on the south bank of the Plate River, as those Indians are now out in the prairies following and hunting the buffalo, I fear we will not see them. Lewis, July 21, 1804. July 21, 1804 By a boiling motion or ebullition of its waters occasioned no doubt by the rolling and irregular motion of the sand of which its bed is entirely composed. The particles of this sand being remarkably small and light it is easily buoyed up and is hurried by this impetuous torrent in large masses from place to place in with irresistible force. Collecting and forming sandbars in the course of a few hours which has suddenly dissipated to form others and give place perhaps to the deepest channel of the river. Where it enters the Missouri its superior force changes and directs the current of that river against its northern bank where it is compressed within a channel less than one-third of the width it had just before occupied. It does not furnish the Missouri with its coloring matter as has been asserted by some, but it throws into it immense quantities of sand and gives a celerity to its current of which it abates but little until its junction with the Mississippi. The water of this river is turbid at all seasons of the year but is by no means as much so as that of the Missouri. The sediment it deposits consists of very fine particles of white sand while that of the Missouri is composed principally of a dark rich loam in much greater quantity. July 21st From the experiments and observations we were enabled to make with respect to the comparative velocities of the currents of the rivers Mississippi Missouri and Platte it results that a vessel will float in the Mississippi below the entrance of the Missouri at the rate of 4 miles an hour. In the Missouri from its junction with the Mississippi to the entrance of the Osage River from 51 halves to 6 from thence to the mouth of the Kansas from 61 halves to 7.
from thence to the plat 51 halves while the plat is at least 8. The Missouri above the junction of the river plat is equal to about 31 halves miles an hour as far as the mouth of the Cheyenne where its current still abates and becomes equal to about 3 miles an hour from information it does not increase its velocity for. Clark. July 21, 1804. July 21st Saturday, set out very early and a gentle breeze from the S. E proceeded on very well, past A, 1, Willow Island L S Obst. A bad sand bar past some high land covered with timber, in this hill is cement rock and limestone the water runs out and forms several little islands in, 2, high water on the S S. A large sand bar on the S S. Above and opposite the wooded high land. At about seven o'clock the wind ceased and it commenced raining past many sandbars opposite or in the mouth of the great river plate this river which is much more rapid than the Missouri has thrown out immense quantities of sand forming large sand banks at its mouth and forced the Missouri close under the S. S. The sands of this river comes rolling down with the current which is crowded with sandbars and not five feet water at any place across its mouth, the rapidity of the current of this river which is greater than that of the Missouri. Its width at the mouth across the bars is about three quarters of a mile, higher up I am told by one of the bowmen that he was two winters on this river above and that it does not rise seven feet, but spreads over three miles at some places. Captain Lewis and myself went up some distance and crossed found it shallow. This river does not rise over six or seven feet. Proceeded on past the mouth of Papillion or Butterfly Creek three miles on the L.S., a large sandbar opposite on that side camped above this barren L.S. A great number of wolves about us all night are. Fields killed a deer hard wind and W. Cold. Clark, July 21, 1804. July 21st, Saturday 1804 set out early under a gentle breeze from the S.E., proceeded on very well, past, 1, a willow island on the L.S. Opposite a bad sandbar, some high lands covered with timber L.S. in this hill is limestone and cemented rock of shells and. 2, in high water the opposite side is cut through by several small channels, forming small islands, a large sandbar opposite the hill at seven o'clock the wind lulled and it calmed raining. Arrived at the lower mouth of the Great River Platte at ten o'clock, about three milliseconds. Above the hill of Woodland, the same range of high land continues within three quarters of a mile of the mouth below, this great river being much more rapid than the Missouri forces its current against the opposite shore. The current of this river comes with great velocity rolling its sands into the Missouri. Filling up its bend and compelling it to encroach on the S shore, we found great difficulty in passing around the sand at the mouth of this river Captain Lewis and myself with six men in a pierogi went up this great river plate about one miles. Found the current very rapid rolling over sands, passing through different channels none of them more than five or six feet deep. About six hundred yards wide at the mouth, I am told by one of our party who wintered two winters on this river that it is much wider above and does not rise more than five or six feet spreads very and from its rapidity and rolling sands cannot be navigated with boats or pirogues, the Indians pass this river in skin boats which is flat and will not turn over. The Ottos a small nation reside on the south side ten leagues up, the Paines on the same side five leagues higher up, about ten leagues up this river on the S. Side a small river comes into the Platte called Salt River. The water's so brackish that it can't be drank at some seasons, above this river and on the north side a small river falls into the plat called Elk River this river runs parallel white the Missouri, at three miles past a small river on the L. S. called Papillion or Butterfly C. 18 yards wide a large sandbar off the mouth, we proceeded on to get to a good place to camp and delay a few days, passed around this sandbar and came to for the night on the L. S. a very hard wind from the end. W. I went on shore S. S. and proceeded up one mile through high bottom land open a great number of wolves about us this evening. Clark, July 22. 1804. 
July 22 Sunday set out very early with a view of getting some timbered land and a good situation to take equal altitudes in time proceeded on nearly a north 15 degrees west 7 milliseconds. To a PTSS opposite some high lands on LS, above the upper point of a long willow island in the middle of the river six deer killed today we determined to stay here four or five days to take and make ops. And refresh our men also to send dispatches back to government, wind hard NW, cold. Clark, July 22, 1804. 22 of July, 1804 completely arranged our camp, posted two sentinels so as to completely guard the camp, formed bowers for the min-dollar cc and course from our plate north 15 degrees west, 10 ms. Clark, July 22, 1804. July 22, Sunday 1804 set out very early with a view of getting to some situation above in time to take equal altitudes and take observations as well as one calculated to make our party comfortable in a situation where they could receive the benefit of a shade, past a large sandbar opposite a small river on the L. S. at three miles above plate called Papillion or Butterfly Creek a sandbar and in Willow Island opposite a creek nine milliseconds, above the plate on the S. S. called Mosquitoes Creek Prairie on both sides of the river. Came to and formed a camp on the S. S. Above a small willow island, and opposite the first hill which approached the river on the L. S. and covered with timbers of oak walnut elm and. And. This being a good situation and much nearer the Otto's town than the mouth of the Platte, we concluded to delay at this place a few days and send for some of the chiefs of that nation to let them know of the change of government. The wishes of our government to cultivate friendship with them. The objects of our journey and to present them with a flag and some small presents. Some of our provisions in the French pierogi being what it became necessary to dry them a few days, wind hard from N.W. Five deer killed today, the river rise a little. Lewis, July 22, 1804. July 22, 1804. A summary description of the apparatus employed in the following observations. Containing also some remarks on the manner in which they have been employed, and the method observed in recording the observations made with them. First, a brass sextant of 10 inches radius, graduated to 15 which by the assistance of the nonius was divisible to 15 inch, and half of this sum by means of the micrometer could readily be distinguished, therefore, 7. 5 inch of an angle was perceptible with this instrument, she was also furnished with three eyepieces, consisting of a hollow tube and two telescopes one of which last reversed the images of observed objects. Finding on experiment that the reversing telescope when employed as the eyepiece gave me a more full and perfect image than either of the others, I have most generally employed it in all the observations made with this instrument. When thus prepared I found from a series of observations that the quantity of her index error was 8 foot 45 inch dash, this sum is therefore considered as the standing error of the instrument unless otherwise expressly mentioned. The altitudes of all objects, observed as well with this instrument as with the octant were by means of a reflecting surface. And those stated to have been taken with the sextant are the degrees, minutes, and shown by the graduated limb of the instrument at the time of observation and are of course the double altitudes of the objects observed. 2 ed, a common octant of 14 inches radius, graduated to 20 foot, which by means of the nonius was devisible to one, half of this sum, or 30 inch was perceptible by means of a micrometer. This instrument was prepared for both the fore and back observation. Her error in the fore observation is 2 degree plus, and, and in the back observation 2 degrees are 1 foot 40 inches. 3 inch plus at the time of our departure from the river Du Bois until the present moment, the sun's altitude at noon has been too great to be reached with my sextant, for this purpose I have therefore employed the octant by the back observation. The degrees, and, recorded for the sun's altitude by the back observation express only the angle given by the graduated limb of the instrument at the time of observation, and are the compliment of the double altitude of the sun's observed limb. If therefore the angle recorded be taken from 180 degrees the remainder will be the double altitude of the observed object, or that which would be given by the fore observation with a reflecting surface. Third, an artificial horizon on the construction recommended and practiced by Mr. Andrew. 
Ellicott of Lancaster, Pensilla, in which water is used as the reflecting surface. Believing this artificial horizon liable to less error than any other in my possession, I have uniformly used it when the object observed was sufficiently bright to reflect a distinct image. But as much light is lost by reflection from water I found it inconvenient in most cases to take the altitude of the moon with this horizon, and that of a star impracticable with any degree of accuracy. Fourth, an artificial horizon constructed in the manner recommended by Mr. Patterson of Philadelphia, glass is here used as the reflecting surface. This horizon consists of a glass plane with a single reflecting surface, cemented to the flat side of the larger segment of a wooden ball. Adjusted by means of a spirit level and a triangular stand with a triangular mortise cut through its center sufficiently large to admit of the wooden ball partially. The stand rests on three screws inserted near its angles, which serve as feet for it to rest on while they assist also in the adjustment. This horizon I have employed in taking the altitude of the sun when his image he has been rethered too dull for a perfect reflection from water, I have used it generally in taking the altitude of the moon, and in some cases of the stars also. It gives the moon's image very perfectly, and when carefully adjusted I consider it as liable to but little error. Fifth, an artificial horizon formed of the index specula of a sextant cemented to a flat board. Adjusted by means of a spirit level and the triangular stand before described. As this glass reflects from both surfaces it gives the images of all objects much more bright than either of the other horizons. I have therefore most generally employed it in observing the altitudes of stars. Sixth, a chronometer, her balance wheel and escapement were on the most improved construction. She rested on her back, in a small case prepared for her, suspended by an universal joint. She was carefully wound up every day at twelve o'clock. Her rate of going as ascertained by a series of observations made by myself for that purpose was found to be fifteen seconds and a five-tenths of a second too slow in twenty-four hours on mean solar time. This is nearly the same result as that found by Mr. Andrew Ellicott who was so obliging as to examine her rate of going for the space of fourteen days, in the summer 1803. Her rate of going as ascertained by that gentleman was 15.6 s too slow m, t. In 24 h and that she went from 3 to 4 s slower the last 12 h, than she did the first 12 h, after being wound up. At 12 o'clock. On the 14th day of May 1804, being the day on which the detachment left the mouth of the river Du Bois, the chronometer was too fast m, t, 6 m, 32 s and 2 tenths. This timepiece was regulated on mean time, and the time entered in the following observations is that shown by her at the place of observation. The day is reckoned on civil time, i.e., commencing at midnight. Seventh, a circumferenter, circle six inches diameter, on the common construction, by means of this instrument adjusted with the spirit level, I have taken the magnetic azimuth of the sun and pole star. It has also been employed in taking the traverse of the river, from the courses thus obtained, together with the distances estimated from point to point, the chart of the Missouri has been formed which now accompanies these observations. The several points of observation are marked with a cross of red ink, and numbered in such manner as to correspond with the celestial observations made at those points respectively. Clark, July 23, 1804. Camp 10 MS. Above the river plate Monday July the 23rd a fair morning sent out a party of five men to look to timber for oars two other parties to hunt at eleven o'clock sent, G. Druyer and Peter Cruzet one half INDN to the Otto's village about eighteen milliseconds. West of our camp, to invite the chiefs and principal men of that nation to come and talk with us, and and, also the panic if they should meet with any of that nation, also on the S side of the plate thirty milliseconds. Higher up, at this season of the year all the Indians in this quarter are in the plains hunting the buffalo from some sign seen by our hunter and the prairies being on fire in the direction of the village induce a belief that the nation have. Returned to get green corn, raised a flag staff put out some provisions which got wet in the French pierogi to sun and dry, I commenced copying my map of the river to send to the pressed. Of U.S., by the return of a proprietary of soldiers, from Illinois five deer killed, one man a bad rising on his left breast. Wind from the N.W. 
Clark, July 23, 1804. Camp White Catfish 10 miles above the Platte River Monday the 23rd of July, 1804 A fair morning set a party to look for timber for oars, two parties to hunt. At 11 o'clock sent off George Druyer and Peter Cruzette with some tobacco to invite the autos if at their town and Paneys if they saw them to come and talk with us at our camp and and at this season the Indians on this river are in the prairies hunting the buffalo but from some signs of hunters near this place and the plains being on fire near their towns induce a belief that they this nation have returned to get some green corn. Or rosting years, raised a flag staff sunned and dried our provisions and I commence copying a map of the river below to send to the P underscore 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 US 5 deer killed today one man with a turner on his breast prepared our camp the men put their arms in order. Wind hard this afternoon from the N, W. Equal altitudes taken at the White Catfish Camp, 10 miles above the River Platte. Clark, July 24, 1804. White Catfish Camp 24th of July Tuesday. A fair morning the wind rose with the sun and blows hard from the S. Thus southerly breezes are dry cool and refreshing. The northerly breezes which is more frequent is much cooler, and moist, I continue my drawing. Cap Lewis also engaged preparing some paper to send back, one of the men caught a white catfish, the eyes small, and tail resembling that of a dolphin. Clark, July 24, 1804. White Catfish Camp 10 MS. Above Platte 24, of July 1804 Tuesday a fair day the wind blows hard from the south, the breezes which are very frequent on this part of the Missouri is cool and refreshing. Several hunters out today. But as the game of all kinds are scarce only two deer were brought in, I am much engaged drawing off a map, Captain. Lewis also much engaged in preparing papers to send back by a pier oak, which we intended to send back from the river plate, observations at this place makes the latitude 41 degrees 3 minutes 19 seconds north. This evening Guthridge caught a white catfish. Its eyes small and tail much like that of a dolphin. Clark, July 25, 1804. White Catfish Camp 25th of July Wednesday. Several hunters sent out. At two o'clock the two men sent to the Adias village returned and informed that no Indians were at the town they saw some fresh sign near that place which they pursued, but could not find them. They having taken precautions to conceal the route which they went out from the village the inns. Of the Missouris being at war with one and the other or other Indians, move in large bodies and sometimes the whole nation continue to camp together on their hunting pleas. Those men inform that they passed through a open plain all the way to the town a few trees excepted on the watercourses, they crossed the papillion or the butterfly creek within a few miles of camp and near the village a handsome. River of one hundred yards wide called the Corn de Cherf or the Elkhorn, which mouths below the town in the plate and side. Wind from the S.E. Two deer and a turkey killed today several grues seen in the prairie. Clark, July 25, 1804. White Catfish Camp 25th of July Wednesday A fair morning several hunters out today at two o'clock Druyer and Peter return from the Otto's village and informs that no Indians were at their towns, they saw some fresh signs of a small party but could not find them. In their route to the towns, which is about 18 miles west, they passed through a open prairie crossed papillion or butterfly creek and a small beautiful river which run into the plat a little below the town called Corn de Charf or Elkhorn River this. River is about 100 yards wide with clear water and a gravely channel. Wind from the S.E. Two deer killed today one turkey several grew seen today. Clark, July 26, 1804. Wit Catfish Camp 26 of July Thursday. The wind blew very hard all day from the south with clouds of sand which incommoded me very much in my tent, and as I could not draw in the boat was obliged to combat with the muscutter. Under a shade in the woods dash. I opened the breast of a man the discharge gave him ease and five beaver caught near camp only one deer killed today. The count ray back from camp on the SS is a bottom of about five milliseconds wide one half the distribution. Timber, 
the other high bottom prairie, the Obst. Side a high hill about 170 foot rock foundation. Timbered back and below. A prairie. Clark, July 26, 1804. Catfish which is white camp 26th of July Thursday 1804 for the wind blustering and hard from the south all day which blowed the clouds of sand in such a manner that I could not complete my pan in the tent. The boat rolled in such a manner that I could do nothing in that, I was compelled to go to the woods and combat with the musketers. I opened the turner of a man on the left breast, which discharged half a point. Five beaver caught near this camp the flesh of which we made use of, this evening we found very pleasant, only one deer killed today. The Count Ray back from camp on the S.S. is a bottom of about five mile wide, one half the distance wood and the ball. Plain high and dry. The opposed side a high hill about 170 foot rock foundation, carved. With timber, back and below is a plain. Lewis, July 27, 1804. White Catfish Camp July 27 Friday, charged the boat and pierogi after a small shower of rain, completed our oars and poles, crossed over the two horses, with a view of their going on the SW. Side of the Missouri and set out at half past one o'clock proceeded on very well under a gentle breeze. Passed a high island of high wood land on the L. Side just above camp, this island is formed by a pond supplied by a great number of springs from this hill, this pond has two outlets, and when the river is high the water passes through the pond, past a sand island in the second bend to the right. Camped in a bend to the L. S. in some wood, I took our fields and walked on shore and killed a deer, and did not get to the boat untile after night a beautiful breeze from the N.W. This evening which would have been very agreeable, had the mesquiters been tolerably pacific, but they were raging all night, some about the cis of house flays. Clark, July 27. 1804. White Catfish Camp 10 milliseconds above Platte 27th of July Friday, a small shower of rain this morning, at 10 o'clock commenced loading the boat and pierogi. Had all the oars completely fixed, swam over the two remaining horses to the L.S. With the view of the hunters going on that side, after getting everything complete, we set sail under a gentle breeze from the south and proceeded on, past the island, formed by a pond fed by springs, on the L.S. Of high land covered with timber, in the second bend to the right a large sand island in the river a high prairie on the S.S. Dash. As we were setting out today one man killed a buck and another cut his knee very bad camped in a bend to the L. Side in a coops of trees, a very agreeable breeze from the N.W. this evening. I killed a deer in the prairie and found the mosquitoes so thick and troublesome that it was disagreeable and painful to continue a moment still. I took one man R. Fields and walked on shore with a view of examining saw mounds on the L.S. Of the river, those mounds I found to be of different height shape and size, some composed of sand some earth and sand, the highest next to the river all of which covered about 200 acres of land. In a circular form on the side from the river a low bottom and small pond. The autos formerly lived here I did not get to the boat untile after night. Clark, July 28th. 1804. July 28 Saturday set out this morning early, the wind blew from the N, W, by N, a dark smoky morning, some rain at one me. Past a bluff on the S, S, it being the first high land approaching the river above the Nodaway, a island, and creek S, S, just above this creek I call Indian Knob G, Druyer came with a deer and informs he heard firing to the S, W. I walked on shore on the S.S., found some good prairie out from the S. point. The high lands approached the river first bend to left the party on shore brought in a Missouri Indian who resides with the autos, this Indian and two others were hunting in the prairie their camp is about four miles off. This Indian informs that his nation is in the plains hunting the buffalo, the party with which he is encamped is about twenty family hunting the elk, we landed on S.S. Below an island. Clark, July 28, 1804. July the 28, Saturday 1804 set out this morning early, the wind from the N.W. by N., a dark smoky morning some rain passed at one me. 
a bluff on the SS. The first high land above the Nodaway approaching the river on that side of island and creek 15 yards wide on the SS. Above this bluff, as this creek has no name call it Indian Knob Creek our party on shore came to the river and informs that they heard firing to the SW below this high land on the SS. The Iowa Indians formerly lived, the flank came in and informed they heard two guns to the SW the highland approaches in the first bend to the left, we camped on the SS. Below the point of an island, G. Druyer brought in a Missouri Indian which he met with hunting in the prairie this Indian is one of the few remaining of that nation, and lives with the Ottos, his camp about four miles from the river. He informs that the great gang of the nation were hunting the buffalo in the plains. H.S. party was small consisting only of about twenty lodges, underscore 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 miles further another camp where there was a French man, who lived in the nation, this Indian appeared sprightly, and appeared to make use of the same pronouncation of the Osarge. Calling a chief Inca July 29th Sunday we sent one Frenchman Le Liberty and the Indian to the camp to invite the party to meet us at the next bend of high land on the L. S. A dark morning wind from the W. N. W. rained all last night set out at five o'clock and proceeded on past the island, opposite this island on the S. S. The creek called Indian Knob Creek which mouths several miles on a direct line below. Is within 20 feet of the Missouri and about 5 feet higher. Caught three large catfish today very fat one of them nearly white those cat are so plenty that they may be caught in any part of this river but few fish of any other kind. 4. At the commencement of this course passed much fallen timber apparently the ravages of a dreadful hurricane which had passed obliquely across the river from N. W. to S. E. about twelve months since. Many trees were broken off near the ground the trunks of which were sound and four feet in diameter. Willard lost his gun in Bowyer's R. R. Fields dive and brought it up all the woodland on this part of the Missouri's appear to be confined to the points and islands. Bowyer's river is provably twenty-five yards. Wide, Willard near losing his gun in this river, two men sick and several with boils, a cold day wind from the N.W. Psalm rain the fore part of the day. Clark, July 29, 1804. July 29, Sunday, 1804 sent a French man La Liberty with the Indian to Autier's camp to invite the Indians to meet us on the river above, a dark rainy morning wind from the W.N.W. Rained all the last night, set out at five o'clock opposite the one island, the bend to the right or S.S is within twenty feet of Indian Knob Creek, the water of this creek is five feet higher than that of the river. Past the Isle. We stoked to dine under some high trees near the high land on the L. S. In a few minutes caught three very large catfish, three, one nearly white, those fish are in great plenty on the sides of the river and very fat, a quart of oil came out of the surplus fat of one of these fish, for, above this high land and on the S. S. Past much falling timber apparently the ravages of a dreadful hurricane which had passed obliquely across the river from N. W. To S. E. About twelve months since, many trees were broken off near the ground the trunks of which were sound and four feet in diameter, two, about three quarters of a me. Above the island on the S. S. A creek corns in called Boyers R. This creek is twenty-five yards wide, one man in attempting to cross this creek on a log let his gun fall in, our fields dived and brought it up proceeded on to a point on the S.S. and camped. Clark, July 30, 1804. July the 30th Monday set out early and proceeded on west 33 to 4 M.E.S. Passed. 1 P.T. to the L.S. and 1 to the S.S. to a clear open prairie on the L.S which is on a rise of about seventy feet higher than the bottom which is also a prairie covered with high grass plums grapevine and hazel both forming a bluff to the river. The lower prairie is above high water mark at the foot of the rising ground and below the high bluff we came to in a grove of timber and formed a camp raised a flag pole. And determined to wait for the Atu Indians, the white horse which we found below died last night, after posting out the guards and and Sent out four men to hunt I am engaged in underscore 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 and drawing off my courses to accompany the map drawn at White Catfish Camp, Captain. 
Lewis and myself walked in the prairie on the top of the bluff and observed the most beautiful prospects imaginable, this prairie is covered with grass about 10 or 12 inch high. Land rich, rises about one half a mile back something higher and is a plain as fur as can be seen, under those high lands next the river is beautiful bottom interspersed with groves of timber. The river may be seen for a great distance both above and below meandering through the plains between two ranges of high land which appear to be from 4 to 20 milliseconds. Apart, each bend of the river forming a point which contains tall timber, principally willow cotton with some mulberry elm sycamore and ash. The groves contain walnut coffee nut and oak in addition and hickory and lin joe. Fields killed braro or as the pony call it chokar tuch, this on email burrows in the ground and feeds on bugs and flesh principally the little dogs of the prairie, also something of vegetable kind his shape and size is like that of a beaver. His head mouth and is like a dog with its ears cut off, his tail and hair like that of a ground hog something longer and lighter, his intrals like a hog's, his skin thick and loose, white and hair short under its belly, of the species of the bear. And it has a white streak from its nose to its shoulders, the toe nails of its four feet which is large is one inch and three quarters qtr. Long and those of his hind feet which is much smaller is three quarters long. We have this on email skinned and stuffed. Short legs, raising himself just above the ground when in motion Joe and R. Fields killed some deer at a distance and came in for a horse to bring them in, they have not returned this evening, a great number of swans in a pond above L. S. to our camp. Searched. Floyd very unwell a bad cold and. Several men with boils, great QTS. Of catfish G. D. caught one small beaver alive. Some turkey and G's killed today. Arms and all things in order. A fair evening, and cool. Clark, July 30th, 1804. July 30th Monday, 1804 set out this morning early proceeded on to a clear open prairie on the L.S. On a rise of about 70 feet higher than the bottom which is also a prairie both forming bluffs to the river of high grass and plum bush grapes and and situated above high water is a small grove of timber at the foot of the rising ground between those two priories, and below the bluffs of the high prairie we came to and formed a camp. Intending to wait the return of the French man and Indians, the white horse which we found near the Kansas River, died last night. Posted out our guard and sent out four men, Captain. Lewis and went up the bank and walked a short distance in the high prairie. This prairie is covered with grass of 10 or 12 inches in height. Soil of good quality and, still further back at the distance of about a mile the Count Ray rises about 80 or 90 feet higher, and is one continual plain as fur as can be seen. From the bluff on the 2D rise immediately above our camp the most beautiful prospect of the river up and down and the Count Ray Obst. Presented itself which I ever beheld. The river meandering the open and beautiful plains, interspersed with groves of timber, and each point covered with tall timber, such as willow cotton sun mulberry, elm, sycamore, lin and ash, the groves contain hickory, walnut, coffee nut and oak in addition. Two ranges of high land parallel to each other and from four to ten miles distant between which the river and its bottoms are contained. From seventy to three hundred feet high. Joseph Fields killed and brought in an animal called by the French Braro, and by the ponies Cho Car touch this animal burrows in the ground and feeds on flesh, prairie dogs, bugs, and vegetables, his shape and size is like that of a beaver, his head mouth and is like a dog's with short ears, his tail and hair like that of a ground hog, and longer, and lighter. His intrals like the intrals of a hog, his skin thick and loose, his belly is white and the hair short, a white streak from his nose to his shoulders. The toe nails of his four feet is one inch and three quarters long, and feet large. The nails of his hind feet three quarters of an inch long, the hind feet small and toes crooked, his legs are short and when he moves just sufficient to raise his body above the ground he is of the bear species. We have his skin stuffed. Joe. And R. Fields did not return this evening, several men with very bad boils, 
catfish is caught in any part of the river turkeys geese and a beaver killed and caught everything in prime order men in high spirits. A fair still evening great no. Mosquitoes this evening. Lewis, July 30, 1804. July the 30th this day Joseph Fields killed a braro as it is called by the French engages. This is a singular animal not common to any part of the United States. Its weight is 16 pounds. It is a carnivorous animal. On both sides of the upper jaw is fixed one long and sharp canine tooth, its eye are small black and piercing. Clark, July 31, 1804. July 31st Tuesday a fair day three hunters out this morning g. Drouillier killed a very fat buck one inch fat on the ribs Merton. Alt flat. Is 41 degrees 18 minutes 0 seconds 5 tenths north. R and Joe. Fields returned at 10 o'clock the killed three deer, and lost the horses, caught a small beaver which is already tame, several men out hunting the horses without success, the autos not yet arrived, I complete the copy of the courses and k. And k. Musketers very troublesome. Clark, July 31, 1804. July 31, Tuesday a fair day three hunters out, took meridian altitude made the latitude. 41 degrees 18 minutes 1 second 5 tenths n r and joe. Fields returned to camp they killed three deer. The horses strayed off last night. Drouillier killed a buck one inch of fat on the ribs, R, and Joe. Fields returned without any meat having been in pursuit of the horses, the Indians not yet arrived. Caught a young beaver alive which is already quit tame dash. Caught a buffalo fish, the evening very cool, the musketers are yet troublesome. Clark, August 1st. 1804. August the 1st 1804 a fair morning, sent out two men after the horses and one back to examine if the Indians have been there, underscore 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 beaver caught last night. The air is cool and pleasing. Prepared the pipe of peace very flashy. Wind rose at 10 o'clock and blowed from the W S W, very pleasant all day several men gathering grapes and Two men after the horses which strayed the night before last. Those prairies produce the blue current common in the U.S. The gooseberry common in the U.S., two kind of honeysuckle, the bush which I have seen in Kentucky, with a pale pink flower, also one which grow in clusters about four or five feet high bearing a short flower in clusters of the like color. The leaves single. Three deer and an elk killed today. This being my birthday I ordered a saddle of fat venison, an elk fleece and a bevertail to be cooked and a desert of sherries, plums, raspberries currants and grapes of a super quality. The Indians not yet arrived. A cool fine evening the musketers very troublesome, the prairies contain shares, apple, grapes, currants, raspberry, gooseberries hasselnuts and a great variety of plants and flowers not common to the U.S. What a field for a botans and a naderless. Clark, August 1, 1804. August 1, 1804 A fair morning dispatched two men after the horses lost yesterday. One man back to the place from which the messenger was sent for the autos to see if any Indians was or had been there since our depture. He returned and informed that no person had been there since we left it. The prairie which is situated below our camp is above the high water level and rich covered with grass from five to eight feet high interspersed with cops of hazel, plums, currants, like those of the U.S. Raspberries and grapes of dift. Kinds. Also producing a variety of plants and flowers not common in the United States, two kind of honey suckle one which grows to a kind of a shrub. Common about Harrodsburg in Kentucky the other are not so large or tall and bears a flower in clusters short and of a light pink color. The leaves differ from any of the of kind in as much as the leaves are distinct and does not surround the stalk as all the other kind does one elk and three deer killed today also two beaver caught. The wind rose at ten o'clock from the W. S. W. and blew a steady and agreeable breeze all day. The musketers very troublesome this evening in the bottoms. Took equal altitudes today and the azimuth with the commencement of the a.m. Clark, 
August 2, 1804. August 2, 1804 win from the S.E.G., Drury returned with the horses and one doe elk the Count Ray through which he passed is like what we see from the bluff above camp three men out hunting one beaver caught this morning. At sunset six chiefs and their worries of the autos, and Miss Hours, with a French man by the name of Farfange, we shook hands and gave them some tobacco and provisions. They sent us water millions three very large and fat bucks killed today the wind continue hard from the S. E. The four quarter of one buck weight 147 WT 11 halves inch fat on the ribs. Clark, August 2, 1804. August 2, Thursday, 1804. A very pleasant breeze from the S.E. The two men Drewier and Coulter returned with the horses loaded with elk, those horses they found about twelve miles in a southerly direction from camp. The count ray through which they passed is similar to what we see from camp. One beaver and a foot of beaver caught in trap caught this morning at sunset Mr. Fairfong and a P.T. of Otto and Misari Nation came to camp, among those Indians six were chiefs, the principal chief's captain. Lewis and myself met those Indians and informed them we were glad to see them, and would speak to them tomorrow, sent them some roasted meat pork flour and meal, in return they sent us water millions. Every man on his guard and ready for anything three fat bucks killed this evening the four quarters of one weighed 147 pounds. Lewis, August 2, 1804. August 2 ed. 1804. This day one of our hunters brought me a white heron. This bird as an inhabitant of ponds and morasses, and feeds upon tadpoles, frogs, small fish and they are common to the Mississippi in the lower part of the Ohio River, i.e., as high as the falls of that river. This bird weighed two pounds. Its plumage is perfectly white and very thin. F.I. From extremity of beak to the extremity of toe for seventy-one fourths from tip to tip of wing on the back for eleven. Its beak is yellow pointed, flat crosswise and five inches in length from the upper region of the bill to the eye is one inch in length. Covered with a smooth yellow skin the plumage of the head projecting towards the upper bill and coming to a point uh, an inch beyond the eyes on the center of the upper bill. The mouth opens to distance of the eyes, the eye is full and projecting rether, it is seven tenths of half an inch. For joints in the wing. Inches first joint from body in length 6 2 ed do. 81 fourths third do. 31 to 2 fourth do. 1 first joint number of feathers 7 length of 3 second 18 6 3 6 from 10 to 12 may 4th, 12. Its legs are black, the neck and beak occupy one half its length. It has four toes on a foot, the outer toe on the right foot is from the joining of the leg to extremity of toe nail 4 inch and 1 quarter has 4 joints exclusive of the nail joint, the next is 43 fourths inches has 3 joints exclusive of the nail joint. The next is 33 fourths and has 2 joints, the heel toe has 1 joint only and is 3 inches in length. The nails are long sharp and black, the eye is of a deep sea green color with a circle of a pale yellow around the sight forming a border to the outer part of the eye of about half the width of the whole eye. The tail has twelve feathers of six inches in length. Dot, the wings when folded are the same length with the tail. Has two remarkable tufts of long feathers on each side joining the body at the upper joint of the wing. These cover the feathers of the first joint of the wings when they are overextended. Clark, August 3, 1804 August 3rd Friday prepare a small present for those Indians and hold a count call delivered a speech and made eight six chief. Gave a few presents and, a smoke a dram, some powder and ball, the man we sent not yet come up, those people express great satisfaction at the speech delivered they are no orators, big, open countenances. Otto's large miss or small. At four o'clock set out under a gentle breeze from the S. E proceeded on N, 5 degrees east 5 mis past a PT on the SS and round a large sandbar on the LS. And camped above, below a great number of snags quit across the river, the muskeeters more numerous than I ever saw them, all in spirits, we had some rough conversation g doctor about boys. The Osage and Consies are the same language. The Ottos and Mahars speak many words of the Osage language. 
The Ottos, Iowas, and Missouri speak the same language the Paines and Requeries speak the same language also the Loops and Repub. The Mahar and Pankara the same language the Chon, Mandin and Groventer the same the probability is that those different tribes have once formed three great Nats. Viz, the Missouris, Osarge, Kansas, Ottos, Mahars, and Pankaras and Ioyais one nation. The Paines, Loops, Republican, Recreries the second. The Mandins Cheyans, and Groventers the third the tribes of the Sioux all retain the name fourth. It is possible that the Mahar and Pancarrier may have been a distinct nation. As they only speak some words of the Osage which have the same signification 25 days to St. Tafi S. Of W. Cross the heads of Arkansas around the head of Kansas River after delivering a speech informing those children of ours of the change which had taken place, the wishes of our government to cultivate friendship and good understanding. The method of have good advice in some directions, we made one great chief to the who was not present, to whom we addressed the speech and sent some presents or meat ells and flag. We made two second chiefs one for the Missouris and another for the Ottos, those two tribes are nearly equal one foot seventy inches each, and four principal men, to those principal men to those we gave a small common. To each man to whom we gave authority, a prison of brch gart. G. Paint and a med or con a small corns. Was delivered for the whole each chief and principal man delivered a speech acknowledging their approbation to what they had heard and promised to prosue the good advice and caution. They were happy W. New fathers who gave good advice and to be depended on all concluded by asking a little powder and a drop of milk. I answered those speeches gave them fifty balls one canister of powder and a dram, after Cap Lewis shot his air gun a few times which astonished the natives, we set sail. Wrecked from those people water millions and the chiefs and principal men of the Ottos and Missouris made by M. L. and W. C. the August 3, 1804. This Indian names tribe English. Signification. 1. Waruj nor Otto little thief. 2. Shingo tun go Otto big horse. We the Misauri hospitality. 3. Wow pur miss. Ohoning gam. Ba zakonja Otto. Ohoani ga miss. From this place I am told by Mr. Fafong the interpreter that it will take a man twenty-five days to go to St. A fee pass, the heads of Arkansas, round the Kansas head. Across some mountains from the top of which the city may be seen the Spaniards have invited those Indians and the Paines to trade with them and some French and a few Indians are gone from the Paneas to that city this summer. The situation of this place which we call Council Bluff which is handsome elevated a spot well calculated for a trading establishment. The bank high and level on top well calculated for a fort to command the Count Ray and River the low bottom above high water and well situated under the command of the hill for houses to trade with the natives a beautiful plain both above and below at no other bend on either side does the high land touch the river for some distance up. As I am told. Those bluffs afford good clay for brick, a great quantity on the three points one opst. One above and one below. The situation I am informed is, within one day's march of the autos, eleven halves of the Paneas, two of the Mahars, and twenty-one halves of the Loops villages, also convenient to the roving bands of Sioux, those people are now at war with each other. An establishment here would bring about peace and be the means of keeping of it. Oct. 3D camped on the upper point of a large sandbar L.S. Mosquitoes very bad. Some place near Conceal Bluff will be the most proper place for a trading establishment, for many of the nations, the distance is to the Ottos one days, ponies eleven halves days, to the Mahar, two days. To Loops two days and a half sixteen or eighteen hundred men and convenient for some bands of the Sioux. Clark, August 3, 1804. August 3rd, Friday 1804 made up a small present for those people in proportion to their consequence. Also a package with a medal to accompany a speech for the Grand Chief after breakfast we collected those Indians under an awning of our main sail. 
In presence of our party paraded and delivered a long speech to them expressive of our journey the works of our government, some advice to them and directions how they were to conduct themselves. The principal chief for the nation being absentee we sent him the speech flag Mayadel and some clothes. After hearing what they had to say delivered a medal of second grade to one for the autos and then one for the Misari present and four medals of a third grade to the inferior chief two for each tribe. Those two parts of nations, autos and Missouris now residing together is about 250 men are the autos composing 2 slash 3d and Misari one third part. The names of the chiefs we acknowledged made this day are as follows viz. Indian name English Seinfen. First we A.R. Rouge nor Otto called Little Thief. Two Sean Go Tun Go Big Horse. We the Mississippi Hospitality. Sean Gus Con Otto White Horse. Wow P.E. A.M. Ah Ho Ning G.A.M. Baza Ku Ja Otto. Ah Ho Ni G.A.M. Those chiefs all delivered a speech acknowledging their approbation to the speech and promising to prosue the advice and directions given them that they wer happy to find that they had fathers which might be depended on and. We gave them a canister of powder and a bottle of whiskey and delivered a few presents to the whole after giving a brcth. Some paint gartering and a medal to those we made chifes after Captain Lewis's shooting the air gun a few shots, which astonished those natives, we set out and proceeded on five miles on a direct line past a point on the S. S. And round a large sand bar on the L. S. and camped on the upper point. The mosquitoes excessively troublesome this evening great appearance of wind and rain to the N. W. We prepare to wreck V. It. The man Liberty whom we sent for the autos has not come up he left the autos town one day before the Indians. This man has either tired his horse or lost himself in the plain some Indians are to hunt for him. The situation of our last camp council bluff or hand Sam prairie appears to be a very proper place for a trading establishment and fortification the soil of the bluff well adapted for brick, great deal of timbers above in the two points. Many other advantages of a small nature. And I am told central to several nations viz. One day's march from the Otto town, one day and a half from the great Pania village, two days from the Mahar towns, two a quarter day s from the Loops village, and convenient to the Count Ray through which bands of the Sioux hunt. Perhaps no other situation is as well calculated for a trading establishment. The air is pure and healthy so far as we can judge. Clark, August 4th, 1804. August 4th at 7 o'clock the heavens darkened and a violent wind from the N.W. Succeeded which lasted about an hour, with a little rain. Set out this morning early through a narrow part of the, the whole channel confined in some parts between the, one, sand on one side and the bank on the other, which is washing in, within two hundred yards, this channel. Crowded with snags. At eleven halves m. Passed an old trading house L.S., where one of our crew passed two years P.C. trading with the Mahar, and ponies above one me. A. 3. Creek comes in Obst. A large bad, 2. Sandbar this, 3. Creek is the outlet of three ponds, which wrecked their water from the smaller streams running from the hills on the L.S., great quartz of G's, passed in the next bend L.S. An outlet to the pond, Beautiful bottom prairie on both sides of the river, pumy stone is found on the sides of the river of various sizes. Wind ahead. Read the man who went back to the camp of last night for his knife has not come up this evening we camped at a PT on the L.S. at a beaver house. One buck killed today. Clark, August 4, 1804. August 4 Saturday set out early. At seven o'clock last night we had a violent wind from the N.W. Some little rain succeeded. The wind lasted with violence for one hour after the wind it was clear serene and cool all night. Proceeded on pass through Betwen snags which was quit across the river the channel confined within two hundred yards one side a sand PTSS. The other a bend, the banks washing away and trees falling in constantly for one mile, Above this place is the remains of an old trading establishment L.S. where Petra. Chris at one of our hands stayed two years and traded with the Mahars a short distance above is a creek, three, the outlet of three ponds communicating with each other, 
those ponds or rether lakes are fed by springs and small runs from the hills. 2. A large sand island opposite this creek making out from the L. Point, from the camp of last night to this creek, the river has latterly changed its bed encroaching on the L. Side, in this sandbar I saw great nose. Of wild G's, past a small creek on the L. S. About three miles above the last both of those creeks are outlets from the small lake which reave their water from the small streams running from the high land, great many pamey stones on the shore of various sisses the wind blew hard, read a man who went back to camp for his knife has not joined us. We camped at a beaver house on the L. S. Point one buck killed today. Clark, August 5, 1804. August 5 set out early wind from N.E. Great appearance of wind and rain, I have remarked that I have not heard much thunder in this count ray, a very large snake was killed today called the bull snake. His color something like a rattlesnake something lighter, the bends of the river today is washing away the banks, having nothing to oppose the turbulence of the river when confined by large hard sand points. Forcing this current against the bends, the soil of the entire bottom between the high land, being the mud or ooze of the river of some former period mixed with sand and clay easily melts and slips. Or washes into the river the mud mixes with the water and the sand collects on the points camped on the S. S. Dot, I went on shore S. S. This evening saw some turkeys and in pursuing them struck the river twelve miles below the place by water I went out, I think the peninsula is about 370 yards across subject to overflow. And washes into numerous channels, great quantities of grapes ripe and of three different kinds some large and fine. I killed a turkey, and made camp in the night, muskwater's very trouble son, read the man who went back for his knife has not yet joined us. Clark, August 5th. 1804. 5th of August Sunday 1804 set out early great appearance of wind and rain, I have observed that thunder and lightning is not as common in this count ray as it is in the Atlantic states, snakes are not plenty. One was killed today large and resembling the rattlesnake only something lighter dash. I walked on shore this evening s.s., in pursuing some turkeys I struck the river twelve miles below within three hundred and seventy yards, the high water passes through this peninsula, and agreeable to the customary changes of the river I conkled. That in two years the main current of the river will pass through. In every bend the banks are falling in from the current being thrown against those bends by the sand points which enlarges and the soil I believe from unquestionable aperns. Of the entire bottom from one hill to the other being the mud or ooze of the river at some former period mixed with sand and clay easily melts and slips into the river. And the mud mixes with the water and the sand is washed down and lodges on the points, great quantites of grapes on the banks, I observe three different kinds at this time ripe, one of the no is large and has the flavor of the purple grape. Camped on the S.S. -S, the muskeeters very troublesome. The man who went back after his knife has not yet come up, we have some reasons to believe he has deserted. Lewis, August 5, 1804. August 5, 1804 killed a serpent on the bank of the river adjoining a large prairie. F inch length from nose to tail 5 to circumference in largest part, 41 halves number of scuda on belly, 221 do. On tail, 53. No pies and teeth therefore think him perfectly innocent, eyes. Center black with a border of pale brown yellow color of skin on head yellowish green with black specks on the extremity of the scuda which are pointed or triangular color of back, transverse stripes of black and dark brown of an inch in width. Succeeded by a yellowish brown of half that width the end of the tail hard and pointed like a cock spur the sides are speckled with yellowish brown and black. Two rows of black spots on a light yellow ground pass throughout his whole length on the upper points of the scuda of the belly and tail half an inch apart this snake is vulgarly called the cow or bull snake from a bellowing noise which it is said sometimes to make resembling that animal. Though as to this fact I am unable to attest it never having heard them make that or any other noise myself. I have frequently observed an aquatic bird in the course of ascending this river but have never been able to procure one before today, this day I was so fortunate as to kill two of them, they are here more plenty than on the river below. They lay their eggs on the sand bars without shelter or nest, and produce their young from the 15th to the last of June. 
The young ones of which we caught several are covered with down of a yellowish-white color and on the back some small specks of a dark brown. They bear a great resemblance to the young quaily of ten days old, and appear like them to be able to run about and peck their food as soon as they are hatched, this bird, lives on small fish. Worms and bugs which it takes on the verge of the water it is seldom seen to light on trees and quite as seldom do they light in the water and swim though the foot would indicate that they did its being webbed I believe them to be a native of this country and probably a constant resident. The weight of the male bird is one ounce and a half, its length from beak to toe seventy-one halves inches from tip to tip of wing across the back one foot seven inches and a half the beak is one one-eighth inch long. Large where it joins the head elated on the sides and tapering to a sharp point, a little declining and curvated, a fine yellow, with a shade of black on the extremity of upper beak. The eye is prominent, black and on an angular scale of one half ink, occupies three and one third in width. The upper part of the head is black from the beak as low as the middle of the eye and a little below the joining of the neck except however some white which joins the upper part of the beak which forks and passing over the sides of the forehead terminate above each eye, the under part of the bird. That is the throat and cheeks as high as the eye, the neck breast belly and under part of the wings and tail are of a fine white, the upper part of the neck, back, and wings are of a fine, Quaker color or bright dove color with wreath or more of a bluish tint except however the three first or larger feathers in the wing which on upper side are of a deep black. The wing has four joints. No. Joint length of joint no of feathers length of dew. One and eleven halves a clump of feathers not strong but loosely connect with the flesh of the wing eleven halves two two sixteen two three and eleven halves seven from twenty one halves to forty one halves four and three quarters three and fifty one halves. The tail has eleven feathers the outer of which are an inch longer than those in the center gradually tapering. Inwards which gives the tail a forked appearance like that of the swally the largest or outer feather is twenty three fourths that of the shortest thirteen fourths. The leg and thigh are three inches long the leg occupying one half this length the thigh is covered with feathers. Except about one quarter of an inch above the knee the leg is of a bright yellow and nails long sharp and black the foot is webbed and has three toes forward. The heel or back toe is fixed to the leg above the palm of the foot and is unconnected by a web to the other toes, it has no nail. The wings when full dead lap like those of the swallow and extend at least an inch and a half beyond the tail. This bird is very noisy when flying which is dose extremely swift the motion of the wing is much like that of Kildee it has two notes one like the squawking of a small pig only on wreath or a high key. And the other kitty kitty, as near as letters can express the sound, the beak of the female is black and the black and Quaker color of the male in her is yellowish brown mixed with dove color. Clark, August 6. 1804. August 6, Monday, 1804 at 12 o'clock last night a violent storm of wind and rain from the N. W. 1 Pierogi, Baptiste Le Jonas Patroon, lost her color set out early and proceeded on past a large island on the S. S. back of this island Rivy de Soldier come in on the S. S. The Saldus River is about the Sis of Nottoway 20 yards. Wide at the mouth, past two remarkable places, where the river had once passed, we have every reason to believe that one man has deserted Moses B. Reed he has been absent three days and one Frenchman we sent to the Indian camps has not joined us. We have reasons to believe he lost himself in attempting to join us at the Council Bluff, we are determined to send back four men to take Reed dead or alive, also hunt law liberty and to meet us at the Mahar Nation as soon as the order is executed. Clark August 6, 1804. August 6, Monday, 1804, at 12 o'clock last night, a violent storm of wind from the NW. Some rain, one PR of colors lost in the storm from the Baich Pierogi. Set out early and proceeded on past a large island on the S. S. back of this ISD. Soldiers' River Mouths, I am told by one of the men that this river is about the size of Natawa River forty yards wide at the mouth. Reed has not yet come up. Neither has La Liberty the Frenchman whom we sent to the Indian camps a few miles below the Council Bluffs. Clark, August 7, 1804 
August 7, Tuesday last night about 8 o'clock a storm of wind from the N.W. Which lasted three quarters of an hour mosquitoes more troublesome last night than I ever saw them, set out late this morning wind N. Clark, August 7, 1804. August 7, Tuesday 1804 last night at 8 o'clock a storm from the N.W. Lasted three quarters of an hour let out late this morning wind from the north, at one o'clock dispatched George Druyer, Arthur Fields, William Bratton and William Labiesh back after the deserter read with order if he did not give up peaceably to put him to death and to go to the Otto's village and inquire for law liberty and bring him to the Mahar's village, also with a speech on the occasion to the Ottos and Missouris, and directing a few of their chiefs to come to the Mahars. And we would make a peace between them and the Mahar and Suex, a string of wampum and a carrot of tobacco. Proceeded on and camped on the S.S. I walked on shore with one man collies, the bottoms covered with very colin killed an elk, I fired four times at one and have reasons to think I kiled him but could not find him. The mosquitoes were so troublesome and mosquitoes thick in the plains that I could not keep them out of my eyes, with a bush. In my absence Captain Lewis killed a pelican on Pelican's Island, at which place many hundreds had collected, they left three fish which was fresh and very good, we camped on the S.S. in a stret part of the river. Clark, August 8, 1804. August the 8th 1804 set out this morning at the usual time at about two miles, one, passed a part of the river so choked up with snags that we found a little difficult to get through with safety, the wind as usual from the N.W. One of the soldiers killed a pelican on the sand ISD. Past the mouth of Little, two, River de Quo on the S.S. This river is about 80 yards wide and navigable for Paroga some distance and runs parallel to the Missouri at Corns in from the river from the N.E., it contains great quantities offish common to the Count Ray. Two miles above is, three, an island the channel formerly run on the right with sand dot, the current runs to the left. Many hundreds of pelicans on this island, we call it Pelican Isle. Cap Lewis killed one this river so called by the so Edney wowed upon i.e. stone our heads in three leagues of the river Des Moines, and passes through a lake about twenty legues in cirques. Which is also within five leagues of the Des Moines, this lake at one place is confined by two rocks within a narrow space, this lake of different widths, with many small islands. From the lake to the Mahars about distant four days march to the Dog Plains ninety leagues, one principal branch of the Des Moines is called Cat River, the lake which this river lit Suex heads in is called Despre. Clark, August 8, 1804. August 8, Wednesday, 1804 set out this morning at the usual time at two miles past, one, a bend to L. S. Choked up with snags our boat run on two in turning to pass through, we got through with safety the wind from N.W., two, past the mouth of a river on the S. Side called by the Sioux Indians Edney Wau de Pon, or Stone River, the French call this river Petite River de Cuex it is about 80 yards wide and as, Mr. Durian says who's been on the heads of it and the country ABT, is navigable for Pirogue some distance runs parallel to the Misaura some distance, then falls down from NE through a rolling count ray open. The head of this river is 9 miles from the Ardeman at which place the Des Moines is 80 yards wide. This little coex passes through a lake called Despre which is within five leagues of the Des Moines the said lake is about twenty leagues in circumference and is divided into two by two rocks approaching very near each other, this lake is of various width. Containing many islands from this lake to the Maha four days march, as is said to be near the Dog Plains one prinkle branch of the Des Moines is called Cat River the Des Moines is Sholey. Captain. Lewis took Medden. Altitude of the sun made it 56 degrees 9 minutes 0 seconds lat 41 degrees 42 minutes 34 seconds and I took one man and went on shore the man killed an elk I fired four times at one and did not kill him, my ball being small I think was the reason. The mosquitoes so bad in the prairies that with the assistance of a bush I could not keep them out of my eyes. The boat turned several tims today on sandbars. In my up sank the boat past the island two miles above the lit skuex are on the upper point of the isle some hundreds of pelicans were collected, 
they left three fish on the sand which was very fine. Captain Lewis killed one and took his dimensions, I joined the boat and we camped on the SS. Wardov remarked that snakes are not plenty in this part of the Missouri. Lewis, August 8, 1804. August 8, 1804 We had seen but a few aquatic fowls of any kind on the river since we commenced our journey up the Missouri. A few geese accompanied by their young, the wood duck which is common to every part of this country and cranes of several kinds which will be described in their respective places, this day after we had passed the river Suix as called by Mr. McKay, or as is more properly called the Stone River. I saw a great number of feathers floating down the river those feathers had a very extraordinary appearance as they appeared in such quantities as to cover pretty generally sixty or seventy yards of the breadth of the river. For three miles after I saw those feathers continuing to run in that manner, we did not perceive from whence they came. At length we were surprised by the appearance of a flock of pelican at rest on a large sandbar attached to a small island the number of which would if estimated appear almost incredible. They appeared to cover several acres of ground, and were no doubt engaged in procuring their ordinary food. Which is fish, on our approach they flew and left behind them several small fish of about eight inches in length. None of which I had seen before, the pelican rested again on a sand bar above the island which we called after them from the number we saw on it. We now approached them within about three hundred yards before they flew, I then fired at random among the flock with my rifle and brought one down, the description of this bird is as follows. Habits They are a bird of climb remain on the coast of Florida and the borders of the Gulf of Mexico and even the lower portion of the Mississippi during the winter and in the spring, see for date my thermometrical observations at the river Du Bois. Visit this country and that farther north for the purpose of raising their young, this duty seems now to have been accomplished from the appearance of a young pilacon which was killed by one of our men this morning. And they are now in large flocks on their return to their winter quarters. They lay usually two eggs only and choose for a nest a couple of logs of drift wood near the water's edge and without any other preparation but the throat formed by the proximity of those two logs which form a trough they set and hatch there. Young which after nurture with fish their common food. Measure. F.I. From beak to toe five eight. Tip to tip of wing nine four. Beak length one three. Do. Width from two to one and a half. Neck length one eleven. First joint of wing one one. Two ed do. One four and a half. Third do. Seven. Fourth do. Two and three quarters. Length of leg including foot ten. Do. Of thy eleven. Description of color and. The beak is a whitish yellow the underpart connected to a bladder-like pouch. This pouch is connected to both sides of the lower beak and extends down on the underside of the neck and terminates in the stomach, this pouch is uncovered with feathers. And is formed two skins the one on the inner and the other on the center side a small quantity of flesh and strings of which the animal has at pleasure the power of moving or drawing in such manner as to contract it at pleasure. In the present subject I measured this pouch and found its contents five gallons of water. The feet are webbed large and of a yellow color, it has four toes the hinder toe is longer than in most aquatic fowls, the nails are black. Not sharp and one half an inch in length. The plumage generally is white, the feathers are thin compared with the swan goose or most aquatic fowls and has but little or no down on the body. The upper part of the head is covered with black feathers short. As far as the back part of the head, the yellow skin unfeathered extends back from the upper beak and opening of the mouth and comes to a point just behind the eye. The large feathers of the wings are of a deep black color, the first and second joint are from the body above the same is covered with a second layer of white feathers which extend quite half the length of those large feathers of the wing, the thigh is covered with feathers within a quarter of an inch of the knee. Inch. First joint of wing has feathers number 21 length 9 black. 2 ed do. Number 17 length 13 inch. 3rd do. Number 5 length 18 inch. 4th do. No. 3 length 19 inch. 
It has a curious frothy substance which seems to divide its feathers from the flesh of the body and seems to be composed of globules of air and perfectly embraces the part of the feather which extends through the skin. The wind pipe terminates in the center of the lower part of the upper and unfeathered part of the pouch and is secured by an elastic valve commanded at pleasure. The green insect known in the U states by the name of the Sawyer or Chittadiddle, was first heard to cry on the 27th of July, we were then in latitude 41 degrees some minutes. The prairie hen or grouse, was seen in the prairies between the Missouri and the River Platte. Clark, August 9th. 1804. 9th Oct Thursday 1804 for the fog of this morning detained us until one half past seven o'clock at which time we left our mooring and proceeded on under a gentle breeze from the S. E. I went on shore found the land the same as yesterday killed a turkey and camped on the L. S. Great deal of beaver sign today one beaver caught musketers worse this evening than ever I have seen them. Clark, August 9, 1804 August 9th Thursday 1804 for the fog being thick detained us until half past. 7 o'clock at which time we set out and proceeded on under gentle breeze from the S.E. I walked on shore, saw an elk, crossed a isthmus of three quarters of a mile to the river, and returned to the boat camped on the L.S. above a beaver den. Musquiters very troublesome. Clark, August 11th, 1804. August 11th Saturday 1804 about day this morning a hard wind from the N.W. Followed by rain. We landed at the foot of the hill on which Black Bird the late king of the Mahar who died four years ago and four hundred of his nation with the smallpox was buried, one, and went up and fixed a white flag bound with blue white and red on the grave which was about twelve foot base and circular. On the top of a pinnacle about three hundred foot above the water of the river. From the top of this hill may be seen the bends or meanderings of the river for sixty or seventy miles round and all the county around the base of this high land is a soft sandstone bluff of about forty or one hundred and fifty foot, the crooked. Past a creek called Waukon de Pechi Sea or Bad God Creek of Bad Spirits on the L. S. Above the bluff on this creek the Mahars had the smallpox four years ago, latitude forty-two degrees one minute three seconds eight tenths taken on the point above the creek. The river is very crooked. We are now within three quarters of a mile of the river at a place we shall not get around to until tomorrow noon, we are three legues from the Mahars by land and a great deal of beaver sign induce a belief that those people do not hunt much. I have observed a number of places where the river has chained its bead at different times. Clark, August 11th, 1804. August 11th Saturday 1804. About daylight this morning a hard wind from the N.W. With some rain proceeded on around the right of the isle. A hard wind accompanied with rain from the S.E. After the rain was over Captain Lewis myself and ten men ascended the hill on the L.S. Under which there was some fine springs to the top of a high point where the Mahars King Blackbird was buried four years ago. A mound of earth about twelve diameter at the base and six feet high is raised over him turfed, and a pole eight feet high in the center on this pole we fixed a white flage bound with red blue and white. This hill about three hundred feet above the water forming a bluff between that and the water of various height from forty to one hundred and fifty feet in height yellow soft sand stone from the tops of this knoll the river may be seen meandering for sixty or seventy miles. We deck ended and set out n. twenty four to w one half me. Passing over a sand bar on the S. P. T. along the willows. To the river opposite a small bayo on the L. S. Which is the conveyance of the high water from a bend which appears near in a northerly direction, having passed a creek in a deep bend to the L. S. Called by the Mahars Wau Kandi Piche, Great Spirit is bad, on this creek and hills near it about four hundred of the Mahar died with the smallpox, took men. Altitude and made the lat. 42 degrees 1 minute 3 seconds 8 tenths n. Also the moon's distank from the sun I have observed a number of places where the river has once run and now filled or filling up and growing with willows and cottonwood. Clark, August 12th. 1804. August 12th Sunday 1804 a south wind we set out early the river wider than usual, and shallow, at 12 we halted in a bend to the left to take the meridian altitude, and dine. 
and sent one man across where we took dinner yesterday to step off the distance across Isthmus, he made it 974 yards, and the bend around is 183 slash 4 miles above this bend about 4 miles, a yellow and brown bluff commences and continues 3 or 4 miles on the L. S. This bluff has some sandstone, some rich black mold mixed with yellow clay, a few red cedar on the tope, which is, from 20 to 150 foot high the hill still rising back, I think may be estimated at 200 foot on the top is timber. The wind for a few hours this evening was hard and from the S. E. in the evening about 5 o'clock cap L. And myself went on shore to shoot a prairie wolf which was barking at us as we passed this prairie wolf barked like a large fest and is not much larger, the beaver is very plenty. Notwithstanding we are almost in sight of the Mahar town, caught a very large catfish this morning, prepared the Indian present which we intend given to the Mahars. P. Wiser apartment cook to searched. Floyd squad from today. Clark, August 12, 1804. August 12 Sunday 1804 set out early under a gentle breeze from the south the river wider than usual and shallow, one, at twelve o'clock we halted to take a meridian alt. Of the sun and sent a man back or I may say across to the bind of the river where Captain Lewis took the MDN. Altitude yesterday, to step off the distance, he made it 974 yards across, the distance around the bend is 183-4 miles, about 4 miles above the bend on the L, S. Is the commencement of a bluff which is about 4 miles extending on the river, of yellow and brown clay in some parts in it near the river a soft sandstone is embedded on the top, which is from 20 to 150 feet above the water. And rises back, is covered with timber, a few red cedar is on this bluff, the wind comes round to the S. E. A prairie wolf come near the bank and barked at us this evening, we made an attempt but could not get him, this on email barks like a large fest dog. Beaver is very plenty on this part of the river. I prepare some presents for to give the Indians of the Mahars nation. Wiser apartment cook and soupant. Of the provisions of served. Floyd squad. We camped on a sand island in a bend to the SS, muskeeters very troublesome until the wind rose. At one or two o'clock. Clark, August 13th, 1804. 13th of August Monday, 1804. Set out this morning at daylight the usual time and proceeded on under a gentle breeze from the S.E., past the island. From this fish camp the river is north 55 degrees west as far as can be seen, the sandbar only changing the direction of the current the hills leave the river on the L. Side. Clark, August 13, 1804. August 13 Monday, 1804 set out this morning at light the usual time and proceeded on under a gentle breeze from the S.E. Clark, August 14, 1804. 14 of August at 12 o'clock the party sent yesterday to the towns returned, and informed that they could not find any Indians, they had not returned from hunting the buffalo in the prairies, wind shifted to the N.W. Our party sent after the deserter and to the Otto towns, have not came up as yet. The situation of this village, now in ruins surround by Anunbal. Hosts of grave the ravages of the smallpox, four years ago, they follow the buff. And tend no corn. Clark, August 14. 1804. August 14, Tuesday, 1804. A fine morning wind from the S.E. The men sent to the Mahar town last evening has not returned. We conclude to send a spy to know the cause of their delay. At about 12 o'clock, the party returned and informed us that they could not find the Indians nor any fresh sign. Those people have not returned from their buffalo hunt, those people having no houses, no corn, or anything more than the graves of their ancestors to attach them to the old village. Continue in pursuit of the buffalo longer than others who had greater attachments to their native village the ravages of the smallpox, which swept off 400 men and women and children in perpopotion, has reduced this nation not exceeding 300 men and left them to the insults of their weaker neighbors which before was glad to be on friendly terms with them. I am told when this fatal malady was among them they carried their frenzy to very extraordinary length. Not only of burning their village, but they put their wives and children to death with a view of their all going together to some better count ray, 
they bury their dead on the tops of high hills and rice mounds on the top of them. The cause or way those people took the smallpox is uncertain, the most probable from some other nation by means of a war party. Observe time and distance of the sun and moon the moon east the 13th of August Monday 1804. Three miles ne of the Mahar's old village at Fish Camp. Clark, August 15, 1804. August 15 Wednesday I took ten men and went out to Beaver Dam across a creek about a mile sw from camp, and with a brush drag caught 308 fish. Of the following kind, i.e., pike, salmon, bass, perch, red horse, small cat, and a kind of perch called on the Ohio silverfish I also caught the shrimp which is common to the lower part of the Mississippi. In this creek and in the beaver pond is immense beads of less very large and fat, in my absence Captain Lewis sent the Suex in Turpern a party to a smoke which appeared to rise at no great distance to the north with a view to find some band of that nation. They returned and informed that they had been made some time by some small party, and the hard wind of today had set the prairie on fire from some high trees, which was left burning all well, party from Otto's not come up. Camp Three Miles N. E. of the Mahar Village. Clark, August 15, 1804. August 15, Wednesday, 1804 I went with ten men to a creek damed by the beavers about halfway to the village, with some small willow and bark we mad a drag and halted up the creek and caught three eighteen fish of different kind i.e. peak, bass, salmon, perch, red horse, small cat, and a kind of perch called silverfish, on the Ohio. I caught a shrimp precisely of shape size and flavor of those about n. Orleans and the lower party of the Mississippi in this creek which is only the pass or straight from beaver pond to another, is crowded with large mustless very fat, ducks. Pliver of different kinds are on those ponds as well as on the river in my absence captain. Lewis sent Mr. Durio the Suix interpreter and three men to examine a fire which threw up an immense smoke from the prairies on the N.E. side of the river and at no great distance from camp, the object of this party was to find some bands of Suix which the inter thought was near the smoke and get them to come in, in the evening this party returned and informed that the fire arose from some trees which had been left burning by a small party of Sioux whom had passed several days, the wind setting from that point, blew the smoke from that point. Over our camp. Our party all in health and spirits the men sent to the autos and in pursuit of the deserter Reed has not yet returned or joined our party. Clark, August 16, 1804. August. 16, 1804 A very cool morning the winds as usual from the N.W., Captain Lewis with men went out to the creek and pond and caught about 800 fine fish with a bush drag of the following kind i.e. 79 pike, 8 salmon, 1 rock, 1 flat back, 127 buffalo and reed horse, 4 base and 490 cat, with many small and large silver fish, I had a mast made and fixed today the party sent to the autos not yet arrived. The wind shifted around to the S.E. The nights are cool and a breeze rises after generally, sometimes before night which blows off the musketers cools the atmosphere. Clark, August 16, 1804. August 16 Thursday 1804 Fishing Camp 3 milliseconds, N.E. of the Mahars. A very cool morning the wind as usual from the N.W. Captain Lewis took twelve men and went to the pond and crack between camp and the old village and caught upwards of boo fine fish, seventy-nine pike, eight salmon, one rock, flat back, one hundred and twenty-seven buffalo and red horse for base and four hundred and ninety cat. With many small silver fish I had a mast made and fixed to the boat today, the party sent to the autos not yet joined us, the wind shifted around to the S. E. Every evening a breeze rises which blows off the musketers and cools the atmosphere. Clark, August 17, 1804. August 17, 1804. A fine morning wind from the S. E. I will here annex the lads and distances of the different notable places from the river Du Bois or mouth up. The longitudes are not yet calculated. We must be at this time about 99 degrees 45 minutes 0 seconds west of Greenwich, I collected a grass much resembling wheat with a grain like rye, much fuller of grain, 
one like rye and one like barley grass small. A grass like timothy except the seed which is on branches from the main stalk. Late this evening one of the party sent after the deserters returned and joined us, he left the party three miles back, they caught both deserters, one of them La Liberty. Got away from them. The great chief and second chief of the autos accompanied the party with a view to bring about a pace between themselves and the Mahar a great misfortune that the Mahars have not returned from the hunt, sent and feared the prairie near camp to bring in the Mahars and Sueks if any are near. A cool evening, two beaver caught. Clark, August 17, 1804. August 17, Friday, 1804. A fine morning the wind from the S.E. I collected a grass much resembling wheat in its growth the grain like rye, also some resembling rye and barley. A kind of timothy, the seed of which branches from the main stalk and is more like flax seed than that of a timothy. At six o'clock this evening Labiesh one of the party sent to the autos joined. And informed that the party was behind with one of the deserters M.B. Reed and the three principal chiefs of the nations, while liberty they caught but he deceived them and got away, the object of those chiefs coming forward is to make a peace with the Mahars through us dash. As the Mahars are not at home this great object cannot be accomplished at this time set the prairies on fire to bring the Mahars and sows if any were near, this being the usual signal. A cool evening two beaver caught today. Clark, August 18, 1804. August 18, 1804 A fine morning, dispatched Joe. Fields for the party from the autos, whom did not come up last night wine from the S.E. Paney's return from their hunt, the 12th of August, in the after part of the day the party arrived, we had a short talk after which we gave them provisions to eat and proceeded to the trial of Reed, he confessed. And we sentenced him only to run the gamelet four times through the detachment and party, and not to be considered in the future as one of the permanent party, after the punny of about five hundred lashes. At night we had some talk with the chiefs about the cause of war between them and the Mahars. Postponed the further consultation until tomorrow. Had a dance which lasted until eleven o'clock, the close of Cap Lewis' birthday. A fine evening wind S.E. Sent to the towns, i.e. Reuben Fields will. Bratton G., Druyer and W. Labiesh. Clark, August 18, 1804. August 18, Saturday, 1804 A fine morning. Wind from the S.E. In the after part of the day the party with the Indians arrived. We meet them under a shade near the boat and after a short talk we gave them provisions to eat and proceeded to the trail of Reed. He confessed that he deserted and stole a public rifle shot pouch powder and bowels, and requested we would be as favorable with him as we could consistently with our oaths which we were and only sentenced him to run the gauntlet four times through the party and that each man with nine switches should punish him and for him not to be considered in future as one of the party. The three principal chiefs petitioned for pardon for this man after we explained the injury such men could do them by false representation. And explain. The customs of our Count Ray they were all satisfied with the propriety of the sentence and was witness to the punishment. After which we had some talk with the chiefs about the origin of the war between them and the Mahars and k. And k. It commenced in this way i.e., in two of the Missouri's tribe residing with the autos went to the Mahars to steal horses, they killed them both which was a cause of revenge on the part of the Missouris and autos. They also brought war on themselves nearly in the same way with the Pania loops and they are greatly in fear of a just revenge from the Panies for taking their corn from the Pania towns in their absence hunting this summer. The evening was closed with an extra gill of whiskey and a dance until eleven o'clock. Clark, August 19, 1804 19th of August Sunday 1804 A fine morning wind from the S.E. I prepared. A present from the chiefs and warriors, the main chief brack fast with us naked, and begged for a sun glass. At ten o'clock we assembled the chiefs and warriors under an awning and delivered a speech, explanatory of the one sent to this nation from the council bluff, and k. And k. Children when we sent the four men to your towns, we expected to see and speak with the Mahas by the time you would arrive and to lay the foundation of a peace between you and them. The speech of Pettyite Vilyu Little Thief. 
If you think right and can wait until all our warriors come from the buffalo's hunt. We can then tell you who is our men of consequence, my fathers always lived with the father of the bee together and we always live with the big hose all the men here are the sons of chief and will be glad to get something from the hands of their fathers. My father always directed me to be friendly with the white people, I have always done so and went often to the French, give my party pieces of paper and we will be glad, the names. A meddel to car ka pa ha or crow's head. A comsi or feet. Sar na no any or iron eyes a auto approves and says he is brave nay swear unja big axe a auto approves star gra hunja big blue eyes a auto delivers up his com na casa wablak cat a Missouris approves the council and he wants paper for his men at home. He afterwards came and petitioned for his paper warsar sha co brave man approves. The speech of the big horse I went to the hunt buffalo I heard your word and I returned. I and all my men with me will attend to your words you want to make peace with all, I want to make peace also, the young men when they want to go to war where is the goods you give me to keep them at home. If you give me some whiskey to give a drop to my men at home. I came here naked and must return home naked. If I have something to give the young men I can prevent their going to war. You want to make peace with all, it is good we want something to give my men at home. I am a poor man, and can't quiet without means, a spoonful of your milk will quiet all. Second speech of the little thief I want Mr. Fofan and Mr. La Beach to make a peace with the Paney's loops. I want William to go and make a peace with the loops, he can speak English and will do will to go. Refuse that William La Beach shall accompany Fofan. Those people were not well satisfied with the presents given them, they were much surprised at the air gun and several curiosities which were shown them none more than the magnet. Those people became extremely troublesome to us begging whiskey and little articles. Served. Floyd was taken violently bad with the Belios Cholik and is dangerously ill we attempt in vain to relieve him. I am much concerned for his situation, we could get nothing to stay on his stomach a moment nature appear exhausting fast in him every man is attentive to him York PRLLY. Clark, August 19th. 1804. August 19th Sunday 1804 A fine morning wind from the S. E. prepared a small present for the chiefs and warriors present. The main chief brack fast with us, and begged for a sun glass, those people are all naked, covered only with breech clouts blankets or buffalo robes, the flesh side painted of different colors and figures. At ten o'clock we assembled the chiefs and warriors nine in number under an awning, and we explained the speech sent to the nation from the council bluffs by Mr. Fofan. The three chiefs and all the men or warriors made short speeches approving the advice and counsel their great father had sent them, and concluded by giving themselves some credit for their acts. We then brought out the presents and exchanged the big horses Mayadel and gave him one equal to the one sent to the little thief and gave all some small articles and eight carats of tobacco. We gave one small Mayadel to one of the chiefs and a certificate to the others of their good intentions. Names The little thief GRD Chief I have mentioned before The big horse Crow's head, or, Kar Ka Paha, Misery Black Cat, or, Namasawa, Do. Iron Eyes, or, Sar Na No No, Otto. Big Axe, or, Ne Swar Unja, Do. Big Blue Eyes, Star Hea Hunja, Do. Brave Man, or, War Sar Sha Ko. 1. Of those Indians after receiving his certificate delivered. It again to me the Big Blue Eyes the chief petition for the CTFT, again, we would not give the surfed. But rebuked them very roughly for having in object goods and not peace with their neighbors, this language they did not like at first. But at length all petitioned for us to give back the certificate to the big blue eyes he came forward and made a plausible excuse, I then gave the certificate the great chief to bestow it to the most worthy, they gave it to him, we then gave them a dram and broke up the council, the chiefs requested we would not leave them this evening. We determined to set out early in the morning we showed them many curiosities and the air gun which they were much astonished at. Those people begged much for Wishay, Sergeant Floyd is taken very bad all at one with Abelio's Chorlick we attempt to relieve him without success as yet, 
he gets words and we are MUC all armed at his situation, all attention to him. Clark, August 20th, 1804. August 20th Monday after jeeving Fofan some goods the Indians a canister of whiskey, we set out under a gentle breeze from the S. E. Shields went with the horses, I am dull and heavy been up the greater part of last night with searched. Floyd, who is as bad as he can be to live the motion of his bowels having changed Ank. Ank. Is the cause of his violent attack Ank. Ank. We came to make a warm bath for Serked. Floyd hoping it would brace him a little, before we could get him into this bath he expired, with a great deal of composure. Having said to me before his death that he was going away and wished me to write a letter, we buried him to the top of a high round hill overlooking the river and Count Ray for a great distance situated just below a small river without a name to which we name and call Floyd's River. The Bluff Serves Floyd's Bluff we buried him with all the honors of war. And fixed a cedar post at his head with his name title and day of the month and year Captain Lewis read the funeral service over him after paying every respect to the body of this deceased man who had at all times given U.S. proofs of his impartiality security to ourselves and goodwill to serve his count ray, we returned to the boat and proceeded to the mouth of the little river thirty yards. Wide and camped a beautiful evening. Clark, August 20, 1804. August 20, Monday, 1804 Sergeant Floyd much weaker and no better. Made Mr. Fawthorn the interpreter a few presents and the Indians a canister of whiskey we set out under a gentle breeze from the S.E. And proceeded on very well, Sergeant Floyd as bad as he can be no pulse and nothing will stay a moment on his stomach or bowels. Passed two islands on the S.S. and at first bluff on the S.S. surge. Floyd died with a great deal of composure, before his death he said to me, I am going away. I want you to write me a letter, we buried him on the top of the bluff half a mile below a small river to which we gave his name, he was buried with the honors of war much lamented, a cedar post with the, one, name served. C. Floyd died here 20th of August, 1804 was fixed at the head of his grave, this man at all times gave us proofs of his firmness and determined resolution to do service to his Count Ray and honor to himself after paying all the honor to our dext brother we camped in the mouth of Floyd's River about thirty yards wide. A Beautiful Evening Clark, August 21, 1804 August 21 Tuesday we set out very early this morning under a gentle breeze from the S, E, course S, 82 degrees east 3 MES to the upper PT of a bluff on the S, S. Past Willow Creek and some rock below the mouth of the Suex River on the starboard side those cliffs are about 170 feet high, this river heads with the St. Peter's and is navigable 75 leagues, by the act. Of Mr. Durian, to a fall of near 204, Two large and some small pitches below the falls on the right a creek corns in on which the red pipe stone is procured, and in the prairies about, a place of peace with all nations. Clark, August 21, 1804. August 21, Tuesday, 1804 We set out very early this morning and proceeded on under a gentle breeze from the S. E., past Willow Creek small on the S. S., below a bluff of about 170 feet high and one one half M.E.S. Above Floyd's River at eleven halves miles higher and above the bluff past the Sows River S, S, this river is about the size of Grand River and as Mr. Durian our scones in ter. Says, navigable to the falls seventy or eighty leagues and above these falls, still further, those falls are two hundred feet or thereabouts and has two principal pitches, and heads with the ST. Peters passing the head of the Des Moines, on the right below the falls a creek comes in which passes through cliffs of red rock which the Indians make pipes of, and when the different nations meet at those queries all is peace. Past a place in a prairie on the L. S. where the Mahars had a village formerly. The Count Ray above the Platar has a great similarity. Camped. On the L. side. Clouds appear to rise in the west and threaten wind. I found a very excellent fruit resembling the reed currant, the scrub on which it grows resembles privy and about the common height of a wild plum. The two men sent with the horses has not joined us as yet. Clark, August 22. 1804. 
22nd of August Wednesday 1804 set out early wind from the south. G. Shannon joined the boat last night. Course this morning is south 47 degrees west, 11 fourths on the S point west 11 fourths me. To the commencement of a bluff on the LS, the high land near the river for some distance below. This bluff contained parietes alum, copper ass and a kind marxites also a clear soft substance which will mold and become pliant like wax, Captain Lewis was near being poisoned by the smell in pounding this substance I belt to be arsenic or cabalt. I observe great quantity of cops. ANS and almond pure and straighters of white and brown earth of six inch thick. A creek corns in above the bluffs on which there is great quantities of those minerals, this creek I call Roloja at those alum banks shields joined in with two deer. Camped on the S.S. a great deal of elk sign fresh captain. Lewis took a dost of salts this evening to carry off the effects of, arsenic or cobalt which he was trying to find out the real quality, too, past a clift of rock much impregnated with alum. Containing also a great quantity of cabalt. Ordered a vote of the men for a sergeant of the three highest numbers a choice to be made Gas Bratton and Gibson, Gas is worth remark. That my ink after standing in the pot three or four days soaks up and beckons thick. Clark, August 22, 1804 August 22nd Friday 1804 set out early wind from the south at three miles we landed at a bluff where the two men sent with the horses were waiting with two deer, by examination of this, one, bluff contained alum, copperus, cobalt, parietes. A alum rock soft and sandstone. Captain. Lewis improving the quality of those minerals was near poisoning himself by the fumes and tast of the cabalt which had the appearance of soft isinglass, copperus and alum is very pure, above this bluff a small creek comes in from the L.S. Passing under the cliffs for several miles, this creek I call Roloja name I learned last night in my sleep. Two, eight, seven miles above is a cliff of alum stone of a dark brown color. Containing also encrusted in the crevices and shelves of the rock great quartz of cabalt, cement shells and a red earth. From this the, three, River bends to the east and is within three or four miles of the river sows at the place where that river comes from the high land into the low prairie and passes under the foot of those hills to its mouth. Captain Lewis took a dost of salts to work off the effects of the arsenic, we camped on the S.S., sailed the greater part of this day with a hard wind from the S.E., great deal of elk sign, and great appearance of wind from the N.W. Ordered a vote for a sergeant to choose one of three which may be the highest number the highest numbers are P. Gas had 19 votes, Bratton and Gibson. Clark, August 23, 1804. August 23, Thursday 1804 set out this morning very early, the two men are, Fields and Shannon did not come up last night, I went out and killed a fine buck, J. Fields killed a buffaloes, two elk swam by the boat whilst I was out and was not killed, many guns fired at it are, fields came up with the horses and brought two deer, Collins killed a small doe, several prairie wolves seen course west for MLS. To the mouth of a small run between two bluffs of yellow clay north 31 fourths miles to the upper PT of some timber in the bend to SS, near where our fields killed the buffalo past the PT of high land on SS at one quarter of a mile, Captain. Lewis went out with eight men and brought the buffalo to the river at this bend, C. Lewis killed a goose, wind blew hard of the flying sands which raises like a cloud of smoke from the bars when the wind blows. The sand being fine and containing a great proportion of earth and when it lights it sticks to everything it touches at this time the grass is white south 48 degrees 3 miles to a point of willows on the S. S. Having passed the sand island L. S. Camped on the L. S. Above the island saw an elk standing on a sand bar. Shield shot it through the neck 101-4. Clark, August 23, 1804. August 23, Thursday 1804 set out this morning very early the two men with the horses did not come up last night I walked on shore and killed a fat buck, J. Field sent out to hunt came to the boat and informed that he had killed a buffalo in the plain ahead Cap Lewis took twelve men and had the buffalo brought to the boat in the next bend to the SS. Two elk swam the river, 
and was fired at from the boat our fields came up with the horses and brought two deer one deer killed from the boat. Several prairie wolves seen today saw elk standing on the sand bar. The wind blew hard west and raised the sands off the bar in such clouds that we could seriously see this sand being fine and very light stuck to everything it touched. And in the plain for a half a mile the distance I was out every spire of grass was covered with the sand or dust we camped on the L. S. Above a sand island one beaver caught. Clark, August 24, 1804. August 24, Friday, 1804. Some rain last night and this morning, we set out at the usual time and proceeded on the same course of last night continued s. 48 degrees west, 21 fourths mes. To the commencement of a blue clay bliff on ls. About 180 or 190 feet high west under rugged bluffs 13 fourths ms. Passing several small dreams, falling into the river those bluffs has been lately on fire and is yet very hot, great appearance of coal, and immense quantities of cabalt inside of that part off the bluff which sliped in. On the sides of the hill great quantities of a kind of current or fruit resembling the current in appearance much richer and finer flavved. Grows on a scrub resembling a damson and is now fine and makes a delightful, tart above this bluff I took my servant and a French boy I have and walked on shore I killed a deer which York packed on his back in the evening I killed two buck elk and wounded two others which I could not pursue by the blood as my ball was so small to bleed them well. My boys each shot an elk, it was late and I crossed a point struck the river above and halted the boat and twelve men went out brought in the meat all the after part of the day it rained we are all wet. Captain Lewis and myself concluded to visit a high hill situated in an immense plain three leagues n, 20 degrees west. From the mouth of White Stone River, this hill appeared to be of a conic form and by all the different nations in this quarter is supposed to be a place of devils oars that they are in human form with remarkable large heads and about 18 inches high. That they are very watchful and AR armed with sharp arrows with which they can kill at a great distance, they are said to kill all persons who are so hardy as to attempt to approach the hill. They state that tradition informs them that many Indians have suffered by these little people and among others that three Maha men fell a sacrifice to their merciless fury not many years since, so much do the Mahas Suix autos and other. Neighboring nations believe this fable that no consideration is sufficient to induce them to approach this hill. Clark, August 24, 1804 August 24, Friday, 1804 Some rain last night, a continuation this morning. We set out at the usual time and proceeded on the course of last night to the, 1, commencement of a blue clay bluff of 180 or 190 feet high on the L.S. Those bluffs appear to have been laterly on fire, and at this time is too hot for a man to bear his hand in the earth at any debt, great appearance of coal. An immense quantity of cabalt or a crystallized substance which answers its description is on the face of the bluff, great quantities of a kind of berry resembling a current except double the cis and grows on a bush like a privy. And the size of a damson deliciously flavored and makes delightful tarts, this fruit is now ripe, I took my servant and a French boy and walked on shore killed two buck elks and a fawn and intercepted the boat and had all the meat butchered and in by sun set at which time it began to rain and rained hard, Cap Lewis and myself walk out and got very wet, a cloudy rainy night. In my absence the boat passed a small, too, river called by the Indians White Stone River. This river is about thirty yards wide and runs through a plain and prairie in its whole course in a northerly direction from the mouth of this creek in an immense plain a high hill is situated and appears of a conic form and by the different nations of Indians in this quarter is supposed to be the residence of devils. That they are in human form with remarkable large heads and about eighteen inches high, that they are very watchful, and are armed with sharp arrows with which they can kill at a great distance. They are said to kill all persons who are so hardy as to attempt to approach the hill. They state that tradition informs them that many Indians have suffered by those little people and among others three Mahar men fell a sacrifice to their merciless fury not many years since, so much do the Maha, Suis. Autos and other neighboring nations believe this fable that no consideration is sufficient to induce them to apparac the hill. Lewis, August 24, 1804 
Friday, August 24th this day the chronometer stoked again just after being wound up. I know not the cause, but fear it proceeds from some defect which it is not in my power to remedy. Clark, August 24th, 1804. 1. About the center of this sand island the river of white stone, as called by Mr. Evans Kenville R. Falls in on the start. Side it appear to be about 25 or 30 yards wide. At the mouth of this river ten Indians had latterly crossed supposed BB Sows, the part of a band which are at war with the Mahars, this Sows nation are divided into bands some 100 to 500 men in a band at peace with each other. Their interest and prejudice is different, for instance one band the most inveterate enemy of the Mahars, all the other bands in the greatest harmony with that nation even go with them to war, those sows, follow the buffalo, and kill them on foot. They pack their dogs, which carry their bedden. Clark, August 25, 1804. Oct. 25th Saturday 1804 This morning Captain Lewis and myself G.D. S.J.T. Outerway Shields J. Fields Coulter Bratton Kane La Biche Corp. Wovington Fraser and York set out to visit this mountain of evil spirits, we set out from the mouth of the White Stone Creek, at eight o'clock, at four miles cross the creek in an open plain, at seven milliseconds. The dog gave out and we sent him back to the creek at twelve o'clock we rose the hill some time before we got to the hill we observed. Great numbers of birds hovering about the top of this mound when I got on the top those birds flw off. I discovered that they werc tekig a kind of flying ant which were in great numbers about the top of this hill, those insects lit on our hats and necks, several of them bit me very sharp on the neck. Near the top of this knoll I observed three holes which I suppose to be prairie wolves or braros, which are numerous in those plains. This hill is about seventy foot high in an immense prairie or level plain from the top I could not observe any woods except in the Misari points and a few scattering trees on the three rivers in view. I.e. the Sows River below. The river jock above and the one we have crossed from the top of this mound we observed several large gongus of buffalo and elk feeding upwards of 800 in number Captain Lewis being much fatigued and very thirsty obliged us to go to the nears water which we could see. Which was the W Stone Creek at right angles from the course we came out, and we got water in three miles in the creek above rear the beaver had darned it up after a delay of about one hour and a half we set out for our boat. Cross the creek three times wast deep, passing down an elgent bottom of about a mile in width bordered by a ridge of about fifty feet from the top of which it was level to the river. We proceeded on by a circular direction to the place we crossed this creek going out where we delayed for the men to rest themselves about forty minutes in a small grove here we got great quantities of the best largest grapes I ever tasted. Some blue currants still on the bushes, and two kind of plums, one the common wild plum the other a large yellow plum growing on a small bush. This plum is about double the size of the common and deliciously flavored, those plains are level without much water and no timber all the timber on the stone river would not thickly timber 100 acres of land, we return to the boat at sunset. My servant nearly exhausted with heat thirst and fatigue. He being fat and unaccustomed to walk as fast as I went was the cause, we set fire to the prairies in two places to let the sons know we were on the river and as a signal for them to come to the river above, our party in the boat and one pierogi under. The Cond of Cirque. Prior answered us by firing a prairie near them. We proceeded on to the place we camped last night, and as it began to rain and very dark, we concluded to stay all night. Our boys prepared us a supper of jerked meat and two prairie larks, which are about the size of a pigeon and peculiar to this country, and on a buffalo robe we slept very well in the morning we proceeded on and joined the boat at six miles. They had camped and were jerking an elk and five deer which are. Fields and Shannon had brought in. From the mound to the hill s s m o of r so south 70 degrees east, to the opst. Hills s 45 degrees east and to the woods near river o jock is west. Clark, August 25, 1804. Oct. 25th Saturday wind s e the boat under surged prior after drying some goods which got wet in the French pierogi and jerking the meat killed yesterday set out at 12 o'clock and proceeded on 6 miles and camped on the L. S. 
past a bluff of blue earth at three miles and a large sand island in a bend to the S.S. at five miles, our fields brought in five deer, G. Shannon and Elk this evening. Rain at three o'clock murky. 86 ABO0. Clark, August 25, 1804. August 25, Saturday 1804 A cloudy morning Captain Lewis and myself concluded to go and see the mound which was viewed with such turro by all the different nation in this quarter, we selected Shields J. Fields, W. Bratton, Cirked. Ordway, J. Coulter, Can, and Corp. Warbington and Fraser, also G. Drewier and Droke down to the mouth of White Stone River where we left the pierogi with two men and at two hundred yards we ascended a rising ground of about sixty feet, from the top of this high land the count ray is level and open as far as can be seen. Except some few rises at a great distance, and the mound which the Indians call mountain of little people or spirits this mound appears of a conic form and is n. 20 degrees west. From the mouth of the creek, we left the river at eight o'clock. At four miles we crossed the creek twenty-three yards wide in an extensive valley and continued on at two miles further our dog was so heated and fatigued we was obliged to send him back to the creek. At twelve o'clock we arrived at the hill Captain Lewis much fatigued from heat the day it being very hot and he being in a debilitated state from the precautions he was obliged to take to prevent the affects of the cobalt and mini. Substance which had liked to have poisoned him two days ago, his want of water, and several of the men complaining of great thirst, determined us to make for the first water which was the creek in a bend and e. From the mound about three miles, after a delay of about one hour and a half to recruit our party we set out on our return down the creek through the bottom of about one mile in width, crossed the creek three times to the place we first struck it. Where we gathered some delicious fruits such as grapes plums, and blue currants after a delay of an hour we set out on our back trail and arrived at the pierogi at sunset we proceed on to the place we camped. Last night and stayed all night. This mound is situated on an elevated plain in a level and extensive prairie, bearing in, 20 degrees west. From the mouth of White Stone Creek 9 miles. The base of the mound is a regular parallelogram the long side of which is about 300 yards in length the shorter 60 or 70 yards, from the longer side of the base it rises from the north and south with a steep ascent to the height of 65 or 70 feet. Leaving a level plain on the top of 12 feet in width and 90 in length. The north and south part of this mound is joins by two regular rises. Each in oval forms of half its height forming three regular rises from the plain the ascent of each elevated part is as sudden as the principal mound at the narrower sides of its base. The reagular form of this hill would in some measure justify a belief that it owed its origin to the hand of man. But as the earth and loose pebbles and other substances of which it was composed, bear an exact resemblance to the steep ground which border on the creek in its neighborhood we concluded it was most probably the production of nature- dash. The only remarkable characteristic of this hill admitting it to be a natural production is that it is insulated or separate a considerable distance from any other, which is very unusual in the natural order or disposition of the hills. The surrounding plains is open void of timber and level to a great extent, hence the wind from whatever quarter it may blow, drives with unusual force over the naked plains and against this hill. The insects of various kinds are thus involuntarily driven to the mound by the force of the wind, or fly to its lewd side for shelter, the small birds whose food they are, consequently resort in great numbers to this place in search of them. Particularly the small brown martin of which we saw a vast number hovering on the lewd side of the hill, when we approached it in the act of catching those insects, they were so gentle that they did not quit the place until we had arrived. Within a few feet of them. One evidence which the inns give for believing this place to be the residence of some unusual spirits is that they frequently discover a large assemblage of birds about this mound, is in my opinion a sufficient proof to produce in the savage mind a confident belief of all the properties which they ascribe it. From the top of this mound we beheld a most beautiful landscape, numerous herds of buffalo were seen feeding in various directions, the plain to north end. W and N E extends without interruption as far as can be seen from the mound to the mouth of Stone River is S, 20 degrees east 9 miles. To the woods near the mouth of River Jock is west. 
To the high land near the mouth of Suiz River is S. 70 E. To the high land opposite side or near the Maha town is S. 45 E. Some high lands to be seen from the mound at a great distance to the N, E. Some nearer to the N, W. No woods except on the Missouris points. If all the timber which is on the Stone Creek was on 100 acres it would not be thickly timbered, the soil of those plains are delightful great numbers of birds are seen in those plains, such as black bird. Wren or prairie bird a kind of lark about the cis of a partridge with a short tail and. And. 25th oct the boat under the calmed, of cirked. Prior proceeded on in our absence, after jerking the elk I killed yesterday, six miles and camped on the larboard side our fields brought in five deer. George Shannon killed an elk buck some rain this evening. We set the prairies on fire as a signal for the sows to come to the river. Lewis, August 25, 1804. August the 25th on our return from the Mound of Sparrows saw the first bats that we had observed since we began to ascend the Missouri. Also saw on our return on the creek that passes this mound about 2 m, distant s. A bird of heron kind as large as the cormorant short tail long legs of a color on the back and wings deep copper brown with a shade of red. We could not kill it therefore I cannot describe it more particularly. Clark, August 26, 1804. August 26 Sunday 1804 arrived at the boat at 9 o'clock a.m. set out at 10 o'clock after jerking the meat and cutting the elk skins for a tow rope and proceeded, leaving G. Drewyer and Shannon to hunt the horses, the river very full of sandbars and wide course s, 66 degrees west, 2 mes. To a sandbar making out from the s, s, n, 82 degrees west, 7 mes. To a pt of willows s, s past. A island and large sandbars on both sides river wide and a cliff of white earth on the L, S of 2 milliseconds, in length to a point of willows on the S. S opposite Arch Creek above the mouth of this creek a chief of the Maha Nathaton displeased with the conduct of Black Bird the main chief came to this place and built a town which was called by his name Petite Arch, or Little Bow, this town was at the foot of a hill in a handsome plain fronting the river and contained about 100 huts and 200 men. The remains of this tribe since the death of Petite Arch has joined the remaining part of the nation this creek is small, we apt. Pat Gas Sergeant Vice Floyd Dicest, gathered great quantites of grapes and three kinds of plums, one yellow round, and one oval, and the common wild plum. Mosquitoes bad tonight, I have apt. You. Clark, August 26th. 1804. August 26 Sunday 1804, joined the boat at 9 o'clock a.m., after jerking the meat killed yesterday and preparing the elk skins for a tow rope we set out leaving Drewyer and Shannon to hunt the horses which was lost with directions to follow us keeping on the high lands. Proceeded on past a cliff of white and blue or dark earths of two miles in extent on the L.S. and camped on a sandbar opposed the old village called Pittite Ark a small creek falls into the river fifteen yards wide below the village on the same side L. S. This village was built by an Indian chief of the Maha nation by the name of Pittite Ark, or Little Bow, displeased. With the great chief of that nation, Black Bird, separate with two hundred men and built a village at this place. After his death the two villages joined, apartment Pat Gas asserted. Vice Floyd deceased. Great quarts of grape, plums of three kinds two yellow and large of one of which is long and a third kind round and red all well flavored. Particularly the yellow sort. Lewis, August 26, 1804. Orders August 26, 1804. The commanding officers have thought it proper to appoint Patrick Gas, a sergeant in the Corps of Volunteers for Northwestern Discovery, he is therefore to be obeyed and respected accordingly. Cert. Gas is directed to take charge of the late Cert. Floyd's mess, and immediately to enter on the discharge of such other duties, as by their previous orders been prescribed for the government of the sergeants of this Corps. The commanding officers have every reason to hope from the previous faithful services of Cert. Gas, that this expression of their approbation will be still further confirmed, by his vigilant attention in future to his duties as a sergeant. 
the commanding officers are still further confirmed in the high opinion they had previously formed of the capacity, diligence and integrity of Sirt. Gas, from the wish expressed by a large majority of his comrades for his appointment as sergeant. Meriwether Lewis Captain 1st U.S. Raked Infty. W.M. Clark C.P.T. and Clark, August 27, 1804. August 27, Monday, this morning the morning star was observed to be very large, G. Druyer came up and informed that he could neither find Shannon or the horses, he had walked all night, we sent Shields and J. Fields back to look for Shannon and the horses and to come up with us on the river above at the Grand Calle Met or River Cocure and we set out under a gentle breeze from the S.E., proceeded on past a bluff at 7 M.E.S. Several mile in extent of white clay marl or chalk, under this bank we discovered large stone resembling lime encrusted with a substank like glass which I take to be cobalt, also or, 3 M.E.S. above this bluff we set the prairie on fire. To let the sows know, we wished to see them at two o'clock an Indian swam to the pierogi, we landed and two other came they were boys, they informed us that the Sueks were camped near. On the R Jack one Maha boy informed us his nation was gorn to make a peace with the Panias we send SJT. Prior and a Frenchman with the interpreter. Mr. Durian to the camp to see and invite their great chiefs to come and counsel with us at the Kayumet Bluffs underscore 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 mile above on L. S. Dot, we proceed on eleven halves miles farther and camped S. S. Clark, August 27th, 1804. August 27th, Monday, 1804. This morning the star called. The morning star much larger than common G. Druyer came up and informed that he could neither find Shannon nor horses, we sent Shields and J. Fields, back to hunt Shannon and the horses, with directions to keep on the hills to the Grand Calumet above on River Cocure. We set sail under a gentle breeze from the S.E. At seven miles past a white clay marl or chalk bluff under this bluff is extensive I discovered large stone much like lime encrusted with a clear substance which I believe to be cabalt, also or is embedded in the dark earth. Resembling slate much softer, above this bluff we had the prairie set on fire to let the Sioux see that we were on the river, and as a signal for them to come to it. At two o'clock past the mouth of River Jock, or yinked and one Indian at the mouth of this river swam to the pierogi, we landed and two others came to us, those inns. Informed that a large camp of sows, were on our, jock near the mouth. We sent Sir T. Prior and a Frenchman with Mr. Durio and the souls interpreter to the camp with directions to invite the principal chiefs to counsel with us at a bluff above called the Calumet, two of those Indians accompanied them and the third continued in the boat showing an inclination to continue. This boy is a Mahar, and informed that his nation, were gone to the Parnias to make a peace with that nation. We proceeded on about one and a half miles and encamped on a bar making out from the S.S. the wind blew hard from the south. A cool and pleasant evening, the river has fallen very slowly and is now low. Lewis, August 27, 1804. Monday, August 27 on the start. Shore, opposite to the lower point, or commencement of the White Cock Bluff. Clark, August 28, 1804. August 28, Tuesday, 1804 The wind blew hard last night one Indian stayed with us all night. Set out under a stiff breeze from S and proceed on Passe a Willow Island at two miles several sandbars the river here is wide and shallow full of sandbars, the high land appear to be getting nearer to each other past a bluff containing some white earth on the L. S. Below this bluff for some mile the plain rises gradually to the height of the bluff which is seventy or eighty foot, here the Indian boy left us for his camp, Captain Lewis and myself much indisposed, I think from the homne we substitute in place of bread. Or plums, we proceeded on about three miles higher and camped below the Calumet Bluff in a plain on the L. S. to wait the return of Sir Prior and Mr. Durian, who we sent to the Sows camp from the mouth of R. Jock, before we landed the French run a snag through their pierogi, and like to have sunk, we had her unloaded from an examination found that this pierogi was unfit for service. And determined to send her back by the party intended to send back and take their pierogi, 
accordingly changed the loads, some of the loading was wet wind blows hard from the south. J. Shields and J. Fields joined they did not overtake Shannon with the horses who is ahead of us. Clark, August 28, 1804. August 28, Tuesday, 1804. Set out under a stiff breeze from the south and proceeded on past. A willow island at two miles several sandbars, the river wide and shallow at four miles past a short white bluff of about seventy or eighty feet high. Below this bluff the prairie rises gradually from the water back to the height of the bluff which is on the larboard side here the Indian who was in the boat returned to the Sisuex camp on the Arjok, Captain. Lewis and myself much indisposed owing to some cause for which we cannot account one of the pirogues run a snag through her and was near sinking in the opinions of the crew, we came to below the Calumet Bluff and formed a camp in a beautiful plain near the foot of the high land which rises with a gradual ascent near this bluff I observe more timber in the valley and on the points than usual. The pirogi which was injured I had unloaded and the loading put into the other pirogi which we intended to send back. The pierogi and changed the crew after examining her and finding that she was unfit for service determined to send her back by the party some load which was in the pierogi much injured. The wind blew hard this afternoon from the south, J. Shields and J. Fields who was sent back to look for Shannon and the horses joined us and informed that Shannon had the horses ahead and that they could not overtake him this man not being a first-rate hunter. We determined to send one man in pursuit of him with some provisions. Lewis, August 28, 1804. Orders August 28, 1804. The commanding officers direct that the two messes who form the crews of the pirogues shall select each one man from their mess for the purpose of cooking and that these cooks as well as those previously appointed to the messes of the barge crew shall in future be exempted from mounting guard or any detail for that duty. They are therefore no longer to be held on the Royaster. M. Lewis Captain 1st U.S. Raked, Infty. Win Clark Captain and. Clark, August 29, 1804. August 29, Wednesday 1804, rained last night and some this morning very cloudy set some men to work to make a tow rope of elk skin, and myself to write, sent one man to pursue Shannon ahead with some provisions. I am much engaged writing a speech at four o'clock served. Prior and Mr. Durian the So's interpreter with about seventy So's arrived on the opposite side of the river we sent over for them, who came over Mr. D. and his son who was trading with the Indians came over Mr. Durian informed that three chiefs were of the party, we sent over searched. Prior with young Mr. Durian, six kettles for the Indians to cook the meat they killed on the way from their camp, two elk and six deer, about a bucket of corn and two twists of tobacco to smoke intending to speak to them tomorrow, G. Druyer killed a deer dash. Cirked. Prior informs that when he approached the Indian camp they came to meet them supposing Cap Lewis or myself to be of the party intending to take us in a robe to their camp he approached the camp which was handsome made of buffalo skins painted different color. Their camps formed of a conic form containing about twelve or fifteen persons each and forty in number, on the river jock of one hundred yards wide and deep containing but little wood, they had a fat dog cooked as a faist. For them, and a snug aptum for them to lodge on their march they passed through plains carved. With game and. 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 Clark, August 29, 1804. August 29, Wednesday 1804 Some rain last night and this morning, sent on Calter with provisions in pursuit of Shannon, had a tow rope made of elk skin, I am much engaged rewriting, at four o'clock p.m., served. Prior and Mr. Dorian with five chiefs and about seventy men and Arrived on the opposite side we sent over a pierogi and Mr. Dorion and his son who was trading with the Indians came over with surged prior, and informed us that the chiefs were there we sent surged. Prior and yound Mr. Dorion with some tobacco, corn and a few kiddies for them to cook in, with directions to inform the chiefs that we would speak to them tomorrow. Those Indians brought with them for their own use two elk and six deer which the young men killed on the way from their camp twelve miles distant. Searched. Prior informs me that when came near the Indian camp they were met by men with a buffalo robe to carry them, Mr. 
Dorian informed, they were not the owners of the boats and did not wish to be carried, the Suex camps are Hansen of a conic form covered with buffalo robes painted different colors and all compact and handsomely arranged. Covered all round an orpen part in the center for the fire, with buffalo robes each LODG has a place for cooking detached. The lodges contained 10 to 15 persons, a fat dog was presented as a mark of their great respect for the party of which they partook heartily and thought it good and well flavored. The river jock is deep and is navigable for pirogues a long distance up at the mouth it is shallow and narrow but above it is 80 or 90 yards wide passing through rich prairies with but little timber this river passes the Suex River and heads with the St. Peter's and a branch of Red River which which falls into Lake Winepick to the north. Clark. August 30, 1804. August 30, Thursday, 1804 A foggy morning I am much in gagged. After breakfast we sent Mr. Doran in a pierogi to the other side IELS. For the chiefs and warriors of the Sows, he returned at ten o'clock with the chiefs, at twelve o'clock I finished and we delivered a speech to the Indians expressive of the wishes of our government and explaining of what would be good for themselves. After delivering the speech we made one grand chief one two d chief and three third chiefs and delivered. To each a few articles and a small present to the whole the grand chief a parole, some wampum and a flag in addition to his present, they withdrew and we retired to dinner, Mr. Durian's son much displeased that he could not dine with Cap Lewis and myself, the number of so's present is about seventy men, dressed in buffalo robes a few fusees, bows and arrows, and very much decorated with porcupine quills. A society of which only four remains is present, this society has made a vow never to give back let what will happen, out of twenty-two only four remains, those are stout likely men who stay by themselves, fond of mirth and assume a degree of superiority dash. The air gun astonished them very much after night a circle was formed around three fires and those Indians danced until late, the chiefs looked on with great dignity much pleased with what they had, we retired late and went to bead. Wind hard from the south. Clark. August 30th, 1804. 30th of August Thursday 1804 A very thick fog this morning after preparing some presents for the chiefs which we intended make by giving medals, and finishing a speech what we intended to give them, we sent Mr. Dorian in a pierogi for the chiefs and warriors to a council under an oak tree near where we had a flag flying on a high flag staff at twelve o'clock we met and cap L. Delivered the speech and Thin made one great chiff by giving him a mayadal and some clothes one two d. Chief and three third chiefs in the same way, they wrecked. Those thing with the goods and tobacco with pleasure to the grand chief we gave a flag and the parole and wampum with a hat and chief's coat, we smoked out of the pipe of peace. And the chiefs retired to a bure made of bushes by their young men to divide their presents and smoke eat and counsel Captain Lewis and myself retired to dinner and consult about other measures, Mr. Dorian Jr. Much displeased that we did not invite him to dine with us, which he was sorry for afterwards, the Suex is a stout bold looking people, the young men handsome, and well made, the greater part of them make use of bows and arrows. Some few fusees I observe among them, notwithstanding they live by the bow and arrow, they do not shoot so well as the northern Indians the warriors are very much decorated with paint porcupine quills and feathers, large legans and moccasins. All with buffalo robes of different colors. The squaws wore petticoats and and a white buffalo robes with the black hair turned back over their necks and shoulders. I will here remark a society which I had never before this day heard was in any nation of Indians, four of which is at this time. Present and all who remain of this band, those who become members of this society must be brave active young men who take a vow never to give back let the danger be what it may. In war parties they always go forward without screening themselves behind trees or anything else to this vow they strictly other during their lives, an instinct which happened not long since, on a party in crossing the Armisauri on the ice. A hole was in the ice immediately in their course which might easily have been avoided by going around. The foremost man went on and was lost the others wer draged around by the party, in a battle with the Crow Indians who inhabit the Cowl Noir or Black Mountain out of twenty-two of this society eighteen was killed. 
The remaining four was draged off by their party those men are likely fellows the sit together camp and dance together, this society is an imitation of the societies of the de Curbo or Crow Indians from whom they imitate. Clark, August 31st. 1804. 31st of August Friday rose early a fair day, a curio society among this nation worthy of remark, i.e., formed of their active determined young men, with a vow never to give back, let the danger or difficulty be what it may. In war parties they always go forward, without screening themselves behind trees or anything else, to this vow they strictly other during their lives, an instance of it. His last winter on a march in crossing the Missouri Iowa hole was in the ice immediately in their course which might easily be avoided by going around, the foremost man went on and was drowned. The others were caught by their party and draged around in a battle with the Crow de Curbo Indians out of twenty-two of this society eighteen was killed, the remaining four was draged off by their friends. And are now here, they assicate together camp together and are merry fellows, this custom the Suex learned of the de Carbours inhabiting the Gout Noir or Black Mountain all the chiefs delivered a speech agreeing to what we said and 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 begged which I answered from my notes. We made or gave a certificate to two brave men the attendants of the great chief gave them some tobacco and prepared a commission for Mr. Darien to make a peace with all the nations in the neighborhood, Mahas, Porn Cases, Panic, Loops, Autos and Missouris, and to take to the president some of the GT chiefs of each nations who would accompany him also to do certain other things. And Rod Instructions, gave him a flag and some clothes, the chiefs sent all their young men home, and they stayed for Mr. Dorian, in the evening late we gave the Comsen. An instruction to Mr. Durian and he wrecked them with Pleasa, and promised to do all which was necessary. I took a vocabulary of the Suex language, and a few answers to some queries I put to Mr. Pitt Dorian respecting the war no. Situation trad and and of that people which is divided into twenty tribes possessing separate interest they are numerous between two and three thousand men. Divided into twenty tribes who view their interests as different some bands at war with nations which other bands are at peace, this nation called themselves Dar Kotar. The French call them Suex their language is not peculiar to themselves as has been stated, a great many words is the same with the Mahas, Pankais, Osarge, Kansis and Clearly proves to me those people had the same origin, this nations inhabit the Red River of Hudson Bay St. Peter's Mississippi, Des Moines are. Jock and on the Missouri they are at war with twenty nations, and at peace with eight only, they wrecked their trade from the British except a few on the Missouri they furnish beaver Martin Luz Ortair. Pecan bear and deer and have forty traders at least among them. The names of the different bands of this nation are. First Che the Ri or Bois Ruli, the present band, inhabit the Suex Jock and Des Moines rivers. Second Ho in the Boer Tour Poles. They live on the head of the Suex River. Third Mi Ma Kar Jo, or make fence on the river, the country near the big bend of the Missouri. Fourth Sun on to Tun, people of the prairie, they rove north of the Missouri in the prairies above. Fifth while Pa Ku Du, beads, they live near the Prairie de Chen on the Mississippi. Sixth Tatar Tun, or village of Prairie, on the waters of the Mississippi above Prate de Chain, Dog Prairie. Seventh Na was Tar Tun, big water town, on the Mississippi above the mouth of the Sti. Peters River. Eighth Wau Patu, Leaf Nation. Ten leagues up St. Peters. Ninth Cas Car Ba, White Man. 35 LGS up St. Peter's. 10 miles ACCU up SIBA, Cut Bank, reside on the head of St. Peter's River. 11 Sun On, Honesty. Peter's in the Prairies. 12th Say SI Tunes, 40 leagues up St. Peter's. The names of the other tribes I could not get in. August 31, 1804 Speeches. At eight o'clock the chiefs and warriors met us in council all with their pipes with the stems presented towards us, after a silence of ABT. Underscore 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 the great chief dressed himself in his fine clothes and two warriors in the uniform and armor of their nation stood on his left with a war club and spear each, and dressed in Fia Thursday. 
the shake hand first chief spoke. My father. I am glad to hear the word of my G.F. and all my warriors and men about me are also glad. My father. Now I see my two fathers the children, of my great father, and what you have said I believe and all my people do believe also. My father, we are very glad you would take pity on them this day, we are poor and have no powder and ball. My father. We are very sorry our women are naked and all our children, no petticoats or clothes. My father, you do not want me to stop the boats going up if we see. I wish a man out of your boat to bring about a peace, between all the Indians, and he can do so. My father, listen to what I say I had an English medal when I went to see them, I went to the Spinoriards they give me a Mayadel and some goods, I wish you would do the same for my people. My father. I have your word I am glad of it and as soon as the ice is done running I will go down and take with me. Some great men of the other bands of the Sows. My father, I will be glad to see my grandfather but our women has got no clothes and we have no powder and ball, take pity on us this day. My father, I want to listen and observe what you say, we want our old friend, Mr. Durian, to stay with us and bring the Indians with myself down this spring. My father, I open my ears and all my yound men and we wish you to let Mr. Durian stay, and a pierogi for to take us down in the spring. The speech of T.H. White Crane Mar to Re 2D Chief. My fathers listen to my word, I am a young man and do not intend to talk much, but will say a few words. My father, my father was a chief, and you have made me a chief I now think I am a chief agreeable to your word as I am a young man and inexperienced. Cannot say much what the great chief has said is as much as I could say. Par and R and E A R par be struck by the Panna 3D chief. My fathers I can't speak much I will speak a little to you. My fathers. There's the chiefs you have made high, we will obey them, as also my young men, the pipe I hold in my hand is the pipe of my father, I am poor as you see. Take pity on me I believe what you have said. My fathers. You think the great Mayadel you gave my great chief pleases me and the small one you gave me gives me the heart to go with him to see my great father. What the great chief has said is all I could say. I am young and can't speak. A warrior by name Tar Aromo Ne spoke. My father, I am very glad you have made this man our great. Chief, the British and Spaniards have acknowledged him before but never clothed him. You have clothed him, he is going to see our great father, we do not wish to spear him but he must go and see his great father. My fathers, my great chief must go and see his GD father, give him some of your milk to speak to his young men. My father. Our people are naked, we wish a traitor to stop among us, I would be very glad our two fathers would give us some powder and ball and some milk with the flag. Speech of ARCA we char cheat the half man 3D chief. My fathers I do not speak very well, I am a poor man and. My fathers. I was once a chief's boy now I am a man the chief of some note. My fat HRs, I am glad you have made my old chief a fine and a great man, I have been a great warrior but now I hear your words. I will bury my hatchet and be at peace with all and go with my great chief to see my great father. My fat s. When I was a young man I went to the Spaniards to see their fashion, I like you talk and will pursue you advice, since you have given me a mayadal. I will tell you the talk of the Spaniards. My fathers. I am glad my grandfather has sent you to the reed people on this river, and that he has given us a flag large and handsome the shade of which we can sit under. My fathers. We want one thing for our nation very much we have no traitor, and often in want of goods. My fathers, I am glad as well as all around me to hear your word, and we open our ears, and I think our old friend Mr. Durian can open the ears of the other bands of Sioux. But I fear those nations above will not open their ears, and you cannot I fear open them. My fathers, you tell us that you wish us to make peace with the Ottos and M. You have given five medless I wish you to give five kegs with them. My fathers dot. My horses are poor running the buffalo give us. Some powder and ball to hunt with, and leave old Mr. Durian with us to get us a trader. 
My father. The Spaniards did not keep the medal of the token of our great chief when they gave him one you have dressed him and I like it I am poor and take piety on me. My fathers, I am glad you have put heart in our great chief he can now speak with confidence. I will support him in all your counsels after all the chief presented the pipe to us. The half-man rose and spoke as follows viz. My father, what you have said is well, but you have not given anything to the attendants of the great chiefs after which. In the evening late we gave Mr. Dorian a bottle of whiskey and himself with the chiefs crossed the river and camped on the opposite bank soon after a violent wind from the N.W. Accompanied with rain. Clark, August 31, 1804. 31st of August we gave a certificate to two men of war, attendants on the chief gave to all the chiefs a carrot of tobacco, had a talk with Mr. Dorian, who agreed to stay and collect the chiefs from as many bands of Sioux as he cowed this fall and bring about a peace between the Siwex and their neighbors and and k and k after dinner we gave Mr. Peter Darien, a commission to act with a flag and some clothes and provisions and instructions to bring about a peace with the Sumahars, Paines, Ponceries, Ottos and Missouris, and to employ any trader to take some of the chiefs of each or as many of those nations as he could particularly the Siwex, I took a vocabulary of the Sioux language, and the answer to a few quarries such as referred to their situation. Trade, Number War, and k. And k. This nation is divided into twenty tribes, possessing separate interests collectively they are numerous say from two to three thousand men. Their interests are so unconnected that some bands are at war with nations which other bands are on the most friendly terms. This great nation who the French has given the nickname of Suex, call themselves Darko Tar their language is not peculiarly their own, they speak a great number of words, which is the same in every respect with the Maha, Pankasar. Osarge and Kansies. Which clearly proves that those nation at some period not more than a century or two past the same nation, those Dar Ca Ters or so inhabit or rove over the Count Ray on the Red River of Lake Winnipeg, St. Peters and the west of the Mississippi above Prairie de Chain heads of River Des Moines, and the Missouri and its waters on the N side for a great extent. They are only at peace with eight nations, and agreeable to their calculation at war with twenty odd. Their trade corns from the British, except this band and one on Des Moines who trade with the traders of St. Louis, the furnish beaver Martain, lose pecan, bear and deer skins and have about forty traders among them. The dark Kotar or Suex rove and follow the buffalo raise no corn or anything else the woods and prairies affording a substancy, the eat meat. And substitute the ground potato which grow in the plains for bread the names of the different tribes or canoes of the Sioux or Dar Kotar nation. First chase share re yank ton, or bois roule, now present inhabit the Suex and Des Moines rivers and the Jacques. Second hoin de Borto, poles, they rove on the heads of Suex and Jackus rivers. Third me ma car joe, make fence of the river, rove on the Count Ray near the big bend of the Missouris. Fourth so on, Teton, people of the prairie, the rove in the plains n. Of the rive Missouris above this. Fifth while pa kutar, leaf beds, the live near the prairie de chain near the Mississippi. Sixth tatar tun, or village of prairie, rove on the waters of the Mississippi above prairie de chain. Seventh na was tar tun, big water town. Rove on the Mississippi above this tea. Peters River. Eighth while pato, leaf nation, live ten leagues up St. Peters River. Ninth cascar ba, white man, Live thirty five Liagus up St. Peter's River. Tenth me ca cu op siba, cut bank, rove on the head of a steep. Peters. Eleventh so on, rove on St. Peter's River in the Prairies. Twelfth so si tunes, live forty Liagus up the St. Peter's River. The names of the other bands neither of the Suex's interpreters could inform me. In the evening late we gave Mr. Darion a bottle of whiskey and he with the chiefs and his son crossed the river and camped on the opposite bank, soon after night a violent wind from the N.W., with rain the rain continued the greater part of the night the river arising a little. Clark, August 31, 1804
August the 31st 1804 after the Indians got their breakfast the chiefs met and arranged themselves in a row with elegant pipes of peace all pointing to our seats, we came forward and took our seats. The great chief the Sheikh Han rose and spoke to some length approving what we had said and promising to pursue the advice. Marjorie 2D chief, White Crane, rose and made a short speech and referred to the great chief. Par and R and E A R Par B third chief rose and made a short speech. A R C A we char the the half man three D chief rose and spoke at some length, much to the purpose. The other chief said but little. One of the warriors spoke after all was done and promised to support the chiefs. The promised to go and see their great father in the spring with Mister Dorian and to do all things we had advised them to do. And all concluded by telling the distresses of the nation by not having traitors, and wished us to take pity on them. The wanted powder ball and a little milk. Last night the Indians danced until late in their dances we gave them sawn knives tobacco and belts and tape and binding with which they wr satisfied. Clark, September 1. 1804. September 1st Saturday 1804 Mr. Durian left his kettle which we gave him, which we sent to him and set out under a gentle breeze from the south, rained half the last night, procked on, past Calumet Bluff of a yellowish reed and a brownish white hard clay. This bluff is about 170 or 180 foot high here the highlands approached the river on each side with a gentle ascent, opst. The bluff a large island covered with timber is situated close to the L, S, we passed the island opposite which the high land approached the river on both side, river rose three inches last night, passed a large island covered with wood on the L, S. Some rain, cloudy all day, the river wide and hills close on each side, came to before night to go and see a beaver house which is eleven halves miles to the L, S. Of the Riv Cap Lewis and myself with two men went to see this house which was represented as high and situated in a small pond. We could not find the pond. Druyer killed a buck elk, it is not necessary to mention fish as we catch them at any place on the river, camped at the lower point of Bonham Island. Clark, September 1, 1804. September 1st, Saturday, 1804 Mr. Darion left his kettle and sent back for it and We set out under a gentle breeze from the S, it rained half the last night, proceeded on past the bluffs compst. Of a yellowish red, and brownish white clay which is a hard as chalk this bluff is 170 or 180 feet high, here the high lands approach near the river on each side, that on the S, S, not so high as that on the L, S. Opposite the bluffs is situated a large island covered with timber close under the L, S, above the ISD the high land approach and form a cliff to the river on the S, S. This cliff is called White Bear Cliff one of those animals having been killed in a hole in it. Clark, September 1, 1804. 1st of September Saturday 1804 Some hard wind and rain, cloudy all day. The river wide and hills on each side near the river, passed. A large, one, island which appeared to be composed of sand, covered with cottonwood close under the S, S, we landed at the lower point of a large island on the S, S. Called Bon Um or Good Man, here Captain Lewis and myself went out a short distance on the L, S. To see a beef house, which was said to be of great height and situated in a pond we could not find the house and returned after night Druyer killed an elk, and a beaver. Numbers of catfish caught, those fish is so plenty that we catch them at any time and place in the river. Clark, September 2, 1804. Second of September. Sunday 1804, set out early and proceeded on past the island and came to above below a yellow bluff on the SS, the wind being hard from the NW, very cold some rain all day much thunder and lightning G. Druyer R. Fields Howard and Newman killed four fat elk on the isle. We had them jerked and that skin stretched to cover the pirogue's water rising. I observed bare grass and rue in the sides of the hills at sunset the wind lulled and cleared up cool, Aired the meat all in high spirits, Shannon and the man sent after him has not yet joined us. 2 Sepr. Description of a anti-ant fortification. 1. 
From the river on the top of the Antiant fortification at this the 12 foot high 75 feet base first course is from the river is south 76 degrees west 96 yards. South 84 degrees west, 53 yards. At this angle a kind of ravelin covering a sailport, bearing east widening end 69 w 300 yards past a gateway at 280 yards. The bank lower and forming a right angle of 30 yards, two wings or mounds running from a high knoll to the west of the way one 30 yards back of the other covering the gate, at this place the mound is 15 feet 8 inches higher than the plain forming a glassy outwards and 105 feet base n. 32 w 56 yards n 20 w. 73 yards this part of the work is about 12 feet high, level and about 16 feet wide on the top, at the expiration of this course a low irregular work in a direction to the river. Outside of which is several level mounds of about 16 feet high and at the inner part of the gouge a deep hole across the gauge n. 32 w 96 yards, to the commencement of a wall of about 8 feet high n.81 degree w. 533 yards to a deep pond 73 yards in demuter, and 200 yards further to a sailport, where there is evident marks of its being covered, the same course contained 1030 yards to the river bottom. One half of the first part of the fortification is washed into the river, a second line, has run from the northern extremity parallel with the river, as it appears to have run at that time, n, 56 w. This of different hith from 4 to, to 10 feet, the high land is about 3 me. From this fortress, and rise to small mountains say from 3 to 400 feet the high land on the opposite or north side of the Misauri is 110 feet forming a yellow clay bluff to the water and is level back as fur as can be seen. I am informed by the interpreter in French, that they have seen, numbers of those fortifications in different parts of this CTY. Particularly on the Platte Concis and the north of this place on the River Jock. Two small fortifications is on the Arc Creek on the upper side first one quarter of a mile up and the 2D one quarter higher, nearly square each angle 100 yards. Clark, September 2nd. 1804. September 2nd Sunday 1804 set out early and proceeded on past the island and landed on the S. S above under a yellow clay bluff of 110 feet high, the wind blew very hard ahead from the N. W, with some rain and very cold, G, Drenier R. Fields Newman and Howard killed four fine elk we had the meat all jerked and the skins dried to cover the pierogi, on the side of the bluff I observed bare grass and rue, at sun set the wind lulled and cleared up cold, the high land on the L, S. Is very high, and uneven, that on the S, S from 80 to 120 foot and is level back but few small streams falling into the river. I went out and made a survey of the Antient Works which is situated in a level plain about three miles from the hills which are high. A description of the fortification. 1. Commencing on the river opposite the Good Man's Island, first course from the river is. S. 76 D. W. 96 yards thence. S. 84 W. 53 yards, at this angle a kind of angle or horn work. N. 69 W. 300 yards to a high part, passing the gateway covered by two half-circular works one back of the other lower than the main work the gate forms a right angle projecting inward. N.32 W, 56 yards. N20 W. 73 yards this part of the work appears to have either double, or a covered way. From this some irregular works appear to have been on mounds between this and the river with a deep round hole in the center of a gorge formed by another angle, 578. This part of the work is from 10 to 15 feet 8 inches, the mounds of various heights, the base of the work is from 75 to 105 feet. Steep inward and forming a kind of glassy outwards. The same cores continued i.e. n. 32 degrees west. 96 yards to the commencement of a wall from 8 to 10 feet high this course not on the wall but through to the commencement of another detached. N. 81 degrees west 1830 yards to the river and above where this bank strikes the river is the remains of a circular work. 
In this course at 533 yards a deep pond of 73 yards diameter perfectly round is in the course of the bank which is about 8 feet high. From this pond the bank it lowers gradually, a bank about the same height runs near the river, and must have joined the main work at a part which is now washed into the river, this is also perfectly straight and widens from the main work. As the river above has washed in its banks for a great distance I cannot form an idea how those two long works joined, where they strike the river above, they are about 1,100 yards apart. I am informed by our French interpreters that a great number of those antent works are in different parts of this Count Ray, on the Platte River, Kansuz, Jock, Osarge Mine River and Small one is on island opposite the one I have described, and two of our party saw two of those antient fortresses on the Pityat Arc Creek on the upper side near the mouth, each angle of which were 100 yards and about 8 feet high. Clark. September 3, 1804. September 3, Monday, 1804. Set out at sunrise, very cold morning clear and but little wind from the NW, we proceeded on, the river wide, took an observation below Plum Creek which mouths on the SS. This creek is small and corns in between two white banks, great quantities of plums of a most delicious flavor, I have collected the seed of three kinds which I intend to send to my brother, also some grapes of a superior quality large and well flavored. The river is rising a little, several wild goats seen in the plains they are wild and fleet elk and buffalo is very plenty, scarcely any timber in Count Ray except a little on the river in the points. Saw some signs of the two men who are ahead, Coulter has not overtaken Shannon camped on the L.S. at the edge of a plain. Clark, September 3, 1804. 3rd of September Monday 1804 A very cold morning wind from N. W. We set out at sunrise, and proceeded on to a bluff below the mouth of Plum 12 Yards, Creek on the S. S. And took an observation of the sun's altitude. This creek is small it abounds with blums of a delicious flavor, the river is wide and crowded with sandbars, it is rising a little but little timber in this Count Ray all that is. Is on the river in the points. We came to on the L, sin the edge of a plain and camped for the night, we saw some signs of the two men Shannon and Coulter, Shannon appeared to be ahead of Coulter, the white banks appear to continue on both sides of the river. Grapes plenty and finely flavored. Clark, September 4, 1804. 4th of September Tuesday 1804, a very cold wind from south E by S, we set out early proceeded on to the mouth of a small creek in the bend to the L, S. Called White Line at 11 halves miles further past the mouth of A R O Platt or White Paint C R about 25 yards, on same side called, I walked on the top of the hill forming a cliff coved. With red cedar an extensive view from this hill. At three miles from the creek the high land jut the river forming a bluff of bluish clay continue eleven halves miles came to at the mouth of Kakur, rapid, this river comes rolling its sands watch, is course, into the Missouris from the SW by W. This river is 152 yards across the water and not exceeding four feet deep it does not rise high when it does it spreads over a large surface. And is not navigable it has a great many small islands and sand bars I went up this river three miles to the spot the Panis once had a large village on the upper side in a beautiful extensive plain rising gradually from the river I fell into a buffalo road joined the boat late at night at the Pania Island. Clark, September 4, 1804. September 4, Tuesday 1804 A very cold wind from the S.S.E., we set out early and proceeded on the mouth of a small creek in a bend to the L. S. Called White Lime, at eleven halves miles higher up past a large creek on the L. S., called or white paint between those two creeks, the latter of which is about thirty yards wide, we passed under a bluff of red cedar, at four mes. One half past the mouth of the river K. Coeur, Rapid R., on the L. S. And came to a short distance above, this river is 152 yards wide at the mouth and 4 feet deep throwing out sands like the Platte, only coarser, forming bars in its mouth. I went up this river 3 miles to a beautiful plain on the upper side where the Peneus once had a village this river widens above its mouth and is devy dead by sand and islands, the current very rapid. 
not navigable for even canoes without great difficulty owing to its sands. The color like that of the Platte is like the heads of this river is not known, it corns into the Masari from the S, W, by west, and I am told that is GNL. Course some distance up is parallel with the Missouri. Clark, September 5, 1804. September 5, 1804 Wednesday, set out early the wind blew hard from the south as it has for some days past, we set up a jury mast and sailed. I saw a large gang of turkeys, also grew seen past a large island of about three miles long in the middle of the river opposite the head of this island the Pankar River comes into the Missouri Eye on the L. S. The S. S is a cliff under which great numbers of springs run out of mineral water, saw several wild goats on the cliff and deer with black tails sent Shields and Gibson to the Ponca's towns. Which is situated on the Ponca River on the lower side about two miles from its mouth in an open beautiful plain, at this time this nation is out hunting the buffalo they raise no corn or beans, Gibson killed a buffalo in the town. The two men which has been absent several days is ahead, we came to on the upper point. Of a large island at three o'clock to make a mast sent out some hunters on the island, which I call no preserve island, at this place we used the last of our preserves, they killed three bucks, and two elk which were lurked. Clark, September 5. 1804. September 5 Wednesday, 1804 set out early the winds blew hard from the south, Goats Turkey seen today, past a large island, one, Opst. This island here the head the Poncaser River comes into the Missouri from the west this river is about 30 yards wide. Dispatch two men to the Poncaries village situated in a handsome plain on the lower side of this creek about two miles from the Missouri, the Poncaser's nation is small and at this time out in the prairies hunting the buffalo. One of the men sent to the village killed a buffalo in the town, the other, a large buck near it, some sign of the two men who is ahead. Above the island on the S. S we passed under a bluff of blue earth, under which sevial mineral springs broke out of the water of which had a taste like salts, we came to on the upper point of a large island, which I call no preserves island, here we made a cedar mast. Our hunters brought in three bucks, and two elks this evening which we had jerked. One of the hunter shields, informed that he saw several black-tailed deer, near the Poncaser village. Lewis, September 5. 1804. September 5th saw some wild goats or antelopes on the hill above the Glauber salt springs they ran off we could not discover them sufficiently distinctly to describe even their color their track is as large as a deer wreath or broader and more blunt at the point. This day one of our hunters brought us a serpent beautifully variegated with small black spots of a rhomboidal form on a light yellow white ground the black predominates most on the back the whitest yellow on the sides. And it is nearly white on the belly with a few party colored scuta on which the black shoes but imperfectly and the coloring matter seems to be underneath the scuta, it is not poisonous it hisses remarkably loud. It has 221 scuta on the belly and 51 on the tail, the eyes are of a dark black color the tail terminates in a sharp point like the substance of a cock spur, length 4 feet, 6 i. Clark, September 6, 1804. 6th September Thursday 1804, a storm this morning from the N.W. At daylight which lasted a few minutes, set out after the storm was over and proceeded on a hard wind ahead past the island which is separate from the L side by a narrow channel. The morning is very cold. Camped on S. Sigh before night no timbering in reach ahead, our fields killed two deer saw buffalo, and goats this evening, the river rising a little. Clark, September 6, 1804. Septure. 6 Thursday 1804 A storm this morning from the N.W. Which lasted a few minutes, we set out and proceeded on past the head of the ISD which is separate from the L.S. by a narrow channel, a hard wind from the N.W., a very cold day, we camped on the S.S. At the upper point of some timber, some time before night, no timber, no timber being in reach. I saw several goats on the hills on the S.S. also buffalo in great numbers. Clark, September 7, 1804. September 7, Friday, 1804. 
A very cold morning set out at daylight. Near the foot of this high knoll we discovered a village of an animal the French called the prairie dog which burrow in the groan and with the rattlesnake and killed one and caught one dog alive caught in a hole two frogs near the hole killed a dark rattlesnake with a prairie dog in him. The village of those little dogs is under the ground a considerable distance we dig under six feet through rich hard clay without getting to their lodges some of their holes we put in five barrels of water without driving them out. We caught one by the water forcing him out. Their mouth resembled a rabbit, head longer, legs short, and toe nails. Long their tail like a ground squirrel which they shake and make chattering noise their eyes like a dog, their color is gray and skin contains soft fur. Clark, September 7. 1804. 7th Sceptre. 1804 Sceptre. Seventh Friday a very cold morning set out at daylight we landed after procting fifty-one halves miles, near the foot of a round mountain which I saw yesterday resembling a dome. Captain Lewis and myself walked up, to the top which forms a cone and is about seventy feet higher than the high lands around it, the base is about three hundred foot in deck ending this cupola. Discovered a village of small animals that burrow in the groan, those animals are called by the French Pitai Chien, killed one and caught one alive by pouring a great quantity of water in his hole we attempted to dig to the beds of one of those animals. After digging six feet, found by running a pole down that we were not halfway to his lodges, we found two frogs in the hole, and killed a dark rattlesnake near with a ground rat in him, those rats are numerous, the village of those animals coughs. About four acrs of ground on a gradual descent of a hill and contains great numbers of holes on the top of which those little animals set erect make a whistling noise and when all arms slip into their hole, we poured into one of the holes five barrels of water without filling it. Those animals are about the size of a small squirrel shorter and thicker, the head much resembling a squirrel in every respect, except the ears which is shorter, his tail like a ground squirrel which thy shake and whistle when alarmed. The toe nails long, they have fine fur and the longer hair is gray, it is said that a kind of lizard also a snake reside with those animals. Camped. Lewis and Clark, September 8, 1804. 8th of September, 1804 Saturday. Set out early and proceeded on under a gentle breeze from the S.E. at 3 M.E.S. past the place where Trotto wintered one winter. I went out today on the S. S. with a view to find some of the little dogs, and coats, traveled over a raged and mountainous count ray without water and rising to five or six hundred hundred feet, islands and sands intervening craft. My getting to the boat until after night, in my absent Captain Lewis killed a buffalo, I saw grayed many buffalo and white wolves. Sailed all day. Clark, September 8, 1804. 8th of September Saturday set out early and proceeded on under a gentle breeze from the S.E. at 3 M.E.S. Passed the house of Trudeau where he wintered in 96. Called the Pania House, above is high hills on the S.S. on the S.S., much higher hills than usual appear to the north distant 8 miles recently burnt, past 3 small islands at about 5 miles on this course on the S.S., here Captain. Lewis killed a buffalo in the river and this men one other came to on the lower point of an island in the middle of the river called Boat Island and encamped, jerked the meat killed today consisting of two buffalo, one large buck elk one small. For deer three turkeys and a squirrel, I joined the boat at this camp, the Count Ray on the SS. Is poor and broken. Clark and White House, September 9, 1804. 9th September Sunday, set out at sunrise and proceeded on past the island several gongus of buffalo on the sides of the hills on the L.S., halted on L. side took breakfast. Captain. Clark walked on shore, we proceeded on. Arca Fields came to the boat had killed one buffalo. Past red cedar on the edge of the hills on both sides of the river but most on the bluff on. Clark, September 9, 1804. September 9th Sunday 1804 set out at sunrise and proceeded on past the head of the island on which we camped. Past three sand and willow islands, the sand bars so numerous, it is not worth mentioning them, the river shoal or shallow wind S.E. came to and camped on a sand bar on the L. 
S. Captain Lewis went out to kill a buffalo. I walked on shore all this evening with a view to kill a goat or some prairie dogs in the evening after the boat landed, I directed my servant York with me to kill a buffalo near the boat from a number. Then scattered in the plains, I saw at one view near the river at least five hundred buffalo, those animals have been in view all day feeding in the plains on the L. S. Every copse of timber appear to have elk or deer. D. Killed three deer, I kiled a buffalo Y. 2. R. Fields 1. Lewis, September 9, 1804. September 9th Captain. Clark found on the large shore under a high bluff issuing from a blue earth a bituminous matter resembling molasses in consistence, color and taste. Clark, September 10, 1804. September 10th Monday a cloudy morning set out early under a gentle breeze from the S.E. Past two small islands one on the L.S. and the other on the S. S. both in the first course at 101-2 miles past the lower P.T. of Cedar Island situated in a bend to the L.S. This island is about two miles long covered with red cedar, the river is very shallow opst. This island, below the island on the top of a ridge we found a backbone with the most of the entire lane connected for 45 feet those bones are petrified, some teeth and ribs also connected. At 3 MES. Above Cedar I passed a large island on the S.S. To this island several elk swam above this island on the Mydal is situated two islands small one above the other, those islands are called Mud Islands and camped on the upper island of them three buffalo one elk and killed today, river falling a large salt spring of remarkable salt water much frequented by buffalo, some smaller springs on the side of the hill above less salt, the water excessive salt and is eleven halves miles from the river on the S, W or L, S. Opposite Cedar Island. Clark, September 10, 1804. September 10, Monday, 1804. A cloudy dark morning set out early, a gentle breeze from the S, E, past two small islands on the L, S and one on the S, S. All in the first course at 101-2 miles past the lower point of an, 2, island covered with red cedar situated in a bend on the L.S., this island is about 2 moles in length, 1, below this on a hill on the L.S. We found the backbone of a fish, 45 feet long tapering to the tail, and those joints were separate and all petrified, Opposite this island 11 halves miles from the river on the L.S. is a large salt spring of remarkable salt water. One other high up the hill one half me. Not so salt. We proceeded on under a stiff breeze. Three miles above Cedar Island past a large island on the S. S. No water on that side. Three, several elk swam to this island past a small island near the center of the river, of a mile in length and camped on one above separate from the other by a narrow chanel. Those islands are called mud islands, the hunters killed three buffalo and one elk today. The river is falling a little, great number of buffalo and elk on the hillsides feeding deer sirs. We came to at the mouth of a creek on the L.S. At dark in a heavy shower of rain, it continued to rain the greater part of the night, with a hard wind from the N.W. cold. Clark, September 11th, 1804. Septure. 11th Tuesday 1804 set out early a cloudy morning the river very wide from one hill to the other, with many sand bars past the ISD. On which we lay at a mile past three ists. One on the L.S., one quarter of a mile from it on the L.S. A village of little dogs. I killed four, this village is 800 yards wide and 970 yards long on a gentle slope of a hill in a plain, those animals are numerous, the other two islands are on the S.S. The river is very shallow and wide, the boat got aground several times, the man G. Shannon, who left us with the horses above the Mahar village, and believing us to be ahead pushed on as long as he could. Joined us he shot away what few bullets he had with him, and in a plentiful, Count Ray liked to have starved. He was twelve days without provision, subsisting on grapes at the same the buffalo, would come within thirty yards of his camp. One of his horses gave out and he left him before his last bellets were consumed, 
I saw three large spotted foxes today a black-tailed deer, and killed a buck elk and two deer. One author elk two deer and a porcupine killed today at twelve o'clock it became cloudy and rained all the afternoon and night. Clark, September 11, 1804 September 11, Tuesday 1804 A cloudy morning, set out very early, the river wide and shallow the bottom narrow, and the river crowded with sandbars, past the island on which we lay at one mile dash, posade three islands one on the L.S. and second on the S. Des. Opposite the island on the L. S. I saw a village of barking scurial 970 yards long, and 800 yards wide situated on a gentle slope of a hill, those animals are numerous, I killed four with a view to have their skin stuffed. Here the man who left us with the horses twenty-two days ago and has been ahead ever since joined, us nearly starved to death, he had been twelve days without anything to eat but grapes and one rabbit. Which he killed by shooting a piece of hard stick in place of a ball dash. This man supposing the boat to be ahead pushed on as long as he could, when he became weak and fiable determined to lay by and wait for a trading boat, which is expected keeping one horse for the last resource. Thus a man had like to have starved to death in a land of plenty for the want of bullets or something to kill his meat we camped on the L. S. Above the mouth of a run a hard rain all the afternoon, and most of the night, with hard wind from the N.W. I walked on shore the fore part of this day over some broken country which continues about three miles back and then is Livell and rich all plains, I saw several foxes and killed a elk and two deer. And squirrels the men with me killed an elk, two deer and a pelican. Some rain all day today and cold. I walked on shore saw several foxes several villages of prairie dogs, and a number of grouse. Clark, September 12, 1804. Septure. 12th Wednesday 1804 A dark cloudy day the wind hard from the N. W. We passed, one, a island the middle of the river at the head of which we found great difficulty in passing between the sand bars the water swift and shallow, it took three quarters of the day to make one mile, we camped on the L.S. Obst. A village of barking prairie scurials. I walked out in the morning and saw several villages of those little animals, also a great number of grues and three foxes, and observed slate and coal mixed, some very high hills on each side of the river. Rains a little all day. Clark, September 13, 1804. 13th Septure. Thursday 1804 A dark drizzly day, G.D. caught four beaver last night the winds from the N.W. Cold set out early and proceeded on very well past a number of sandbars, Captain Lewis killed a porcupine on a cotton tree fighting on the leaves and bowers of the said tree, the water is very shallow being crowded with sandbars camped on the S. Side under a bluff. The bluffs on the S.S. not so much impregnated with mineral as on the L.S. Muskeeters very troublesome dash. Lewis, September 13, 1804. September 13 killed a blue-winged teal and a porcupine. Found it in a cottonwood tree near the river on the lard. Sure, the leaves of the cottonwood were much destroyed, as were those of the cottonwood trees in its neighborhood. I therefore supposed that it fed on the foliage of trees at this season, the flesh of this animal is a pleasant and wholesome food, the quills had not yet obtained their usual length, it has four long toes, before on each foot. And the same number behind with the addition of one short one on each hind foot on the inner side. The toes of the feet are armed with long black nails particularly the four feet, they weigh from fifteen to twenty pounds, they resemble the sloth very much in the form of their hands, or four feet. Their teeth and eyes are like the bever. Clark, September 14, 1804. Septure 14 Friday 1804 Course Dists and Rifer. Set out early proceeded on past several sand bars water wide and shallow in, 68 degrees west, 23 fourths mes. To a pt of high land on the L.S. Passed a round island on the SS. Dot, caught three beaver last night, some drizzly rain cloudy and disagreeable and some hard showers, I walked on shore with a view to find an old volcano said to be in this neighborhood by Mr. 
McKee I was some distance out could not see any signs of a volcano, I killed a goat, which is peculiar to this count ray about the height of a grown deer shorter. Its horns comes out immediately above its eyes broad one short prong the other arched and soft the color is a light gray with black behind its ears, white round its neck, no beard, his sides and belly white. And around its tail which is small and white and down its hams, actively made his brains on the back of its head, his nostrils large. His eyes like a sheep only two hoofs on each foot no antlers, more like the antelope or gazella of Africa than any other species of goat. Shields kill the hare weighing sixty-one halves pound, very poor, the head narrow and its ears three inches wide and six long, from the fore to the end of the hind foot, is two feet eleven inch. Height one foot thirteen fourths its tail long and thick white, clearly the mountain hare of Europe, a rainy evening all with the soil of those plains washes down into the flats. With the smallest rain and dissolves and mixes with the water we see back from the river high hills in a Livelle plain, evidently the remains of mountains, what mud washed into the river within those few days has made it very muddy. Passed two small creeks on the L. S. and camped below a third on the L. S. rained all evening. Clark, September 14, 1804. 14th Septure. Friday, 1804. Set out early proceeded on past several sand bars the river wide and shallow three beaver caught last night, Drysley rain in the forepart of this day, cloudy and disagreeable, I walked on shore with a view to find an old volcano. Said to be in this neighborhood by Mr. J. McKee of St. Charles. I walked on shore the whole day without seeing any appearance of the volcano, in my walk I killed a buck goat of this count ray, about the height. Of the grown deer, its body shorter, the horns which is not very hard and forks two-thirds up one prong short the other round and sharp arched, and is immediately above its eyes the color is a light gray with black behind its ears down its neck. And its jaw white round its neck, its sides and its rump round its tail which is short and white very actively made, has only a pair of hoofs to each foot. His brains on the back of his head, his nostril large, his eyes like a sheep, he is more like the antelope or gazella of Africa than any other species of goat. Shields kill the hare like the mountain hare of Europe, weighing sixty-one fourths pounds, although poor, his head narrow, its ears large eye, e, six inches long and three inches wide one half of each white. The other and out part a lead gray from the toe of the hind foot to toe of the fore foot is two feet eleven inches, the hith is one foot one inch and three quarters, his tail long thick and white. The rain continued the greater part of the day in my ramble I observed, that all those parts of the hills which was clear of grass easily dissolved and washed into the river and bottoms, and those hills under which the river run. Slipped into it and dissolves and mixes with the water of the river. The bottoms of the river was covered with the water and mud from the hills about three inches deep, those bottoms under the hills which is covered with grass also a great quantity of mud. Passed two small creeks on the L. S. and camped below the third, the place that Shannon the man who went ahead lived on grapes, some heavy showers of rain all wet, had the goat and rabbit stuffed rained all night. Lewis, September 14, 1804. September 14, 1804 This day Captain. Clark killed a male wild goat so called, its weight 65 pounds. F.I. Length from point of nose to point of tail 4.9. Height to the top of the weathers three. Do. Behind three. Girth of the breast three one. Girth of the neck close to the shoulders two two. Do. Near the head one seven. I deep sea green, large pursing and rether prominent, and at or near the root of the horn within one a quarter inches. Lewis, September 14, 1804. September 14, 1804. Shields killed a hare of the prairie, weight six pounds and one quarter. F. I. Length from point of hind to extremity four feet two eleven. Height when standing erect one one and three quarters. Length from nose to tail two one. Girth of body one two and three quarters. Length of tail. Length of the year, five and a half. Width of dew. Dew. 
3 January 8th. From the extremity of the hip to the toe of the hind foot 1 3 and a half. The eye is large and prominent the sight is circular, deep sea green. And occupies one third of the width of the eye the remaining two thirds is a ring of a bright yellowish silver color. The years they are placed at the upper part of the head and very near to each other, the years are very flexible. The animal moves them with great ease and quickness and can caught rat and fold them on his back or delate them at pleasure, the front outer fold of the year is a reddish brown. The inner folds or those which ly together when the years are thrown back and which occupy two-thirds of the width of the year is of a clear white color except one inch at the tip of the year which is black. The hinder fold is of a light gray, the head back shoulders and outer part of the thighs are of a lead-colored gray the sides as they approach the belly grow lighter becoming gradually more white the belly and breast are white with a shad of lead color, the fur is long and fine, the tail is white round and blunty pointed the fur on it is long and extremely fine and soft when it runs it carries its tail straight behind the direction of the body, the body is much smaller and more length than the rabbit in proportion to its height, the teeth are like those of the hare or rabbit as is its upper lip split, its food is grass or herbs, it resorts the open plains. Is extremely fleet and never burrows or takes shelter in the ground and pursued, I measured the leaps of one which I surprised in the plains on the seventeenth inst. And found them twenty-one feet the ground was a little deck ending they appear to run with more ease and to bound with greater agility than any animal I ever saw. This animal is usually single seldom associating in any considerable numbers. Clark, September 15, 1804 September the 15th Saturday 1804 set out early past the mouth of a creek on the L.S., where Shannon lived on grapes waiting for Mr. Clinton's boat supposing we had went on, Captain Lewis and myself halted at the mouth of White River and went up a short cross and, this river is about 400 yards, the water confined within 150 yards, the current regularly swift. Much resembling the Missouri, sand bars making out from the points, some islands we sent up two men to go up this river one day and meet us tomorrow we proceeded on past a small island covered with cedar timber, and great number of rabbits. No game except rabbits, and camped on the S. S. Opposite a large creek, on which there is more wood than usual on creeks in this quater this creek raised fourteen feet last rain I killed a buck elk and a deer. Clark, September 15, 1804 September 15 Saturday 1804 set out early past the M.O. of the creek, and the mouth of White River. 1. Captain Lewis and myself went up this river a short distance and crossed, found that this differed very much from the Platte or K. Coeur, throughout but little sand, about 300 yard wide, the water confined within 150 yards. The current regular and swift much resembling the Missouri, with sand bars from the points a sand island in the mouth, in the point is a beautiful situation for a town three gradual ascents. And a much greater quantity of timber about the mouth of this river than usual, we concluded to send some distance up this river detached SJT. Gas and Art Fields We proceeded on past a small, two, island covered with cedar on I saw great numbers of rabbits and grapes, this island is small and separate from a large sand ISD. At its upper point by a narrow channel, and is situated nearest the L. Side. Camped on the SS opposite the mouth of a large creek on which there is more timber than is usual on creeks of this size, this creek raised 14 feet the last rains. I killed a buck elk and deer, this evening is very cold, great many wolves of different sorts howling about us. The wind is hard from the NW this evening. Lewis, September 16, 1804 Sunday, September 16, 1804. This morning set out at an early hour, and come to at one half after seven a.m. on the lard. Shore eleven fourths miles above the mouth of a small creek which we named Corvus, in consequence of having kyled a beautiful bird of that genus near it we concluded to ly by at this place the balance of this day and the next. In order to dry our baggage which was wet by the heavy showers of rain which had fallen within the last three days, and also to lighten the boat by transferring a part of her lading to the red pierogi. Which we now determined to take on with us to our winter residence wherever that might be. 
While some of the men were employed in this necessary labor others were dressing of skins washing and mending their clothes and Captain Clark and myself kiled each a buck immediately on landing near our encampment. The deer were very gentle and in great numbers on this bottom which had more timber on it than any part of the river we had seen for many days past, consisting of cottonwood elm. Some indifferent ash and a considerable quantity of a small species of white oak which is loaded with acorns of an excellent flavor very little of the bitter roughness of the nuts of most species of oak. The leaf of this oak is small pale green and deeply indented, it seldom rises higher than thirty feet is much branched, the bark is rough and thick and of a light color. The cup which contains the acorn is fringed on its edges and embraces the nut about one half. The acorns were now falling, and we concluded that the number of deer which we saw here had been induced thither by the acorns of which they are remarkably fond. Almost every species of wild game is fond of the acorn, the buffalo elk, deer, bear, tickies, ducks, pygegians and even the wolves feed on them, we sent three hunters out who soon added eight deer and two buffalo to our stock of provisions. The buffalo were so poor that we took only the tongue skins and marrow bones, the skins were particularly acceptable as we were in want of a covering for the large pierogi to secure the baggage. The clouds during this day and night prevented my making any observations. Cirked. Gas and Reuben Fields whom we had sent out yesterday to explore the White River returned at four o'clock this day and reported that they had foil meanders of that stream about twelve miles ours general course west. The present or principal channel I row yards wide. The color of the water and rapidity and manner of ruining resembled the Missouri precisely, the country broken on the border of the river about a mile, when the level plains commence and extend as far as the eye can reach on either side. As usual no timber appeared except such as from the steep declivities of hills, or their moist situations, were sheltered from the effects of the fire. These extensive plains had been lately burnt and the grass had sprung up and was about three inches high. Vast herds of buffalo deer elk and antelopes were seen feeding in every direction as far as the eye of the observer could reach. Clark, September 16, 1804 September 16 Sunday we proceeded on November 4th miles and camped on the L. Side in a beautiful plain surrounded with timber in which we saw several alder, we delayed here for the purpose of drying the articles which were wet and the clothes to load the pierogi which we had intended to send back. Finding the water too shoal determined to take on the pierogi also to make some observations for longitude and the two men G and R F. Joined us and informed that the river as far as they were up had much the appearance of the river about the mouth, but little timber and that chiefly elm, the upland between this river and the white river is fine, great numbers of goat. Deer of three kinds, buffalo, and wolves, and barking squirrels, the fallow deer, cloudy, all day cleaning out the boat examining and drying the goods, and loading the pierogi, I killed two deer Captain Lewis one and a buffalo. One buffalo and five other deer killed. I observed pine burrs and birch sticks in the driftwood up White River which calms in on the L.S. Immediately in the point is a beautiful situation for a town three gentle rises, and more timber about the mouth of this river than usual. Clark, September 16. 1804 16th of September Sunday 1804 we set out very early and proceeded on November 4th miles between sand bars and came to on the L. S. 1. Determined to dry our wet fig and litten the boat which we found could not proceed with the present load for this purpose we concluded to detain the pierogi we had intended to send back and load her out of the boat and detain the soldiers until spring and send them from our winter quarters. We put out those articles which was wet, cleaned the boat and pierogus, examined all the locker bales and 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 this camp is situated in a beautiful plain surrounded with timber to the extent of three quarters of a mile in which there is great quantities of fine plums the two men detached up the white river joined us here and informed that the river as far as they were up had much the appearance of the Misaura Somme islands and sands little timber elm much signs of beaver great many buffalo and continent at its width they saw and well as myself pine burrs and sticks of birch in the drift wood up this river, they saw also number of goats such as I killed, also wolves near the buffalo falling deer. 
and the barking Skirol's village's captain. Lewis went to hunt and see the Count Ray near the camp he killed a buffalo and a deer. Cloudy all day I partly load the empty pierogi out of the boat. I killed two deer and the party four deer and a buffalo the we kill for the skins to cover the pierogus, the meat too poor to eat. Captain Lewis went on an island above our camp, this island is ABT. One mile long, with a great proportion cedar timber near the middle of it. I gave out a flannel shirt to each man, and powder to those who had expended theirs. Lewis, September 17, 1804. Monday, September 17, 1804. Having for many days past confined myself to the boat. I determined to devote this day to amuse myself on shore with my gun and view the interior of the country lying between the river and the Corvus Creek accordingly before sunrise I set out with six of my best hunters. Two of whom I dispatched to the lower side of Corvus Creek, two with orders to hunt the bottoms and woodland on the river, while I retained two others to accompany me in the intermediate country. One quarter of a mile in rear of our camp which was situated in a fine open grove of cottonwood passed a grove of plum trees loaded with fruit and now ripe. Observed but little difference between this fruit and that of a similar kind common to the Atlantic states. The trees are smaller and more thickly set. This forest of plum trees garnish a plain about twenty feet more elevated than that on which we were encamped. This plain extends back about a mile to the foot of the hills one mile distant and to which it is gradually ascending this plain extends with the same breadth from the creek below to the distance of near three miles above parallel with the river. And is entirely occupied by the burrows of the barking squirrel Hurtifor described. This animal appears here in infinite numbers, and the shortness and verdure of grass gave the plain the appearance throughout its whole extent of beautiful bowling green in fine order. Its aspect is S.E. A great number of wolves of the small kind, box and some polecats were to be seen. I presume that those animals feed on this squirrel. Found the country in every direction for about three miles intersected with deep reveries and steep irregular hills of 100 to 200 feet high. At the tops of these hills the country breaks of as usual into a fine level plain extending as far as the eye can reach. From this plain I had an extensive view of the river below, and the irregular hills which border the opposite sides of the river and creek. The surrounding country had been burnt about a month before and young grass had now sprung up to height of four inches presenting the live green of the spring. To the west a high range of hills, streck across the country from N. to S and appeared distant about twenty miles. They are not very extensive as I could plainly observe their rise and termination no rock appeared on them and the sides were covered with verdure similar to that of the plains this shenary already rich pleasing and beautiful. Was still farther heightened by immense herds of buffalo deer elk and antelopes which we saw in every direction feeding on the hills and plains. I do not think I exaggerate when I estimate the number of buffalo which could be compared at one view to amount to 3,000. My object was if possible to kill a female antelope having already procured a male. I pursued my route on this plain to the west flanked by my two hunters until eight in the morning when I made the signal for them to come to me which they did shortly after. We rested ourselves about half an hour, and regaled ourselves on half a biscuit each and some jerk of elk which we had taken the precaution to put in our pouches in the morning before we set out and drank of the water of a small pool which had collected on this plain from the rains which had fallen some days before. We had now after various windings in pursuit of several herds of antelopes which we had seen on our way made the distance of about eight miles from our camp. We found the antelope extremely shy and watchful insomuch that we had been unable to get a shot at them. When at rest they generally select the most elevated point in the neighborhood, and as they are watchful and extremely quick of sight and their sense of smelling very acute it is almost impossible to approach them within gunshot. In short they will frequently discover and flee from you at the distance of three miles. I had this day an opportunity of witnessing the agility and superior fleetness of this animal which was to me really astonishing. I had pursued and twice surprised a small herd of seven, in the first instance they did not discover me distinctly and therefore did not run at full speed. 
though they took care before they rested to gain an elevated point where it was impossible to approach them under cover except in one direction and that happened to be in the direction from which the wind blew towards them. Bad as the chance to approach them was, I made the best of my way towards them, frequently peeping over the ridge with which I took care to conceal myself from their view the mail, of which there was but one. Frequently encircled the summit of the hill on which the females stood in a group, as if to look out for the approach of danger. I got within about two hundred paces of them when they smelt me and fled. I gained the top of the eminence on which they stood. As soon as possible from whence I had an extensive view of the country the antelopes which had disappeared in a steep reverse and now appeared at the distance of about three miles on the side of a ridge which passed obliquely across me and extended about four miles. So soon had these antelopes gained the distance at which they had again appeared to my view I doubted at first that they were the same that I had just surprised. But my doubt soon vanished when I beheld the rapidity of their flight along the ridge before me it appeared rather the rapid flight of birds than the motion of quadrupeds. I think I can safely venture the assertion that the speed of this animal is equal if not superior to that of the finest blooded courser. This morning I saw us. Clark, September 17, 1804. 17th of Septur. Monday 1804 above White River dried all those articles which had got wet by the last rain, a fine day Captain Lewis went hunting with a view to Seath Count Ray and its productions. He was out all day killed a buffalo and a remarkable bird of the spices of Corvus, long tail of a greenish purple, variegated a beck like a crow white round its neck coming to a point on its back, its belly white feet like a hawk abt. The size of a large pigeon Captain Lewis returned at dark. I took the meridian and equal altitudes today made the latitude. Coulter killed a goat, and a curious kind of deer, a darker gray than common the hair longer and finer. The ears very large and long a small recipitacle under its eye its tail round and white to near the end which is black and like a cow in every other respect like a deer, except it runs like a goat. Large. The hunters brought in eight fallow deer and five common deer today, great numbers of buffalo in the prairies, also a light-colored wolf covered with hair and coarse fur, also a small wolf with a large bushy tail, some goats of a different kind seen today. Great many plums, rabbits, porcupines and barking squirrels, Captain Lewis killed a rattlesnake in a village of the squirrels and saw a hare today. Wind from the S.W. We finished drying our provision some of which was wet and spoiled. Clark, September 17, 1804. 17th of September Monday 1804 dried all our wet articles this fine day, Captain Lewis went out with a view to see the Count Ray and its productions. He was out all day he killed a buffalo and a remarkable bird of the corva species long tail the upper part of the feathers and also the wing is of a purplish variate green, the black, a part of the wing feather are white edged with black. White belly, White from the root of the wings to center of the back is white, the head nake breast and other parts are black the beck like a crow. About the size of a large pigeon. A beautiful thing, see supplement in number three. I took equal altitudes and a meridian altitude. Captain Lewis returned at dark, Coulter killed a goat like the one I killed and a curious kind of deer of a dark gray color. More so than common, hair long and fine, the ears large and long, a small receptacle under the eyes. Like an elk, the tail about the length of common deer, round, like a cow, a tuft of black hair about the end, this species of deer jumps like a goat or sheep. Eight fallow deer five common and three buffalo killed today, Captain. Lewis saw a hare and killed a rattlesnake in a village of beet squirrels the wind from S. W. dried our provisions, some of which was much damaged. Lewis, September 17, 1804. September. 17th One of the hunters killed a bird of the Corvus genus and order of the pica and about the size of a jackdaw with a remarkable long tail. Beautifully variegated. It note is not disagreeable though loud it is twite twite twite, twite. Twite, twite twite, twite. F.I. From tip to tip of wing 110. Do. Beak to extremity of tail one eight and a half. Of which the tail occupies one one. 
from extremity of middle toe to hip five and a half. Its head, beak, and neck are large for a bird of its size. The beak is black and of a convex and cultivated figure, the chops nearly equal, and its base large and beset with hairs, the eyes are black encircled with a narrow ring of yellowish black its head, neck. Breast and back within one inch of the tail are of a fine glossy black, as are also the short fathers of the under part of the wing, the thees, and those about the root of the tail. The belly is of a beautiful white which passes above and around the butt of the wing, where the feathers being long reach to a small white spot on the rump one inch in width, the wings have nineteen feathers. Of which the ten first have the longer side of their plumage white in the midday of the feather and occupying unequal lengths of the same from one to three inches. And forming when the wing is speed a kind of triangle the upper and lower part of these party colored feathers on the underside of the wing being of dark color but not jut or shining black. The underside of the remaining feathers of the wing are darker. The upper side of the wing. As well as the short side of the plumage of the party colored feathers is of a dark blackies or bluish green sometimes presenting as light orange yellow or bluish tint as it happens to be presented to different exposures of licked. The plumage of the tail consists of twelve feathers of equal lengths by pairs. Those in the center are the longest, and the others on each side diminishing about an inch each pair, the underside of the feathers is a pale black. The upper side is a dark bluefish green which like the outer part of the wings is changeable as it reflects different portions of light. Towards the the extremely of these feathers they become of an orange green, then shaded past to a reddish indigo blue. And again at the extremity assume the predominant color of changeable green, the tints of these feathers are very similar and equally as beautiful and rich as the tints of blue and green of the peacock, it is a most beautiful bird. The legs and toes are black and imbricated. It has four long toes, three in front and one in rear, each terminated with a black sharp talon from 3-8 ths to one half an inch in length. These birds are seldom found in parties of more than three or four and most usually at this season single as the box and other birds of prey usually are, its usual food is flesh, this bird does not spread its tail when it flies and the motion of its wings when flying is much like that of a jaybird. The white turkey of the Black Hills from information of a French lad who wintered with the Chien Indians about the size of the common wild turkey the plumage perfectly white, this bird is booted as low as the toes. Clark. September 18, 1804. Sceptre. 18 I killed a prairie wolf today about the sis of a gray fox with a bushy tail the head and ears like a fox wolf, and barks like a small dog, the animal which we have taken for the fox is this wolf, we have seen no foxes. 18 Sceptre. Tuesday set out early wind from the N.W. Modret. Our boat being much litten goes much better than usual. Clark, September 18, 1804. September 18, Tuesday, 1804 Wind from the N.W. We set out early the boat much lightened, the wind ahead proceed on very slowly, 1, past an I.A. island about the middle of the river at 1 mile this island is about a mile long, and has a great proportion of red cedar on it. A small creek comes in on the S. S. opposite the head of the island, proceeded on past many sand bars and camped on the L.S., before night the wind being very hard and ahead all day. The hunters killed ten deer today in a prairie wolf, had it all jerked and skin stretched after camping I walked on shore saw goats, elk, buffalo, black-tailed deer, and the common deer, I killed a prairie wolf. About the size of a gray fox bushy tail head and ear like a wolf, some fur burrows in the ground and barks like a small dog. What has been taken heretofore for the fox was those wolves, and no foxes has been seen, the large wolves are very numerous, they are of a light color. Large and has long hair with coarse fur. Some goats of a different kind wer seen yesterday great many porcupine rabbits and barking squirrels in this quarter. Plums and Grapes Lewis, September 18, 1804 September 18th this day saw the first brant on their return from the north. Clark, September 19, 1804. 1, and, 2, passed a large island situated nearest the S.S., one half a mile from the lower point. 
Of this island, the first of the three rivers mouths which is about 35 yards wide, running from the N.E., one mile above the second comes in this is small not more that 15 yards wide a short distance above a 3d comes in scattering its waters through a bottom. I walked on shore to see this great pass of the Sioux and Calumet ground, found it a handsome situation, and saw the remains of their camp on the 2d river, for many years past, 3, passed a creek on the L.S. 15 yards wide we, 4, passed a creek 20 yards wide, 5, Passed a creek twenty yards wide on the L. S. I call night C. As I did not get to it until late at night, above the mouth of this creek we camped, the wind being favorable, for the boat I killed a fat buffalo cow, and a fat buck elk, York my servant killed a buck, the hunts killed four deer. And the boat crew killed two buffalo swimming the river, handsome count ray of plains, I saw many troves of buffalo and a gang of thirty or forty elk and author scattering elk and a fine evening I hurt my hands and feet last night. Clark, September 19, 1804. 19th of September Wednesday 1804 set out early, a cool morning very clear the wind from the S, E, A bluff on the L, S. Here commences a beautiful count ray on both sides of the Missouri, Two, passed a large island called Prospect Island opposite this ISD. The three rivers calms in, passing through a beautiful plain, here I walked on shore and killed a fat cow and sent her to the boat and proceeded on to the first of the three rivers, this river is about thirty-five yards wide contains a good deal of water. I walked up this river two miles and cross, the bottom is high and rich some timber, I crossed and returned to the mouth, and proceeded up one mile to the 2D river which is small 12 yards wide, and on it but little timber. On this creek the Sows has frequently camped. As appears by the signs, the lands bet when those two creeks in a perpendicular bluff of about 80 feet with a beautiful plain and gentle ascent back, a short distance above the second a third creek comes into the river in three places scattering its waters over the large timbered bottom. This creek is near the size of the middle creek containing a greater quantity of water, those rivers is the place that all nations who meet are at peace with each other, called the Sows Pass of the Three Rivers. The boat proceeded on past. The island, 3, passed a creek 15 yards wide on the L, side, 4, passed a creek on the L, S, 20 yards wide which I call Elm Creek passing through a high plain, 5, passed a creek on the L, S, 18 yards. Wide above which the boat came to, I joined them late at night, and call this creek night creek the winds favorable all day, I killed a fat buck elk late and could only get his skin and a small part of his flesh to camp. My servant killed a buck, the crew in the boat killed two buffalo in the river, the hunters on shore killed four deer with black tails one of which was a buck with two men prongs on each side forked equally, which I never before seen. I saw several large gangs of buffaloes two large herds of elk and goats and 6. Pass a small island on the S.S. opposite to this island on the L.S. A creek of about 10 yards wide comes in passing through a plain in which great quantities of the prickly pear grows. I call this creek Prickly Pear Creek, this isle. Is called the lower island it is situated at the commencement of what is called and known by the Grand de Tortu or Big Bend of the Missouri. Clark, September 20th, 1804. September the 20th Thursday 1804 Detched. Three men across the Big Bend, called the Grand Detour, with the horse, to stay and hunt and jerk provisions until we get around, one, past a island on the S.S. The river crowded with sand bars. 20th of September, 1804 Thursday, continued, 1, at the N.W., extremity of this bend passed an small island on the L.S. Opposite the upper point of this solitary island came two to underscore 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 at the mouth of a small run on the S.S. and Newman and Thompson picked up some salt mixed with the sand in the run, such as the Otto's Indians collect on the sands of the corn de surfar. And make use of, camped on a sand bar on the S.S. Above the island, I went out to examine the portage which I found quite short two thousand yards only, the prairie below and sides of the hills containing great quantities of the prickly PR which nearly ruined my feet, I saw a hare. And I believe he run into a hole, he run on a hill and disappeared, I saw on this hill several holes. 
I saw several goats elk durs and and buffalo in every detection feeding. R. Fields killed a deer and two goats one a female, which differs from the male as to size being something smaller, small straight horns without any black about the neck camp late. Clark, September 20th, 1804. 20th of September. Thursday 1804 a fair morning wind from the S.E. detached two men to the first. Creek above the big bend with the horse to hunt and wait our arrival proceeded on past the lower island opposite which the sandbars are very thick and the water shoal. I walked on shore with a view of examining this bend crossed at the narrowest part which is a high irregular hills of about 180 or 190 feet, this place the gorge of the bend is one mile and a quarter, from river to river or, across. From this high land which is only in the gouge, the bend is a beautiful plain through which I walked, saw numbers of buffalo and goats, I saw a hare and believe he run into a hole in the side of a hill. He run up this hill which is small and has several holes on the side and I could not see him after, I joined the boat in the evening, past a small island on the L. S. in the N. W. extremity of the bind called Solitary Island, and camped late on a sand bar near the S. S. R. Fields killed one deer and two goats one of them a female, she differs from the male as to size being smaller, with small horns, strike with a small prong without any black about the neck none of those goats has any beard, they are all keenly made. And is beautiful. Lewis, September 20th, 1804. Septure. 20th on the Lard. Shore at the commencement of the Big Bend observed a cliff of black porous rock which resembled lava though on a closer examination I believe it to be calcareous and an imperfect species of the French burr, preserved a specimine, it is a brownish white. Or black or yellowish brown. Clark, September 21, 1804. 21st of September, 1804 Friday 1804 last night or rether this morn at a half past one o'clock the sand bar on which we camped began to give way. Which all armed the surged on guard and the noise waked me, I got up and by the light of the moon observed that the sand was giving away both above and bellowy and would swallow our pirogues in a few minutes. Ordered all hands on board and pushed off we had not got to the opposite shore before point. Of our camp fell into the river. We proceeded on to the gorge of the bend and brackfast, the distance of this bend around is thirty miles, and eleven fourths miles through. The high lands extends to the gauge and is about two hundred feet the plain in the bend as also the two opposite sides above and below is delightful plains with gradual ascents from the river in which there is at this time great number of buffalo elk and goats feed the course from the gauge on the L. S is S 70 W 41 halves miles to the PT of cedar timber on the L S past sands. Worthy of remark the catfish not so plenty above White River and much smaller than usual, great numbers of brant and plover, also goat and black-tailed deer. Clark, September 21, 1804. 21st of September Friday 1804 at half past one o'clock this morning the sand bar on which we camped began to undermine and give way which all armed the sergeant on guard, the motion of the boat awakened me. I get up and by the light of the moon observed that the land had given away both above and below our camp and was falling in fast. I ordered all hands on as quick as possible and pushed off, we had pushed off but a few minais before the bank under which the boat and pirogus lay give way, which would certainly have sunk both pirogues, by the time we made the opst. Sure our camp fell in, we made a 2D camp for the remainder of the night and at daylight proceeded on to the gouge of this great bend and brackfast, we sent a man to measure step off the distance across the gouge, he made it 2,000 yards. The distance around is 30 mes. The hills extend through the gouge and is about 200 foot above the water, in the bend as also the opposite sides both above and below the bend is a beautiful inclined plain in which there is great numbers of buffalo. Elk and goats in view feeding and sipping on those plains grouse, larks and the prairie bird is common in those plains. We proceeded on past a, one, willow island below the mouth of a small river called Tyler's are about thirty-five yards wide which corns in on the L, s. Six miles above the gorge of the bend, 
At the mouth of this river the two hunters ahead left a deer and its skin also the skin of a white wolf way observe an immense number of plover of different kind collecting and taking their flight southerly. Also brants which appear to move in the same direction. The catfish is small and not so plenty as below, too, the shore on each side is lined with hard rough gully stones of different sides, which has rolled from the hills and out of small brooks, cedar is common here, this day is worm. The wind which is not hard blows from the S. E, we camped at the lower point of the Mock Island on the S. S. This now connected with the mainland. It has the appearance of once being an island detached from the mainland covered with tall cotton wood, we saw some camps and tracks of the sows which appears to be old three or four weeks ago, one Frenchman I fear has got an abscess on his day. He complains very much we are making every exertion to relieve him the prairies in this quarter contains great QTS. Of Prickly Pear. Clark, September 22nd, 1804. September 22nd Saturday 1804 a thick fog this morning until 7 o'clock which detained us, saw some old tracks of the Indians on the S.S. Proceeded on, one French man with an abscess on his thigh which pains him very much for 10 or 12 days a beautiful plain on both sides low high land under which there is a number of laid stone, we see great numbers of buffalo feeding. Clark. September 22nd, 1804. A continuation of notes taken ascending the Missouri in 1804, by W. Clark Saturday the 22 nd of September 1804, a thick fog this morning detained us until 7 o'clock, the plains on both sides of the river is beautiful and ascends gradually from the river. Numerous herds of buffalo to be seen in every directions, one, took the altitude of the sun and found the latitude to be 44 degrees 11 minutes 33 seconds n, two, passed a small island on the L.S. and one on the S.S. immediately above, and about 3 m long, on the L.S. Opposite this island a creek of about 15 yards wide mouths, called the Creek of the Three Sisters, 3, past Cedar Island 11-2 m point long and 1 m, wide situated a little above the last and nearest the S.S. dot near the upper part of this island on its S. Side a trading fort is situated built of cedar by a Mr. Louis L. of St. Louis, for the purpose of trading with the Teton bands of Sows, or, Sioux, about this fort I saw numbers of Indians temporary lodges, and horse stables, all of them round and to a point at top. I observed also numbers of cotton trees fallen for the purpose of feeding their horses on the bark of the limbs of those trees which is said to be excellent food for the horses, we came to on the S. S, below a small island called Goat Island, past a no. Of large round stones, some distance in the river as also in the sides of the hills, I walked on the shore this evening and killed a very large deer, our hunters killed two deer and a beaver. They complain of the mineral qualities of the high land destroying their moccasins dash. Clark, September 22nd. 1804. 22nd of September Saturday 1804 a thick fog this morning detained us until 7 o'clock past a beautiful inclined prairie on both sides in which we see great numbers of buffalo feeding, one, took the meridian altitude of the sun's upper lean. 92 degrees 50 minutes 0 seconds the sec second the lat. Produced from this observation is 44 degrees 11 minutes 33 seconds 3 tenths north, Two, past a small island on the L.S., immediately above past a island situated nearest the L.S., about three miles long, behind this I.S.D. On the L.S. A creek comes in about fifteen yards wide, this creek and islands are called the Three Sisters a beautiful plain on both sides of the river, three, past a island situated nearest the S.S. Immediately above the last called Cedar Island this island is about 11 halves miles long and nearly as wide covered with cedar, on the south side of this island Mr. Lewis L. a trader from St. Lewis built a fort of cedar and a good house to trade with the Sows and wintered last winter, about this fort I observed a number of Indian camps in a conical form, they fed their horses on cotton limbs as appears. Here our hunters joined us havening killed two deer and a beaver, they complain much of the mineral substances in the barren hills over which they passed destroying their moccasins. 4. We proceeded on and camped late on the S. 
side below a small island in the Bend S. S. called Goat Island. The large stones which lay on the sides of the banks in several places lay some distance in the river, under the water and is dangerous and. I walked out this evening and killed a fine deer, the muskeeters is very troublesome in the bottoms. Clark, September 23, 1804. 23rd Septure. Sunday 1804, days and nights equal, set out early under a gentle breeze from the S.E.N. 46 degrees west 33 fourths miles to the M.O. of a creek on the S.S. past. A P.T. on the L.S. 1, a small island opst. In the bend to the S.S. This island is called Goat Island, 1, this creek is 10 yards wide. Past bad sandbars. S. 46 degrees west 23 fourths M.E.S. A wood at a spring in the bend to the L.S. saw the prairie of fire behind us near the head of Cedar Island L.S. N. 80 degrees west. 41 halves to the lower point of Elk Island past two willow islands and sand I saw this morning 12 of those black and white birds of the corva species. Captain Lewis went out to hunt on the island a great number of buffalo in sight I must seal up all those scripts and draw from my journal at some other time when Clark C.P.T. Clark, September 23, 1804 Sunday the September 23, 1804 set out under a gentle breeze from the S.E. 1, past Goat Island situated in a bend to the S.S., above past a small creek 12 yards wide on the S.S. We observed a great smoke to the SW which is an Indian signal of their having discovered us, I walked on shore and observed great numbers of buffaloes. 2. Past two small willow islands with large sandbars making from their upper points, 3. Past Elk Island situated near the LS, about 21 halves MES. Long and three quarters wide, covered with cotton wood, a red berry called by the French, Grice de Buff, Grapes and the river is wide straight and contains a great number of sandbars, for, past a small creek on the S, S, 16 yards wide I call Reuben C.R. R. Fields was the first who found it, came to and camped on the S, S, in a wood. Soon after we landed three so's boys swam across to us, those boys informed us that a band of Sioux called the Tetons of 80 Lodges W.R. camped near the mouth of the next river, and sixty lodges more a short distance above them. They had that day set the prairies on fire to let those camps know of our approach, we gave those boys two twists of tobacco to carry to their chiefs and warriors to smoke, with directions to tell them that we wished to speak to them tomorrow. At the mouth of the next river, Captain Lewis walked on shore, R.F. Killed a she-goat or cabra. Clark, September 23, 1804. 23rd of September Sunday 1804 set out under a gentle breeze from the S.E. 1, past a small island situated in a bend to the L.S. Called Goat Island, a short distance above the upper point a creek of 12 yards wide corns in on the S.S., we observed a great smoke to the S.W. I walked on shore and observed buffalo in great herds at a distance, too, past two small willow islands with large sandbars making out from them, past, 3, Elk Island about 21 halves miles long and 3 quarters mile wide situated near the L.S. Covered with cotton with the reed current called by the French Grest de Butif and Grapes Enk. Enk. The river is nearly straight for a great distance wide and shoal. 4, past a creek on the S.S. 16 yards wide we call Rubens Creek, as our fields found it camped on the S.S., below the mouth of a creek on the L.S. Three Soex boys came to us swam the river and informed that the band of Soex called the Teton of eighty lodges were camped at the next creek above, and sixty lodges more a short distance above. We gave those boys two carrots of tobacco to carry to their chiefs, with directions to tell them that we would speak to them tomorrow Captain Lewis walked on shore this evening, R. F. Killed a doe goat. Clark, September 24, 1804. Monday the 24th of September, 1804 a fair morning set out early, wind from the east, past the mouth of a creek on the L.S., called Creek in High Water. Past a large, one, island on the L.S. 
about twenty-one halves miles long on which Coulter had camped and killed four elk. The wind from the S.E. Dot, we prepared some clothes a few metal for the chiefs of the Teton band of Sioux we expected to meet at the next river, much stone on the S.S. Of the river, we saw one hare today, our pirogues called at the island for the elk, soon after we passed the island Coulter ran up the bank and reported that the Sioux had taken his horse, we soon after saw five Indians on the bank. Who expressed a wish to come on board, we informed them we were friends, and wished to continue so, we were not abraid any Indians, some of their young men had stolen a horse sent by their great father to their great chief. And we should not speak to them any more until the horse was returned to us again, past a island about eleven halves m. Long on which we saw many elk and buffalo, we came to off the mouth of a small river, the Teton of the Burnt Woods is camped two miles up this river. This river we call Teton is seventy yards wide and corns in on the SW side I went on shore and smoked with a chief, called Buffalo Medicine, who came to see us here. The chief said he knew nothing of the horse and and. I informed them we would call the grand chiefs in council tomorrow, all continued on board all night. Clark, September 24, 1804 September 24 Monday 1804 set out early a fair day the wind from the E, past the mouth of creek on the L, S. Called on high water, past, I, a large island on the L, S, about two miles and one half long on which Coulter had camped and killed four elk, the wind fair from the S, E. We prepared some clothes and a few meat ells for the chiefs of the Tetons hand of sows which we expect to see today at the next river, observe a great deal of stone on the sides of the hills on the S.S. We saw one hare today, prepared all things for action in case of necessity, our pirogus went to the island for the meat, soon after the man on shore run up the bank and reported that the Indians had stolen the horse we soon after met five inns. And anchored out some distance and spoke to them informed them we were friends, and wished to continue so but were not afraid of any Indians. Some of their young men had taken the horse sent by their great father for their chief and we would not speak to them until the horse was returned to us again. Passed, too, a island on the S.S. on which we saw several elk, about eleven halves miles long called Good Humored Isles. Came to about eleven halves miles above off the mouth of a small river about seventy yards wide called by Mr. Evans the Little Mississippi River, the tribes of the Skuiks called the Teton, is camped about two miles up on the N.W. side and we shall call the river after that nation, Teton this river is seventy yards wide at the mouth of water. And has a considerable current we anchored off the mouth the French pierogi come up early in the morning, the other did not get up until in the evening soon after we had came to. I went and smoked with the chief who came to see us here all well, we prepare to speak with the Indians tomorrow at which time we are informed the Indians will be here, the French man who had for some time been sick. Began to bleed which all armed him, two-thirds of our party camped on board the remainder with the guard on shore. Clark, September 25, 1804 25th of September, 1804 off Teton River a fair morning the wind from the S.E. Raised a flag staff and formed an awning and shade on a sandbar in the mouth of Teton are to counsel under, the greater portion of the party to continue on board about eleven o'clock the first and two deep chief arrived, we gave them to eat. They gave us some meat, we discover our interpreter do not speak the language well, at twelve o'clock the council commenced and after smoking agreeable to the usual custom C. L. delivered a written speech to them, I some explanations and all party paraded, gave a medal to the Grand Chief an Indian Untun Garsar Bar, or Black Buffalo, 2D Tortohunger, Partisan, Bad Fellow, the 3D Tartungarwakur, Buffalo Medicine, we invited those chiefs and a soldier on board our boat. And showed them many curiosities, which they were much surprised, we gave they one half a wine glass of whiskey which they appeared to be exceedingly fond of they took up an empty bottle, smelted it. And made many simple gestures and soon began to be troublesome the two deep chief affecting drunkness as a cloak for his villainous intentious, as I found afterwards, reeled or fell about the boat. I went in a pierogi with those chief who left the boast with great reluctions, my object was to reconcile them and leave them on shore, as soon as I landed three of their young men ceased the cable of the pierogi. 
One soldier huge the mast and the 2D chief was exceedingly insolent both in words and gestures to me declaring I should no go off. Saying he had not received presents suffiant from us, I attempted to pacify but it had a contrary effect for his insults became so personal and his intentions evident to do me injury. I drew my sword at this motion Captain Lewis ordered all in the boat under arms. The few men that was with me having previously taken up their guns with a full determination to defend me if possible, the Grand Chief then took hold of the cable and sent all the young men off. The soldier got out of the pierogi and the second chief walked off to the party at about twenty yards back, all of which had their bows strung and guns cocked, I then spoke in very positive terms to them all, principally addressing myself to the first chief. Who let the rope go and walked to the Indian, party about. One hundred I again offered my hand to the first chief who refused it, all this time the Indians were pointing their arrows blank, I proceeded to the pierogi and pushed off and had not proceeded far before the first and three our chief and two principal men walked into the water and requested to go on board. I took them in and we proceeded on about a mile, and anchored near a small island, I call this island Bad Humoured Island. Clark, September 25, 1804 25th Sceptre a fair morning the wind from the S. E. All well, raised a flag staff and made a awning or shade on a sand bar in the mouth of Teton River for the purpose of speaking with the Indians under. The boat crew on board at seventy yards distance from the bar the five Indians which we met last night continued, about eleven o'clock the 1S and 2D chief came we gave them some of our provisions to eat. They gave us great quantities of meat some of which was spoiled we feel much at a loss for the want of an interpreter the one we have can speak but little. Met in council at twelve o'clock and after smoking, agreeable to the usual custom, Cap Lewis proceeded to deliver a speech which we obliged to curtail for want of a good interpreter all our party paraded. Gave a medal to the grand chief called. In Indian un ton gar sar bar in French beef newer black buffalo said to be a good man, to Chief Torto Han Gar, or the partisan or partisan bad the third is the Bef de Medice and his name is Tar Tun Gar Wakur. 1. Conta save man war zingo. 2. Do second bear equals ma to ko ke pan. Invited those chiefs on board to show them our boat and such curiosities as was strange to them, we gave them one quarter a glass of whiskey which they appeared to be very fond of. Sucked the bottle after it was out and soon began to be troublesome, when the two deep chief assuming drunkness. As a cloak for his rascally intentions I went with those chiefs, which left the boat with great reluctance, to shore with a view of reconcealing those men to us. As soon as I landed the pierogi three of their young men ceased the cable of the pierogi, the chief sod. Huge the mast, and the two deep chief was very insolent both in words and gestures declaring I should not go on, Stating he had not wrecked present suffiant from us, his gestures were of such a personal nature I felt myself compelled to draw my sword. At this motion Captain. Lewis ordered all under arms in the boat, those with me also showed a disposition to defend themselves and me, the Grand Chief then took hold of the roop and ordered the young warris away. I felt myself warm and spoke in very positive terms most of the warriors appeared to have their bows strung and took out their arrows from their cuves. As I was not permitted to return, I sent all the men except two int. To the boat, the pirogu soon returned with about twelve of our determined men ready for any event this movement caused a no. Of the Indians to withdraw at a distance, their treatment tome was very rough and I think justified roughness on my part, they all left my pirogi and counseled. With themselves the result I could not learn and nearly all went off after remaining in this situation some time I offered my hand to the one and two chief who refused to wreck it. I turned off and went with my men on board the pierogi, I had not progged. More than ten paces before the first chief third and two brave men waited in after me. I took them in and went on board we proceeded on about one mile and anchored out off a willow island placed a guard on shore to protect the cooks and a guard in the boat, fastened the pirogues to the boat. I call this island Bad Humoured Island as we were in a bad humour. Clark, September 26, 1804. 26th of Sceptre set out early and proceeded on, the river lined with Indians, came to and anchored by the particular request of the chiefs to let their women and boys see the boat. 
and suffer them to show us some friendship, great members of men women and children on the bank viewing us, those people are sprightly small legs how looking set men particularly, they grease and black themselves when they dress. Make use of hawk's feathers about thier heads, cover with a robe each a polecat skin to hold their smokables, fond of dress, badly armed. Their women appear very well, fine teeth, high cheek dress in skin petticoats, and a robe with the flesh side out and hairy ends turned back over their shoulders, and look well, they do all the laborious work. And I may say are perfect slaves to thier husbands who frequently have several wives, Captain Lewis and five men went on shore with the chiefs, who appeared to wish to become friendly they requested us to remain one night and see them dance and. In the evening I walked on shore. And saw several Mahar women and boys in a lodge and was told they were prisons laterly taken in a battle in which they killed a number and took forty-eight prisoners, I advised the chiefs to make peace with that nation and give up the prisoners. If they intended to follow the words of their great father they promised that they would do so, I was in several lodges neatly formed, those lodges are about fifteen to twenty feet diameter stretched on poles like a sugar loaf. Made of buffalo skins dressed about five o'clock I was approached by ten well-dressed young men with a neat buffalo robe which they set down before me and requested me to get and they carried me to their council tents forming three-quarters circle and set me down between two chefs where about seventy men were seated in a circle. In front of the chief six feet square was cleared and the pipe of peace raised on forks and sticks, under which was swans down scattered, the flags of Spain and the one we gave them yesterday was displayed a large fire was made on which a dog was cooked. And in the center about four hundred wt of buffalo meat which they gave us, soon after, I took my seat the young men went to the boat and brought Captain Lewis in the same way and placed him by me soon after an old man rose and spoke approving what we had done. Requesting us to take pity on the man see. Answered, they formed their camp in a circle. The great chief then rose in great state and spoke to the same purpose and with solemnity took up the pipe of peace and pointed it to the heavens, the four quarters and the earth, he made some devastation. And presented the stand to us to smoke, after smoking and a short harangue to his people we were requested to take the meat, and the flesh of the dog gavin us to eat, we smoked until dark. At which time all was cleared away and a large fire made in the center, several men with tambourines highly decorated with dern cabra hoofs to make them rattle. Assembled and began to sing and beat, the women came forward highly decorated with the scalps and trophies of war of their fath's husbands and relations, and danced the war dance, which they done with great cheerfulness until twelve o'clock. When we informed the chief we intended return on board, they offered us women, which we did not accept, for chiefs accompanied us to the boat and stayed all night, those people have a description of men which they call soldiers. Those men attend to the police of the band, correct all vices and. I saw one today whip two squares who appeared to have fallen out. When the soldier approached all appeared give way and flee at night they keep four or five men at different distances walking around their camp singing the accursions of the night all in spirits this evening wind hard from the S.E. I saw twenty-five squares and boys taken thirteen days ago in a battle with the Mahars. In which they destroyed forty lodges, killed seventy-five men and boys, and took forty-eight prisons which they promised us should be delivered to Mr. Durian now with the Yankton underscore 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 underscore, we gave our Mahar interpreter a few alls and and. To give those wretched prisonies, I saw Hamne of ground potatoes a spoon of the big horn animals which will hold two quarts. Clark, September 26, 1804. 26th Scepter. 1804 Bad HDISD. 26th of September Wednesday 1804 set out early proceeded on and came to buy the wish of the chiefs for to let their squares and boys see the boat and suffer them to treat us well great number of men women and children on the banks viewing us. These people shew great anxiety, they appear sprightly, generally ill looking and not well made theater legs and arms small generally, they grease and black themselves with coal when they dress. Make use of a hawk's feather about their heads the men a robe and each a polecat skins, for to hold their bays roly for smoking fond of dress and show badly armed with fusius and. The squaws are cheerful fine luke woman not handsome, high cheeks dressed in skins a petticoat and robe which folds back over thur shoulder, 
with long wool. Though all their laborious work and I may say perfect slaves to the men, as all squares of nations much at war, or where the women are more numerous than the men, after coming to Captain. Lewis and five men went on shore with the chiefs, who appeared deposed to make up and be friendly. After Captain Lewis had been on shore about three hours I became uneasy for fear of some deception and sent a sergeant to see him and know his treatment which he reported was friendly. And I were preparing for a dance this evening. The made frequent solicitation for us to remain one night only and let them show their good disposition towards us, we determined to remain, after the return of Captain. Lewis. I went on shore I saw several Maha prisoners and spoke to the chiefs it was necessary to give those prisoners up and become good friends with the Mahars if they wished to follow the advice of their great father I was in several lodges neatly formed as before mentioned as to the Bauruli tribe, I was met by about ten well-dressed. Yound men who took me up in a robe highly decorated and set me down by the side of their chief on a dressed robe in a large council house this house formed a three-quarters circle of skins well dressed and sewn together under this shelter about seventy men set forming a circle in front of the chiefs a plaque of six feet diameter was clear and a pipe of peace raised on sticks under which there was swans down scattered. On each side of the circle two pipes, the flags of Spain too and the flag we gave them in front of the Grand Chief a large fire was near in which provisions were cooking, in the center about 400 wt. Of excellent buffalo beef as a present for us. Soon after they set me down. The men went for Captain Lewis brought him in the same way and placed him also by the chief in a few minutes an old man rose and spoke approving what we had done and informing us of their situation requesting us to take pity on them and which was answered the great chief then rose with great state to the same purpose as far as we could learn and then with great solemnity took up the pipe of peace when the principal chiefs spoke with the pipe of peace he took in one hand some of the most delicate parts of the dog which was prepared for the feist and made a sacrifice to the flag and after pointing it to the heavens the forequarter of the globe and the earth. Lit it and prosist presented the stem to us to smoke, after a smoke had taken place, and a short harangue to his people, we were requested to take the meal put before us the dog which they had been cooking. And pomidigan and ground potato in several platters. Hem is buffo meat dried or baked pounded and mixed with grease raw dog soup think great dish used on festivals. Eat little of dog pem and pot good we smoked for an hour dark and all was cleared away a large fire made in the center, about ten musicians playing on tambourines. Long sticks with deer and goats hoofs tied so as to make a gingling noise and many others of a similar kind, those men began to sing, and beat on the tambourine, the women came forward highly decorated in the higher way. With the scalps and trophies of war of their father husband's brothers or near connection and proceeded to dance the war dance which they done with great cheerfulness until twelve o'clock when we informed the chiefs that they were fatigued and they then retired and we accomped. By four chiefs returned to our boat, they stayed with us all night. Those people have some brave men which they make use of as soldiers those men attend to the police of the village correct all errors I saw one of them today whip two squares who appeared to have fallen out. When he approached all about appeared to flee with great turo at night they keep two three four or five men at definite distances walking around camp singing the occurrences of the night all the men on board one hundred paces from shore wind from the s. e. moderate one man very sick on board with a dangerous abscess on his hip. All in spirits this eveninga. In this tribe I saw twenty-five squares and boys taken thirteen days ago in a battle with the Mahars in this battle they destroyed forty lodges, killed seventy-five men, and some boys and children. And took forty-eight prisons women and boys which they promise both captain. Lewis and myself shall be delivered up to Mr. Durian at the tribe, those are a wretched and dejected looking people the squares appear low and coarse but this is an unfavorable time to judge of them we gave our mahar in tepture. Some few articles to give those squats in his name such as all's needle and. And. K. I saw and eat pomidigan the dog, growled potato made into a kind of homne, which I thought but little inferior, I also saw a spoon made of a horn of an animile of the sheep kind the spoon will hold two quarts. Clark, September 27, 1804. 27th of Septur. 1804, the bank as usual lined with Sioux, gave the two principal chiefs a blanket and a peck of corn each, 
Captain Lewis accompanied the chiefs to their lodges, they informed us that a great part of their nation had not arrived. And would arrive tonight and requested us to delay one day longer, that they might see us. I wrote a letter to Mr. Durian, and prepared some commissions and a mayadel and sent to Captain Lewis, at two o'clock Captain Lewis retuned with four chiefs and a brave man named Warchapa, after a delay of half an hour I went with them on shore. They left the boat with reluctance, we suspect they are treacherous and are at all times guarded and on our guard, they again offered me a young woman and wished me to take her and not despise them, I wavered the subject. At dark the dance began as usual and performed as last night. Women with their husbands and relations cloths arms scalps on poles and k. And k. Captain Lewis joined me and we continued until about eleven o'clock and two chief accompanied us to the boat I with two chiefs was in a pierogi going on board. By bad steering the pierogu struck the cable with such force as to break it near the anchor, Cap Lewis, and three or four men on shore. I had all hands up and was compelled to land, the chief got all armed and all armed the Indians the one's chief and about two hundred men came down in great haste rmd and for action, and found it was false. About twenty of them camped on shore all night, this all armed Cap Lewis and well as myself viewed as the signal of their intentions, one half on guard. Our misfortune of losing our anchor obliged us to lay under a falling in bank much exposed to the accomplishment of the hostile intentions of those Tetons, who we had every reason to believe from their conduct intended to make an attempt to stop our progress and if possible rob us. Peter Crusat who spoke Mahar came in the night and informed me that the Mahar prisoners told him that the Tetons intended to stop us. We shewed but little sign of a knowledge of their intentions. Clark, September 27, 1804 27th of Septure. Thursday 1804 I rose early after a bad night's sleep found the chief all up, and the bank as usual lined with spectators we gave the two great chiefs a blanket apiece. Or rather they took off agreeable to their custom the one they lay on and each one peck of corn after breakfast captain. Lewis and the chiefs went on shore, as a very large part of their nation was coming in, the disposition of whom I did not know one of us being subsent on shore, I wrote a letter to Mr. P. Durian and prepared a mayadel and some comsons. And sent to Cap Lewis at two o'clock Captain Lewis returned with four chiefs and a brave man named War Cha Pa or on his guard. When the friends of those people die they run arrows through their flesh above and below their elbows as a testimony of their grave after staying about half an hour, I went with them on shore, those men left the boat with reluctance. I went first to the 2D chief's lodge, where a crowd came around after speaking on various subjects I went to a prinkle man's lodge from there to the grand chief's lodge. After a few minutes he invited me to a lodge within the circle in which I stayed with all their principal men until the dance began. Which was similar to the one of last night performed by their womb which poles on which scalps of their enemies were hung, some with the gun spears and war implements their husbands in their hands. Captain. Lewis came on shore and we continued until we were sleepy and returned to our boat, the second chief and one principal man accompanied us, those two Indians accompanied me on board in the small pierogi, Captain. Lewis with a guard still on shore, the man who steered not being much accustomed to steer. Past the bow of the boat and pierogi came broadside against the cable and broke it which obliged me to order in a loud voice all hands all hands up and at their oars. My preempty order to the men and the bustle of their getting to their oars alarmed the chiefs, together with the appearance of the men on shore, as the boat turned. The chief hollowed and all armed the camp or town informing them that the Mahars was about attacking us. In about ten minutes the bank was lined with men armed the first chief at their head, about two hundred men appeared and after about half an hour returned all but about sixty men who continued on the bank all night, the chiefs continued. All night with us, this all arm I as well as Captain. Lewis considered as the signal of their intentions, which was to stop our proceeding on our journey and if possible rob us, we were on our guard all night, the misfortune of the loss of our anchor obliged us to lay under a falling bank much exposed. To the accomplishment of their hostile intentions P.C., our bowmen who C.D. 
Speak Mahar informed us in the night that the Maha prisoners informed him we were to be stoked, we shew as little signs of a knowledge of their intentions as possible all prepared on board for anything which might happen. We kept a strong guard all night in the boat no sleep. Clark, September 28, 1804 28th of September 1804 Friday I made many attempts in different ways to find our anchor without success, the sand had covered her up. We determined to proceed on today, and after breakfast we with great difficulty got the chiefs out of the boat. And when we were about setting out the class called the soldiers took possession of the cable, the first chief was still on board and intended to go a short distance up with us, was informed that the men sat on the cable. He went out and told Captain Lewis who was at the bow, they wanted tobacco the 2D chief demanded a flag and tobacco which we refused to give, stating proper reasons to them for it, after much wrangling. We gave a carrot of tobacco to the first chief and he to the men and lurked the cable from them and proceeded on under a breeze from the S.E. We took in the third chief who was sitting on a sand bar two miles above, he told us the rope was held by order of the 2D chief who was a double-spoken man. Soon after we saw a man riding full speed up the bank, we brought him on board. And he proved to be the son of the 3D chief, by him we sent a talk to the nation, explanatory of our hoisting the red flag under the white. If they were for peace stay at home and do as we had directed them and if they were for war or determined to attempt to stop us, we were ready to defend ourselves, as I had before said, we substituted large stones in place of an anchor. We came to at a small sand bar in the middle of the river and stayed all night I am very unwell I think for the want of sleep. Clark, September 28. 1804. 28 of September, 1804 Friday made many attempts in different ways to find our anchor but could not, the sand had covered it, from the misfortune of last night our boat was laying at shore in a very unfavorable situation. After finding that the anchor could not be found we determined to proceed on, with great difficulty got the chiefs out of our boat. And when we was about setting out the class called the soldiers took possession of the cable the 1s chief which was still on board and intended to go a short distance up with us, I told him the men of his nation sat on the cable. He went out and told Captain Lewis who was at the bow the men who sat on the rope was soldiers and wanted tobacco captain. L. said would not agree to be forced into anything, the 2d chief demanded a flag and tobacco which we refused. To give stating proper reasons to them for it after much difficulty which had nearly reduced us to hostility I threw a carrot of tobacco to one s chief spoke so as to touch his pride took the port fire from the gunner the chief gives the tobacco to his soldiers and he jerked the rope from them and handed it to the bows man we then set out under a breeze from the s e about two miles up we observed the third chief on shore beckoning to us we took him on board he informed us the rope was held by the order of the 2d chief who was a double-spoken man, soon after we saw a man coming full speed. Through the plains left his horse and proceeded across a sand bar near the shore we took him on board and observed that he was the son of the chief we had on board we sent by him a talk to the nation state and the cause of our hoisting the red flag under. The white, if they were for peace stay at home and do as we had directed them, if the were for war or were determined to stop us we were ready to defend ourselves, we halted one hour and one half on the s des. And made a substitute of stones for a answer, refreshed our men and proceeded on about two miles higher up and came to a very small sand bar in the middle of the river and stayed all night. I am very unwell for want of sleep determined to sleep tonight if possible, the men cooked and we rested well. Clark, September 29, 1804 Captain W. Clark's notes continued as first taken 29th of September Saturday 1804, set out early some bad sandbars, at 9 o'clock we observed the 2D chief with two men and squars on shore, they wished to go up with us as far as the other part of their band. Which would meet us on the river above not far distant we refused to let one more come on board stating suffiant reasons, observed they would walk on shore to the place we intended to camp. Offered us women we objected and told them we should not speak to another Teton except the one on board with us, who might go on shore whenever he pleased. Those Indians proceeded on until later in the evening when the chief requested that the pierogi might put him across the river which we agreed to, saw numbers of elk on the sandbars today. 
Past an old Rikera village at the mouth of a creek without timber we stayed all night on the side of a sand bar one half a mile from the shore. Clark, September 29, 1804. 29th of Septur. Saturday 1804 set out early some bad sand bars, proceeded on at nine o'clock we observed the two deep chief and two principal men one man and a squar on shore, they wished to go up with us as far as the other part of their band which they said was on the river ahead not far distant we refused stating very subsequent reasons and was plain with them on the subject, they were not pleased observed that they would walk on shore to the place we intended to camp tonight. We observed it was not our wish that they should for if they did we could not take them or any other Tetons on board except the one we had now with us who might go on shore whenever he pleased, they proceeded on, the chief on board asked. For a twist of tobacco for those men we gave him one half a twist, and sent one by them for that part of their band which we did not see. And continued on saw great numbers of elk at the mouth of a small creek called No Timber, as No Timber appeared to be on it. Above the mouth of this creek the parties had a village five years ago, the 2D chief came on the sand bar and requested we would put him across the river, I sent a pierogi and crossed him and one man to the S. -S. And proceeded on and came to on a sand bar on about half a mile from the main shore and put on it two sentinels continent all night at anchor, we substitute large stones for anchors in place of the one we lost, all in high spirits and. Clark. September 30, 1804. 30th of September Sunday 1804 had not proceeded far before we discovered an Indian running after us, he requested to go with us to the Rikaras, we refused to take him. I discovered at a great distank a great number of men women and children deck-ending a hill towards the river above which the chief with us told us was the other band. Some rain and hard wind at about ten o'clock we anchored opposite the camps of this band and told them we took them by the hand. And sent to each chief a carrot of tobacco and some to the principal men and farther said that after staying with the band below two days to see them we had been badly treated and should not land again, as we had not time to delay, refured then to Mr. Durian for a full account of us, and an explanation of what had been said. They appeared ansios for us to eat with them and observed they were friendly we apologized and proceeded on under a double-reefed sail, the chief on board threw out to those that ran up small pieces of tobacco and told them to go back and open their ears. We saw a great number of white gulls, refreshed the party with whiskey, in the evening we saw two Indians at a distance, the boat turned by accident and was nearly filling and rocked very much, all armed the Indian chief on board who ran and hid himself. We landed and the Indian expressed a wish to return, we gave him a blanket knife and some tobacco and advised him to keep his men away, we camped on a sandbar. Very cold and windy. Clark, September 30, 1804. 30th of Septur. Sunday, 1804. Set out this morning early had not proceeded on far before we discovered an INDN. Running after us. He came up with us at seven o'clock and requested to come on board and go up to the records we refused to take any of that band on board if he chose to proceed on shore it was very well soon after I discovered on the hills at a great distance great numbers of Indians which appeared to be making to the river above us. We proceeded on under a double reefed sail, and some rain at nine o'clock observed a large band of Indians the same which I had before seen on the hills encamping on the bank the L. S. We came to on a sandbar breakfast and proceeded on and cast the anchor opposite their lodges. At about one hundred yards to stand, and informed the Indians which we found to be a part of the band we had before seen, that took them by the hand and sent to each chief a carrot of tobacco, as we had been treated badly by some of the band below. After staying two days for them, we could not delay any time, and refused them to Mr. Duran for a full account of us and to hear our talk sent by him to the Tetons, those were very solicitous for us to land and eat with them, that they were friendly and. And. We apologized and proceeded on, sent the Paroge to shore above with the tobacco and delivered. It to Asadra. Of the chief with us several of them ran up the river, the CHF. On board threw then out a small twist of tobacco and told them to go back and open their ears. They wrecked the tobacco and returned to their lodges, we saw great numbers of white gulls this day is cloudy and rainy, 
refreshed the men with a glass of whiskey after breakfast. We saw about six miles above two Indians who came to the bank and looked at us about one half an hour and went over the hills to the SW we proceeded on under a very stiff breeze from the S. The stern of the boat got fast on a log and the boat turned and was very near filling before we got her righted, the waves being very high. The chief on board was so fretined at the motion of the boat which in its rocking caused several loose articles to fall on the deck from the lockers, he ran off and hid himself, we landed he got his gun and informed us he wished to return. That all things were clear for us to go on we would not see any more Tetons and we repeated to him what had been said before and advised him to keep his men away, gave him a blanket a knife and some tobacco, smocked a pipe and he set out. We also set sail and came to at a sand bar, and camped, a verre cold evening, all on our guard. Clark, October 1, 1804 First of October Monday 1804 the wind blew hard from the S.E. All last night, Set out early past a large island in the middle of the river opposite this island the Rikaras lived in two villages on the S.W. side, about two miles above the upper point of the island the Cheyenne River calms in on the L.S. and is about 400 yards wide discharging but little water for A.R. Of its size, the current gentle, and navigable, to the Black Mountains we haul the boat over a sand bar, river wide and shoal, past a creek at five mills we call Sentinel Creek, a small one above, but little timber about this river. The hills not so high as usual, the upper creek I call Lookout Creek, camped on a sand bar, opposite a trading house, where a Mr. Vyes and two men had some few goods to trade with the Sioux, a boy came to us, this Mr. Valley informed us he wintered last winter 300 leagues up the Chiamni River under the Black Mountains, he says the river is rapid and bad to navigate, it forks 100 leagues up the N. Fork enters the Black Mountain 40 leagues above the forks the Count Ray like that on the Missouri less timber more cedar, the Coat Nur or Black M. Is high and some parts retain snow all summer, covered with timber principally pine, great number of goats and a kind of animal with very large horns about the size of a small elk, white bear no bever on the Chien great numbers in the mountains. The Cheyenne Nation has about 300 lodges hunt the buffalo, steal horses from the Spanish settlements, which they do in one month, the chenal of this river is coarse gravel. Those mountains is inhabited also by the white-booted turkeys worthy of remark that the grouse or prairie hen is booted, the toes of their feet so constructed as to walk on the snow, and the tail short with two long stiff feathers in the middle. Sand bars are so numerous, that it is impossible to describe them, and think it unnecessary to mention them. Clark, October 1, 1804 First of October Monday 1804 the wind blew hard all last night from the S.E. Very cold set out early the wind still hard past a large island in the middle of the river, one, Obst. The lower point of this island the Rickrarees formerly lived in a large town on the L.S. Above the head of the island about two miles we passed the, two, river, L, S, this river comes in from the S.W. And is about 400 yards wide, the current appears gentle, throwing out but little sands, and appears to throw out but little water the heads of this river is Indians live some distance up this river, the precise distance I can't learn. Above the mouth of this river the sand bars are thick and the water show the river still very wide and falling a little we are obliged to haul the boat over a sand bar, after making several attempts to pass. The wind so hard we came to and stayed three hours after it slackened a little we proceeded on round a bend, the wind in the after part of the day ahead, too, passed a creek on the L.S. Which we call the Sentinel, this part of the river has but little timber, the hills not so high. The sand bars now numerous, and river more than one mile wide including the sand bars. Two, pass a small creek above the ladder which we call Lookout C- continued on with the wind immediately ahead, and came to on a large sand bar in the middle of the river, we saw a man opposite to our camp on the L.S., which we discovered. To be a Frenchman, a little of the willows we observed a house, we called to them to come over. A boy came in a canoe and informed that two French men were at the house with good to trade with the Soex which he expected down from the Rickeries every day. 
Several large parties of Soek set out from the ricks for this place to trade with those men, this Mr. John Valley informs us that he wintered last winter 300 leagues up the Chien River under the Black Mountains, he informs that this river is very rapid and difficult even for canoes to ascend and when rising the swells is very high. 100 leagues up at forks one fork comes from the S. The other at 40 leagues above the forks enters the Black Mountain. The Count Ray from the Misauri to the Black Mountain is much like the Count Ray on the Misauri, less timber and a greater proportion of cedar. The Black Mountains he says is very high, and some parts of it has snow on it in the summer great quantities of pine grow on the mountains, a great noise is heard frequently on those mountains dash, on the mountains great numbers of goat. And a kind of animal with large circular horns, this animal is nearly the size of an argalia small elk. White bear is also plenty, the Chien Inns. Inhabit this river principally, and steal horses from the Spanish settlements this excursion they make in one month the bottoms and sides of our Chien is coarse gravel. This Frenchman gives an account of a white-booted turkey an inhabitant of the Coutenois. Clark, October 1st. 1804. First of October Monday 1804 at the mouth of River Chien or Dog are we proceeded now from the mouth of this river eleven miles and camped on a sand bar in the river opposite to a trading house very windy and cold, eleven miles above the Chien R. Clark. October 1, 1804. The Red Berry is called by the Rees and RNIS. The Recares. Names of the nations who come to the Ricares to traffic and bring horses and robes. 1. Kuanan Rwesh Jens de Vash. Blue Beads. 2. Degree No Tarwau. Hill Climbers. 3. O Nahu. The people who pen buffalo to catch them. 4. Tichewaku. Fox Indians. 5. Tipakas. White Hairs. 6. Katar Ka. Pajakar. 7. Kiwa. Tiding Indians. 8. Two War Sar. Skin Pricks. 9. Sharha, Chien. The Village on the Other Side. 10. Wehi Sha, Chien. The Villages on This Side. Those Nation all live on the prairies from SW by S. To west of the Rickeries, all speak different languages and are numerous all follow the buffalo in winter in the mountains. The Mandans call a red berry common to the upper part of the Missouri as say the engages call the same berry grease to buff, grows in great abundance and makes a delightful tart. Clark, October 2, 1804. 2nd of October Tuesday, 1804, Mr. Valley came on board, lat 44 degrees 19 minutes 36 n, we observed some Indians on a hill on the s, s, one came to the river and fired off his gun and asked us to come he wish us to go to his camp near at hand we refused, passed a large island on the s, s. Here we expected the Tetons would attempt to stop us, and prepared for action, and k. Opposite this island on the l, s a small creek comes in, we call this Caution Island, camped on a sandbar half a mile from the main shore the wind hard from the N.W. Cold, the current of the river less rapid, and retains less sediment than below. Clark, October 2, 1804. Second of October. Second of October Tuesday 1804 a violent wind all night from the S.E. slackened a little and we proceeded on. Mr. John Valley came on board and proceeded on two miles with us, a very cold morning some black clouds flying took a meridian altitude and made the latitude 44 degrees 19 minutes 36 seconds north this was taken at the upper part of the gouge of the lookout bend. The sentinel heard a shot over the hills to the L. S. during the time we were dining on a large sand bar. The after part of this day is pleasant, at two o'clock opposite a wood on the L. S. we observed some Indians on a hill on the S. S. One came down to the river opposite to us and fired off his gun, and beck kind. To us to come too, we paid no attention to him he followed on some distance, we spoke a few words to him, he wished us to go ashore and to his camp which was over the hill and consisted of twenty lodges. 
We excused ourselves advised him to go and hear our talk of Mr. Durian he inquired for traders we informed him one was in the next bend below and parted, he returned, and we proceeded on, one, past a large island, the S.S. Here we expected the Tetons would attempt to stop us and under that here we prepared ourselves for action which we expected every moment. Opst. This island on the L.S. a small creek comes in, this island we call I.S.D. Of caution we took in some wood on a favorable situation where we could defend our men on shore and, too, camped on a sand bar one half a mile from the main shore. The wind changed to the N, W, and rose very high and cold which continent. The current of the Missouri is less rapid and contains much less sediment of the same color. Clark, October 2, 1804. 2nd of October Tuesday 1804 proceeded on as mentioned in Journal No. 2 12 miles camped above a large island on a sandbar, very windy and cold the after part of this day, the midday very warm. The latitude as taken today is 44 degrees 19 minutes 36 seconds, observe great caution this day expecting the so's intentions somewhat hostile towards our progression, the river not so rapid as below the Chien, its width nearly the same 12 miles. Clark. October 3, 1804. 3rd of October Wednesday 1804 The N.W. Wind blew very hard all night with some rain, we set out early, at 12 examined our stores and goods, several bags cut by the mice and corn scattered, some of our cloth also cut by them also papers and k. And k. At 1 o'clock an Indian came to the bank s. s. with a turkey on his back four other soon joined him some rain, saw Brant and white guts flying southerly. Clark, October 3, 1804. Third of October Wednesday 1804 Wine blew hard all night from the N.W. Some rain and very cold. We set out at 7 o'clock and proceeded on. Clark, October 3, 1804. Third of October Wednesday 1804 The N.W. Wine blew very hard all night with some rain a cold morning, we set out at 7 o'clock and proceeded on at 12 o'clock landed on a bear L.S. Examined the pirogus and factal of the boat to see if the mice had done any damage, several bags cut by them corn scattered and some of our clothes also spoiled by them, and papers and and at 1 o'clock an Indian came to the bank S.S. With a turkey on his back, four others soon joined him, we attempted several chanels and could not find water to ascend, landed on a sand bar and concluded to stay all night, and send out and hunt a chanel. Some rain this afternoon, saw Brant and white gulls flying southerly in large flocks. Clark, October 4, 1804. 4th of October Thursday, the wind blew all night from the N.W. Some rain we were obliged to drop down three miles to get a channel sufficient deep to pass several Indians on the bank, called to us frequently to land, one gave three yells and siped a ball before us, we paid no attention to them. While at breakfast one swam across to us, begged for powder, we gave him a small piece of tobacco and put him over on a sandbar, past a large island in the middle of the river Good Hope I. Past a small creek L.S. Past a creek L.S. camped on a sandbar at the upper point of an island on which is the remains of an old Rikara village fortified called Lahu it was circular, this village appears to have been deserted about five or six years, seventeen houses yet remain. The island contains but little timber, the evening very cold and would surse, make use of drift wood. Clark, October 4, 1804 4th of October Thursday 1804 The wind blew all night from the N.W. Some rain, we were obliged to drop down three miles to get the Chanel suffed. Deep to pass up, several Indians on the shore viewing of us called to us to land one of them gave three yells and siped a ball before us, we paid no attention to him, proceeded on and came to on the L.S. To bracked one of those Indians swam across to us begged for powder, we gave him a piece of tobacco and set him over on a sandbar, and set out, the wind hard ahead, one, past a island in the middle of the river about three miles in length. We call Good Hope Island, two, at four miles past a, two, creek on the L. 
S. About 12 yards wide Captain Lewis and three men walked on shore and crossed over to an, three, island situated on the S. S. of the current and near the center of the river this isle. Is about eleven halves miles long and nearly one half as wide, in the center of this island was an old village of the Rickeries called La Ho Cat it was circular and walled containing seventeen lodges and it appears to have been deserted about five years. The island contains but little timber. We camped on the sandbar making from this island, the day very cool. Clark, October 5, 1804. Fifth of October Friday 1804 frost this morning, set out early past a small creek on the L.S. saw three Tetons on the S.S. They begged some tobacco, we proceed on past a creek on the S.S. I saw a white brant in a gang on the sandbar saw a large herd of cabra or antelope swimming the river, we killed four of them past a small island on the L.S. A large creek on the L.S. at the head of the island White Brant Creek, I walked on the island which is covered with wild rye, I killed a buck and a small wolf this evening, clear pleasant evening, camped on a mud bar S.S. Refreshed the men with whiskey. Clark, October 5, 1804. 5th of October Friday 1804 Frost this morning, we set out early and proceeded on, 1, past a small creek on the L.S. At 7 o'clock heard some yells proceeded on saw three Indians of the Teton band, they called to us to come on shore, begged some tobacco, we answered. Them as usual and proceeded on, past, 2, a creek on the S.S. at 3 M.E.S. Above the mouth we saw one white brant in a gang of about 30, the others all as dark as usual. A description of this kind of G's or brant shall be given here after saw a gang of goats swimming across the river out of which we killed for they were not fat. In the evening passed a small, three, island situated close to the L side, at the head of this ISD. A large creek comes in on the L S saw white or brants, we call this creek White Brant Creek, I walked on the ISD. Found it covered with wild rye, I shot a buck, saw a large gang of goat on the hills opposite, one buck killed, also a prairie wolf this evening, the high land not so high as below, river about the same width, the sand bars as numerous. The earth black and many of the bluffs have the appearance of being on fire, we came to and camped on a mud bar making from the L. S. The evening is calm and pleasant, refreshed the men with a glass of whiskey. Clark, October 6th. 1804. 6th of October Saturday 1804 Cold wind from the N. Saw many large round stones near the middle of the river past an old Rickera village of 80 lodges picketed in those lodges in nearly an octagon form, 20 to 60 feet diameter specious covered with earth and as close as they can stand. A number of skin canoes in the huts, we found squashes of three different kinds growing in the village shields killed an elk close by, the magpie is common here, we camped off the mouth of Otter Creek on the S. S. This creek is 22 yards wide and heads near the R. Jock, contains much water. Clark, October 6, 1804. October 6, Saturday, 1804 A cool morning wind from the north set out early past a willow island, 1, situated near the S. Shore at the upper point of Somme Timber on the S. S. Many large round stones near the middle of the river, those stones appear to have been washed from the hills, too, past a village of about eighty neat lodges covered with earth and picketed around. Those loges are spicious of an octagon form as close together as they can possibly be placed and appear to have been inhabited last spring, from the canoes of skins mats buckets and found in the lodges. We are of opinion they were the recreous we found squashes of three different kinds growing in the village, one of our men killed an elk close by this village, I saw two wolves in pursuit of another which appeared to be wounded and nearly tired. We proceeded on found the river shoal we made several. Attempts to find the main channel between the sandbars, and was obliged at length to drag the boat over to save a lead which we must return to get into the deepest channel, we have been ob to hunt a channel. For some time past the river being devy dead in many places in a great number of chanels, saw G's, swan, Brants, and ducks of different kinds on the sandbars today, Captain Lewis walked on shore saw great numbers of prairie hens. I observe but few gulls or plever in this part of the river, 
the corvos or magpie is very common in this quarter. We camped on a large sandbar off the mouth of Otter Creek on the S. S. This creek is about 22 yards wide at the mouth and contains a greater proportion of water than common for creeks of its sis. Clark, October 7, 1804. 7th of October Sunday 1804 frost last night, past a river 90 yards. Wide the Rikaras call Sir Warkarni all the water of this river runs in a chanel of 20 yards, the current appears gentle, I walked up this river a mile, saw the tracks of white bear, very large, also a old Rikara village partly burnt. Fortified about 60 lodges built in the same form of those passed yesterday, many canoes and baskets about the huts, about 10 o'clock we saw two Indians on the S. S. They asked for something to eat and told us they were Tetons of the band we left below on their way to the Rikaras we gave them meat and wind hard from the south, past a large open island covered with grass and wild rye. I walked on the ISD and four men they killed a braro and a black-tailed doe with a black breast, the largest deer I ever saw, the great numbers of grues on it, we call it Grues Island, camped opposite the island near the S. Side. Clark, October 7, 1804. 7th of October Sunday 1804 A cloudy morning, some little rain frost last night, we set out early proceeded on two miles to the mouth of A, 1, river on the L, S. And brat fast this river wind full is 90 yards wide the water is at this time confined within 20 yards, the current appears gentle. This river throws out but little sand at the mouth of this river we saw the tracks of white bear which was very large, I walked up this river a mile, below the, two, mouth of this river. Is the remains of a rickery village or wintering camp fortified in a circular form of about sixty lodges, built in the same form of those passed yesterday this camp appears to have been inhabited last winter, many of their willow and straw mats. Baskets and buffalo skin canoes remain entire within the camp, the Rikarez call this river Sirwarkarna or park from this river we proceeded on under a gentle breeze from the S. W. At ten o'clock we saw two Indians, on the S. S. They asked for something to eat, and informed us they were part of the Beefs de Medicine's Lodge on their way to the Rikarese, past, three, a willow island in a bind to the S. S. Four, at five miles past. A willow island on the S. S. Wind hard from the south in the evening I walked on an five, island nearly the middle of the river called Gru's Island, one of the men killed a shebrero, another man killed a black-tailed deer. The largest doe I ever saw, black under her breast, this island is nearly eleven-fourths millisecond. Squar no timber high and covered with grass wild rye and contains great numbers of grouse, we proceeded on a short distance above the island and camped on the S.S. a fine evening. Clark, October 8, 1804. 8th of October Monday 1804 A cool morning wind from the N. W. past the mouth of a small creek on the L. S. about 21 halves miles above the I. S. D. past the mouth of a river on the L. S. called by the Rickeries Wetarhu. This river is 120 yards wide, the water confined within 20 yards, throws out mud with little sand, great quantities of red berries, resembling currents near the mouth of this river lat. 45 degrees 39 minutes 5 n. This river heads in the one's black mountain, two miles higher up past a small river on the L. S. Called Maropa 25 yards wide chalked up with mud, our hunters discovered a Rikera village on an island a few miles above we passed the one's Rikera village about the center of the island. In presence of great numbers of spectators and camped above the island on the L. S. at the foot of some high land. Mr. Gravitina French man joined us as an interpreter, the island on which is Rickera village is situated, is about three miles long separate from the main L. Side by a narrow deep channel, those Indians cultivate on the island corn bean simmons, tobacco and canned. After landing Captain Lewis with Mr. Gravelin and three men went to the village, I formed a camp on shore with the pierogi crew and guard, with the boat at anchor, Captain Lewis returned late, a French man and a Spaniard accompanied him. Clark, October 8. 1804. 8th of October Monday 1804 A cool morning set out early the wind from the N. 
W proceeded on past the mouth of a small creek on the L.S., about 21 halves miles above Grouse Island, 3, past a willow island which divides the current equally. 2, past the mouth of a river called by the Ricares Witarhu on the L.S. This river is 120 yards wide, the water of which at this time is confined within 20 yards, discharging but a small quantity, throwing out mud with small proportion of sand, great quantities of the red berries, resembling currants. Are on the river in every bend, 77 degrees 33 minutes 0 seconds latitude from the observation of today at the mouth of this river is 45 degrees 39 minutes 5 inch north, proceeded on past a, 3, small river of 25 yards wide called, 4, or Beaver Dam where this river is entirely chalked up with mud. With a stream of 1 inch diameter passing through, discharging no sand, at 1, 5, mile past the lower pint of an island close on the L. S. Two of our men discovered the Recare village, about the center of the island on the L, side on the main shore. This island is about 3 miles long, separate from the L, S, by a channel of about 60 yards wide very deep, the isle is covered with fields, where those people raise their corn tobacco beans and k. and k. Great numbers of those people came on the island to see us pass, we passed above the head of the island and Captain. Lewis with two interpreters and two men went to the village I formed a camp of the French and the guard on shore, with one sentinel on board of the boat at anchor, a pleasant evening all things arranged both for peace or war. This village, six, is situated about the center of a large island near the L. Side and near the foot of some high bald uneven hills, several French men came up with Captain Lewis in a pierogi, one of which is a mister. Gravelin a man well versed in the language of this nation and gave us some information relative to the Count Ray Nathan and Clark, October 8, 1804 Orders October 8, 1804 Robert Fraser being regularly enlisted and having become on of the Corps of Volunteers for Northwestern Discovery, he is therefore to be viewed and respected accordingly and will be annexed to Sergeant Gass's mess. Win Clark CPT and Meriwether Lewis River Marapa Captain 1st U.S. Raked Infty Clark, October 9, 1804 9th of October Tuesday 1804 a windy night some rain, and the wind continued so high and cold we could not speck in council with the Indians, we gave them some tobacco and informed them we would speak tomorrow. All the grand chiefs visited us today also Mr. Tabo, a trader from St. Louis, many canoes of a single buffalo skin made in the form of a bull carrying generally three and sometimes five and six men, those canoes, ride the highest waves, the Indians much astonished at my black servant and call him the big medicine. This nation never saw a black man before, the wind very high, I saw it several times today three squares in single buffalo skin canoes loaded with meat crossed the river. At the time the waves were as high as I ever saw them in the Missouri. Clark, October 9, 1804. 9th of October, 1804 Tuesday a windy rainy night, and cold. So much so we could not speak with the Indians today the three great chiefs and many others came to see us today, we gave them some tobacco and informed them we would speak on tomorrow. The day continued cold and windy some rain sorry canoes of skins passed down from the two villages a short distance above, and many came to view us all day, much astonished at my black servant. Who did not lose the opportunity of his power's strength and. And. This nation never saw a black man before. Several hunters came in with loads of meat, I observed several canoes made of a single buffalo skin with two and three thre squares crossed the river today in waves as high as I ever saw them on this river. Quite uncomposed I have a slight pleurist this evening very cold and. And. First chief's name Ka Kawasasa, Lighting Crow. 2D Du Du Picasse, or Hay, 3D Du Du Pia Hitu, or Eagle's Feather. Clark, October 10, 1804. 10th of October, 1804 at 11 o'clock the wind shifted from S.E. to N.W., Mr. Tabo visited us, 
we hear that some jealousy exists as to the chiefs to be made, at one o'clock the chiefs all assembled under an awning near the boat and under the American flag. We delivered a similar speech to those delivered the autos and Sioux, made three chiefs. One for each village and gave them clothes and flags, one s chief is named Kahawis Asa Lighting Raven 2D Chief Pekas, Hey, and a third Piahito or Eagle's Feather, after the council was over we shot the air gun, which astonished them. And they all left us, I observed two Sioux in the council one of them I had seen below, they came to intercede with the Rikaras to stop us as we were told, the inns. Much astonished at my black servant, who made himself more terrible in fear view than I wished him to do as I am told telling them that before I caught him he was wild and lived upon people. Young children was very good eating showed them his strength and. And dot, those Indians are not fond of liquor of any kind. Clark, October 10, 1804. 10th of October Wednesday 1804. A fine forming wind from the S. E. at about 11 o'clock the wind shifted, to the N. W. We prepare all things ready to speak to the Indians, Mr. Tabo and Mr. Gravelin came to breakfast with us the chief's end. Came from the lower town, but none from the two upper towns, which is the largest, we continue to delay and wait for them at 12 o'clock dispatched Gravelin to invite them to come down. We have every reason to believe that a jealousy exists between the villages for fear of our making the first chief from the lower village, at one o'clock the chiefs all assembled and after some little ceremony the council commenced. We informed them what we had told the others before i.e. autos and sows. Made three chief one for each village. Gave them presents. After the council was over we shot the air guns which astonished them much, they then departed and we rested secure all night, those Indians wer much astonished at my servant, they never saw a black man before, all flocked around him and examined. Him from top to toe, he carried on the joke and made himself more turable than we wished him to do. Those Indians were not fond of spirits liquor. Of any kind. Clark, October 11th, 1804. 11th of October Thursday 1804 Wind S.E. At eleven o'clock met the one's chief in council, he thanked us for what we had given him and his people promised to attend to our advice, and said the road was open for us and no one dare shut it and. And. We took him and one chief on board and set out, on our way took in the 2D chief at the M.O. of a small creek, and came two off the 2D village which is three miles above the island. We walked up with the two and three chiefs to their villages which is situated on each side of a small creek, they gave us something to eat in theer way. After conversations on various subjects and bearing the civilities of those people who are both poor and dirty we informed the chiefs we would hear what they had to say tomorrow and returned on board about 10 o'clock p.m. Those people gave us to eat corn and beans, a large well-flavored bin which they robbed the mice of in the plains and is very nourishing all tranquility. Clark, October 11, 1804 October 11th Thursday 1804 a fine morning the wind from the S. E. At 11 o'clock we met the Grand Chief in council and and he made a short speech thanking us for what we had given him and his nation promising to attend to the council we had given him and informed us the road was open and no one dare shut it. And we might departé at pleasure, at 1 o'clock we set out for the upper villages three miles distant, the Grand Chief and nephew on board. Proceeded on at one mile took in the 2D chief and came two off the first second village separate from the third by a creek after arranging all matters we walked up with the 2D chief to his village. And set talking on various subjects until late we also visited the upper or third village each of which gave us something to eat in their way, and a few bushels of corn beans and. And. After being treated by every civility by those people who are both poor and dirty we returned to our boat at about 10 OCLK. PM, informing them before we departed that we would speak to them tomorrow at their separate villages. Those people gave us to eat bread made of corn and beans, also corn and beans boiled. A large bin, which they robbed the mice of the prairie which is rich and very nourishing also. Clark, October 11th. 1804. Recares. 
October the 11th Thursday 1804 we met in council to hear what the Grand Chief Ka Ka Asasa had to say in answer to the speech of yesterday. The Grand Chief rose and spoke as follows I, E. My father's dash. My heart is gladder than it ever was before to see my father's dot, a repetition. If you want the road open no one can prove it it will always be open for you. Can you think anyone dare put their hands on your rope of your boat? No. Not one dar. When you get to the Mandans we wish you to speak good words with that nation for us. We wish to be at peace with them. It gives us pain that we do not know how to work the beaver, we will make buffalo robes the best we can. When you return if I am living you will see me again the same man the Indian in the prairie know me and listen to my words, when you come they will meet to see you. We shall look at the river with impatience for your return. Finished. Clark, October 12, 1804. Twelfth of October Friday after breakfast we joined the chiefs and Indians on the bank who wer waiting for us, and prosed to the first village and lodge of the Picass, this man spoke at some lengths. To the same purpose of the 1s chief, and declaring his intentions of visiting his great father, some doubts as to his safety in passing the Sioux, requested us to take a chief of their nation and make a good peace with the Mandan for them. That they knew that they were the cause of the war by killing the two Mandan chiefs, this chief and people gave us about seven bushels of corn, some tobacco of their own make. And seed leggings and a robe we proceeded to the third chief's village which is the largest, after the usual ceremony of eating smock. And. He spoke to near the same amount of the last chief, and more pleasantly, he gave us ten bushels of corn, some beans and simmons, after he had spoken and I gave some sketches of the power and magnitude of our Count Ray, we returned to our boat. I have the rheumatism on my neck the chiefs accompanied us on board, we gave them some sugar salt and a sun glass each, and after eating a little they returned on shore leaving one to accompany us to the Mandans. And we set out viewed by men women and children of each village proceeded on about ninety-one halves miles and camped on the SS. Clear and cold, the Rikaras are about five hundred men Mr. Tabo say six hundred able to bear arms, and the remains of ten different tribes of Paneas reduced by the small pox and wares with the Sioux, they are tall stout men coarsely featured. Their women small and industrious raise great quantities of corn beans and also tobacco for the men to smoke. They collect all the wood and though the drudgery common amongst savages, their language is so corrupted that many lodges of the same village with difficulty understand all that each other say they are dirty, kind, poor, and extravagant. Possessing natural pride, no beggars, receive what is given them with pleasure, theer houses are close together in towns enclosed with pickets. Theer lodges are thirty to forty feet in diameter covered with earth on neat poles set endwise resting on four forks supporting beams set in a square form near the center, and lower about five feet high other forks all around supped. Strong beams, from eight to ten of those, with an opening at top of about five to six feet square, on the poles which pass to the top, small willow and grass is put across to support the earth, the Sioux exchange. Some merchants of small value which they get from Mr. Cameron of St. Peter's for corn and can have great influence over this people treat them roughly and keep them in continual dread, the Rikaras are at war with the Crow Indians and Mandans and. and the Rikaras, have a custom similar to the Sioux in many instances. They think they cannot show a sufficient acknowledgement without to their guest handsome squars and think they are despised if they are not wrecked. The Sioux followed us with women two days we put them off. The Rikaris we put off during the time we were near their village, two were sent by a man to follow us, and overtook us this evening, we still persisted in a refusal the dress of the Rikara men is simply a PR. Of moccasins and leggings, a flap, and a buffalo robe, their hair is long and lays loose their arms and ears are decorated with trinkets. The woman dress moccasins and leggings and skirt of the skin of the cabre or antelope. Long fringed and robed to the fringes and with sleeves, very white, and robes, all were dressed to be without hair in the summer. Those people make large beads of different colors, out of glass or beads of diffed colors, very ingeniously. Clark. October 12, 1804. 
October 12th Friday 1804 I rose early after breakfast we joined the Indians who were waiting on the bank for us to come out and go in council. We accordingly joined them and went to the house of the second chief Lassell where there was many chief and warriors and about seven bushels of corn. A PR legans a twist of their tobacco and seeds of two kind of tobacco we set some time before the council commenced this man spoke at some length declaring his dispotion to believe and prosue our councils. His intention of going to visit his great father acknowledged the satisfaction in receiving the presents and Rice G. A doubt as to the safety on passing the nations below particularly the Suex. Requested us to take a chief of their nation and make a good pact with Mandins and nations above. After answering those parts of the two deep chief speech which required it, which appeared to give general satisfaction we went to the village of the third chief and as usual some ceremony took place before he could speak to us on the great subject. This chief spoke very much in the style on nearly the same subjects of the other chief who sat by his side, more sincere and pleasantly, he presented us with about ten bushels of corn some beans and quashes all of which we accepted with much pleasure. After we had ensed his speech and give them some account of the magnitude and power of our count ray which pleased and astonished them very much we returned to our boat, the chiefs accompanied us on board, we gave them some sugar a little salt and a sun glass. And set two on shore and the third proceeded on with us to the Mandans by name, at two o'clock we set out the inhabitants of the two villages viewing us from the banks, we proceeded on about ninety-one halves miles and camped on the S. S. At some woods past, the evening clear and pleasant cooler. The nation of the Rickeries is about six hundred men able to bear arms a great proportion of them have fusees they appear to be peaceful, their men tall and proportioned, women small and industrious. Raise great quantities of corn beans Simmons and Also tobacco for the men to smoke they collect all the wood and do the druggery as common amongst savages. Thy's nation is made up of ten different tribes of the Pania, who had formerly been separate, but by commotion and war with their neighbors have come reduced and compelled to come together for protection. The corruption of the language of those different tribes has so reduced the language that the different villages do not understand all the words of the others. Those people are dirty, kind, poor, and extravagant purses sing national pride. Not beggarly reeve what is given with great pleasure, live in worm houses large and built in an oxygen form forming a cone at top which is left open for the smoke to pass, those houses are generally thirty or forty foot diameter. Coved. With earth on poles willows and grass to prevent the earth's passing through, those people express an inclination to be at peace with all nations the sows who trade the goods which they get of the British traders for their corn. And great influence over the rickers, poison their minds and keep them in propitial dread. I saw some of the Chien or Dog Indians, also a man of a nation under the court knew this nation is at war with the Crow Indians and have three children prisoners. A curious quistum with the Suix as well as the Wreckers is to give handsome squares to those whom they wish to show some acknowledgments to, the Suix we got clear of without taking their squares, they followed us with squares thirteenth two days. The Rickors we put off during the time we were at the towns but two handsome young squares were sent by a man to follow us, they came up this evening and parasisted in their civilities. Dress of the men of this nation is simply a PR. Mockerson, Legans, flap in front in a buffalo robe, with their arms and ears decorated the women, wore Mockerson's Legans fringed in a shirt of goat skins, some with sleeves. This garment is lunge and jewelry. White and fringed, tied at the waist with a robe, in summer without hair. Clark, October 12, 1804. Second Chief Rikaras. My father. I am glad to see this is a fine day to hear the good counsels and talk good talk I am glad to see you and that your intentions are to open the road for all we see that our grandfather has sent you to open the road we see it our grandfather by sending you means to take pity on us our grandfather has sent you with tobacco to make peace with all nations. We think. The first nation who has recommended the road to be clear and open. You come here and have directed all nations which you have met to open and clear the road. You come to see the water and roads to clear them as clear as possible. You just now come to see us, and we wish you to tell our grandfather that we wish the road to be kept clear and open. 
I expect the chief in the next town will tell you the same to move on and open the road. I think when you saw the nations below they wish you to open the road, or something to that amount, when you passed. The Suex they told you the same I expect. We see you here today we are poor our women have no strouds and knives to cut their meat take pity on us when you return. You come here and direct us to stay at home and not go to war, we shall do so, we hope you will when you get to the Mandins you will tell them the same and clear the road, no one dare to stop you, you go when you please. Do you tell us to go down? We will go and see our grandfather in here and receive his gifts, and think fully that our nation will be covered after our return, our people will look for us with the same impatience that our grandfather looks for your return. To give him. If I am going to see my grandfather, many bad nations on the road, I am not afraid to die for the good of my people, all cried around him. The chief by me will go to the Mandans and hear what they will say. We agreed. The very moment we set out to go down we will send out my brother to bring all the nation in the open prairie to see me part on this great mission to see my great father. Our people hunting shall be glad to hear of your being here and they will all come to see, as you cannot stay they must w-a-t-e for your return to see you, we are poor take pity on our wants. The road is for you all to go on. Who do you think will injure a white man when they come to exchange for our robes and beaver? After you set out many nations in the open plains may come to make war against us, we wish you to stop their guns and prevent it if possible. Finished. 3D Chief of Ricarez. My fathers I will see the Indians below and see if they have the heart as they tell you. The nation below is the Mahas and Ots and but one nation, the Suix, has not a good heart. I always look at the one-ton chief and the 2D win they go and will also follow their example and go on also. You see those two men they are chiefs, when I go they will take care, they believe your words. Maybe we will not tell the truth, as to the child perhaps they will not wish to go. My children the old women and men when I return I can then give them, some a knife some powder and others ball and. What is the matter if we was to go for nothing my great chief wished to go? I wish to go also. When I go to see my grandfather I wish to return quick for fear of my people being uneasy. My children are small and perhaps will be uneasy when I may be safe. I must go, I also wish to go. Perhaps I may when I return make my people glad. I will stay at home and not go to war even if my people are struck. We will believe your word but I fear the Indians above will not believe your word. I will think that one half of the men who will return will stay in this village one half below in the other villages. What did the Sows tell you, we informed them. Clark, October 13th. 1804. 13th of October Saturday 1804 Newman confined for mutinous expressions, proceeded on past a camp of Sioux on the S. S. Those people did not speak to us. Past a creek on the S.S. 18 miles above the Ricaras I call Stone Idol Creek, this creek heads in a small lake at no great distance, near which there is a stone to which the Indians ascribe great virtue and. And. At 21 miles past a creek 15 yards wide on the L.S. I call Picasse, we observe great quantities of grapes, a fine breeze from S.E. camped on the L.S. Some rain thus evening, we formed a court-martial of seven of our party to try Newman. They sentenced him seventy-five lashes and banishment from the party, the river narrow current gentle and wood plenty on the bottoms the upland is as usual open diversified plains, generally rich and livelle. Clark, October 13, 1804. Thirteenth of October Saturday 1804 One man J. Newman confined for mutinous expression set out early proceeded on, passed. A camp of Soex on the S.S. Those people only viewed us and did not speak one word, the visitors of last evening all except one returned which is the brother of the chief we have on board passed, one, a creek on the S.S., thirteen yards, at eighteen me. Above the town heading in some ponds a short dist. To the N, E we call Stone Idol C., well to observe here that the Yankton or our jockheads at about two days march of this place easterly, the R de Soex one day further, the Chiena branch of R. Rush still bay end, 
and the river St. Peter's for days march from this place on the same direction in form. Of the Ricors. Pass two large willow, two, and sand islands above the mouth of the last creek, at twenty-one miles above the village past a, three, creek about fifteen yards wide on the L, S. We call after two deep chief Picas, or hay, nearly opposite this creek a few miles from the river on the S, S. Two stones resembling humane persons and one resembling a dog is situated in the open prairie, to those stone the Ricors pay great reverence make offerings whenever they pass, in Fountain. Of the chief and interpreter, those people have a curious tradition of those stones, one was a man in love, one a girl whose parents would not let marry, the dog went to mourn with them all turned to stone gradually, commencing at the feet. Those people fed on grapes until they turned, and the woman has a bunch of grapes yet in her hand on the river near the place those are said to be situated, we obst. A greater quantity of fine grapes than I ever saw at one place. The river about the island on which the lower Ricors village is situated is narrow and cons. A great proportion of timber then below, the bottoms on both sides is covered with timber the uplands naked the current gentle and sand bars confined to the points generally. We proceeded on under a fine breeze from the S.E. And camped late at the upper part of some wood on the starboard side, cold and some rain this evening. We sent out hunters killed one deer. We tried the prisoner Newman last night by nine of his peers they did, sentence him seventy-five lashes and disbanded the party. Lewis and Clark, October 13, 1804. Orders 13th of October. 1804 A court-martial to consist of nine members will set today at twelve o'clock for the trial of John Newman now under confinement captain. Clark will attend to the forms and rules of a president without giving his opinion. Detail for the court-martial. Cert. John Ordaway. Sergeant Pat. Gas. Joe. Shields. H. Hall. Joe. Collins. William Werner. William Braddon. Joe. Shannon. Silas Goodrich. Meriwether Lewis. Captain 1st U.S. Raked, Infty. Wynn Clark Captain. Or E. N.W.D. In conformity to the above order the court-martial convened this day for the trial of John Newman, charged with having uttered repeated expressions of a highly criminal and mutinous nature. The same having a tendency not only to destroy every principle of military discipline, but also to alienate the affections of the individuals composing this detachment to their officers. And disaffect them to the service for which they have been so sacredly and solemnly engaged. The presonar plead not guilty to the charge exhibited against him. The court after having duly considered the evidence adduced, as well as the defense of the said prisoner, are unanimously of opinion that the prisoner John Newman is guilty of every part of the charge exhibited against him. And do sentence him agreeably to the rules and articles of war, to receive seventy-five lashes on his bare back, and to be henceforth discarded from the permanent party engaged for Northwestern discovery. Two-thirds of the court concurring in the sum and nature of the punishment awarded. The commanding officers approve and confirm the sentence of the court, and direct the punishment take place tomorrow between the hours of 1 and 2 p.m. The commanding officers further direct that John Newman in future be attached to the mess and crew of the Red Pierogi as a laboring hand on board the same, and that he be deprived of his arms and accoutrements and not be permitted the honor of mounting guard until further orders. The commanding officers further direct that in lieu of the guard duty from which Newman has been exempted by virtue of this order, that he shall be exposed to such drudgeries as they may think proper to direct from time to time with a view to the general relief of the detachment. Clark, October 14, 1804 14th of October Sunday 1804 Some rain last night we set out in the rain which continued all day past a creek on the L.S. Piajito 15 yards wide, halted on a sand bar and had the punishment inflicted on Newman, which caused the Indian chief to cry until the thing was explained to him camped opposite an anti-ant fortification which is on the L.S. When I explained to the chief the cause of whipping N. He observed that examples were necessary and that he himself had made them by death, 
but his nation never whipped even from their birth. Clark, October 14, 1804. 14th of October Sunday, 1804. Some rain last night all wet and cold, we set early the rain contined all day at underscore 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 miles we passed a, one, creek in the L, s. Fifteen yards wide this creek we call after the third chief Piajito, or Eagle's Feather, at one o'clock we halted on a sand bar and after dinner executed the sentence of the court-martial so far as giving the corporal punishment, and proceeded on a few miles. The wind ahead for men. E. camped in a cove of the bank on the S. S. immediately opposite our camp on the L. Side I observe an anti ant fortification the walls of which appear to be eight or ten feet high, the evening wet and disagreeable, the river something wider more timber on the banks. The punishment of this day alarmed. The Indian chief very much, he cried aloud, or affected to cry, I explained the cause of the punishment and the necessity he thought examples were also necessary, and he himself had made them by death, his nation never whipped even their children. From their birth. Clark, October 15, 1804. 15th of October rained all last night, passed a Rickera hunting camp on the SS and halted at another on the L. S. Several from the one ton camp visited us and gave meat as also those of the camp we halted at, we gave them fish, hook some beads, and. As we proceeded on, we saw a number of Indians on both sides all day, saw L. S. Some curious knobs high and much the resemblance of a hyped rough house. We halted at a camp of ten lodges of Ricaras on the S. S. We visited Thier lodges and were friendly wrecked by all, their women fond of our men, and. Clark, October 15, 1804. 15th of October Monday 1804 rained all last night, we set out early and proceeded on at three miles past an IND camp on the S. S. We halted above and about thirty of the Indians came over in their canoes of skins, we eat with them, they give us meat, in return we gave fish hooks and some beads, about a mile higher we came to on the L. S. At a camp of Rick Rez of about eight lodges, we also eat and they gave some meat, we procked on saw numbers of Indians on both sides passing a creek, saw many curious hills, high and much the resemblance of a house with a hyped roof. At twelve o'clock it cleared away and the evening was pleasant, wind from the N. E. Dot, at sunset we arrived at a camp of Rica Rez of ten lodges on the S. S. We came to and camped near them Captain Lewis and myself went with the chief who accompanies us, to the huts of several of the men all of whom smoked and gave us something to eat also some meat to take away. Those people were kind and appeared to be much plsd. At the attention paid them. Those people are much pleased with my black servant, their woman very fond of caressing our men. And. Clark, October 16, 1804. 16th of October Tuesday 1804 Some rain this morning two squares very anxious to accompany us we set out with our chief on board by name A.R. Kutar and our Shar, or chief of the town, a little above our camp on the L. S. Past an old Cheyenne village, which appears to have been surrounded with a wall of earth. This is the retreat and first stand of this nation after being reduced by the Sioux and drove from their Count Ray on the heads of Red River of El Winnipeg where they cultivated the lands past a creek I call Soharch or Girl Creek L. S. Two miles higher past Woman Creek or Charparts past an island situated in a bend to the S. S. At the lower point of this island a creek comes in called Keytooth. Sarkaranar, or the place of beaver above the island a small river on the same S. Side called Warikon Ne Elk shed their horns, this river is thirty-five yards wide and heads near the river Ojak, Carp Island wind hard ahead from the NW. Saw great numbers of goats or antelope on shore, Captain Lewis one man and the Rikera chief walked on shore, in the evening I discovered a number of Indians on each side and goats in the river or swimming and on sandbars. When I came near saw the boys in the water swimming amongst the goats and killing them with sticks, and then hauling them to the shore those on shore kept them in the water, I saw fifty-eight killed in this way and on the shore. The hunter with Cap Lewis shot three goats I came to and camped above the Rickera camp on the L. S. Several Indians visited us during the night some with meat, sang and were merry all night. 
Clark, October 16, 1804. October 16, Tuesday, 1804. Some rain this morning, two young squares very anxious to accompany us. We set out with our chief on board by name Ar Kutar Nashar or chief of the town, a little above our camp on the L.S. Past a circular work, where the Sharha, or Chien, or Dog Indians, formerly lived, a short distance above past a creek which we call Chien Creek, above is a willow island situated near, I, the L. Side a large sand bar above and on both sides, too, past a creek above the island on the L, S, call Soharch, or Girls, Creek, at two miles higher up, three, past a creek on L, S. Call Charpart, or Wamans, Creek past, five, an island situated in a bend to the S, S, this ISD. Is about eleven halves miles long, covered with timber such as cotton wood, opst. The lower point a creek comes in on the S, S. Called by the Indians Key Toothsar Kar Nr, or Place of Beaver, above the island a small river about thirty-five yards wide corns in called War Re Con Any or, Elk Shed Their Horns. The island is called Carp Island by Ivans. Wind hard from the N, W. Saw great numbers of goats on the shore S, S, proceeded on Captain. Lewis and the Indian chief walked on shore, soon after I discovered great numbers of goats in the river, and Indians on the shore on each side. As I approached or got nearer I discovered boys in the water killing the goats with sticks and howling them to shore, those on the banks shot them with arrows and as they approached. The shore would turn them back of this gang of goats I counted fifty-eight of which they had killed and on the shore, one of our hunters out with Cap Lewis killed three goats, we passed the camp on the S.S. and proceeded half a mile and camped on the L.S. Many Indians came to the boat to see, some came across late at night, as they approached they hollowed and sung, after staying a short time two went for some meat and returned in a short time with fresh and dried buffalo, also goat. Those Indians strayed all night, they sung and was very merry the greater part of the night. Lewis, October 16, 1804 October 16 this day took a small bird alive of the order of the underscore 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 or goat suckers. It appeared to be passing into the dormant state. On the morning of the 18th the Makai was at 30 above zero. The bird could scarcely move. I run my penknife into its body under the wing and completely destroyed its lungs and heart, yet it lived upwards of two hours this phenomenon I could not account for unless it proceeded from the want of circulation of the blood. The recorees call this bird Tana its note is Atta Tana, Atta Tana, Tana, a nocturnal bird, sings only in the night as does the whippoorwill. Its weights are 17 grains Troy. Clark, October 17, 1804 17th of October, 1804 Wind S.W. I walked on shore with the Rikera chief and an interpreter, they told me many extraordinary stories, I killed three deer and elk, the chief killed a deer and our hunters killed four deer, in my upsank the wind rose so high that the boat lay to all day. Lacked 46 degrees 23 minutes 57 seconds north, I caught a small uncommon wiper will we observe immense herds of goats, or antelopes flocking down from the N.E. side and swimming the river, the chief telephones me those animals winter in the Black Mountain. And in the fall return to those mounts from every quarter, and in the spring disperse in the plains, those immense herds we see all of which is on the N.E. side of the river is on their way to the mountain. And in the spring they will be as numeros on their return, some Ganges winter on the Missouri, camped on the L. S. Note from the Ricares to the river Jock near N. E. is about 40 mes. To the Chien a fork of our rogue 20 passing the Suix River near the Chien this from information of Mr. Graveline who passed through this count ray. Clark, October 17, 1804. October 17, Wednesday, 1804. Set out early a fine morning the wind from the N.W. After breakfast I walked on shore with the Indian chief and interpreters, saw buffalo elk and great numbers of goats in large gangs, I am told by Mr. G. That those animals winter in the Black Mountains and this is about the season they cross from the east of the Missouris to go to that mountain, they return in the spring and pass the Missouri in great numbers. 
this chief tells me of a number of their traditions about turtles, snakes, and and the power of a Purtisila rock or cave on the next river which informs of everything none of those I think worth while mentioning, the wind so hard ahead the boats could not move after ten o'clock, Captain Lewis took the altitude of the sun laid. 46 degrees 23 minutes 57 seconds I killed three deer and the hunters with me killed three also the Indian shot one but could not get it, I scaffold up the deer and returned and met the boat after night on the L.S. About six miles above the place we camped last night, one of the men saw a number of snakes, Captain Lewis saw a large beaver house s.s. I caught a whippoorwill small and not common dash. The leaves are falling fast dash. The river wide and full of sandbars dash. Great numbers of very large stone on the sides of the hills and some rock of a brownish color in the Lord Bend below this dash. Great numbers of goats are flocking down to the S. Side of the river on their way to the Black Mountains where they winter those animals return in the spring in the same way and scatter in different directions. Clark, October 18, 1804. 18th of October, 1804. At six miles past the mouth of La Bullet or Cannonball River on the L. Side about 140 yards wide, and heads near the black mountains above the mouth of this river, in and at the foot of the bluff, and in the water is a number of round stones, resembling shells and cannonballs of different sissas. And of excellent grit for grinds tons, the bluff continues for about a mile, the water of this river is confined within forty yards, we met two French men in a canoe, who informed us they wer trapping near the mandans and were robed of four traps and part of their skins and several other articles by Indians he took to be mandans those men return with us, saw immense numbers of goats all day s. s. our hunters kill several past a large creek called Che Wa or Fish Creek on the s. s. 28 yards wide, past a small creek at 2 m on the l. s. camped on the l. s. saw a no of buffalo, and in one gang 248 elk our hunters killed 6 deer and 4 elk this evening, the Count Ray is Livelle and finds some high short hills, and ridges at a distance. Bottoms fine and partially timbered with cottonwood principally some ash and elm. Clark, October 18, 1804. 18th of October Thursday 1804 set out early proceeded on at 6 M.E.S. Past the mouth of, 1, La Boulette, or Cannonball River, about 140 yards wide on the L.S. This river heads in the court knot or black mountains, a fine day, above the mouth of this river great numbers of stone perfectly round with fine grit are in the bluff and on the shore. The river takes its name from those stones which resemble cannonballs. The water of this river is confined within forty yards. We met two French men in a pierogi descending from hunting, and complained of the mandans robing them of four traps their fur and several off articles those men were in the employ of our rickery interpreter Mr. Gravelin they turned and followed us. Saw great numbers of goats on the s.s. coming to the river our hunters killed four of them some run back and others crossed and proceed on their journey to the court noir, at, three, past a small river called Che Wa or Fish River on the s.s. This river is about twenty-eight yards wide and heads to the n.e., Passed a small creek on the L.S., one mile above the last, and camped on a sand bar on the L.S. Opposite to us we saw a gang of buffalo bulls which we did not think worth while to kill, our hunters killed. For goats six deer four elk and a pelican and informs that they saw in one gang two forty-eight elk, I walked on shore, in the evening with a view to see some of those remarkable places mentioned by Evans, none of which I could find. The Count Ray in this quarter is generally level and finds some high short hills, and some ragged ranges of hills at a distance. The Rikera Indians inform us that they find no black-tailed deer as high up as this place. Those we find are of the fallow deer kind. The Rikaris are not fond of spiritous liquors, nor do they appear to be fond of receiving any or thankful for it. Clark, October 19, 1804 19th of October Friday 1804. Set out early under a gentle breeze from the S. E. More timber than common in the bottoms past a large pond on the S. S. I walked out on the high land L. 
sighed and observed great numbers of buffaloes, I counted in view at one time fifty-two gangs of buffalo and three of elk, besides deer and goats and all the streams falling from the hills or high land so brackish that the water can't be drank without affecting the person making use of it as globe salts dash, I saw in my walk several remarkable high conical hills, 190 feet. 160 and others smaller the Indian chiefs say that the Kayumet bird live in the hollows of those hills, which holes are made by the water passing from the top and and. I also saw an old village fortified situated on the top of a high point, which the Rakara chief telephones me were Mandans, we camped on the L.S. I killed a deer and saw swans and k. Our hunters killed four elk and six deer today. Clark, October 19, 1804. October 19, Friday 1804 A fine morning wind from the S.E. We set out early under a gentle breeze and proceeded on very well, more timber than common on the banks on this part of the river passed a large pond on the S.S. I walked out on the hills and observed great numbers of buffalo feeding on both sides of the river I counted fifty-two gangs of buffalo and three of elk at one view. All the runs which come from the high hills which is generally about one or two miles from the water is brackish and near the hills, the salts are, and the sides of the hills and edges of the streams. The mineral salts appear I saw some remarkable round hills forming a cone at top one about 90 foot 160 and several other smaller, the Indian chiefs say that the Kayumet bird live in the holes of those hills. The holes formed by the water washing through some parts in its passage down from the top, near one of those knolls, on a point of a hill 90 feet above the lower plain I observed the remains of an old village, which had been fortified. The Indian chief with us telephones me, a party of Mandins lived there, here first saw ruins of Mandan nation we proceeded on and camped on the L. S. Opposite the upper of those conical hills our hunters killed for elk six deer and a pelican, I saw swans in a pond and killed a fat deer in my walk, saw above ten wolves. This day is pleasant. Clark, October 20, 1804. 20th of October, 1804 wind from the S.E., I walked out to view those remarkable places pointed out by Evans, and Continent all day saw an old village of the Mandans below the Chess Chi Turar. Appear to have been fortified above the village on the same L.S. is a coal bank where we camped. Past a small creek on the S.S. and an island on the L. S. covered with willows small cotton account ray through which I passed this day is delightful, timber in the bottoms, saw great nose. Of buffalo elk goats and deer as we were in one of them I killed three deer, our hunters ten deer and wounded a white bear, I saw several fresh tracks of that animal double the cis of the largest track I ever saw, great numbers of wolves. Those animals follow the buffalo and devour, those that die or are killed, and those too fat or poor to keep up with the gang. Clark, October 20th. 1804. 20th of October Saturday 1804 set out early this morning and proceeded on the wind from the S. E. After breakfast I walked out on the L. Side to see those remarkable places pointed out by Evans. I saw an old remains of a village on the side of a hill which the chief with us two and he telephones me that nation lived in a number of villages on each side of the river and the trouble sun Soex caused them to move about forty miles higher up where they remained a few years and moved to the place they now live. 2. Passed a small creek on the S. S. 3. And one on the L. S. Passed. 4. A island covered with willows laying in the middle of the river no current on the L. S. Camped on the L. S. Above a bluff containing coal, five, of an inferior quality, this bank is immediately above the old village of the Mandans, the Count Ray is fine, the high hills at a distank with gradual ascents. I kiled three deer the timber confined to the bottoms as usual which is much larger than below. Great numbers of buffalo elk and deer, goats. Our hunters killed ten deer and a goat today and wounded a white bear I saw several fresh track of those animals which is three times as large as a man's track dash, the wind hard all day from the N.E. and east. Great numbers of buffalo swimming the river. I observe near all large gangs of buffalo wolves and when the buffalo move those animals follow and feed on those that are killed by accident or those that are too poor or fat to keep up with the gang. 
Lewis, October 20, 1804. October 20, Peter Cruz sat this day shot at a white bear he wounded him, but being alarmed at the formidable appearance of the bear he left his tomahawk and gun. But shortly after returned and found that the bear had taken the opposite route. Dot, soon after he shot a buffalo cow broke her thigh, the cow pursued him he concealed himself in a small ravine. Clark, October 21, 1804. 21 T of October Sunday 1804 A very cold night wind hard from the N.E. Some rain in the night which feased as it fell, at day began to snow and continued all the fore part of the day, at one quarter of a mile past the mouth of Cheshire Tar, or Hart, River L.S. 38 yards wide. This river heads near Turtle Mountain with Knife River on this river is a smooth stone which the Indians have great faith in and consult the stone on all great occasions which they say marks or symbols are left on the stone of what is to take place and an old Mandan village above the mouth of this little river, I saw a single tree in the open plains which the Mandans formerly paid great devotion to run cords through their flesh and tie themselves to the tree to make them brave. Passed an old village on a small run on the SS. One on the bank L and camped, I killed a fat buffalo this evening, little gun all my hunting. Clark, October 21st, 1804. October 21st Sunday 1804 A very cold night wind hard from the N. E. Some rain in the night which froze up it fell at daylight it began to snow and continent all the fore part of the day passed just above our camp, one a small river on the L. Fess. Called by the Indians Chischotar this river is about 38 yards wide containing a good deal of water some distance up this river is situated a stone which the Indians have great faith in and say they see painted on the stone. All the kale mites and good fortune to happen the nation and parties who visit it, a tree, an oak, which stands alone near this place about two miles off in the open prairie which has withstood the fire they pay great respect to. Make holes and tie strings through the skins of their necks and around this tree to make them brave, all this is the information of 2NE is a whippoorwill, the chief of the Ricares who accompanied us to the Mandins. At two miles, too, past the second villages of the Mandan, which was in existence at the same time with the first this village is at the foot of a hill on the S. S, on a beautiful and extensive plain, at this time covered with buffalo, a cloudy afternoon, I killed a fine buffalo, we camped on the L.S., very cold ground covered with snow. 1 Ortair Kim. Clark, October 22, 1804. 22 of October, 1804 Last night at about 1 o'clock I was violently attacked with rheumatism in my neck, which was so violently I could not move, Cap L. Applied a hot stone raped in flannel which gave temporary ease, we passed a war party of Tetons on their way as we supposed to the Mandans of twelve men on the L. S. We gave them nothing and refused to put them across the river, passed two old villages at the mouth of a large creek L. S. and a small island at the head of which is a bad place, an old village on the S. S. And the upper of the six villages the Mandans occupied about twenty-five years ago this village was entirely cut off by the Sioux and one of the others nearly, the small pox destroyed great numbers. Clark, October 22, 1804. October 22, Monday, 1804. Last night at one o'clock, I was violently and suddenly attacked with the rheumatism in the neck, which was so violent I could not move. Captain applied a hot stone raped in flannel, which gave me some temporary ease. Dash. We set out early, the morning cold at seven o'clock. We came to at a camp of Teton Sows on the L. S. Those people twelve in number were naked and had the appearance of war, we have every reason to believe that they are going or have been to steal horses from the Mandins, they tell two stories. We gave them nothing after taking breakfast proceeded on, my neck is yet very painful at time spasms. Camped on the L side, past an island situated on the L side at the head of which and Mandins village S, S, we passed a bad place, the hunters killed a buffalo bull, they say out of about three hundred buffalo which they saw, they did not see one cow. Great deal of beaver sign. Several caught every night. Clark, October 23, 1804. 23 of October, 1804 Some snow, 
past five lodges fortified the place the two French men were robed those are the hunting camps of the Mandans, who has latterly left them. We camped on the L.S. Clark, October 23, 1804. 23rd of October Tuesday 1804 a cloudy morning some snow set out early past five lodges which was desert. The fires yet burning we suppose those were the Indians who robed the two French trappers a few days ago those two men are now with us going up with a view to get their property from the Indians through us. Cold and cloudy camped on the L.S. of the river. Clark, October 24, 1804. 24th of October cloudy some little snow, my rheumatism continue, not so bad as the two last days, a beautiful count ray on both sides, bottoms covered with wood, we see no game today. Past an old village of a band of me any tars called Mahar Ha where they lived forty year ago on the L. S. Came to on an island caused by the river cutting through a narrow point seven years ago, on this island we wer visited by the grand chief of the Mandans a 2d chief and some other, who wer camped on the island. Those chief met our Rikara chief with great cordiality, and smoked together Cap Lewis visited the camp's five lodges, and proceeded on and camped near a 2d camp of Mandans on the S. S. Nearly opposite the old Rikara and Mandan village which the Rikaras abandoned in the year 1789. Clark, October 24. 1804. October 24, Wednesday, 1804. Set out early a cloudy day some little snow in the morning I am. Something better of the remudum in my neck, a beautiful Count Rayon. Both sides of the river. The bottoms coughed. With wood, we have seen no game on the river today a prof of the Indians hunting in the neighborhood, one, past a island on the S.S. Made by the river cutting through a point by which the river is shortened several miles, on this isled. We saw one of the grand chiefs of the Mandins, with five lodges. Hunting, this chief met the chief of the Ricares who accompanied us. With great cordiality and ceremony smoked the pipe and captain. Lewis with the interpreter went with the chiefs to his lodges at one mile distant, after. His return we admitted the grand chief and his brother for a few minutes on. Our boat. Proceeded on a short distance and camped on the S.S. Below. The old village of the Mandins and Ricares. Soon after our lange. 4. Mandins came from a camp above, the Ricares chief went with them to their camp. 25th of October Thursday 1804. A gentle breeze from the S. E by E Paston, one, old village on a high plain where the Mandins once lived and after they left the village and moved higher the Ricares took possession and lived until 1799 when they Abandoned it and flew from the just revenge of the Mandans. A very extensive bottom above the village above the center of which, too, the Mandans lived in the two villages on the L. 5, but little timber. Several parties of Indians on each side of the river going up. In view. In every directions, we are informed that the Sioux has latterly taken. Horses from the big bellies or minotaries and on their way homewards. They fell in with the Assiniboines who killed them and took the horses. And a Frenchman Menard who resided with the Mandan for twenty years past was. Killed a few days ago on his way from the Britishment establishments. On the Assiniboine River. 150 miles in. Of this place to the Mandans by. The Assiniboine Indians, we were frequently called to buy parties of. Indians and requested to land and talk, passed a very bad place and camped. On a point S.S. Opposite a high hill several Indians visit us this. Evening the son of the late great chief of the Mandans who had two of his. Fingers off and appeared to be pierced in many places on inquiring the. Reason. Was informed that it was a testimony to their grief for. Deceased frines, they frequently cut off several fingers and pierced. Themselves in different parts, a mark of savage effect ion, wind hard. 
From the S. W. Very cold are fields with a rheumatism in his neck one. Man are, in his hips myself much better, those Indians appear to have. Similar customs with the Rikaras, they're dressed the same more mild in. Their language and gestures and. And. Clark, October 25, 1804. 25th of October Thursday 1804 a cold morning set out early under a gentle breeze from the S. E. by E. proceeded on, past, one, the third old village of the Mandans which has been dest. For many years, this village was situated on an eminence of about forty foot above the water on the L. S. Back for several miles is a beautiful plain, too, at a short distance above this old village on a continuation of the same eminence was situated the which have been evacuated only six years. Above this village a large and extensive bottom for several miles in which the squares raised their corn, but little timber near the villages, on the S. S. below is a point of excellent timber, and in the point several miles above is fine timber, several parties of Mandins rode to the river on the S. S. To view us indeed they are continually in sight satisfying their curiosities as to our appearance and we are told that the sows has latterly fallen in with and stole the horses of the big belly. On their way home they fell in with the Assiniboine who killed them and took the horses, a Frenchman has latterly been killed by the Indians on the track to the trading establishment on the Ossenbine R. In the north of this place, or British fort, this Frenchman has lived many years with the Mandins, we were frequently called on to land and talk to parties of the Mandins on the shore, wind shifted to the S. W at about eleven o'clock and blew hard until three o'clock. Clouded up river full of sandbars and we are at a great loss to find the channel of the river, frequently run on the sandbars which detain us much past a very bad riffle of rocks in the evening by taking the L. S. Of a sandbar and camped on a sand point on the S. S. opposite a high hill on the L. S. Several Indians come to see us this evening, amongst others the son of the late great chief of the Mandins, this man has his two little fingers off dash. On incurring the cause, was told it was customary for this nation to show their grief by some testimony of pain. And that it was not uncommon for them to take off two smaller fingers of the hand and sometimes more with the marks of savage effect I am. The wind blew very hard this evening from the S. W. Very cold. Arc fields with the rheumatim in his neck, p. Crew sat with the same complaint in his legs, the party otherwise is well, as to myself I feel but slight symptoms of that disorder at this time. Clark, October 26, 1804. 26 of October, 1804 wind from the S. E. We set the Rikera chief on shore with some Mandans, many on each side vying of us, we took in two chiefs, Cole and Big Man, and halted a few minutes at their camps, on the L. S. Fortified in their way, here we saw a trader from the Assiniboine River called McCracken, this man arrived nine day ago with goods to trade for horses and robes one other man with him, we camped on the L. Side a short distant below the R.S.T. Renandon village on the L. S. Many men women and children flocked down to see us, Captain Lewis walked to the village with the chief and interpreters, my rheumatism increasing prevented me from going also. And we had determined that both would not leave the boat at the same time until we knew the disposition of the natives, some chief visited me and I smoked with them, they appeared delighted with the steel mill which we were obliged to use. Also with my black servant, Captain Lewis returned late. Clark, October 26, 1804 26th of October Friday 1804 set out early wind from the SW proceeded on saw numbers of the Mandins on shore, we set the Rickar chief on shore. And we proceeded on to the camp of two of their grand chiefs where we delayed a few minutes, with the chiefs and proceeded on taking two of their chiefs on board and some of the heavy articles of his household, such as earthen pots and corn. Proceeded on, at this camp saw a McCracken Englishman from the N. W. Company this manna came nine days ago to trade for horses and buffalo robes, one other man came with him. The Indians continued on the banks all day, but little wood on this part of the river, many sand bars and bad places, water much devy dead between them. For the 26th, Octre. 
we came to and camped on the L.S. about one half a mile below the East. Manned in town on the L.S. Soon after our arrival many men women and children flocked down to see us, Captain Lewis walked to the village with the principal chiefs and our interpreters. My rheumatic complaint increasing I could not go, if I was well only one would have left the boat and party until we knew the disposition of the inns. I smoked with the chiefs who came after. Those people APD much pleased with the corn mill which we were obliged to use, and was fixed in the boat. Clark, October 27, 1804 27th of October Saturday 1804 we set out early and came to at the village on the L.S. Where we delayed a few minutes, I walked to a chief's log and smoked with them, but could not eat, which did displease them a little, here I met with a mister. Jessam, who lived in this nation thirteen years, I got him to interpret and he proceeded on with us we proceeded on to a central point opposite the Knife River, and formed a camp on the S.S. above the 2D Mandan village and Opst. The Maharha village, and raised a flag staff, Captain Lewis and the interpreters walked down to the 2D village of Mandans, and returned in about an hour. We sent three carrots of tobacco to the other villages and inviting them to come down and counsel with us tomorrow, we endeavor to procure some knowledge of the principal chiefs of the different nations and well to give my ideas as to the impression Thais man makes on me is a Cunan artful and insincere, he telephones me he was once ampled. By my brother in the Illinois and of his description I conceive as a spy upon the British of Michelinicnac and St. Joseph, s we think he may be made useful to us and do employ him as an interpreter, no, of Indians bring their wives and to the camps of our party on shore and Clark, October 27, 1804 27th of October Saturday 1804 we set out early came to at this village on the L.S. This village is situated on an eminence of about 50 feet above the water in a Hanson plain it contains houses in a kind of picket work. The houses are round and very large containing several families, as also their horses which is tied on one side of the entrance, a description of those houses will be given hereafter. I walked up and smoked a pipe with the chiefs of this village they were anxious that I would stay and eat with them, my indisposition provent my eating which displeased them, until a full explanation took place. I returned to the boat and sent two carrots of tobacco for them to smoke, and proceeded on, past the 2D village and camped opst. The village of the Wetter Soon or Awabar Ways which is situated on an eminence in a plain on the L, S, this village is small and contains but few inhabitants. Above this village and also above the Knife River on the same side of the Missouri the Big Bellies towns are situated a further description will be given hereafter as also of the town of Mandans on this side of the river IES. Side A fine warm day we met with a French man by the name of Jassim which we employ as an interpreter this man has a wife and children in the village, great numbers on both sides flock down to the bank to view us as we passed. Captain Lewis with the interpreter. Walked down to the village below our camp after delaying one hour he returned and informed me the Indians had returned to their village and, and. We sent three carrots of tobacco by three young men, to the three villages above inviting them to come down and counsel with us tomorrow. Many Indians came to view us some stayed all night in the camp of our party, we procured some information of Mr. Jessam of the chiefs of the different nations. Clark, October 28, 1804. 28th of October, 1804 The wind so hard from the S.W. We could not meet the Indians in councils, those who visited us we sent to the nearest village, consulted the Black Cat M. Chief about the chiefs of the different villages, who gave his opinion to us. Clark, October 28, 1804. Sunday 28th of October, 1804 A windy day, fair and clear many of the Grosventers, or Big Bellies, and Watersons came to see us and hear the council the wind being so violently hard from the S.W. Provent are going into council, indeed the chiefs of the Manadans from the lower village could not cross, we made up the presence and entertained several of the curious chiefs home. Wished to see the boat which was very curious to them viewing it as Great Medicine, as they also viewed my black servant the Black Cat Grand Chief of the Mandans. 
Captain Lewis and myself with an interpreter walked up the river about eleven halves miles our views were to examine the situation and timbers for a fort, we found the situation good but the timber sirs, or at least small timber such as would answer us dash. We consulted the grand chief in respect to the other chiefs of the different villages he gave the names of twelve, George Druyer caught two beaver above our camp last night, we had several presents from the woman of corn boiled homne, soft corn and and I prosent a jar to the chief's wife who wrecked it with much pleasure our men very cheerful this evening, we sent the chiefs of the gross vantrace to smoke a pipe with the grand chef of the manned inns in his village, and told them we would speak tomorrow. Clark, October 29, 1804 29th of October, 1804 A fine morning after breakfast we were visited by the old chief of the Big Bellies or me any tar res. This man has given his power to his son who is now on a war party against the Snake Indians who inhabit the Rocky Mountains. The SW wind very high, we met in council under an awning and our sails stretched round to keep out as much wind as possible and delivered a long speech similar to what had been said to the nations below. The old chief was restless before the speech was half ended, observed his camp was exposed and could wait no longer and at the conclusion of the speech we mentioned the Rikaras and requested them to make a peace and smoke out of the sacred stem with their chief which I introduced and gave him the pipe of peace to hand around. They all smoked with eagerness out of the pipe held by the Rikara chief Ar Kutarnashar we mentioned our hands that were to be discharged here, also the robbery committed on th two French men below, and requested them to answer us tomorrow. Gave the chief small presents and a few presents for each village shot the air gun which both surprised and astonished the natives. And soon dispersed. Our Rikara chief came told me he wished to return to his nation tomorrow I put him off and said we would send a talk by him after the chiefs had spoken to us, we gave a steel mill to the Mandans which was very pleasing to them. The chief who wrecked medals today are as follows viz in council. Is Mandan village Matutan Kai S. Chief Shahaka Big White Second Kagohami Little Crows. 2. Do village Rup Tarhi. 1. S. and Grand Chief Paskap Sahi Black Cat. 2. D. Chief Kargarno Makshi Raven Man Chief. Maharha village. Is Chief Tatakko Pinri has. White buffalo skin unfolded. Little Menatar village. Is Chief Omsehare Black Makarsan. 2D Chief Ohark Little Fox. The grand village of Manatars, the one eye is the principal chief and he is out on a hunting party. We send by the grape all the articles for this grand chief and all the village what goods was intended for that village, the prairie got on fire and went with such violent and speed as to catch a man and woman and burn them to death, several escaped. Among other a small boy who was saved by getting under a green buffalo skin, this boy was half white, and the Indians say all white flesh is medicine, they say the grass was not burnt where the boy sat and. And. This fire passed us at eight o'clock, and looked truly tremendous. Clark, October 29, 1804. October 29, Monday, 1804 A fair fine morning after breakfast we were visited by the old chief of the Big Bellies or underscore 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 this man was old and had transferred his power to his son who was then out at war against the Snake Indians who inhabit the Rocky Mountains, at ten o'clock the S.W. Wind rose very high, we collected the chiefs and come ned a council under a awning and our sails stretched around to keep out as much wind as possible. We delivered a long speech the substance of which similar to what we had delivered to the nations below. The old chief of the Grosseners was very restless before the speech was half ended observed that he could not wait long that his camp was exposed to the hostile Indians, and and he was rebuked by one of the chiefs for his uneasiness at such a time as the present, we at the end of the speech mentioned the Rikar who accompanied us to make a firm peace. They all smoked with him, I gave this chief a dollar of the American coin as a mayadel with which he was much pleased, in council we presented him with a certificate of his sincrity and good conduct and. We also spoke about the fur which was taken from two French men by a mandan, and informed of our intentions of sending back the French hands, after the council we gave the presents with much ceremony. And put the meadels on the chiefs we intended to make viz. 
one for each town to whom we gave coats hats and flags. One grand chief to each nation to whom we gave meat elves with the president's likeness in council we requested them to give us an answer tomorrow or as soon as possible to some points which required their deliberation after the council was over we shot the air gun which appeared to astonish the natives much. The greater part them retired soon after. The Rikar chief A.R. Kutarnashar came to me this evening and tells me that he wishes to return to his village and nation, I put him off saying tomorrow we would have an answer. To our talk to the satisfaction and send by him a string of wampum informing what had passed here. A iron or steel corn mill which we gave to the Mandins, was very thankfully received, root the prairie was set on fire, or caught by accident, by a young man of the Mandins, the fire went with such velocity that it burnt to death a man and woman. Who could not get to any place of safety, one man a woman and child much burnt and several narrowly escaped the flame, a boy half white was saved unhurt in the midst of the flame. Those ignorant people say this boy was saved by the great spirit medicine because he was white, the cause of his being saved was a green buffalo skin was thrown over him by his mother who perhaps had more foresight for the protection of her son. And less for herself than those who escaped the flame, the fire did not burn under the skin leaving the grass round the boy this fire passed our camp last about 8 o'clock p. m. It went with great rapidity and looked tremendous. The following chiefs were made in council today. Martu Tunha or lower village of the Mandan's first chief Shahaka or Big White Tu Du Kagohami or Little Raven. Rup Tarhi or second village of. The Mandan's first and grand chief Paskap Sahi or Black Cat second chief Kargarnomakshi Raven Man chief. Maharha third village chief Tatak Kopin Riha, white buffalo robe unfolded. Mianitari Miti E Hartar first chief Ampesihare. Black Mockersons to do. Ohar or Little Fox. We sent the presents intended for the Grand Chief of the Mianitari or Big Belly, and the presents flag and wampums by the old chief and those. And those intended for the chief of the lower village by a young chief. The following chiefs were recommended in addition to those viz. First village Ohiene our big man, a Chien Shotahar Ore. 2D village Ta Nishio, Bel Rsara Arat Ta Namakshi, Wolf Man Chief. Third village Min Nis Surareri, Nang Horse, Lotongar Ti Har, Old Woman at a Distance. Fourth village Marnotatha. Big Stealer Manasiras Se, Tale of Calumet Bird. Fifth village Ad Hako Ho Pin Ne Little Wolf's Medicines Arat Tono Mukgu, Man Wolf Chief, at war, Kaltar Kota, cherry grows on a bush, old chief and father to the above meant. Chief Mapapurikas Sa2, this chief is near this hunting and a very considerable man. To the first chiefs we gave a medal with the imp of the president of the U.S. To the two D chiefs a medal of weaving and domestic animals. To the third chiefs a medal with the impression of a man sowing wheat. Fourth village 1 Ea Pa No Pa, Two-tailed Calumet Bird Young Chief Two War He Ras S.A. The Red Shield Young Chief of Big Belly Big Town. Clark, October 30th. 1804. 30th of October Tuesday 1804 Many Indian Chief visit us today I went in Th. Perigu to the island seven miles above to look out a proper place for to winter, it being near the Tim the ice begins to run at this place. And the Count Ray after a few leagues high is said to be barren of timber, I found no place soutable, and we concluded to drop down to th next point below and build a fort to winter in the party danced which delight the Indians. Clark, October 30th, 1804. October 30th, Tuesday 1804 Two chiefs came to have some talk one the principal of the lower village the other the one who thought himself the principal main. And requested to hear some of the speech that was delivered yesterday they were gratified, and we put the medal on the neck of the big white to whom we had sent clothes yesterday and a flag. Those men did not return from hunting in time to join the Kunel. They were well pleased, 2D of those is a Chien, I took eight men in a small pierogi and went up the river as far as the first island about seven miles to see if a situation could be got on it for our winter quarters, found the wood on the ISD. As also on the point. Above so distant from the water that, I did not think that we could get a good wintering ground there, 
and as all the white men here informed us that wood was Sears, as well as game above. We determined to drop down a few miles near wood and game on my return found many inns. At our camp, gave the party a dram, they danced as is very calm. In the evening which pleased the savages much. Wind S. E. Clark, October 30, 1804. Mandins. Kagar no Mok Ge the 2D chief of the 2D village of Mandins came the 30T of Octra. And spoke to us as follows. Viz. Will you be so good as to go to the village the grand chief will speak and give some corn, if you will let some men take bags it will be well. I am going with, the chief of the Ricarez to smoke a pipe with that nation, I concluded to go down. Mockers and Indians. The principal chief of the Wau to soon came and spoke a few words on various subjects not much to the purpose. We smoked and after my shooting the air gun he departed, those nations know nothing of reagular councils, and know not how to proceed in them, they are restless and. Clark, October 31st. 1804. 31st of October Wednesday 1804 the main chief of the Mandan sent two chiefs for to invite us to come to his lodge, and hear what he has to say I with two interpeats walked down. And with great ceremony was seated on a robe by the side of the chief. He threw a robe highly decorated over my shoulders, and after smoking a pipe with the old man in the circle, the chief spoke he believed all we had told him, and that peace would be G and L which not only gave himself satisfaction but all his people. They now could hunt without fear and their women could work in the fields without looking every moment for the enemy, as to the Rikaras addressing himself to the chief with me you know we do not wish war with your nation. You have brought it on yourselves. That man pointing to the 2D chief and those two young warriors will go with you and smoke in the pipes of peace with the Rikaras, I will let you see my father addressing me that we wish to be at peace with all and do not make war upon any, he continued to speak in this style refer to notes, he delivered two of the traps to me which was taken from the Frenchman. Gave me two bushels of corn, I answered the speech which appeared to give general satisfaction and returned to the boat, in the evening the chief visited us dressed in his new suit. And delayed until late the men danked until ten o'clock which was common with them wrote to the N.W. Copenese agent on the Assiniboine River by a Mr. McCrucken. Clark, October 31, 1804. 31st of October Wednesday 1804 A fine morning. The chief of the Mandan sent a 2D chief to invite us to his lodge to receive some corn and hear what he had to say I walked down and with great ceremony was seated on a robe by the side of the chief. He threw a handsome robe over me and after smoking the pipe with several old men around, the chief spoke said he believed what we had told them, and that peace would be general, which not only gave him satisfaction but all his people. They now could hunt without fear, and their women could work in the fields without looking every moment for the enemy, and put off their moccasins at night, as to the rears we will show you that we wish peace with all. And do not make war on any without cause, that chief pointing to the 2D and some brave men will accompany. The Rick are chief now with you to his village and nation, to smoke with that people, when you came up the Indians in the neighboring villages. As well as those out hunting when they heard of you had great expectations of receiving presents they those hunting immediately on hearing returned to the village and all was disappointed, and some dissatisfied. As to himself he was not much so but his village was, he would go and see his great father and k. And k. He had put before me two of the steel traps which was robed from the French a short time ago. About twelve bushels of corn which was brought and put before me by the woman of the village after the chief finished and smoked in great ceremony, I answered the speech which satisfied them very much and returned to the boat. Met the principal chief of the 3D village and the little crow both of which I invited into the cabin and smoked and talked with for about one hour. Soon after those chiefs left us the grand chief of the Mandans came dressed in the clothes we had given with his two small sons, and requested to see the men dance which they very readily gratified him in. The wind blew hard all the after part of the day from the N.E. and continent all night to blow hard from that point, in the morning it sure fed N.W. Captain Lewis wrote to the N.W. Company's agent on the Orsonboyne River A.B.T. North of this place. Clark, October 31, 1804. 
Black Cat or Pose Cop S.A. He first chief of the Mandans and 2D village. I believe what you have told us in council, and that peace will be general, which not only gives me pleasure. But satisfaction to all the nation, they now can hunt without fear, and our women can work in the fields without looking every moment for the enemy dash, as to the Ricares we will show you that we wish peace with all. And do not make war on any without cause. That chief pointing to the 2D of the village and some young men will accompany the Rikria chief home to his nation to smoke with that people, when the Indians of the different villages heard of your coming up they all came in from hunting to see. They expected great presents. They were disappointed, and some dissatisfied, as to myself I am not much so, but my village are, he believed the road was open. And he would go and see his great father, he delivered up two traps which had been taken from the French, and gave me a robe and about twelve bushels of corn, and smoked and. I answered the speech it explained. Many parts which he could not understand of the speech of yesterday. Lewis, October 31, 1804. Wednesday, October 31, 1804. The river being very low and the season so far advanced that it frequently shuts up with ice in this climate we determined to spend the winter in this neighborhood, accordingly Captain. Clark with a party of men reconnoitred the Count Ray for some miles above our encampment, he returned in the evening without having succeeded in finding an eligible situation for our purpose. Clark, November 1, 1804 November 1, 1804 visited by several chiefs of the lower village who requested we would call on them and spoke to the same purpose with the Grand Chief. We set out in the evening and I with the party drove down to the place we intended to winter and Cap Lewis called at the village three miles above and and Clark, November 1, 1804 First of November Thursday 1804 the wind hard from the N.W. Mr. McCracken a trader set out at seven o'clock to the fort on the Assiniboine by him send a letter. Enclosing a copy of the British minister's protection, to the principal agent of the company, at about ten o'clock the chiefs of the lower village came and after a short time informed us they wished they would us to call at their village and take some corn. That they would make peace with the Ricares they never made war against them but after the Rees killed their chiefs they killed them like the birds. And were tired and would send a chief and some brave men to the Ricares to smoke with that people in the evening we set out and fell down to the lower village where Captain. Lewis got out and continued at the village until after night I proceeded on and landed on the S.S. At the upper point of the first timber on the starboard side after landing and continuing, all night drove down to a proper place to build Captain Lewis came down after night. And informed me he intended to return the next morning by the particular request of the chiefs. We passed the villages on our decent in vie of great numbers of the inhabitants. Clark, November 1, 1804. The first of Navarre. Mandins is village the main chief big white and two others i.e. the big man or shahasie and underscore 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 came early to talk and spoke as follows after smoking viz. Is it certain that the Ricares intend to make good with us our wish is to be at peace with all, we will send a chief with the Pena chief and some young men to smoke and make good peace dash. Are you going to stay above or below this cold dot, answer by C. L. We are going down a few miles to look a place we can find no place above proper. The Paneas knows we do not begin the war, they always begin, we send a chief and a pipe to the Pena to smoke and they killed them dash, we have killed enough of them we kill them like the birds, we do not wish to kill more, we will. Make a good peace. We were sorry when we heard of your going up but now you are going down, we are glad, if we eat you shall eat, if we starve you must starve also, our village is too far to bring the corn to you. But we hope you will call on us as you pass to the place you intend to stop. C. L. answered the above. Lewis, November 1st. 1804. Thursday, November 1, 1804 The wind blew so violently during the greater part of this day that we were unable to quit our encampment. In the evening it abetted, we drove down about seven miles and land on N. E. side of the river at a large point of woodland. Clark, November 2, 1804. Second Navarre. 1804 Friday, 
Captain Lewis returned to the village and I fixed on a place for to build a fort and set to work Cap Lewis returned in the Avang with eleven bushels of corn, the Rakar chief set out for his village accompanied by several mandans. Clark. November 2nd, 1804. November 2nd Friday 1804 This morning at daylight I went down the river with four men to look for a proper place to winter proceeded down the river three miles and found a place well suppled. With wood, and returned, Captain Lewis went to the village to hear what they had to say and I fell down, and formed a camp near where a small camp of Indian were hunted cut down the trees around our camp, in the evening Captain. Lewis returned with a present of eleven bushels of corn, our recurry chief set out accompanied by one chief and several brave men, he called for some small article which we had given but as I could not understand him he could not get. The wind from the S.E. a fine day, many Indians today. Lewis, November 2nd, 1804. Friday November 2nd, 1804 inch this morning early we fixed on the site for our fortification which we immediately set about. This place we have named Fort Mandan in honor of our neighbors. Clark, November 3rd, 1804. Third of November Saturday 1804 wind hard from the west commenced building our cabins, dispatched six hunters in a pierogi down the river to hunt, discharged the French hands, Mr. Jessam his squar and child moved to camp, the little crow loaded his squar with meat for us also a robe, we gave the squar an axe and and. Caught two bever near camp. Clark, November 3rd, 1804. 3rd of November Saturday 1804 A fine morning wind hard from the west we commence building our cabins, send down in pierogi six men to hunt engaged one man. Set the French who intend to return to build a pierogi, many Indians pass to hunt, Mr. Jessam with his squar and children. Come down to live, as interpreter, we receive a or for our service, in the evening the Ka Go Hami or Little Raven came and brought us on his squar about sixty wt, of dried buffalo meat or robe, and pot of meal and. They delayed all night, we gave his squar an axe and a few small articles and himself a piece of tobacco, the men were indulged with a dram, this evening two beaver caught this morning, and one trap lost. Clark, November 4, 1804. 4th of Navarre. A French man by name Shabona, who speaks the big belly language visit us, he wished to hire and informed us his two squares were snake Indians. We endow him to go on with us and take one of his wives to interpret the snake language the Indians horses and dogs live in the same lodge with themselves. Clark, November 4th. 1804. November 4th Sunday 1804 Fort Mandan a fine morning we continued to cut down trees and raise our houses, a mister. Chobani, interpreter for the Gros Vintre Nation came to see us, and informed that he came down with several Indians from a hunting expedition up the river, to hear what we had told the Indians in Kaunkal this man wished to hire as an interpreter. The wind rose this evening from the east and clouded up, great numbers of Indians pass hunting and some on the return. Clark, November 5. 1804. November 5 Monday 1804 I rose very early and commenced raising the two range of huts the timber large and heavy all to carry on hand sticks, cotton wood and elm saw ash small, our situation sandy. Great numbers of Indians passed to and from hunting a camp of Mandans, a few miles below us caught within two days one hundred goat, by driving them in a strong pen, directed by a bush fence widening from the pen and. And. The greater part of this day cloudy, wind moderate from the N, W. I have the rheumatism very bad, Cap Lewis writing all day, we are told by our interpreter that four Assiniboine Indians, have arrived at the camps of the Gross Venters and fifty lodges are coming. Clark, November 6, 1804. 6th of November. Mr. Gravelin our Ricara interpreter and two of our French hands and two boys set out in a canoe for the Ricaras Mr. Ravel Lynn is to accompany the Ricaras chiefs to the city of Washington in the spring, great numbers of geese pass to the south which is a certain approach of ice. Clark, November 6. 1804. November 6, Tuesday 1804 Fort Mandan Last night late we wer awoke by the sergeant of the guard to see a northern light, which was light, 
not red, and appeared to darken and sometimes nearly obscured, and open. Many times appeared in light streaks. And at other times a great space light and containing floating columns which appeared opposite each other and retreat leaving the lighter space at no time of the same appearance. This morning I rose a day light the clouds to the north appeared black at eight o'clock the wind begun to blow hard from the N.W. And cold, and continued all day Mr. Joe Gravelin our Rick our interpreter Paul Primer, Lajanus and two French boys, who came with us, set out in a small pierogi, on their return to the Rickery Nation in the Illinois, Mr. Gravelin has instructions to take on the Rickeries in the spring and dot, continue to build the huts, out of cotton timber, and this being the only timber we have. Clark, November 7, 1804. November 7, Wednesday, 1804 A turnprit day we continued to building our hut, cloudy and fogging all day. Clark, November 8, 1804. 8th Navre. Thursday, 1804 A cloudy morning Jussum our interpreter went to the village, on his return he informed us that three English men had arrived from the Hudson's Bay Company, and would be here tomorrow, we continued. To build our huts, many Indians come to see us and bring their horses to grass near us. Clark, November 9, 1804. 9th Navarre. Friday 1804 A very hard frost this morning we continue to build our cabins, under many disadvantages, day cloudy wind from the N.W. Several Indians pass with flying news, we got a white weasel, tail accepted which was black at the end, of an Indian Captain Lewis walked to the hill ABT. Three quarters of a mile, we are situated in a point of the Missouri north side in a cottonwood timber. This timber is tall and heavy containing an immense quantity of water brickle and soft food for horses to winter, as is said by the Indians, the Mandans graze their horses in the day on grass, and at night give them a stick of cottonwood to eat. Horses dogs and people all pass the night in the same lodge or round house, coved. With earth with a fire in the middle. Great number of wild G's pass to the south, flew very high. Clark, November 10th. 1804. November 10th Saturday 1804 rose early continued to build our fort numbers of Indians came to see us a chief half partia and brought a side of a buffalo, in return we gave some few small things to himself and wife and son. He crossed the river in the buffalo skin canoe and and, the squaw took the boat and proceeded on to the town three miles the day raw and cold wind from the N.W., the G's continue to pass in gangs as also brant to the south. Some ducks also pass. Clark, November 11th, 1804. November 11th Sunday 1804 Fort Mandan a cold day continued at work at the fort two men cut themselves with an axe. The large ducks passed to the south and Indian gave me several rolls of parched meal two squares of the Rock Mountain, purchased from the Indians by a Frenchman came down the Mandans out hunting the buffalo. Clark, November 12th. 1804. November 12th Monday 1804 A very cold night early this morning the big white principal chief of the lower village of the Mandans came down, he packed about 100 w. A fine meat on his squar for us, we made some small presents to the squar, and child gave a small axe which she was much pleased, three men sick with the underscore 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 several, wind changeable very cold evening, freezing all day some ice on the edges of the river. Swans passing to the south, the hunters we sent down the river to hunt has not returned. The interpreter says that the Mandan nation as they old men say came out of a small lake where they had gardens. Many years ago they lived in several villages on the Masari low down, the smallpox destroyed the greater part of the nation and reduced them to one large village and some small ones, all nations before this malady was afford. Of them after they were reduced the Sioux and other Indians waged war, and killed a great many, and they moved up the Missouri, those Indians still continued to wage war, and they moved still higher, until they got in the Count Ray of the Peneus. With this NTN. They lived in friendship many years, inhabiting the same neighborhood until that people waged war, they moved up near the Watersons and Winnetary where they now live in peace with those nations. The Mandans speak a language peculiar to themselves. They can raise about 350 men, 
the Winneteries about 80 and the Big Bellies about 600 or 650 men. The Mandans and Soex have the same word for water the Big Bellies Winneteries and Raven Indians speak nearly the same language and the presumption is they were originally the same nation the Raven Indians have 400 lodges and about 1200 men. And follow the buffalo, or hunt for their subsistence in the plains and on the court knot and rock mountains, and are at war with the Sioux Snake Indians. The Big Bellies and Watersons are at war with the Snake Indians and Soex. And were at war with the Ricares until we made peace a few days past. The Mandans are at war with all who make war on them, at present with the Soex only, and wish to be at peace with all nations, seldom the aggressors. Clark, November 13, 1804. Thirteenth the ice begin to run we move into our hut. Visited by the Grand Chief of the Mandans, and Che Charkla grew a chief of the Assiniboines and seven men of that nation. I smoke with them and gave the chief a cord and a carrot of tobacco, this nation rove in the plains above this and trade with the British campaigns on the Assiniboine River, they are divided into several bands. The descendants of the Sioux and speak nearly their language a bad disposed set and can raise about Mu men in the three bands near this place, they trade with the nations of this neighborhood for horses corn and snow all day Captain. L. At the Village. Clark, November 13, 1804. 13th Navar. Tuesday 1804 the ice began to run in the river one half past ten o'clock p. M. We rose early and unload the boat before breakfast except, the cabin, and stored away in a storehouse, at ten o'clock a.m. the black cat the Mandan chief and Le Che Chark chief and seven men of note visited us at Fort Mandan. I gave him a twist of tobacco to smoke with his people and a gold cord with a view to know him again, the nation consists of about six hundred men, hunt in the plains and winter and trade on the Assiniboine River. They are descendants of the Sos and speak their language, they come to the nations to this quarter to trade or, make prests, for horses the method of this kind of traffic by adoption shall be explained hereafter and, snowed all day. The ice ran thick and air cold. Clark, November 14, 1804 Fort Mandan 14 of November Wednesday 1804 A cloudy morning, ice ruining very thick river rose half an inch last night some snow falling. Only two Indians visit us today owing to a dance at the village last night in concluding a ceremony of adoption and interchange of property between the Assiniboines. Cristinos and the nations of this neighborhood, we sent one man by land on or back to know the reason of the delay of our hunters. This evening two French men who were trapping below came up with twenty beaver we are compelled to use our pork which we do sparingly for fear of some fowler in procuring a sufficiency from the woods. Our interpreter informs that seventy lodges one of three bands of Assiniboines and some Cristinos, are at the Mandan village. The Cristinos are ABT. Three hundred men speak the Chippewa language, the live near Fort de Pere. Clark, November 15, 1804. Fifteenth of November Thursday 1804 a cloudy morning. The ice run much thicker than yesterday at ten o'clock G. Druyer and the Frenchman we dispatched yesterday came up from the hunters. Who is encamped about thirty miles below, after a about one hour we dispatched a man with orders to the hunters to proceed on without delay through the floating ice, we sent by the man tin. To put on the parts of the pierogi exposed to the ice and a tow rope, the wind changeable, all hands work at their huts until one o'clock at night swans passing to the south, but few fowls water to be seen, not one Indian came to our fort today. Clark. November 16, 1804. November 16 Friday 1804 A very white frost all the trees all covered with ice, cloudy, all the men move into the huts which is not finished several Indians come to camp today, the Assiniboines is at the Big Bell Lie camp. Some trouble like to take place between them from the loss of horses and as is said by an old Indian who visited us with four buffalo robes and corn to trade for a pistol which we did not let him have, men employed until late in dobing their huts, some horses sent down to stay in the woods near the fort. To prevent the Osnaboines stealing them. Clark, November 17, 1804. 17th November Saturday 1804 A fine morning, 
last night was cold, the ice thicker than yesterday, several Indians visit us. One chief stayed all day we are much engaged about our huts. Clark, November 18, 1804. 18th Navarre. Sunday 1804 a cold morning some wind the black cat, chief of the Mandans came to see us, he made great inquiries respecting our fashions. He also stated the situation of their nation. He mentioned that a council had been held the day before and it was thought advisable to put up with the resent insults of the Assiniboines and Cristonos until they were convinced that what had been told them by us, Mr. Evans had deceived them and we might also, he promised to return and furnish them with guns and ammunition, we advised them to remain at peace and that they might depend upon getting supplies through the channel of the Missouri. But it required time to put the trade in operation. The Assiniboines and have the trade of those nations in their power and treat them badly as the Sioux does the Ricarees and they cannot resent for fear of losing their trade end. Clark, November 19, 1804. 19th of November, 1804 Our hunters return with 32 deer, 12 elk and a buffalo ice ran which detained the hunts much Cap Lewis visit the me any tar rees, the 25th and returned the 27th of November with two chiefs and 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 told me that two clerks and five men of the N.W. Company and several of the Hudson's Bay Company had arrived with goods to trade with the Indians a Mr. La Roche and Mac Kinsey are the Salurks, distant 150 miles across. Clark, November 19, 1804. 19th Navarre. Monday a cold day the ice continued to run our pierogi of hunters arrive with 32 deer, 12 elk and a buffalo, all of this meat we had hung up in a smoke house, a timely supply, several Indians here all day, the wind blay hard from the N, W, by W. Our men move into their huts, several little Indian annects. Told me today. Clark, November 20, 1804. November 20, Tuesday 1804 Captain Lewis and myself move into our huts, a very hard wind from the W. All the after part of the day a temperate day several Indians came down to eat fresh meat, three chiefs from the 2D Mandan village stay all day, they are very curious in examining our works. Those chiefs informs us that the Suix settled on the Missouri above Dog River, threatened to attack them this winter, and have treated two Ricares who carried the pipe of peace to them very roughly. Whipped and took their horses from them and 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 is much displeased with Ricarez for making a peace with the Mandans and and through us and we gave them a satisfactory answer and and Clark, November 21, 1804 21st Navarre Wednesday a fine day dispatched a pirogu and collected stone for our chimneys, some wind from the S, W. Arrange our different articles, Many Indians visit us today, G. D. hurt his hand very bad all the party in high spirits, the river clear of ice, and rising a little. Clark, November 22. 1804. 22 of November Thursday 1804 A fine morning dispatched a pierogi and five men under the direction of Sergeant Pryor to the second village for one hundred bushels of corn in ears which Mr. Jessam, let us have did not get more than eighty bushels, I was all armed about ten o'clock by the sentinel, who informed that an Indian was about to kill his wife in the interpreter's fire about sixty yards below the works. I went down and spoke to the fellow about the rash act which he was like to commit and forbid any act of the kind near the fort, some misunderstanding took place between this man and his wife about eight days ago, and she came to this place. And continued with the squares of the interpreters, two days ago she returned to the Vilk. In the evening of the same day she came to the interpreter's fire apparently much beat. And staved in three places, we detected that no man of this party have any intercourse with this woman under the penalty of punishment, he the husband observed that one of our sergeants slept with his wife and if he wanted her he would give her to him. We directed the sergeant Odway to give the man some articles, at which time I told the Indian that I believed not one man of the party had touched his wife except the one he had given the use of her for a night, in his own bed. No man of the party should touch his squar, or the wife of any Indian, 
nor did I believe they touch a woman if they knew her to be the wife of another man, and advised him to take his squaw home and live happily together in future. At this time the grand chief of the nation arrived, and lectured him, and they both went off apparently dis. The grand chief continued all day a warm day fair afternoon, many Indian anecdotes one chief and his family stay all night. Clark, November 23, 1804. 23rd, a fair warm day, wind from the S.E. Send after stone several men with bad colds, one man shields with the rheumatism the river on a stand having rose four inches in all. Clark, November 24th. 1804. 24th of November Saturday 1804 a warm day several men with bad colds we continue to cover our huts with hued puncheons, finished. A cord to draw our boat out on the bank, this is made nine straps of elk skin, the wind from the S.E. Clark, November 25th, 1804. 25th of Navarre. Sunday 1804 a fine day warm and pleasant captain. Lewis two interpreters and six men set out to see the Indians in the different towns and camps in this neighborhood, we continue to cover and D.O.B. our huts, two chiefs came to see me today one named Waukuras S.R.A. A big belly and the first of that nation who has visited us since we have been here, I gave him a handkerchief paint and a saw band, and the other some few articles, and paid a particular attention which pleased them very much. The interpreters being all with Captain. Lewis I could not talk to them. We complete our huts, several men with bad colds, river fall eleven halves inch. Clark, November 26, 1804. 26th of Navarre. 1804 Monday Fort Mandan a little before day light the wind shifted to the N, W. And blew hard and the air keen and cold all day, cloudy and much the appearance of snow, but little work done today it being cold and Clark, November 27, 1804. 27th of November Tuesday 1804 A cloudy morning after a very cold night, the river crowded with floating ice wind from the N.W. finished Dobing Captain. Lewis returned from the villages with two chiefs Marno Toe and Manesser Ree and a considerate man with the party who accompanied him, the Menetaires. Or Big Bellies, were all armed at the tales told them by the Mandans viz that we intended to join the Sows to cut off them in the course of the winter. Many circumstances combined to give force to those reports i.e. the movements of the interpreters and their families to the fort, the strength of our work and. And. All those reports was contradicted by Captain Lewis with a conviction on the minds of the Indians of the falsity of those reports, the Indians in all the towns and camps treated Captain Lewis and the party with great respect except one of the principal chiefs. Mar par pa par are pa tu or, horned weasel, who did not choose to be seen by the captain. And left word that he was not at home and. Seven traders arrived from the fort on the Assiniboine from the N.W. Company one of which Le Francis took upon himself to speak unfavorably of our intentions and. The Prinkle Mr. La Rock, and Mr. Mackenzie was informed of the conduct of their interpreter and the consequences if they did not put a stop to unfavorable and ill-founded assertions and and the two chiefs much pleased with their treatments and the cheerfulness of the party, who danced to amuse them and and the river fall two inches very cold and began to snow at eight o'clock p.m. and continued all night, some misunderstanding with Jussum and his woman, at day the snow ceased. Clark November 28, 1804. 28th Navarre. Wednesday 1804 A cold morning wind from the N. W. River full of floating ice, began to snow at 7 o'clock a.m. and continued all day at 8 o'clock the Poscop Sohi or Black Cat Grand Chief of the Mandans came to see us, after showing those chiefs many thing which was curiosities to them and giving a few presents of curios handkerchiefs armbands and paint with a twist of tobacco they departed at one o'clock much pleased, at parting we had some little talk on the subject of the British trader Mr. Lorock giving medals and flags, and told those chiefs to impress it on the minds of their nations that those symbols were not to be wrecked by any from them. Without they wished incur the displeasure of their great American father, a very disagreeable day, no work done today river fall one inch today. 
Clark, November 29, 1804. November 29, Thursday, 1804 A very cold windy day wind from the N. W by W. Some snow last night the depth of the snow is various in the wood about 13 inches, the river closed at the village above and fell last night two feet mister. La Rock and one of his men came to visit us we informed him what we had heard of his intentions of making chiefs and and forbid him to give medals or flags to the Indians, he denied having any such intention. We agreed that one of our interpreters should speak for him on conditions he did not say anything more than what tended to trade alone, he gave fair promises and Clark, November 30, 1804 30th of November An Indian chief came and informed us that five men of the Mandan's nation was on a hunting party to the SW, distance about eight leagues, they were surprised one man killed two wounded and nine horses taken. Several others men wer on hunting parties and were to have returned several days ago and had not yet returned. And that they expected to be attacked by an army of Sioux I took twenty-three men and went to the village determined to collect the warriors of the different villages and meet the Sioux, the village not expecting such strong aid in so short a time was a little alarmed of the formable appearance of my party the principal chiefs met me at two hundred yards distance from the town. And invited me to his lodge. I told the nation the cause of coming and was to assist in chastising the enemies of my dutiful children, I requested great chief to repeat the circumstance of the Sioux attack as it really happened which he did, I told them to send runners to the other villages and assemble the warriors and we would go and chastise the Sioux for spilling the blood of my dutiful children, after a conversation of a few minutes amongst themselves. A chief said that they now saw that what we had told them was the truth and we were ready to protect them and kill those who did not listen to our counsels, and after a long speech, he concluded said, the Sias who spilt our blood is gone home, the snow is deep and it is cold. Our horses cannot travel through the plains in pursuit, if you will go and conduct us in the spring after the snow is gone, we will assemble all the warriors and brave men in all the villages and go with you. I answered the speech at some length explained to them their situation declaring our intentions of defending them at any time during the time we should stay in the Niborhud. Explained the situation of the Rikaras and told them not to get angry with them until they were certain of their having violated the treaty and and I crossed the river on the ice and returned to the fort. Clark, November 30, 1804 Thirtieth in the morning early a Indian came to the river opposite and requested to be brought over, that he had something to say from his nation we sent for him. And after he had smoked, he said he thought the river was frosted across here and expected to cross on the ice. Seven or eight Mandans out hunting in A.S. W. Direction from this place about eight leagues, after they had made their hunt and on their return was attacked head by a large party of Sows, one of the party a young chief was killed two wounded and nine horses taken. The men who made their escape say the one half of the party who attacked them was Peneus. The two Peneus who came here a few days ago was immediately sent home. For fear of their being put to death by the party defeated. Two of the attacking party was known to be Peneus. The man who was killed mentioned that after he was wounded, that he had been at war and been wounded, this day I shall die like a man before my enemies. Tell my father that I died bravely, and do not grieve for me dash. Four of the big bellies who were camped near Thaz is missing. And searching for him in their camps above, no one dare to go to the ground where the battle was for fear of the Sioux being numerous dash. Clark, November 30, 1804 30th of November Friday 1804 This morning at 8 o'clock an Indian called from the other side and informed that he had something of consequence to communicate. We sent a pierogi for him and he informed us as follows. Viz, five men of the Mandan nation out hunting in A.S. W. Direction about eight leagues was surprised by a large party of Suan Painis, one man was killed and two wounded with arrows and nine horses taken, for of the Wee Tursun nation was missing, and they expected to be attacked by the Suix and and we thought it well to show a disposition to Ade and assist them against their enemies, particularly those who came in opposition to our counsels, and I determined to go to the town with some men. 
and if the Su were coming to attack the nation to collect the warriors from each village and meet them, Bu's ideas were also those of Captain Lewis. I crossed the river in about an hour after the arrival of the Indian Express with twenty-three men including the interpreters and flanked the town and came up on the back part the Indians not expecting to receive such strong aid in so short a time was much surprised. And a little all armed at the formidable appearance of my party, the principal chiefs met me some distance from the town, say two hundred yards, and invited me into town, I ordered my proprietary into DFT. Lodges and I explained to the nation the cause of my coming in this formidable manner to their town, was to assist and chastise the enemies of our dutiful children. I requested the Grand Chief to repeat the circumstances as they happened which he did as was mentioned by the Express in the morning, I then informed them that if they would assemble their warriors and those of the different towns I would to meet the army of Suix and chastise them for taking the blood of our dutiful children and, after a conversation of a few minutes amongst themselves, one chief the big man Cien said they now saw that what we had told them was the truth, when we expected the enemies of their nation was coming to attack them. Or had spilt their blood were ready to protect them. And kill those who would not listen to our good talk, his people had listened to what we had told them and seriously went out to hunt in small parties believing themselves to be safe from the other nations, and have been killed by the Panis and Soex. I knew said he that the Panis were tears, and told the old chief who came with you, to confirm a peace with us, that his people were hers and bad men and that we killed them like the buffalo, when we pleased. We had made peace several times and you nation have always come ned the war, we do not want to kill you, and will not suffer you to kill us or steal our horses, we will make peace with you as our two fathers have directed. And they shall see that we will not be the ogressors. But we fear the Ricares will not be at peace long, my father those are the words I spoke to the Rikar in your presence, you see they have not opened their ears to your good counsels but have spewled our blood. Two Rikaris whom we sent home this day for fear of our people's killing them in their grave informed us when they came here several days ago, that two towns of the Rikares were making their moccasins. And that we had best take care of our horses and a number of Suex were in their towns. And they believed not well disposed towards us, four of the Wettersons are now absent they were to have been back in sixteen days they have been out twenty-four we fear they have fallen. My father the snow is deep and it is cold our horses cannot travel through the the plains, those people who have spilt our blood have gone back. If you will go with us in the spring after the snow goes off we will raise the warriors of all the towns and nations around about us, and go with you. I told this nation that we should be always willing and ready to defend them from the insults of any nation who would dare to come to do them injury during the time we would remain in their neighborhood, and requested that they would inform us of any party who may at any time be discovered by their patrols or scouts. I was sorry that the snow in the plains had fallen so deep since the murder of the young chief by the Sioux as prevented, their horses from traveling I wish to meet those Sioux and all others who will not open their ears. But make war on our dutiful children, and let you see that the warriors of your great father will chastise the enemies of his dutiful children the Mandans, Wettersons and Winnetarees, who have opened their ears to his advice, you say that the Panis or Ricares were with the Sioux. some bad men may have been with the Sioux. you know there is bad men in all nations, do not get mad with the Rakaris until we know if those bad men are counternocked by their nation, and we are convst. Those people do not intend to follow our counsels, you know that the Sows have great influence over the Rikaris and perhaps have led some of them astray, you know that the Rikaris are dependent on the Sows for their guns, powder, and ball. And it was policy in them to keep on as good terms as possible with the Sows until they had some other means of getting those articles and. And. You know yourselves that you are compelled to put up with little insults from the Cristinos and Asinaboins, or stone inns. Because if you go to war with those people, they will prevent the traders in the north from bringing you guns powder and ball and by that means distress you very much. But when you will have certain suppliers from your great American father of all those articles you will not suffer any nation to insult you and. After about two hours conversation on various subjects all of which tended towards their situation and. I informed them I should return to the fort, the chief said they all thanked me very much for the fatherly protection which I showed towards them, that the village had been crying all the night and day for the death of the brave young man. 
who fell but now they would wipe away their tears, and rejoice in their father's protection and cry no more. I then paraded and crossed the river on the ice and came down on the N. Sighed the snow so deep, it was very fatiguing arved at the ford after night, gave a little taffy. A cold night the river rise to its former height, the chief frequently thanked me for coming to protect them, and the whole village appeared thankful for that measure. Clark, December 1, 1804. One's deck. A young chief arrived. Seven Chiens came to the village with a pipe and the three Ricares who came here a few days ago and sent off yesterday have returned and say that the Sos and Ricares are camped together. Clark, December 1. 1804. First of December Saturday 1804 wine from the N.W. All hands engaged in pitting pickets and. At ten o'clock the half-brother of the man who was killed came and informed. Us that after my departure last night six Chiens so called by the French Shar Ha Indians had arrived with a pipe and said that the Mandans apprehended danger from the Shar Has as they were at peace with the Sos. And wished to kill them and the Ricarees, or parties, but the chiefs informed the nation, it was our wish that they should not be hurt, and forbid being killed and we gave a little tobacco and. And this man departed well satisfied with our counsels and advice to him in the evening a mister. G. Henderson in the employ of the Hudson's Bay Company sent to trade with the Gros Ventre or Big Bellies so called by the French traders. Clark, December 2, 1804. 2d of Decker. 1804 visited by several Mandan chiefs and four Cheyennes inns. Who came with a pipe to the Mandans, sent a speech to the nation a flag and some tobacco, also written a speech to the Rikaras and Sioux, informed them what they might depend on if they would not open their ears, and and. Clark, December 2nd. 1804. 2nd of December Sunday 1804 for the latter part of last night was very warm and continued to thaw until underscore 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 o'clock when the wind shifted to the north at 11 o'clock the chiefs of the lower village of the Mandans with many of the Iyer young men and four of the Sharhas who had come to smoke with the pipe of peace with the Mandans. We explained to them our intentions our views and advised them to be at peace, gave them a flag for the Iyer nation, some tobacco with a speech to deliver to their nation on the Iyer return also sent by them a letter to Mrs. Tabo and Graveline, at the Ricares village, to intercede in proventing hostilities, and if they could not effect those measures to send and inform us of what was going on. Stating to the Indians the part we intend to take if the Ricors and Soex did not follow our directions and be at peace with the nations which we had adopted, we made some few small presents to those Sharhas and also some to the Mandans and at three o'clock they all departed well pleased. Having seen many curiosities, which we showed them dash. River rise one inch. Clark, December 3rd, 1804. December 3rd Monday, 1804. A fine morning the after part of the day cold and windy the wind from the N.W. The father of the Mandan who was killed came and made us a present of some dried simnons and a little pemmican, we made him some small presents for which he was much pleased. Clark, December 4th. 1804. 4th of December Tuesday 1804 A cloudy raw day wine from the N. W. The black cat and two young chiefs visit us and as usual stay all day the river rise one inch finish the main bastion, our interpreter. We discover to be assuming and discontented. Clark, December 5, 1804. December 5 Wednesday 1804 A cold raw morning wind from the S.E. Some snow, two of the N.W. Company came to see us, to let us know they intended to set out for the establishment on the Osiniboine River in two days and their party would consist of five men. Several Indians also visited us one brought pumpkins or simmons as a present a little snow fell in the evening at which time the wind shifted round to N. E. Clark, December 6, 1804. Fort Mandan, 6th of December Thursday 1804 for the wind blew violently hard from the N, N, W, with some snow the air keen and cold. The thermometer at 8 o'clock a, m, stood at 10 dgs. Above o, at 9 o'clock a man his squar came down with some meat for the interpreter his dress was a par moccasins of buffalo skin pr. 
leggings of goat skin and a buffalo robe, fourteen ring of brass on his fingers, this metal the Mandans they are very fond of, cold afternoon river rise November 2nd inch today. Clark, December 7th, 1804. At Fort Mandan, 7th of December, 1804. We were informed by a chief that great numbers of buffalo were on the hills near us Cap Lewis with a party went out and killed eleven three in view of our fort, the weather so excessive cold and wolves plenty, we only saved five of them. I with a party turned on the eighth out and found the buffalo at seven milliseconds. Distant killed eight and a deer, I returned with two cows leaving men with remaining meat, several men badly frost bit, the thermometer stood this morning at 44 d below breezing. Captain Lewis went out ninth and stayed all night out killed nine buffalo many of the buffalo killed were so meager that they not fit for use collected by the odd a of some horses the best of the meat in fact all we could save from wolves and I went on a hunting party the 14 and 15 of deck. Much snow very cold 52 degrees below Freezinga. N.W. and H. Bay clerks visit us the 16th also Mr. Haney, cold tem. 74 degrees below freezing. I visit the Mandans on the ones of January Captain Lewis II. Clark, December 7, 1804. 7th of December Friday 1804 a very cold day wine from the N.W. The big white grand chief of the ones village, came and informed us that a large drove of buffalo was near and his people was wadding for us to join them in a chase captain. Lewis took fifteen men and went out joined the Indians, who were at the time he got up, killing the buffaloes on horseback with arrows which they done with great dexterity, his party killed fourteen buffalo. Five of which we got to the fort by the assistance of a horse in addition to what the men packed on their backs, one cow was killed on the ice after drawing her out of a vacancy in the ice in which she had fallen. And butchered her at the fort, those we did not get in was taken by the Indians under a coustan which is established amongst them i.e. Any person seeing a buffalo lying without an arrow sticking in him, or some particular mark takes possession, many times, as I am told, a hunter who kills many buffalo in a chase only gets a part of one. All meat which is left out all night falls to the wolves which are in great numbers, always in the buffaloes, the river closed opposite the fort last night eleven halves inches thick the thermometer stood this morning at 1d. Below oh three men frost bit badly today. Clark, December 8, 1804. December 8 Saturday 1804 a very cold morning, the thermometer stood at 12d, below zero which is 42d. Below the freezing point, wind from the NWI with fifteen men turned out Indians joined us on horseback, shot with arrows rode alongside of Buffalo L and killed eight buffalo and one deer, one cow and calf was brought in. Two cows which I killed at seven miles DST. I left two men to skin and keep off the wolves, and brought in one cow and a calf. In the evening on my return to the fort saw great numbers of buffalo coming into the bottoms on both sides of the river this day being cold several men returned a little frostbit. One of men with his feet badly frostbit my servant's feet also frosted in his p.s. a little, I feel a little fatigued having run after the buffalo all day in snow many places ten inches deep, generally six or eight. Two men hurt their hips very much in slipping down, the Indians kill great numbers of buffalo today, Two reflecting suns today. Clark, December 9, 1804. December 9, Sunday, 1804. The thermometer stood this morning at 7 degrees above zero. Wind from the E. Captain Lewis took 18 men and four horses and went out send in the meat killed yesterday and kill more, the sun shone today clear. Both interpreters went to the villages today at twelve o'clock. Two chiefs came loaded with meat, one with a dog and sleigh also loaded with meat, Captain. Lewis sent in four oars loaded with meat, he continued at the hunting camp near which they killed nine buffalo. Clark, December 10, 1804. Tenth Monday Decker. 1804 Fort Mandan A very cold day, the thermometer today at ten and eleven degrees below zero. Captain. Lewis returned, today at twelve o'clock leaving six men at the camp to prepare the meat for to pack four horse loads came in. 
Captain Lewis had a cold disagreeable night last in the snow on a cold point with one small blanket the buffalo crossed the river below in immense herds without breaking in. Only two buffalo killed today one of which was too poor to skin, the men which was frost bit is getting better. The rise 11 halves inch wind north. Clark, December 11, 1804. December 11, Tuesday 1804 A very cold morning wind from the north the thermometer at 4 o'clock a.m. at 21 degrees, sunrise at 21 degrees sea list. Below zero which is 53 degrees below the freezing point and getting colder, the sun shows and reflects two images. The ice floating in the atmosphere being so thick that the appearance is like a fog dispersing. Sent out three horses for meat and with directions for all the hunters to return to the fort as soon as possible at one o'clock the horses returned loaded at night all the hunters returned. Several a little frosted, the black cat chief of the Mandans paid us a visit today continue cold all day river at a stand. Clark, December 12th. 1804. December 12th Wednesday 1804 A clear cold morning wind from the north the thermometer at sunrise stood at 38 degrees below zero, moderated until 6 o'clock at which time it began to get colder. I line my gloves and have a cap made of the skin of the Lucervia, lynx, or wild cat of the north, the fur near three inches long a Indian of the Shoe Nation came with the half of a cabra ko ka or antelope which he killed near the fort. Great numbers of those animals are near our fort but the weather is so cold that we do not think it prudent to turn out to hunt in such cold weather, or at least until our consts are prepared to undergo this climate. I measure the river from bank to bank on the ice and make it 500 yards. Clark, December 13. 1804 December 13 Thursday 1804 the last night was very clear and the frost which fell covered the ice old snow and thus parts which was naked one sixth of an inch, the thermometer. Stands this morning at 20 degrees below zero, a fine day. Find it imposable to make an observation with an artificial or ice in Joseph Fields kill a cow and calf today one mile from the Fort River Falls. Clark, December 14, 1804. December 14th Friday 1804 A fine morning. Wind from the S.E. The mercury stood at zero this morning I went with a party of men down the river 18 miles to hunt buffalo, saw two bulls too poor to kill, the cows and large gangs having left the river. We only killed two deer and camped all night with some expectation of seeing the buffalo in the morning, a very cold night, snowed. Clark, December 15th. 1804. 15th of December, 1804 Saturday a cold clear morning, saw no buffalo. I concluded to return to the fort and hunt on each side of the river on our return which we did without success, the snow fell eleven halves inches deep last night. Wind north on my return to the fort found several chiefs there. Clark, December 16, 1804. Fort Mandan December 16, Sunday 1804 A clear cold morning, the thermometer. At sunrise stood at 22 degrees below zero, a very singular appearance of the moon last night, as she appeared through the frosty atmosphere, Mr. Henny, from the establishment on River Asiniboine, with a letter from, Mr. Charles Chiboyles one of the costs arrived in six days, Mr. C in his letters expressed a great anxiety to serve us in anything in his power. A route described by Mr. Henry for the cure of a mad dog. Mr. Low Rock a clerk, of the N.W. Company and Mr. George Bunch a clerk of the Hudson's Bay Compi accompanied Mr. Henny from the village. Clark, December 17, 1804. December 17 Monday 1804 a very cold morning the THRMT stood a 43 degrees below zero. We found Mr. Henny a very intelligent man from whom we obtained some sketches of the Count Ray between the Mississippi and Missouri, and some sketches from him, which he had obtained from the Indians. To the west of this place also the names and characters of the Sioux and about 8 o'clock p.m. The thermometer fell to 74 degrees below the freezing point, the Indian chiefs sent word that buffalo was in our neighborhood, and if we would join them, in the morning they would go and kill them. Clark, December 18th. 1804. 
December 18th Tuesday 18.04 for the thermometer the same as last night Mr. Haney and La Rock left us for the Grossventer camp, sent out seven men to hunt for the buffalo they found the weather too cold and returned, several Indians came, who had set out with a vi to kill buffalo. The river rise a little I employ myself making a small map of connection and sent Jessam to the main chief of the Mandans to know the cause of his detaining or taking a horse of Shibono our big belly interpreter, which we found was through the rascality of one La France a trader from the N.W. Company, who told this chief that Shibona out him a horse to go and take him he done so agreeable to an Indian custom, he gave up the horse. Clark, December 19, 1804. December 19, Wednesday, 1804 The wind from S.W. The weather moderated a little, I engage myself in connecting the Count Ray from information. River rise a little. Clark, December 20, 1804. December 20, Thursday, 1804 The wind from the N.W. A moderate day, the thermometer 37 degrees above zero, which gives an opportunity of putting up our pickets next the river. Nothing remarkable took place today river fall a little. Clark, December 21, 1804. December 21, Friday, 1804 A fine day worm and wind from the N.W. by W., the Indian whom I stoked from committing murder on his wife. Through jealousy of one of our interpreters, came and brought his two wives and showed great anxiety to make up with the man with whom his jealousy sprung, a woman brought a child with an abscess on the lower part of the back. And offered as much corn as she could carry for some medicine, Captain Lewis administered and Clark, December 22, 1804 December 22, Saturday, 1804 A number of squars womb and men dressed in squars clothes came with corn to sell to the men for little things. We procured two horns of the unemail the French called the Rock Mountain Sheep Those horns are not of the largest kind, the Mandans Indians call this sheep A.R. Sartide is about the size of a large deer, or small elk. Its horns come out and wind around the head like the horn of a ram and the tekra and not unlike it much larger and thicker particularly that part with which they but or outer part which is underscore 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 inches thick, the length of those horns. Which we have is. Clark, December 23, 1804. December 23rd Sunday 1804 A fine day great numbers of Indians of all descriptions came to the fort many of them bringing corn to trade, the little crow, load. His wife and son with corn for us, cap. Lewis gave him a few presents as also his wife, she made a kettle of boiled simnins, beans, corn and choke cherries with the stones which was pale table. This dish is considered, as a treat among those people. The chiefs of the Mandans are fond of staying and sleeping in the fort. Clark, December 24, 1804 December 24, Monday, 1804 Several chiefs and members of men, women and children at the fort today, some for trade, the most as lookers-on. We gave a fellet of sheep skin, which we brought for sponging, to three chiefs one to each of two inches wide, which they lay great value prizing those fillets equal to a fine horse, a fine day we finished the picking in around our works. Clark. December 25, 1804. December 25, Christmas Tuesday I was awakened before day by a discharge of three platoons from the party and the French, the men merrily disposed, I give them all a little taffia and permitted three cannon fired, at raising our flag. Some men went out to hunt and the others to dancing and continued until 9 o'clock p.m., when the frolic ended and Clark, December 26, 1804. 26th Decker. Wednesday, 1804 A temperate day no Indians today or yesterday. A man from the N.W. Company came down from the Gros Ventres to get one of our interpreters to assist them in trade this man informed that the party of Gros Ventres who pursued the Ossenboins that stole their horses has all returned in their usual way by small parties, the last of the party bringing eight horses which they stole from a camp of Asnaboins which they found on Mouse River. Clark, December 27. 1804. December 27. 1804 Thursday a little fine snow weather something colder than yesterday several Indians here today, 
much surprised at the bellows and method of making sundry articles of iron wind hard from the N.W. Clark, December 28, 1804. 28th of December Friday 1804 blew very hard last night, the frost fell like a shower of snow, nothing remarkable today. The snow drifting from one bottom to another and from the Livelle Plains into the hollows and Clark, December 29th. 1804. December 29th Saturday 1804 the frost fell last night nearly a one quarter of an inch deep and continent to fall until the sun was of some bite, the mercury stood this morning at 9 d below zero which is not considered cold. As the changes take place gradually without long intermissions. A number of Indians here. Clark, December 30, 1804. December 30th Sunday 1804 cold the temperature. At 20 d below zero a number of Indians here today they are much surprised at the bellows one deer killed. Clark, December 31st. 1804. Fort Mandan 31st of December Monday 1804 a fine day some wind last night which mixed the snow and sand in the bend of the river, which has the appearance of hillocks of sand on the ice, which is also covered with sand and snow. The feast which falls in the night continues on the earth and old snow and and dot, a number of Indians here every day are blck smith mending their axes hose and and for which the squars bring corn for payment. Clark, January 1, 1805. Fort Mandan on the N.E. Bank of the Missouri's 1,600 miles up January 1, 1805 Tuesday the day was ushered in by the discharge of two cannon. We suffered sixteen men with their music to visit the first village for the purpose of dancing, by as they said the particular request of the chiefs of that village. About eleven o'clock I with an interpreter and two men walked up to the village, my views were to all I some little misunderstanding which had taken place through jealousy and mortification as to our treatment towards them, I found them much pleased at the dancing of our men. I ordered my black servant to dance which amused the crowd very much, and somewhat astonished them, that so large a man should be active and. And. I went into the lodges of all the men of note except two, whom I heard had made some expressions not favorable towards us, in comparing us with the Trabers from the north, those chiefs observed what they saw it was in just and laughter. Just as I was about to return the two D chief and the black man. Also a chief returned from a mission on which they had been sent to meet a large party 150 of gross ventures who were on their way down from their camps ten miles above to revenge on the shoe tribe an injury which they had received by a shoe man stealing a gross venter's girl. Those chiefs gave the pipe turned the party back, after delivering up the girl, which the shoe chief had taken and given to them for that purpose. I returned in the evening, at night the party except six returned, with three robes, and thirteen strings of corn which the Indians had given them, the day was warm, femtre. Thirty-four degrees above zero, some few drops of rain about sunset, at dark it began to snow, and snowed the greater part of the night, the tempter for snow is about oh, the black cat with his family visited us today and brought a little meat. Clark. January 2, 1805. 2nd of January Wednesday 1805 a snowy morning a party of men go to dance at the second village to dance, Captain Lewis and the interpreter visit the 2D village, and return in the evening. Some snow today very cold in the evening. Clark, January 3rd, 1805. 3rd of January Thursday 1805 Some snow today. Eight men go to hunt the buffalo, kill the hare and wolf several Indians visit us today and a gross ventre came after his wife, who had been much abused, and come here for protection. Clark, January 4, 1805. Fort Mandan 4 of January Friday 1805 A warm snowy morning, the Themtra. At 28 degrees above zero, Cloudy, sent out three men to hunt down the river, several Indians came today the little crow, who has proved friendly came we gave him a handkerchief and two files, in the evening the weather became cold and windy, wind from the N.W. I am very unwell the after part of the day. Clark, January 5, 1805. 5th of January Saturday 1805 a cold day some snow, several Indians visit us with thier axes to get them mended. 
I employ myself drawing a connection of the count ray from what information I have wrecked, a buffalo dance, or medicine, for three nights past in the first village, a curious custom the old men arrange themselves in a circle and after smoke a pipe, which is handed them by a young man, dress up for the purpose. The young men who have their wives back of the circle go to one of the old men with a whining tone and request the old man to take his wife, who presents neck except a robe, and, the girl then takes the old man, who very often can scarcely walk, and leads him to a convenient place for the business. After which they return to the lodge, if the old man, or a white man, returns to the lodge without gratifying the man and his wife, he offers her again and again. It is often the case that after the 2D time without kissing the husband throws a nice robe over the old man and then begs him not to despise him, and his wife, we sent a man to this medicine last night. They gave him four girls, all this is to cause the buffalo to come near so that they may kill them too. Clark, January 6, 1805. 6th of January Sunday, 1805. A cold day but few Indians today I am engaged as yesterday. Clark, January 7, 1805. 7th of January Monday 1805 Fort Mandan a very cold clear day, the Themtra stood at 22 D below zero wind NW. The river fell one inch several Indians returned from hunting, one of them the big white chef of the lower Mandan village, dined with us, and gave me a setch of the Count Ray as far as the high mountains, and on the south side of the river Rajon. He says that the river Rajon wrecks six small rivers on the S side, and that the Count Ray is very hilly and the greater part covered with timber, great numbers of beaver and k. The three men returned from hunting, they killed four deer and two wolves, saw buffalo a long ways off, I continue to draw a connected plot from the information of traders, Indians, and my own observation and idea, from the best information. The Great Falls is about 800 miles nearly west. Clark, January 8th, 1805. 8th of January Tuesday 1805 A cold day but few Indians at the fort today win from the N, W, one man at the village. Clark, January 9th. 1805. 9th of January Wednesday 1805 A cold day thermometer at 21 degrees below zero, great numbers of Indians go to kill cows, the little crow braft. With us, several Indians call at the fort nearly frost, one man reported that he had sent his son a small boy to the fort about three o'clock, and was much distressed at not finding him here, the after part of this day very cold. And wind keen. Clark, January 10, 1805. 10th of January, 1805 This morning a boy of thirteen years of age came to the fort with his feet froze, having stayed out all night without fire. With no other covering than a small robe goat skin legans and a PR. Buffalo skin moccasins, the Masai stood at 72 degrees below the freezing point, several others stayed out all night not in the least hurt, this boy lost his toes only. Clark, January 10th. 1805. 10th of January Thursday 1805 Last night was excessively cold the mercury this morning stood at 40 degrees below zero which is 72 degrees below the freezing point, we had one man out last night. Who returned about 8 o'clock this morning the Indians of the lower villages turned out to hunt for a man and a boy who had not returned from the hunt of yesterday. And borrowed a sleigh to bring them in expecting to find them froze to death about 10 o'clock the boy about 13 years of age came to the fort with his feet froze and had lain out last night without fire with only a buffalo robe to cover him. The dress which he wore was a PR of cabra leggings, which is very thin and moccasins, we had his feet put in cold water and they are coming too, soon after the arrival of the boy, a man came in who had also stayed out without fire. And very thinly clothed, this man was not the least injured customs and the habits of those people has answered to bear more cold than I thought it possible for man to endure. Send out three men to hunt elk below about seven miles. Clark. January 11th, 1805. January 11th Friday 1805 Very cold, send out three men to join three now below and hunt. Poskop Ha or Black Cat came to see us and stay all night. 
Sho sa har rora or kol also stayed all night, the interpreter oldst wife sick. Some of our men go to see a war medicine made at the village on the opposite side of the river, this is A. Clark, January 12, 1805. Fort Mandan 12th of January Saturday 1805 A very cold day three of our hunters J. And our field's wife two elk on a sleigh sent one more hunter out. Clark, January 13, 1805. 13th of January Sunday, 1805, a cold clear day, great number of Indians move down the river to hunt, those people kill a number of buffalo near their villages and save a great proportion of the meat. Their custom of making this article of life general leaves them more than half of their time without meat their corn and beans and they keep for the summer, and as a reserve in case of an attack from the sows, which they are always in dread. And seldom go far to hunt except in large parties, about one half the Mandan nation pass this today to hunt on the river below, they will stay out some days, Mr. Shabani, our interpreter, and one man that accompanied him to some loges of the Minotauris near the Turtle Hill returned, both froze in their faces. Shaboniu informs that the clerk of the Hudson's Bay Company with the Mianitar Tar residential has been speaking some few expressions. Unfavorable towards us, and that it is said the N.W. Company. Intends building a fort at the Mean Tar Rees, he saw the Grand Chief of the Big Bellies who spoke slightly of the Americans, saying if we would give our great flag to him he would come to see us. Clark, January 14, 1805. 14th of January. 1805 Monday this morning early a number of Indians men woman children dogs and can pass down on the ice to join those that passed yesterday. We sent Sir Prior and five men with those Indians to hunt one of our hunters sent out several days arrived and informs that one man, White House, is frostbit and can't walk home. Clark, January 15. 1805. Fort Mandan January 15, Tuesday 1805 Between 12 and 3 o'clock this morning we had a total eclipse of the moon. A part of the observations necessary for our purpose in this eclipse we got which is at 12 hours 57 minutes and 54 seconds total darkness of the moon at 144.00 end of total darkness of this moon at 239.10 end of the eclipse. This morning not so cold as yesterday wind from the S. E. Wind choked around to the N.W. Still temperate four considerate men of the Mintar came to see us we smoked in the pipe, Manny Mans. Present also, we showed to those men who had been impressed with an unfavorable opinion of us. Clark, January 16, 1805. January 16, Wednesday, 1805 About thirty Mandans came to the fort today, six chiefs. Those me N.E. Therese to told them they were liars, had told them if they came to the fort the whites men would kill them, they had been with them all night, smoked in the pipe and had been treated well and the whites had danced for them. Observing the Mandans were bad and ought to hide themselves, one of the first war chiefs of the Big Bells nation came to see us today with one man and his squaw to W.A.T.E. on him we shot the air gun. And gave two shots with the cannon which pleased them very much, the little crow 2DCHF of the lower village came and brought us corn and. For men of ours who had been hunting returned one frosted. This war chief gave us a chart in his way of the Missouri. He informed us of his intentions of going to war in the spring against the Snake Indians we advised him to look back at the number of nations who had been destroyed by war, and reflect upon what he was about to do. Observing if he wished the happiness of his nation, he would be at peace with all, by that by being at peace and having plenty of goods amongst them and a free intercourse with those defenseless nations. They would get on easy terms a great number of horses, and that nation would increase, if he went to war against those defenseless people, he would displease his great father. And he would not receive that protection and care from him as other nations who listened to his word, this chief who is a young man twenty-six years. Old replied that if his going to war against the Snake Indians would be displeasing to us he would not go, he had horses enough. We observed that what we had said was the words of his great father, and what we had spoken to all the nations which we saw on our passage up. They all promised to open their ears and we do not know as yet if any of them has shut them, we are doubtful of the Sus, if they do not attend to what we have told them their great father will open their ears, 
this chief said that he would advise all his nation to stay at home until we saw the Snake Indians and knew if they would be friendly. He himself would attend to what we had told him. Clark, January 17, 1805 January 17 Thursday 1805 A very windy morning hard from the north thermometer at zero, several Indians here today. Clark, January 18. 1805 January 18 Friday 1805 A fine warm morning, Mr. La Rock and McKinsey came down to see us with them several of the gross Van Rees. Clark, January 19, 1805 January 19, Saturday, 1805. A fine day, Messrs. Laroc and Mackenzie returned home, sent three horses down to our hunting camp for the meat they had killed, Jussam Squar, left him and went to the village. Clark, January 20. 1805. 20th, a cold fair day, several Indians at the fort today, a misunderstanding took place between the two interpreters on account of their squars one of the squares of Chabon's squares being sick, I ordered my servant to give her some fruit stewed and tea at Diff Tim's which was the cause of the misunstead. Clark, January 21. 1805. Fort Mandan 21st Monday January 1805 A number of Indians here two day a fine day nothing remarkable one band very bad with the pox. Clark, January 22. 1805. January 22, 1805 Tuesday a fine warm day attempted to cut the boat and the pirogues out of the ice, found water at about 8 inches under the first ice, the next thickness about 3 feet. Clark, January 23. 1805. January 23, 1805 Wednesday a cold day snow fell 4 inches deep, the occurrences of this day is as is common. Clark, January 24. 1805. January 24, Thursday, 1805 A fine day. Our interpreters appear to understand each other's better than a few days past sent out several hunters, they returned without killing anything, cut coal wood. Clark, January 25. 1805. 25th of January, 1805 Friday We are informed of the arrival of a band of Asnaboins at the villages with the grand chief of those tribes called the Fee de Petit Vo, to trade. One of our interpreter and one man set out to the big belly camp opposite the island men employed in cutting the boat out of the ice, and collecting coal wood. Clark, January 26, 1805 26th of January Saturday 1805 A very fine warm day several Indians dine with us and are much pleased, one man taken violently bad with the pleurisy, bleed and apply those remedies common to that disorder. Lewis, January 26, 1805 Saturday January 26, 1805 Observe meridian altitude of suns U L, with sextant and artificial. Horzen of water 48 degrees 50 latitude deduced from this observant. N. 47 21 Clark, January 27, 1805. 